legend has it, that when the mighty heavens fall, comes the end of the world. The endless realm will birth ten great beasts of chaos. They have bodies as huge as those of celestial lands. In their wake, the heavens are shattered, space and time are turned upside down and the world is reborn. After the destruction of the old world and the birth of the new, they will then disappear into obscurity. Thereafter, heaven and earth take shape once more, and the natural order is re-established. A new world with the existence of lids emerges. At the moment, our story protagonist is riding into his companion golden beast named Jin Yu. He's Lai Chanami, a 17-year-old student at Flamulo Science Academy, and was born in a small town. He was meeting a lady despite the heavy rain. She was Mu King King, also a 17-year-old student of Flamulo Science Academy, from a poor background and she's currently Tianeming's lover. King King invites Tianeming to go inside her house. Tianeming handed her a hairpin which he bought after a long shopping trip to the Yandu market. While Tianeming is putting the hairpin on his girlfriend, King King asked about how far Tianeming's beast has to refine the sacred beast's war soul. Tianeming answered that it will take some time to fully fuse with the war soul. But this sacred beast war soul, Tianemings believes that nobody can look down on him again and he can finally turn over a new leaf with his girlfriend. Ten days ago, Tianeming obtained the sacred beast war soul, a great treasure, in the plains of a secret realm. Its value is immense. It is said that it has the power that can make a man strong enough to stand above all beings. Tianeming gave the sacred beast soul to Jin Yu but it is yet to be fully fused with him. Once he successfully fuses the sacred beast war soul with his companion beast, he will be able to ascend to the top of the great ranking and go on to the peak of life from then on. He believes that with this sacred beast war soul, he will definitely be able to bring happiness to King King in the future although he is only the son of a small remote town lord and of law status in the Flamulo Science Academy which is full of noble children. Out of a sudden, King King removed his robe in front of Tanami. I don't want to wait any longer. I want you to make me truly yours now. I want to become your woman. King King stated which made Tanaming surprised. King King also told him that she want to give all to Tanaming even herself. Tanaming was too shocked but he also felt something strange about his girlfriend's aura and he concludes that King King becomes like this because of his sacred beast war soul. Someone attacked the roof of the house where they stay. He was riding to his purple beast and presumed that Tanaming drug and assaulted King King. His name is Lin Ziyote, 17 years old, one of the elite disciples of Flamulo Science Academy's Heavens Division son of a noble family. Tianeming was confused that Ziyoding appeared out of a sudden. His girlfriend also runs to Ziyoding and asks for some help. Why Tianeming, you've done something worse than a monster, and as a disciple of Heaven's Division of the Flamulo Science Academy, I have the authority to punish you. Ziyoding proclaimed and his beast rushed towards Jin Yu. Jin Yu was ready to fight but he was struck in his neck. Tianeming shouted to him to get away as they are not a match. Ziyoding also attacked Tianeming and stepped into his head. He is not satisfied yet and grabs Tanaming's head to take a look on how his beast will assault Jin Yu. Since Jin Yu is still too weak, he couldn't fight back and as expected, he died. Jin Yu is the first to be born in Tanaming's life-bound space when he was a kid. On that day, Tanaming promised him that they will never be apart. That's why, Tanaming cannot accept that his beast is no longer alive. Ziyoding gets the sacred beast war soul to Jin Yu and before he leaves, he stated that this beast war soul is not worthy of Tanaming. Tianeming cannot believe that King King will betray him and also blamed himself that he never suspected this girl. King King smiled and called Jin Yu a useless companion beast of Tianeming who was unable to quickly fuse itself with the war soul. She only used Tianeming and what she believes is that Tianeming's abilities and family background are not worthy of her or the sacred beast war soul. Ziyoding also promised to help her become an elite disciple of Heaven's Division and that from now on, Tianeming will be one of the masses of the bottom feeder while she will be up high and above. Just think of it as a sacrifice you've made in the name of love for me. King King said and vows that she can make those who used to look down on her kneel before her. She left together with Ziyoding with the thought that Tianeming is already worthless without his companion beast. Tianeming was full of hatred in his heart that he was betrayed by the girl he loved the most and also that his companion was executed helplessly. He stands and pledges that a day will come when he can make King King and Ziyoding beg for mercy. He carried Jin Yu and apologized for what happened. Mu King King, Lin Ziyoding. I will make you pay for Jin Yu's life, he whispered while carrying his companion beast. Three years later, Tanaming woke up with a startled face. He was having dreams of Jin Yu for the past three years. He has spent his days in the Flamehaven city lying in wait. And that Mu King King really did rise to the top of the Ignispolis, became a core disciple of the Flamulo Science Academy, and even got together with Lin Ziyoding. The sacred beast war soul is rumored to be obtained by Ziyoding, through his own efforts. On the contrary, Tianeming became a laughing stock because of the attempted drugging and assault and was laughed at by the world. 
The powerful families control public opinion and people don't believe in anything he says. However, no one knows that he has a big secret in his life-bound space. That is, other than Jin Yu who was hatched at the time he was born, another ten eggs have always existed within his life-bound space. And today, an egg is stirring. A new companion beast is about to hatch. He waited for this egg to hatch three years now and this will be the best time to let this beast out of its shell. When it hatches, a sudden bright light emerges from Tianming's home. He felt an imposing appearance and he thought that it might be a legendary companion beast. But when it completely appears, he was shocked and full of disappointment that he waited for three years just for this little chick in front of him. He pointed to the chicken and asked how it can give off an aura of a ferocious beast if he is only a chicken. What? Who are you calling a chicken? Don't you dare look down on me, or I'll crush your ball. The chicken answered which made Tanaming surprised. Although it is said that companion beasts can communicate with the beast master, this is the first time that Tanaming has seen one that can speak directly. You don't know how great I am little boy. The chicken added. Tianming stared into the little chicken's eyes to check its rank. When a companion beast hatches, the number of start points in its eyes indicates the level of the companion beast. When Tianming checked it, he only saw one single star and he compared that to his past companion beast which is Jin Yu had five stars and was one of the most rated five-tier beasts in the whole flame heaven. He was disappointed to think that he doesn't have hope of revenge since this companion beast is just a first-rank little chicken. The chicken was mad at him and challenged him to take a good look again. Tears were about to drop into his eyes and when he checked again, he realized that the star point of this little chicken is a cluster of many stars that he can't even count. It's not a single star but a massive starfield. He suddenly transmits to a place full of stars and he saw the eternal phoenix swallowing the sun. He also saw a colossal hand that suddenly catch the phoenix, henceforth and forevermore. I am the master of all primordial chaos beasts and reincarnation. The colossal hand suddenly speaks. He suddenly comes back to reality because of the chicken that keeps poking him. He carried the little chicken and asked what exactly beast he is. The little chicken was too calm and casually answered that he is the Eternal Inferno Phoenix, synonymous with a style that is one of the ten primordial chaos beasts. Tianming was a little bit hesitant about this companion beast but if it is really the Eternal Phoenix that can devour suns, he believes that he will be prosperous because of this. He then invited that chicken to do symbiotic cultivation with him. The chicken rode into his head and was too excited to see Tianming's beast veins. The first realm of cultivation is the beast vein realm. Both beast masters and companion beasts are born with nine beast veins. Together with their companion beasts, the beast masters and their companion beasts connect and pair their nine beast veins, making a total of 18 beast veins. They will achieve one level of the beast vein realm for each beast vein they can connect. Once the beast veins are interlinked, the beast master and the companion beast will be able to complement each other's strengths and gain huge benefits. The little chicken and Tanaming feel each other's beast veins trying to connect. Tianming was surprised by what he felt. He cannot believe that the chicken's young body has a beast vein as big as a dragon's. His beast vein in comparison to his is like a little worm. The little chicken laughed because his vein is big even though he was a newborn compared to Tianming. Eventually yours will belong to me, so don't say all that crap to me. Tianming answered. They then connect their veins and Tianming roars as he feels the chicken's veins into his body. Tianming was amazed as he feels so strong. The strength of the body brought by the beast vein is three times that of a normal. His first realm is better than a normal third realm. Their next step is the cultivation techniques and he believes that his current body is capable of cultivating the strongest gong method, the Xuan Jin skill. He shows the book to his companion beast but the chicken called it crap and told Tanaming that he will be the one to lead the training. We'll practice my eternal inferno sutra. The chicken stated which made Tanaming to be annoyed as for him. The beast master should be the one to take the lead. The chicken flew and said to him that he should listen as he will teach Tanaming the basics first. They practice and practice until Tanaming becomes familiar with the Eternal Inferno Sutra and realized why the chicken called the Xuanjin skill a crap since the Eternal Inferno Sutra is too strong than the skill he recommends. The next day, Tanaming is meditating while the little chicken is sleeping. Everything that happened yesterday was like a dream to him. He still has nine eggs in his life-bound space so he wondered if all of it is primordial beasts. He recalled the time when he thought that he would never be able to make a comeback and that even if his mother encouraged him every day, it would be hard for him to see any hope for this life. It's his mother's birthday today. He was thinking that his mother would also be so happy to see that he have a new lease on life and hope for the future. Once he becomes stronger, he knows that he can also pick more kingling herbs to save his mother's life. Someone knocked on the door to hand a gift to Tanaming and to his mother. The little chicken was annoyed that his sleep was disturbed out of a sudden. Rise and shine buddy, we've got people to surprise. Tanaming stated, hurry up and open the door Lai Tanaming. A girl shouted. It was Lady Huang, the third wife of Tanaming's father named Lai Yanfeng. She was together with her daughter and Tanaming's half-sister named Lai Zunjie. 
Tianming opened the door and his mother also get up to check on the visitor. Her name is Wai Jing, the first wife of Lai Anfeng. She has been treated coldly by Lai Anfeng because she is suffering from an incurable senile disease. She was bedridden for many years and rarely interacted with others. Tianming asked her to go back into her room as she was not feeling well but she insists as she doesn't want to lie down all day. Lady Huang asked about Wai Jing's health and her daughter interrupted saying, How can she be well when she's almost a dead woman? This mother and daughter have always been overbearing. They never look at Tianming and Wai Jing with respect and Tianming believes that they only visit them with bad intentions. Wang handed a paper to them and stated that it is a gift from Lai Anfeng. A sad form on Wai Jing's face as he saw that it is a letter of divorce. Although Lai Anfeng made a very polite statement about the paperwork with sweet words, but the reason behind it is as clear as a day for Tianming. Tianming was worried about her and she reasoned out that she was just sorry for Tianming as she never thought that Lai Anfeng would be so cruel for removing them from the family. According to her, this is a clear abrogation of Tianming's status as the firstborn son, even though he's the true next heir of Flamehaven. Tianming has full of anger toward his father and he already knew that he is no longer the heir on the day that he was framed and returned to his hometown three years ago. His father hasn't said even three words to him in these three years, and they became strangers to each other. Lady Huang and her daughter bring a lot of spirit gems and throw it to Wai Jing. Sister, you can cry if you ready feel bad, I won't laugh at you. Huang stated which made Tanaming furious and ordered them to leave. Huang is not satisfied yet and gives them an hour to pack things as they will be the new owner of this raid pavilion from now on. Tanaming squeezes his fist out of anger and was planning to go to his father to ask for an explanation but his mother suddenly holds his hands and stopped what he was thinking. Wai Jing told him that they should leave this place and come back soon to get their honor. No one knows a child better than a mother. Tanaming's mother's vision is far greater than his, and he feels that he has been too narrow-minded. He then cheers up and believes that he and his mother will surely rise again. He has always thought that his mother is no ordinary person. When Wai Jing was young, she was the most beautiful among her peers. She was a good fighter and Tanaming doesn't understand why his mother chose Lai Yanfei. Even though the disease had afflicted her for half of her life, neither her spirit nor her heart was broken by it. Rise again. Don't make me laugh. Zun Zhao stated as she believes that Tianming has no chance to come back again since his companion beast is already dead. When she was three years old, she was abducted and Tianming saved her and fought for three days and nights to rescue her from the culprit. But now, Tianming's regrets saving her on that day. There are three trees in this country yard. Pick the one you'd like me to send you on, Tianming stated. Wang warned him not to be foolish as she believed that Tianming is too weak and no longer has a companion beast. Zun Zhao summoned his companion beast named Huo Ling and Tianming do the same. When the little chicken comes out, a bright light emerges which makes Huang and Zun Zhao shocked. When it's finally visible, they laughed and belittled the chicken. Damn, what a hot chick. Do you want to have my babies? The chicken stated while looking at Zun Zhao's companion beast because he thought that it was a female beast. Zun Zhao immediately ordered her beast to devour the chicken and the chicken also rushed toward Huo Ling. Zun Zhao is very determined to fight against her brother and strike a fire attack but Tianming was very calm and only smiles. He believes that this attack is not enough to make him budge. You call this a fire strike? Zhu Jiao, are you on a diet? Tianming stated. Now that he has the eternal inferno body, ordinary fire can't put a scratch on him. He then rushed to his sister and slapped her which made her fly away and hang on the tree. Her mother was mad at Tianming while Tianming's mother was glad to think that Tianming cultivation base has been restored. When Tanaming looked at his companion beast, it was fighting easily with the huge companion beast of Zuija. The little chicken was enjoying fighting with Huo Ling and he kicked Huo Ling as his last attack. He was disappointed that Huo Ling is a male beast and he was fooled because of how sexy it dressed up. Tanaming stopped him but he keeps resisting out of his disappointment. Lai Tanmang, you are not the son of the lord anymore. You dare to beat my daughter and I will make you die a horrible death. Lady Huang said. Tanaming punches the tree beside her. Now that he is no longer part of the Lai family. He doesn't have to care about the Lai family's reputation anymore. He warned Huang that he doesn't show mercy to people like her who don't even know martial arts. Before Huang and her daughter leave, Zun Jiao told Tanaming that the reason why his father divorced Wai Jing is that his father wants to marry another woman and wants that woman to be his first wife. The woman's name is Liu King. She's in her twenties, not much older than Tanaming, and also a famous beauty. The woman is also from the Lightning Manor which made Tanaming shocked. Three years ago, he offended the Lightning Manor. His father wants to rely on this woman to rise to the top so he must get rid of Tanami. Because of the Lightning Manor, his brother was executed and bringing him into disrepute and now causing his mother to suffer. On this day, he swore that one day, he will make the Lightning Manor disappear forever. According to his stepsister, their father will be hosting a grand wedding in ten days' time and she believes that Tanami will die and the people from the Lightning Manor once he will not flee to this city. 
When they left, Wai Jin reminded Tanaming that the Flamulo Science Institute selection will be happening in 10 days. The competition is held every four years and the number of spots is limited to only one. Last time, Tanaming succeeded in getting the Flamulo Science Institute slot and went to the Flamulo Science Academy. He feels now that his father intends to use the Flamulo Science Academy's selection competition to cheer up the wedding. According to his mother, the order is likely to fall into the hands of his second brother this time. Tianming comes to the conclusion that his father wants Lai Zifeng, his second brother to be the successor. But Tianming won't let it happen. He was determined now to win the Order of Flamulo Science and rejoin the academy and go to Heaven's Sanctum to find the cure for his mother's illness. Lai Tianming, let's go. I don't want to stay here any longer, his mother stated and also ordered him to pick up the spirit gems. He doesn't want to accept the gems but his companion beast suddenly complained that he was hungry and was excited to eat the spirit gems. Tanaming was hesitant as he believes that chickens should only eat worms. The chicken told him that they can immediately break the next level after eating these gems which made Tanaming believe and handed him the gems right away. Meanwhile, they already moved and the little chicken was enjoying eating the spirit gems. He also told Tanaming to eat the gems as it has fire-type spiritual energy but Tanaming doesn't want to try it since he was afraid to be constipated. The chicken was annoyed with him for being naive that he can digest a quarter of these gems in an hour. He handed one gem to Tanaming but Tanaming hesitated. However, after doing symbiotic cultivation with his companion beast, his body has also been recast into an eternal inferno body, so he's already immune to the fire attribute himself so he was thinking that he can also eat this kind of gems. He then swallows the gem but he feels hot like his stomach was on fire. He feels like his body is being consumed by a fire that is unbearable. The chicken instructed him to activate the Eternal Inferno Sutra and refine the Crimson Spiritual Energy into Beast Energy and melt it into his beast veins. After he absorbed one gem, the chicken told him that one is not enough as they are just getting started. You're weak as a chicken, his companion beast stated and handed him the remaining gems. After a while, Tanaming finished eating the spirit gems and broke through to the fourth level of the beast vein realm. He lay down on his bed beside his companion beast but when he closed his eyes, he suddenly transmitted again to the galaxy and someone is calling him. There is an eye in front of where he was standing. He was full of confusion but the eye spoke that the time has come for his body to be transformed. All of a sudden, his arm was cut off and he screamed as he was shocked. He gets up and found himself in his room and realized that it was all a dream. His hand hurt so much and when he checked her arm, there is an azure smog and his arms becomes different. It was like an arm of a monster that he cannot define. He was confused as to why it happened and thought that he must still be dreaming. He pinched his cheeks but he felt the pain. When he checked his arm again, there is an eye on his hand that is the same as the one he saw in his dream just now. Looking at it is giving him chills. He keeps moving his arms as he believes that it was also connected to his vision. Because of this, he can see clearly from a dark perspective well, and can even see his leg hairs very clearly. The chicken noticed that he was still awake and he was startled when the chicken suddenly interrupts him asking what he was doing. Because of Tanaming sticking his hand down to his trousers in the middle of the night and panting at the same time. The chicken thought that he was doing something that a male usually does to satisfy themselves. Tanaming was annoyed by his companion beast's dirty mind but then the chicken advised him to learn to do it in moderation. Tanaming squeezed him out of annoyance and the chicken tried to resist. No, let me go this instant. I'm not your chick. Don't you dare do something funny with me. The chicken shouted. Tanaming put down his companion and show him his arm. The chicken suddenly run when he saw the eye. He was freaking out that this eye was also here with him. Tanaming concludes that the chicken was executed by this hand in his previous life that's why he looks so scared. The chicken tucked into the blanket and Tanaming calmed him down and told him not to be afraid since this hand is now his. He explained that he had a sudden dream and his hands mutated. He also guessed that maybe the chicken didn't get rid of his enemies in his previous life that's why they came after him. The chicken was scared upon hearing it and warned Tanaming to keep his hands under control. Don't worry, if I were your enemy, I'll definitely give you a hard time. After all, one of my favorite dishes is chicken and mushroom stew. Tanaming answered which made the chicken irritated and attacked him but he was disappointed that Tanaming's current hand is too hard and completely invulnerable. He covers his hand up to his arm and promised the chicken that he will cut it off once this hand ever gets out of his control. Even if I die, I can't drag you down. After all, we are brothers, aren't we? Tanaming stated which made the chicken's tears about to fall. With this arm, Tanaming becomes more sure of winning the Flame Yellow Science Academy selections. After how many days, the Flame Yellow Science Academy selection day has come and also the wedding day of the City Lord who is also the father of Tanaming. When the City Lord arrived, he was already together with his new woman named Louis King. The people were jaw-dropping while staring at the beautiful lady. Tanaming is also present and he was staring at his father until Louis King with full of hatred in his eyes. When Lian Feng sits on the podium, 
He then declared that the Flamulo Science Academy selection officially begins. His second son named Lin Zifeng, who's at the seventh level of the Beat Vein realm suddenly appeared in the interior and asked everyone who dares to fight with him. Tianming smiled at a thought of starting the fight against his brother. Everyone, especially girls is looking and cheering for Zifeng. Even Tianming's companion Beast also saw Zifeng as a popular man while Tianming is just seen as a big pervert among the girls. There are already several men wanted to fight against Zifeng and Tianming swears that he will beat his brother and make a name for himself. Zifeng summoned his fifth rank companion Beast, a purple-eyed bright bird, and challenged all the men to come all together. Three men immediately rushed towards him together with their companion Beast. With just one head of Zifeng's companion Beast, they were all defeated. What a shame, is there really no one here worthy of being my opponent? Zifeng shouted. Tianming suddenly comes out and removes his coat. Everyone gossips upon seeing him. Even his father was shocked and ordered him to leave and just support his brother Zifeng. Zifeng is good. He is very talented. He is stronger than I used to be. But before he gets the Flamulo order, I would like to challenge him one last time. Tianming answered and his father let him do whatever he wants. Zifeng rushed to him right away. He doesn't have the intention to execute his brother but if his brother will stand in his way, he will not be hesitant to make Tianming's life miserable. Tianming managed to block the attack of his brother which made the crowd surprised. Even Zifeng was confused about how Tianming possibly managed to block his best shot. He also senses that Tianming has an iron plate wrapped around his left arm. It's her hand that is weak. Tianming answered, since Zifeng believes that Tianming doesn't have a companion beast. He then summoned his purple-eyed bright bird. Tianming also called out his little chicken and as expected, the crowd belittled him and Zifeng laughed at his companion beast. The chicken was annoyed that he was underestimated by Zifeng. He then rushed to the purple-eyed bright bird to fight and show his abilities. Tianming is just standing while his brother Zifeng is rushing toward him. Zifeng attacked his brother and he was annoyed that Tianming is just too relaxed and doesn't have any fear of fighting against him. He even senses that Tianming's physique has gotten stronger than before. When he takes a glance at his companion beast, it was almost defeated by the little chicken that he underestimates. Tianming cast a power coming from his hand and punched Zifeng's abdomen causing him to vomit blood and one of his teeth have been detached. He fall to the ground while Tianming remained unharmed. His companion beast was also knocked out by the little chicken. The crowd was full of confusion and Tianming's father was also shocked by what happened. Yui King whispered something to his father which made him annoyed. According to Liu King, the competition is not over yet as there is still a young genius left who has yet to make an appearance. He then calls the participant named Kian Yang, his brother from the Lightning Manor. The chicken said that this man is on the ninth level of the Beast Vein realm which is five realms stronger than Tianming. Hey, it's been a long time Tianming, Kian Yang stated while pointing his fan to Tianming. According to Tianming, Kian Yang was Lei Ziaoding's henchman back then and he never expected this man would appear here. Instead of supporting Tianming, his father is rooting for Kian Yang and was too excited to see his true capability. He summoned his five-star companion beast, a lightning cheetah and before he attacked, he told Tianming that Ziaoding didn't execute him because they are having fun seeing him struggling. He then rides to his beast and was excited to let Tianming see his improvement over the past three years. He then cast an attack on Tianming causing a big explosion on the podium. Tianming got hurt just by the aftershock of the attack. He believes that the current him is impossible to fight against an opponent who is five realms superior. He squeezes his fist and swore to pay back twice the humiliation he received from Kian Yang. Kian Yang will be leaving Flamehaven City and Tanaming challenged him to have a battle on that day and that he should give Tanaming the Flamulo order once he loses. If Tanaming will be the one to lose, he's willing to bet his life on this battle. Kian Yang accepts his offer and in this way. He can also help Lai Yanfeng clear the shame that Tanaming brought upon his name in the whole Flamehaven. The crowd underestimated Tianming once again. He then leaves the place with the words that he can defeat Kian Yang in front of everyone soon. When the night comes, Liu King is talking about his brother who will rely on Lai Yanfeng to get mana at Red Twill. The mana is a rare resource that can increase the number of stars a companion beast has. Red Twill Mountain is Lai Yanfeng's territory and all of the mana that can be found there has his name written on it. Red Twill Mountain is too large and has a lot of fierce beasts lurking around but Yanfeng is willing to accompany her and her brother to officially enter the mountain. The next day, Tianming informed his mother that he was defeated by a participant from the Lightning Manor. His mother was disappointed that she needs to wait another month to leave Flamehaven City. Tianming also told her that he cannot guarantee that he can beat Kian Yang but his mother cheers him up and she has a lot of trust in the little chicken's ability. The little chicken hugged Wai Jing and addressed her as his mother that's why Sai Wing gave him a name as she also believes that this chicken doesn't want to be called little chick all the time. The chicken said that his name is too long which is Eternal Inferno Phoenix but Wai Jing suggested that from now on, he will be called Yu Ying Huo. 
The chicken was teary-eyed upon hearing it as he also loved the name that is given to him. Zai Wing coughs suddenly. Blood comes out from her mouth. The medicine she always drinks which is the clear spirit grass can only relieve the symptoms and cannot cure her so she was thinking that she might die sooner. Since it is only the medicine that can relieve her, Tianming still decided to go to Red Twill Mountain and pick the clear spirit grass to prolong his mother's life. Two days passed. Tianming was still at Red Twill Mountain but he only managed to find a single clear spirit glass after search so hard for two days. Ying Hua motivates him as he believes that they can find more of it deeper in the mountains. Tianming was hesitant to go further since it was more dangerous it gets due to the fierce beast. Ying Hua suddenly flew away as he found something good up ahead. He saw a fire lingjai and bravely pick it up. They then run as there is a fierce beast guarding it and they hide inside the hole in the tree. According to Tianming, this high-grade spiritual essence is worth a lot of money but Ying Huo told him that it was rare to come by so they should absorb and refine it as soon as possible. Come on, let's split it up and swallow. Ying Huo stated that Chanming was hesitant as what he knew is that this herb is a powerful one and that they can possibly die a violent death. Ying Huo told him that he should have confidence in his eternal inferno constitution. Chan Feng has confidence now upon hearing it and he then follows what his companion beast said upon swallowing it. There is a flame surrounding them and the beast vein realm successfully leveled up to fifth level. Meanwhile, while they are walking in the forest, they heard a powerful roar near them. Tianming concludes that it might be a fierce beast but when it suddenly comes out, it was a spirit of a lady asking for help. Ying Huo and Tianming were surprised upon seeing it and Ying Huo thought that it was a female ghost. But when it looks to them, it's a beautiful lady and Tianming believes that it is a fairy. His face becomes red and he cannot help but keep looking at the lady. A gorilla from behind suddenly roared and Tanaming promised the lady that he will help. Ying Huo is rushing to the gorilla and lets Tanaming and the lady run but Tanaming told him that they should run together. The lady offered her strength to Tanaming. She cast her magic and holds Tanaming's head. Tanaming feels different and he's glowing all over. The lady has a special body that can fuse with others to enhance their power and realm. Ying Huo was amazed seeing the power surrounding Tanaming and due to his carelessness, the gorilla has a chance to punch him. Tianming was too excited and tried the power right away to see how much power he can increase with this possession. He attacked the gorilla and the gorilla also fight back as well. But in the end, the gorilla was defeated and knocked out. Tianming was delighted that his power have enhanced and even the strength of the dark arm has been increased. The lady comes out and she becomes clearly visible wearing a purple dress and has purple hair. Brother, thank you for saving my life just now. The lady stated while smiling at Tianming. Ying Huo introduced himself and the lady hold him and were glad to see a talking pet. She introduced herself. Her name is Zhang Feeling and Ying Huo is the one who introduced Tanfeng to her. Zhang was born without any companion beast but she has special abilities. She also feels a strange feeling that Tanming and her have known each other for years. She raised her hand and let Tanming look at her fingernails. According to her, she has ten special abilities and they've been sealed since birth. She already unlocked two of them. One is a spiritual attachment that grants her the ability of temporal field and lets her create a region of space where she can control the flow of time. Ying Huo interrupts her and told her and Tanaming to marry together to become overpowered. Tanaming was embarrassed upon hearing it and he then forced his companion beast to be inserted into the companion space. Zhang came here with someone but they were separated as they were being chased by the beast. Tanaming was curious about their colleague of Zhang and was disappointed that Zhang might be married to someone. You rascal, how dare you molest my linger? How dare you? A voice from behind shouted and slash him using a sword. It was a spirit source beast master realm powerhouse. To achieve this realm at such a young age, she by no means has an ordinary talent. Zhang stopped her and explained that Tianming is the one who helped her with the beast. She also said that they have complete synchronization with Tianming which the other lady doesn't believe. Tianming and Zhang tried it again to prove that they have the perfect combination. Even so, the lady still underestimates Tianming as he is only fifth level of the beast vein. And according to her, with this qualification, Tianming won't be able to achieve anything in the future. She then grabs Zhang's hands to go back to Ignispolis. Tianming tried to ask her exact location in Ignispolis but her colleague covers her mouth and told Tianming not to bother to come to them and that he should be at home, farming and producing food to contribute to the Vermilion Bird Kingdom. Zhang said goodbye to him which made him thrilled because of how cute and polite she is. While looking at them leaving the place, he believes that he will have an opportunity soon to meet Zhang again in the future. Ying Huo comes out and was hysterical that Tianming hit him from the girls. I curse your future babies to not of butts. I curse you to break your twenty into seven or eight pieces. Ying Huo stated out of annoyance. They already stayed three days here in the Red Twill Mountain and continued to search for the clear spirit grass. They have found a dozen of the said grass and Tianming is glad that three days of searching have finally paid off. 
Also, he was very excited thinking that his mother will be very happy to see him return with so much clear spirit grass. When he was about to pick the grass, there is a sudden scorpion coming out from the ground. The chicken thought that it was a fierce beast but Tanaming told him that it was a companion beast. It's a blue-tailed scorpion five-star companion beast. It's a highly poisoned type arachnid beast and Tanaming concludes that there's a beast master around the area. You're not from the Lightning Manor, and you dare to enter the depths of the Red Twill Mountain. Aren't you afraid of dying? A man stated which made Tanaming confused as to why there are geniuses suddenly appeared. The man warned him to leave Red Twill Mountain if he doesn't want to end up being buried. Ying Hua was annoyed by his words but Tanaming told him that people of the Lightning Manor are all like this. They only came here to collect medicine and there's no need for them to fight. He also explained to the man that he will leave but he needs to pick a few clear spirit types of grass for his mother's cure for illness. Instead of giving him some time, the man stepped on the grass that Tanaming needed. Tanaming was dumbfounded upon seeing it. You called me brother, who are you to call me brother? Are you worthy? The man stated which made Ying Huo furious. The flame comes out from Tanaming's body. He was full of hatred and wanted to execute the man in front of him. The man smirked and ordered his companion beast to attach Tanaming. Tanaming and Ying Huo rushed together toward the opponent's beast. With both of their strength, they managed to defeat the scorpion using martial arts. The man was shocked and cast a top-grade bestial weapon, a heart-piercing needle coated with poison, and strike an attack on both Tanaming and Ying Huo. He thought that Tanaming will die because of this but he was surprised when Tanaming managed to block the needles and punched him causing him to vomit blood. Tanaming stepped on his opponent's head as it has still the guts to threaten him. The man suddenly shouted calling his mother and father. Tanaming feels an intimidating aura because of it and he is sure that these are the high-ranking member of the Lightning Manor. He then runs away while the man is shouting ordering him to mention his name which is Zhang Zixuan once he will see the king. This is Tanaming's hometown and grew up around here so he was familiar with all of the areas on this mountain. Zhang Zixuan's parents appeared and Zixuan's told his father that he was beaten by a man about his age with a bandage on his left arm. His father was furious and willing to shred Tanaming's body into thousand pieces. While Tanaming is running away, he senses that someone faster is catching him up. He saw two people ahead and realized that it was King and Zhang. He was about to hold Zhang to possess her strength but King punched him directly causing him to fall. Zixuan's father is coming but he was alarmed when he saw a familiar lady with Tanaming. Zhang Chong from the Lightning Manor greets Princess King. Zixuan's father stated named Zhang Chong. At this point, Chanming was surprised that Lady King is the princess. The princess asked Chong what the Lightning Manor people is doing on this mountain but Chong was hesitant to answer her question. Answer my question. Speak up if you don't want to be beheaded. The princess ordered. Chong apologized to her and explained that seven disciples of the Lightning Manor are here for a competition to find the mana that they discovered which can be found in this mountain. According to him, it's an inferior mana that can't even be called a yellow-ranked one and can only allow the companion beast to evolve to the sixth star. After hearing the information, Princess King let him leave and he suddenly pulls Tanaming's hand to bring with him but Princess King stopped him and told him to leave by himself. When Chang finally left, Zheng told Tanaming that King is the one who wanted to follow him after they parted ways. She wanted to study why Tanaming could get perfect synchronization with Zhang. In fact, these girls are following him for days and Zhang invited him to visit her soon in Ignispolis. Princess King handed him a jade pendant so he can easily find Zhang soon if he will visit. Zhang suddenly hold his hand and whispered to him where he can find the mana that Chong mentioned. After that, they finally parted ways and Tanaming felt sad about it but he doesn't have a choice. They then decided to find the mana and since Ying Huo have been transformed from an ancient beast to a companion beast, and many of his abilities have been restricted, he believes that mana can help him free himself from those restrictions and help him grow stronger indefinitely until he becomes an ancient beast of chaos again. Ten days later, Tanaming and his companion beast are still the in the Red Twill Mountain. Although they haven't found the mana yet, they have found a lot of spirit essence and clear spirit grass which help him increase the speed of his cultivation by leaps and break through the sixth level of the beast vein realm. They arrived at the end of the direction that Zhang told him to follow. Jin Huo concludes that the mana is probably in the lake so he invited Tanaming to dive together and take a look. As they go deeper into the lake, it's getting darker and darker so Tanaming used his metal arm. He then saw something at the bottom of the water. There's like a key slot in the center of it and when he tried to check in his surroundings. He found something light near them and he thought that it was the key but his companion beast was certain that it is the mana that they are looking for. He can smell its fragrance that's why he's very sure that it was the mana. Tanaming gets it immediately and he plans to try it to unlock the well but Ying Huo sensed something big coming toward them. He ordered Tanaming to take the mana away as he will be the one to distract the beast. It's already near them, a three-star razorback colossal crocodile. Tanaming run away while his companion beast tried to lure the crocodile away from the area. 
When he gets up from the water, a lady standing in front of him and she's together with two other high rank people from Lightning Manor. The lady ordered him to hand over the mana but Tanaming just smirked and turned around. The lady was annoyed by his action and immediately summoned her 5-star water type 6-eyed flying fish. While Tanaming is walking away above the water, the flying fish is heading toward him and was about to attack but he managed to dodge and jump at the head of the fish. When the fish fly, Tanaming jumped again away from the fish. The owner of the flying fish named Yilin is chasing him and swore that Tanaming's whole family will suffer if he will not stop running away. She's also boasting that she's already at the 8th level of the Beast Vein realm but Tanaming still ignored him and keeps on running. Tanaming gets away from the river but his opponent is already behind him. Yilin cast a superior battle skill and ordered his companion beast to attack him. When the flying fish attacked him, he cast a skill and punched the flying fish using his metal arm. The blood of the fish splattered and Yilin was shocked that her companion was defeated by just a punch from Tanaming who she underestimated. Yilin's father and uncle are rushing to her and they don't want that Tanaming will escape together with the mana. When Tanaming saw them, he then grabs Yilin by the neck and warned the elder men not to act rashly if they don't want that Yilin's neck will be cut. You're just a kid. Don't be so presumptuous. I can execute you the instant you try to make a move. At her age, even a top genius can't be farther than me. Yilin's father stated. Tanaming shows them the jade pendant that Princess King gave him. Upon seeing it, the oldies were shocked and full of confusion as to why Tanaming had it. I'm Princess King's subordinate. Is there an issue with me taking this mana? Tanaming stated. Because of the jade pendant, the oldies don't want to fight him back and just asked about who is his father. Tanaming released Yilin and told the oldies that his father is a big man and that they should guess it themselves. Hen then runs away which made Yilin disappointed but her father cannot do anything and accept the fact that Tanaming is really the one who snatched the mana from the razorback colossal crocodile. Kain Yang suddenly came and asked if they got the mana and they explained that the mana was taken by an outsider and left just now. Kain Yang immediately rushed toward the direction where Tanaming runs away. Meanwhile, Tanaming and his companion beast met near the river and decided to go back deep down the water to open the well. Tanaming is confident that no one can see them if they will hide here under the lake. When they were about to open the well, they heard a weird noise again and they expected that it was the crocodile who came back to check the treasure. When they can clearly see it, they confirmed that it was the crocodile fighting against Kain Yang. They ignored Kain Yang and continue to open the well with the expectation that they can find some godly treasures. They go inside the well and found a room and when they opened it, they saw a shiny orb that has a white jade sphere inside. Tanaming was certain that the value of this orb is several times the mana. He let his companion beast refine the mana while he studied the orb with the thought that there was a secret hidden in it. Above the river, Kain Yang is still fighting against the crocodile and his sister wanted to help him but Yan Feng disagrees since they should not interfere unless it's for the last resort. Kain Yang is struggling that even his strongest moves are unable to hurt the crocodile. The crocodile becomes berserk and at this point, Kain Yang was frightened and asks for some help from his sister. Three hours later, the crocodile is already dead and Yan Feng received the news that his son is the one who stole the mana. Upon hearing it, Kain Yang yelled in regret that he did not execute Tanaming at the beginning. His sister was also certain that Tanaming's companion beast can't refine the mana and that Yan Feng will take back the mana for him. Going back to Tanaming, he's still in the process of studying the orb and he was surprised to see an eye inside the orb. A sudden flash happened which made his vision and consciousness are getting blurred. He feels like he entered another world and the secret of the orb is entering his brain directly. He discovered a Gonsol cannon and it said that when he will cultivate it to the level of sky polarity, the spirit core shall truly open. The path to the Wonderski realm shall be established, and he may seek its legacy afterward. The first stage of the Gonsol cannon is the bewildering eye. When this eye is mastered, the Gonsol cannon's second stage can be learned. His companion beast suddenly disrupts him and is confused why he suddenly recites some scriptures. He then explained that he got a good fortune called the Gonsol Cannon. The mana got absorbed into Ying Huo's body quite fast but it needs to be refined slowly in his body. Tianming tried to practice the Gonsol Cannon and it says that the bewildering eye needs him to establish illusion-type spirit veins in an eye. There are a total of 81 of them. Tianming opened his eyes and there was blood dripping from his eyes. He was afraid that this method is only suitable for those with special eyes. His companion beast reminded him that he has special eyes which are located on his hand. Jing Huo demanded to try practicing the technique again as he also wanted to see its power. Tanaming continued practicing and he becomes more focused this time. Five days later, Ying Huo finished refining the mana but Tanaming was disappointed that his companion beast remains a little chicken instead of becoming domineering and handsome. Ying Huo was annoyed and challenged him to try his bewildering against each other. Tanaming saw it as an exciting challenge. He then cast it to his companion beast. Ying Huo was hypnotized and he saw Tanaming as a female chicken wearing two-piece. Hey sexy, wanna produce some chicks with me? Ying Huo stated while rushing to Tanaming. 
Tianming woke him up and asked about what he saw. Tianming then realized that this bewildering eye can produce seductive illusions. Although it cannot inflict damage directly, it can at least distract the opponent at a critical moment. Tianming was excited thinking that this could work as a secret weapon at critical times. After their errand, they decided to go home since Tianming realized that his mother might be anxiously waiting for him. At this point, he was very determined to fight against Kai Yang and settle the score. At the Flamehaven, Lai Yanfeng with the people from the Lightning Manor is talking about Tianming. It's already the seventh day but they did not see Tanfeng in the city. Whoever of them can grab the mana to Tianming will be the one who owns it. At this moment, they worry that Tianming might go to Princess King together with the mana but his father Yanfeng explained to them that Tianming is a dutiful son and will return to pick up his loving mother and aside from that, Yanfeng knows that Tianming wanted to get the Flamula order. While they are discussing, a subordinate of Lord Yanfeng appeared and informed them that Tianming was spotted in the city. Tianming was spotted all around the most prominent place in the city and seems to be waiting for someone. I've been waiting for you for half a day, and now you show up. Tianming stated with a wide smile on his face. He was talking to Kai Yang together with other disciples. His father was also looking at him from behind and doesn't care what will happen to him now. He only cared about having a high position and power once they will go to the Lightning Manor. At this point, Tianming was too confident and challenged all seven disciples to come and fight with him together. The disciples laughed and what they expect is that Tianming is still too weak to fight against all of them. Before the battle started, Tianming confirmed first to Kai Yang if he will get the Flamula order once he won. Of course, a man's word is his bond. When you lose to me, you better hand over the mana. Kai Yang answered. Upon hearing it, he jumped and all of them thought that he will escape again. Tianming knew that he can't fight in this area as it was too close to the inn and will disturb his mother's rest. Secondly, it'll be good for him to let more people know who's the real winner of the Flamula selection. Lastly, he will let Lai Yanfeng feel what it's like to have the geniuses of the Lightning Manor whom he thinks so highly of. While the seven disciples are chasing him, the people started to notice them and was interested to see the battle. Tianming knows that his opponent can't act as one so he decided to attack Zixuan first. He then jumped towards Zixuan and Zixuan was clueless. Tianming punched him and Zixuan's parents were worried and even the people were shocked upon seeing how Tianming destroyed one disciple in just a single punch. One disciple asked him to hand over the mana nicely but Tianming teases him. The disciple chases him together with his companion beast. He attacked Tianming using his sword but Tianming managed to dodge and punched him. His companion beast was also defeated by Ying Huo. There are five disciples left and a lady disciple realized that they underestimate Tianming so he decided not to fight. The crowd was surprised that the Lightning Manor was almost defeated by the person whom they underestimate. So now, there are four of you left. Do I have to wait until you sort things out between yourselves? Tianming uttered. They were all challenged by Tianming's words so they attacked together but Tianming was too calm and defeated the three disciples together. The only one left is Kainian who was furious and underrated Tianming once more. He cast his skill while blabbering words to Tianming. For the first time, he activates his thunder fire chain but still, Tianming was calm and just smirked. He strikes an attack using the thunder fire chain while Tianming is avoiding it and jumping around. Kai Yang thought that Tianming can't fight back. He doesn't know that Tianming is just waiting for the perfect time to attack. Tianming used his bewildering eye and Kai Yang was hypnotized and thought that the lady in front of him is his sister. Tianming feels disgusted that Kai Yang has a desire for his own sister. He then seized the opportunity and punched Kai Yang directly in the face using a dragon mammoth heavy strike. Kai Yang was helplessly defeated which made the crowd to be shocked and even his sister and Lai Yanfeng cannot believe what just happened. Tianming step on his arm but what is unbelievable is that Kai Yang is asking for mercy. I can't do that. I don't want to let you off like that. Tianming answered as his intention is to execute Kai Yang. He then jabs Kai Yang's face to the roof while Kai Yang cried and continued asking for some mercy. What a disgrace. I say, city lord, is it just me? Or are these so-called geniuses from Lightning Manor? Nothing but a bunch of crap who can't even handle a single hit from the worthless cripple of Flamehaven. What do you say father? Tianming uttered. Lai and Feng shouted and ordered him to release Kai Yang. Tianming agreed but with a few conditions. The one who accepts the condition is Kai Yang's sister. First is that Tianming is now the owner of the Flamula Order. Second, he should be treated with respect and honored as the rightful winner of this year's selection. And lastly, they should prepare a good horse cart and Lai Yanfeng should send Tianming's mother and him off tomorrow with the courtesy of a guest. From then on, they will have no relationship with each other. The people are cheering for Tianming and told the city lord that Tianming deserves those conditions. You have my word. His father answered and after that, Tianming was congratulated as the winner of the Flamula Order. The next day, Tianming is riding a horse and ready to leave Flamehaven City. Ying Huo suggested to him that he should change his name to Tianming the Badass so he can truly cut all ties with his father. 
His mother was confused about where they are going so Chanaming explained that they were heading to the Ignispolis. Don't worry about anything and don't ask many questions, just trust your son, Chanaming stated. Three days later, Chanaming is still traveling. He was enjoying the thunder fire chain of Kainyang and he take it to Kainyang without any permission. Meanwhile, they arrived at the Ignispolis and Tanaming promised his mother that he will take good care of her. Wai Jing has some friends in this city so she told Tanaming that she will be the one to settle a place to stay. She leads the way to Sage Chen's residence and according to her, she has a friend here who marries Sage Chen whom she hasn't met for 20 years. Tanaming was shocked that his mother had connections with the Zeng and Chen merchantry. It is Vermilion Bird's largest business union that controls the nation's economy. The two presidents of the Zing and Chen merchantry, Sage Zing and Sage Chen are still legendary icons in Vermilion birth today. There were geniuses from the lower class who started from nothing. Twenty years ago, they were known as the Stray Twins, and now they're known as the Starry Sages. Not only do they possess wealth that rivals that of a small country, but they're also extremely powerful. It is said that their strength is comparable to that of old-school powerhouses such as the Lightning Manor. Wai Jing told the guard from the gate to tell their madam land that her old friend Wai Jing visits. After a while, the guard let them in. Tianming is observing the place inside and saw youngsters who practice their strength together with Chen Yao, Zhu Lan's child, and his with a six-star beast hex-starred clinquent lion. Tianming was amazed upon seeing it and believes that there might be a lot of talents hidden in Ignispolis. According to the guard, Chen Yao will be taking the entrance exam three days later and he's hoping to come in first so he can be directly accepted to heaven's sanctum. First place is also Tianming's goal. He was thinking that if he can be directly accepted, then he will finally be able to make progress on his mother's illness. Meanwhile, Wai Jing and Zhu Lan finally meet. Zhu Lan is a sexy lady despite that they have the same age as Wai Jing. Wai Jing introduced Tianming to the lady and Tianming can't believe that his mother's friend still looks so young. Zhu Lan mentioned a curse that may be taken effect which is also the reason that Wai Jing now looks so old. Wai Jing explained what happened to her in the Flame Haven, and Zhu Lan told her that it may not happen if she's not so stubborn in the past. Tianming was alarmed upon hearing it and he concludes that there might be a lot of things that his mother hasn't told him about. Zhu Lan asked if she was hoping the Sanctum Potentate will him her resolve the curse that's why she came back but according to Zai Ying, she did not return here to lift the curse. She explained that she returned because she wants to reside peacefully in Ignispolis and spend his last days with his son. She also asked a favor from Zhu Lan which is to have a residence near Flamilo Science Institute. Zhu Lan answered that they should stay at the Chen Shadow which is close to the institute and in this place, she would be able to take better care of Zai Ying. She glances at Chanaming and believes that Chanaming wanted to take an entrance exam. She asked Chanaming about his current cultivation and Chanaming answered that is at the 7th level best vein stage. Chen Yao suddenly came and overheard them. He makes fun of Chanaming and underestimates Chanaming's ability. He also asked about the visitor and his mother answered that Zai Ying is her sister from the past. Sister, how interesting. With your youthful looks, your sister's with a grandma. At that age, she can literally pass off your grandma. Chen Yao answered which made Tanaming annoyed. Not just that. Chen Yao also told his mother to send away their visitors as it was affecting his mood for the exam. Chen Yao explained that she needs to make herbal soup for his son which is both difficult and expensive to make. She was worried that she's gotten so much older from making it. Don't you see a lot of wrinkles on me? She stated. But Tanaming was irritated with her and sensed that she's been acting so fake from the beginning to now. Zai Ying decided that they should leave as they need to figure out many things from the Ignispolis. When they are not around, Zhu Lan's expression was so happy while thinking that life really is full of twists and turns. Chen Yao asked about the names of their visitor. And when his mother told him, he then remembered that Chanaming is the one who was kicked out of the Flamilo Cyan for assaulting someone. When he heard that his father is coming, he then decided to leave immediately. Zhu Lan's husband named Sage Chen came and asked Zhu Lan about the two people who just left the palace. She was the person you couldn't have that year. Forty years old and she's ugly now. Would you still love her? Zhu Lan answered. Sage Chen was shocked upon hearing it and immediately run and planned to chase Lady Zai Ying. When the night comes, Zai Ying and Tanaming found a place to stay. Tanaming immediately asked his mother about Heaven's Sanctum and the curse that Zhu Lan mentioned but his mother doesn't want to give an answer about it. Tanaming promised his mother that they will enter Heaven's Sanctum and cure his mother's disease no matter how difficult it will be. He then told his mother to rest as he will going to cultivate. When they are outside with his companion beast, Ying Huo asked for some jades to eat but Tanaming cannot give him as they don't have enough money left. They both argued while there is someone by the tree spying on them. Tanaming noticed it. He then stands and the man showed up while saying them to stay quiet. The person was wearing a mask and stated that he knows Tanaming because it was he who obtained Saint Beast War Soul first. According to him, Tanaming's story has ended three years ago. Tragically, Tanaming had no background and support in Ignispolis. 
But, it doesn't contradict the fact that the first person to obtain the Saint Beast War Soul first was you. The person the Saint Beast War Soul acknowledged is also you. The man stated. Upon hearing it, Tanaming asked for advice from him. This person is afraid of disturbing Tanaming's mother and has also been secretly watching him so Tanaming concludes that this person is his mother's friend. He was sure that there was an 80% chance that this person is Sage Chen. He handed a crimson and instructed Tanaming that he should crush it if something emergency happens so he will know where to find them but Tanaming should also remember that he cannot help openly. He was about to leave but Tanaming asked him for a favor and that is to borrow some money and promise that he will return the amount ten times. If he cannot return the money, he's willing to give Ying Huo his payment. The man agreed and give Tanaming a bundle of crimson and then leave the place. Tanaming was surprised that the man let them borrow high quality crimson gems with yellow heavenly patterns. Ying Huo was worried that Tanaming might not be able to pay it back. If I can't then I'll just give you to him. Tanaming answered. The next day, Tanaming go to the Zing and Chen repository, an Ignisbalist shopping center that has various ranked battle art that can be purchased here. Tanaming needs this. Source ranked battle arts cost 50 yellow marked jades while intermediate ranked battle arts cost 200. The advanced ones can go up to thousands. At this rate, Tanaming can only buy a few intermediate ranked. His companion Beast was unhappy that Tanaming is willing to spend all their money so Tanaming said that they needs to spend for his rank and strength. Tanaming has chosen several movement arts for a total of 470 yellow mark J. With these battle arts, here begins his path of revenge. When he was about to pay, several people noticed him. It was Chen Yao and his two other colleagues named Chen Ying and Chen Ding. As Tanaming recalled, Chen Yao doesn't know him the last day they met, but now, they called him by his name. They laughed so hard while remembering that Tanaming is the one who was kicked out. Chen Yao walked toward him and told him not to bring his mother again to their place. Chen Yao, remember that there are some things that should never be said. You never know when you will be regretting them, Tanaming stated. He also warned Chen Yao that the day will come when he can make Chen Yao suffer the consequences. Are you challenging me? Chen Yao asked and Tanaming answered, so what if I am? Chen Ying interrupts and states that Tanaming might be here to steal. For the sake of Sage Chen's face, Tanaming won't fight with his son today. He decided to leave but Chen Yao screams that there is a thief so there are sales lady blocked him. Tanaming shows them a lot of crimsons so they confirmed that Tanaming is not a thief. Because of it, they let Tanaming leave the store together with the battle arts. With the crimson that Tanaming has, he managed to buy a house for his mother and they can now settle down here in Ignispolis for real. Two days later, the registration for the entrance examination of the Flamulo Cyan is begin. As expected, several students wanted to get a slot. When Lai Tanaming is already at the registrar, he confidently gave his name and his original city. His past classmates are the ones who listed names and were shocked that he came back. Tanaming was expecting good treatment from them but this young man ordered him to leave. He was mad at Tanaming because their whole class was bullied at the time that he was kicked out at the Flamulo sign. Tanaming confidently said that he had the order so he was qualified to register. The girl agreed with him and stated that they should do their duty fairly since a lot of people are watching them. She then registered Tanaming's name and Tanaming thanked her and said goodbye to them and entered the examination ground. A lady declared the first stage of assessment to begin. The rules are to drop the blood of the companion beast on the star stone to assess the tier and realm of them. Any beast below the fifth tier regardless of their realm will be eliminated. She then called out the first stage invigilator master Mu Wan, a very strict sexy lady. Chen Ying and Chen Ding saw Tanaming again in this area. They underestimate Tanaming and Tanaming told them to shut up which made Chen Ding mad and grips Tanaming's cloth. Chen Ding threatened Tanaming that he will crush Tanaming to death once he step out of the campus. You wanna fight? Easy. See you in the arena later. Tanaming confidently answered and leave them. Chen Ding smirked and he believed that Tanaming cannot defeat him. When Tanaming lined up, Zhu Lan saw him and underestimate his ability as his cultivation is only a 7th level beast vein. Tanaming is already in front of Master Mu Wan and she thought that the chicken that Tanaming carry is a gift so Tanaming said that this chicken is his new life-bound beast called Blazingly Fiery Birdie. While they are talking Ying Huo is looking at the chief mentor's legs and he was amazed at how smooth it is. Tanaming dropped Ying Huo's blood at the start stone which creates several colors that made the crowd confused. Master Mu Wan smiled and was amazed that Tanaming found a six-star wild beast and formed a blood pact with it. According to her, blood packs with wild beasts have quite a low success rate. Shen declared in front of everyone that Tanaming's life-bound beast is the blazingly fiery birdie, a high-tier six-star life-bound beast at the ninth level of the beast vein stage. As expected, Zhu Lan contradicted and suggested testing it again with a new star stone. The crowd agreed to it so Mu Wan give what they were asking. Tanaming put blood again on the new star stone and the same thing happened which made Zhu Lan annoyed. Tanaming overheard that there is a participant from the Lightning Manor. It was the younger sister of Lin Xiaoding named Lin Xiaoxiao. 
When she put the blood of her companion beast at the star stone, she has two companion beasts which are a high tier 6 star tricolored dark thunderbird and a high tier 6 star vajra berserk ape at the third level spirit source stage. Everyone was impressed that she was already a twin beast master at the age of 15. Tanaming was interested in her upon seeing it. Meanwhile, the lady announced the rules for the second test. Every person must participate in a battle and they could choose their opponents. At this rate, other than chief mentor Mu Wan, there are nine other chief mentors who will be grading the performance. People who have earned their recognition may get the disciples order from one of the chief mentors. If they get multiple, then they can choose from multiple mentors. Even though there are several mentors, Tanaming only wants to choose the chief mentor Mu Wan. Now, the battle begins with Lai Tanaming at the ninth level of the Beast Vein stage against Chen Ding who's at the first level of the Spirit Source stage. Chen Ding summoned his Magic Star Rock High Tier 5 Star Beast and Tanaming do the same thing. Before Ying Huo attacked, he asked first the gender of his opponent. He then rushed to the opponent's beast the same as the Magic Star Rock of Chen Ding. The Magic Star Rock attacked Ying Huo but he managed to block the attack. Chen Ding cast a Source Ranked Battle Art and punched Tanaming right in the head and he thought that Tanaming will be dead by it. He didn't know that it was just a shadow of Tanami. He used intermediate ranked battle art which made Chen Ding surprised as he is only capable to cultivate source ranked battle art. Ying Huo also copied the skill that Tanami did. Chen Ding belittled Tanami so much that he didn't believe that Tanami can learn all of intermediate ranked battle art in just a short amount of time. At this rate, Tanami used the thunder fire chain and hit the enemy's companion beast. Chen Ding was furious that Tanami is beating his opponent beast. Tanami composed his strength while holding the thunder fire chain. He then attacks Chen Ding's face. Chen Ding wanted to fight back but he cannot resist. Chief Mentor Mu Wan blow a pipe as a sign that the battle should end. As to her, the result of their match is obvious. Mentor Mu Wan congratulates Tanaming and welcomed him as her student again. Tanaming is waiting for this moment. Thank you, Chief Mentor. I won't disappoint you. Tanaming answered. The other Chief Mentor still wanted Chen Ding to be their disciple order which made Tanaming confused since he was the one who won. Zio Zio is staring to Tanaming at the arena. She then goes to Heaven's Sanctum to visit her sister-in-law. When she entered, she found King King inside playing an instrument. King King asked how was the exam, and she then answered that she passed. Without any words, she informed King King that she saw the guy from three years ago who tried to assault King King. King King was shocked upon hearing it and she believes that Tanaming doesn't have any life-bound beast. Zio Zio explained that Tanaming got a new one through a blood pact. She offered to King King that she can teach Tanaming a lesson for assaulting her sister-in-law but King King disagreed and told her to let go of the past. When the night comes, King King is writing a wanted assassination in which Tanaming is the target. Whoever can execute him will be granted 1,000 yellow pattern spirit gems. Why Tanaming? How dare you come back? This time, you must die. King King whispered. The next day, Tanaming bids goodbye to his mother as he needs to stay at the academy. When he arrived, he was so excited that he finally came back after three years. He directly goes to the chief mentor Mu Wan's area to ask for some instruction. When he entered, he found the lady sitting, showing her sexy legs. She told Tianming about the pressure she had taken to accept Tianming. Tianming apologizes to her and promises that he will do anything for the lady. Don't do it later, serve me now. Chief mentor Mu Wan said while extending his foot to ask for a massage from Tianming. Tianming feels thrilled but then he realized that this might be a test from the mentor since mentor Mu Wan regularly tests her disciples' determination with beauty. Once the student will not pass the test, he will be beaten and ravaged by her in the most inhumane way. Come and help me massage my shoulders, chief mentor Mu Wan added. Tianming immediately followed her and he senses that this doesn't seem to be a test. Mu Wan also ordered him to take out the little chicken for her to play with. Ying Huo is sleeping comfortably and he was not aware of the happenings. Tianming handed it to Mu Wan and Mu Wan squeezed his cheek so he woke up as he was startled. His eyes sparkled when he saw that the one who played with him was the sexy chief mentor of Tianming. Mu Wan spun Ying Huo but Ying Huo didn't even complain. She also talks about the past and shared the thought that a gentleman can wait 10 years for their revenge. Tianming becomes serious while stating that he waited 3 years for revenge. The revenge for the murder of his life-bound beast is unforgivable for him that's why he cannot wait for 10 years. Mu Wan was observing him and she noticed that Tianming is completely different from before. Tianming squeezed his fist and told his mentor that he came back this time to execute those people who betrayed him. Chief Mentor, you don't have to persuade me anymore. I must avenge Midas, he stated. Mu Wan suddenly hugged him which made him shocked. He then asked his Chief Mentor if he can get more hugs in the future once he will act like this more often. Meanwhile, Tianming goes to the place that was assigned to him by Chief Mentor Mu Wan. 
the lady in charge concludes that Tianming has offended the chief mentor, and that's why he was assigned to this small place. How can that be? Am I that kind of person? Just by looking at me, you can see I'm an upright person, Tianming said. After what he said to the chief mentor, he got bruises and lumps all over his face. He accepted this quarter and realized that this place is perfect for him to cultivate. Before he entered, the lady warned Tianming that the man in the registrar named Fang Zhao may come after him since he offended this man. Tianming turned back and asked about Fang Zhao's level of cultivation. The lady answered that he is now in second level spirit source. After a while, Tianming cultivates immediately while Ying Huo is busy eating some gems. Tianming break through to the ninth level beast's vein. He lies down on his bed as he feels tired cultivating. He has done the first big stage of cultivation and next will be the spirit source stage which is the whole stage that he's looking forward to. He was about to take a rest but someone suddenly kicked the door of his quarter. It was Fang Zhao together with his classmates. Tianming knows them all. He was just calm and greeted them. They blamed Tianming for their class that couldn't lift their heads whenever they went. Are you conceding now? It's too late. Fang Zhao said. No, I'm just saddened to have to beat up people whom I thought were friends. Tianming answered. Fang Zhao was annoyed and summoned his whirlwind zestful crane. Upon seeing it, Tianming whispered to Ying Huo that their opponent's life-bound beast is a female. But then Ying Huo said that it was ugly so he was not interested. After he experienced the gentleness of the chief mentor Mu Wen, his standard is now high. Fang Zhao rushed to them and tried to slash Tianming but Tianming managed to dodge. By his first attack, Tianming confirmed that Fang Zhao is now grown up. Fang Zhao rushed to him again. He jumped and was ready to stab Tianming. Tianming is just waiting for him. He then used his metal fist and punched Fang Zhao. His movement is too fast which made the other students shocked and witnessed that it is a simply one-sided fight. Even Fang Zhao's companion beast is crushed by Ying Huo. Fang Zhao is already beaten up and he wondered how it is possible that Tianming punched him so violently if he's only in the ninth level of the beast's vein. Tianming keeps punching him which he cannot resist and suddenly pee on his pants. I'll return Fang Zhao to you. Remind him to change his pants, Tianming said while throwing Fang Zhao to the other students. All of them move aside as they feel disgusted by Fang Zhao. Fang Zhao and his life-bound beast lie on the ground and feel weak. Hey, aren't you guys going to make your move? Tianming said and all of them were still boasting about their capability. Tianming told them that if they dare to bully the newcomers in the Mu Wan class, it means they don't put the chief master Mu Wan in their eyes at all. They smirked and answered that he should not include chief master Mu Wan since she was not around. They are not aware that mentor Mu Wan is already behind them. What? After you graduated, you didn't put me in your eyes. I think you are itchy. Mu Wan shouted. They looked at her and all of them were shocked. Master, don't get me wrong, we just want to stand up for Fang Zhao, the student said. But Mu Wan is already mad at him that he just climbed up to the intermediate class and dares to domineering in her place. You are not strong enough and you dare complain when you are defeated. She added, she's very furious with all of them and she punished them all which makes them frightened. They all lie down on the ground and Mu Wan warns them that they will feel how tender she is once they will come back again. After the students left, Tianming thanked Master Mu Wan and Mu Wan told him to keep a low profile and prepare well for the battle. Master of the Phoenix Palace Wai Zikun came to Mu Wan and Tianming immediately greeted him. Zikun told him that there will be a qualifying battle three days later and that he should strive harder for a good ranking and grace the Phoenix Palace. He then invites Mu Wan to go and watch a lantern festival. They excuse themselves and Ying Huo concludes that Zikun is courting mentor Mu Wan. But then Tianming said that Mu Wan keeps rejecting Zikun since before. Ying Huo then invites Tianming to go to the Lantern Festival, and Tianming agrees and tells Young Huo that they should look to their mother first. When they came home, they noticed that the door of their house was open even though it was already evening. Upon entering, they saw that their mother covered her whole body in the blanket and was shivering. When Tianming removed the blanket, they saw that their mother was attacked by several blood bugs. Tianming was shocked and mad upon seeing it. Ying Huo immediately removes the blood bugs to Wai Jing's body. Wai Tianming, disciple of Yan Huang Academy, you are finally here. I've been waiting a long time for you, a man from behind said. He also added that someone is paying to buy Tianming's life. When Tianming looked around, he saw a logo and he knew that this man is a killer of the Blood Flower Palace. Any last words? Let's make your death a painful one. The assassin said, Don't get me wrong, I'm just confirming your identity before I assassinate you. Tianming answered. He was furious and vowed that he would rip this enemy to shreds. The assassin smiled and boasted that he's a higher level than Tianming. That's why it was impossible for him that Tianming can defeat him. 
He then summoned his life-bound beast, a giant worm. This is the most formidable opponent that Tianming has ever faced. King Huo is busy removing the bloody hell worms of Wai Jing's body that's why he cannot help Tianming at the moment. But, he's willing to put his life on the line to execute this opponent. The opponent rushed and attacked him but then, Tianming activated his Shadow Intermediate Ranked Battle Art. His opponent was still able to catch him and teased him that he is still lacking enough skills to face a real assassin. He also advised Tianming to stop doing useless struggles and stay on the ground. This assassin is too fast which made Tianming annoyed as he didn't have a chance to make a move since the difference of power is too great. The beast of the opponent suddenly screamed at Tianming. Tianming flew away and the babies of the giant worms rushed to Tianming, sipping his blood. Tianming is not moving so Ying Huo told him to stop pretending to be dead and quickly attack the enemy. If you don't do anything, our mother will die. You still have to avenge the unjust death of your brother. Get up Lai Tianming, get up. Tianming's eyes are flaming and he gets up surrounded by the flame. He breakthroughs to a new realm in a state of near death. The assassin teased him that even if Tianming entered the spirit source realm, the result will not change. Tianming smiled and asked the assassin if he wanted to taste Tianming's blood. According to him, the blood of a primordial chaos beast is not something that can be drunk so easily. You might get burned from the inside out. Tianming added. The assassin is shocked when he realizes that Tianming's blood is made up of lava. Tianming used his beholder eye on the opponent and the opponent is hallucinating sexy ladies without wearing anything. With Tianming's metal hand, he attacked the assassin and wished that this man would die. Ying Huo also does not let the enemy's beast stay alive. After the fight, they immediately check their mother's condition. Wai Jing's body is already weak because of the blood course. Sage Chen suddenly came and apologized that he came late. He received Tianming's signal that's why he came. He acknowledged Tianming for taking good care of the enemy by himself. He didn't expect Tianming would be targeted by the Bloodflower Chamber. Tianming cut him off and told him that his mother had been poisoned by the bloody hell poison. Don't worry, I can remove the poison from your mother, Sage Chen stated. He also added that Wai Jing will be fine after some rest. It's just that, the main problem is her cursed lifespan. Tianming doesn't know what lifespan is and Sage Chen doesn't want to talk about it either if Wai Jing decided not to tell to Tianming. However, if Tianming can get into Heaven's Sanctum, Sage Chen said that Wai Jing might have a chance to get rid of her curse, so the ranking battle is the only chance for Tianming. If you want to cure her curse, the only thing you can do is win the ranking battle. He stated, Tianming thanked him and told Ying Huo that they should go training. But then Ying Huo told him that his body might collapse since he just broke through. According to Sage Chen, Tianming will go crazy if he breaks through so often. He summoned his power to help stabilize Tianming's spirit source realm. The day of the ranking battle came, and Chief Master Mu Wan was waiting for Tianming. She was a little bit annoyed because the ranking battle has already started and yet, Tianming still had not arrived. At the battle arena, Wai Zikin started the program by welcoming everyone. He then declared that the ranking battle officially began. The students of Mu Wan's class are now mad that Tianming is not present at the arena. Good thing that Tianming came. He then apologized to the chief master for being late. Mu Wan kicked him and ordered to go to the stage quickly. But before that, she explained that the ranking battle uses a rating system to rank the students according to the points they learn by defeating their opponents until eliminated. She already chose Tianming's opponent, and Tianming should go straight to the ring of the class and begin. Yes, Chief Mentor, I hope to have a strong opponent to get higher points for me. Tianming answered. When he was in the ring, he did not expect that his opponent was someone he knew. Tianming smiled while thinking that they met here because of fate. His opponent is none other than Liu Kainyong. Kainyong was mass upon seeing him. He refused to battle with Tianming. He complained and accused Tianming of an obscene man who drugged and assaulted women. The crowd was dumbfounded when they heard that it was Lai Tianming. Tianming knows that Kainyong is only scared, and that's why he keeps refusing. Chief Master Mu Wan also rejected what Kian Tang wanted. According to her, his reason for refusing to battle Tianming is invalid. Are you questioning my decision to grant him a disciple's order boy? Mu Wan added, unless one admits defeat, the competition goes ahead as it is supposed to. In case one refuses to battle with their chosen opponent, it will be counted as a defeat of a candidate refusing. Kian Yang's sister and Tianming's father are also present. Louis King shouted to Kian Yang to never back down to avoid disgracing the Lightning Manor. Because of it, Kian Yang changed his mind. As a disciple of Lightning Manor, I must defeat you and put you in your place. Kian Yang stated while rushing to Tianming together with his life-bound beast. As expected, the crowd was cheering only for Kian Yang, and all of them belittled Tianming. 
Looks like you're carrying everyone's hope with you, Tianming said and faced Kian Yong. He then slapped Kian Yong on the cheek which made him fall to the ground and got a bruise on the face. Too bad though, you still couldn't handle one hit from me. Tianming added. Everyone was dumbfounded upon witnessing Kian Yong down with just a single slap from the person they underestimate. Tianming's father was puzzled while Liu King was worried for her brother. At the moment, Lai Tianming got 480 points and is currently ranked 576. Chief Mentor Mu Wan said that Tianming finished the battle too fast and that the other chief mentors can't give him high points if they don't see how skilled he is. Now, Mu Wan needs to give another opponent to Tianming, and according to her, there are several students wanted to beat Tianming up. The current number one in the ranking is Chen Yao. But then, the announcer suddenly announced that Lin Xiao with 950 points is now the new rank first overall. Damn, I haven't even warmed up on the top spot yet and already fell to the second in a flash. Chen Yao uttered out of annoyance. After just a second, another announcement said that Lai Xufen ranked second with total points of 920. Chen Yao is now more annoyed that he also lost the second spot. After how many battles, Tianming was ranked 109 with 700 points, then got the rank 95. He realized that it takes too long to get the first place if he keeps fighting people from low rank so he told his chief mentor Mu Wan that he wanted to directly challenge the rank first which is Lin Xiaoxiao. But then, chief mentor Mu Wan said that what he wants doesn't fit the rules since the difference in points is too big to directly challenge Xiaoxiao. Besides, Xiaox Xiao doesn't have time for him right now because someone with almost as high points as her had already challenged her. The second ranked Lai Xufen is the one who dared to challenge her. As expected, the audience looking forward to their battle since both of them are natural genius. Chief mentor Mu Wan said that Tianming can possibly challenge the first rank by ignoring the points differences. But few people do it because once they lose, their points will also lose. And high rankers often disdain the challenges of the ones with low points. If that's the case, then I'm going to challenge Chen Yao who is in third place. I'm sure that guy will take it on. He hates me so much. Tianming answered. When Chen Yao received Tianming's challenge, he then smiled as he also wanted to revenge for his cousin Chen Ding. And also wanted to get some attention from the crowd. The audience is rooting for Chen Yao and they all expect that Chen Yao will teach Tianming a lesson. They are now in the same ring to fight each other. Chen Yao concludes that he will gain popularity once he will defeat Tianming. He thought that Tianming would fight alone but then Ying Huo came out. Together with Chen Yao's mother, there is a man who called Tianming an arrogant person. He's Chen Hao, Heaven Sanctum's disciple, and Chen Yao's older brother. He expects that his brother will defeat Tianming with two to three moves. According to him, there isn't much suspense in this year's ranking battles. The Heaven Sanctum's disciples already know the ranking and that Chen Yao's rank is practically unchangeable. But, a battle with someone like Tianming has made the battle fascinating. His mother also predicted that his son Chen Yao will make a name for himself after this battle. She was thinking that when Tianming will lose, they will go back to their place. Before the battle starts, Ying Huo teases Chen Yao's beast and even this lion also belittles him. They then rush to each other. Ying Huo confidently faced the golden lion. Chen Yao was about to attack Tianming, but then Tianming cast his clone which made Chen Yao shocked and confused. He was not aware that the real Tianming was already behind him. He was kicked by Tianming on the cheek and he flew away and slammed to the ground. He gets up and was furious at this time so he told himself that he will not hold back anymore. To his surprise, Tianming used the thunder fire chain he stole from Kian Yong. A chain for a mad dog. Isn't it just perfect? Tianming uttered to tease Chen Yao. He pulled the chain and hit Chen Yao several times. Even his beast was also defeated by Ying Huo. The crowd was surprised by Tianming's movement once more, especially when Chen Yao declared that he would surrender. His mother was worried for him and she suddenly fainted which made Chen Huo rattled. He stared at Lai Tianming with the intention to exact revenge soon. Tianming heads to his chief master and Mu Wan was proud that Tianming managed to win the battle against Chen Yao. She also said that Tianming can now rightfully challenge the first place which is Lin Xiaoxiao. Xiaoxiao Xiao has just got done with her battle against Lai Xufen. Xufen was annoyed that he had been defeated. Zikan announced that the five hall overseers have come to a united decision that the position of the prime disciple this year shall be decided between Lin Xiaoxiao from the Hall of Manibests and Lai Tianming from the Hall of Phoenix. A victory will determine who shall be directly admitted to Heaven's Sanctum. The battle will be held tomorrow, and everyone from the Vermilion Bird Royal Clan will present to spectate.
he advises the two to take a rest and prepare for the battle. Sai Oxio can't believe that Tianming would be qualified to fight against her, while Tianming is only thinking about how to win for his mother. Chief Master Mu Wan shows all her support to Tianming. Tianming was too confident that he could win the battle, so Mu Wan told him to stop bragging as it is hard to fight against the twin beastmaster. Tianming also asked if he can bring his mother to watch the battle tomorrow, and Mu Wan casually said yes and is willing to guide Wai Jing so Tianming can focus on the battle. The next day, Tianming brings his mother to the battle arena. Someone announced that the battle will begin shortly. While Tianming was heading to the ring, he saw a familiar lady. Tianming stared at the lady. He was enraged when he saw with his own eyes that it was my kinking, his past girlfriend who betrayed him. I'm happy for you. You can be a good person, so don't make any more mistakes. Kinking said to him, Thank you for the reminder. I definitely won't make any more mistakes. Tianming answered and walked away. Someone suddenly called his name which made him startled. He knows that it was Jiang Failing, the lady he met at Red Twill Mountain. When he looked around, he saw Jiang in a lovely posture. His eyes become big as he feels thrilled looking at the lady. Princess King is also with Jiang and she keeps bad-mouthing Tianming so Jiang told her to be good to Tianming as she sees Tianming's heart is pure and is not the person people think he is. The crowd was cheering when they saw the princess and the number one beauty of the vermilion bird which is Jiang failing. Xia Xiao and Kinking are still behind at Tianming and they wondered why Tianming is very close to the princess. Kinking was also thinking about the rumor she heard that Tianming is Princess King's man. At the time that they met again, Princess King told Tianming to give back her jade pendant. Well, that's too bad, I'm not going to return it. Tianming answered which made Princess King annoyed and pulled Zhang to leave. She was afraid that Zhang will be affected if she was together with Tianming since Tianming has a trashy reputation. Zhang grabbed her hand and she casually answered no as she also wants Tianming to see her newly awakened ability and also wants to support Tianming's battle. According to her, another of the abilities in her nails was unsealed. The ability is somewhat like a spiritual attachment and requires her to attach it to someone's body, and now she will show it with the help of Tianming's body. Not a problem. I'm looking forward to it. Tianming answered. Everyone in the crowd witnessed how close Tianming was to Jiang. That's why they became mad and envious. Jiang prepared to attach to Tianming's body. The blue flame coming from her has been inserted into Tianming to create wings. She ordered Tianming to fly for them to see the level of synchronization. Tianming followed her and everyone saw how he fly away and came back. He landed perfectly and Zhang came out of his body. She was glad that the celestial wings had complete synchronization with the help of Tianming. Jiang and Princess King are disciples of Heaven's Sanctum and Jiang told Tianming that they will meet more often once Tianming will win his battle against Xia Xiao. Okay, for you, I will definitely become the prime disciple. Tianming answered. Everyone gets more envious while Princess King feels embarrassed. Xia Xiao suddenly interrupts them. She told Tianming that if he wanted to be a prime disciple, he needed to see whether Xia Xiao will agree. She believes that Tianming is rude to King King and that's why she doesn't want Tianming to enter Heaven's Sanctum. Tianming told Jiang to go back first since the battle will about to begin. After the lady left, he then answered Xia Xiao. He told Xia Xiao that she doesn't know how to differentiate if who the real shameless people are. If you ever get it back, you'll realize that there are plenty of shameless people in this world and that they're right next to you. He added which made Xia Xiao mad since she only believed in her brother and Mu Kinking enough, you can continue the fight on the stage. A real warrior speaks with their strength, Zikun stated. He then declared the last battle had begun. The victor of this battle will be Heaven's Sanctum Disciple. Today, I will properly teach you a lesson. Xia Xiao uttered and summoned her twin life-bound beast. Ying Huo also comes out and was shocked when he saw that his enemy will be a twin beast master. But then he said, he is not scared as he was born to fight one on two. The final match begins. Xia Xiao and Tianming faced each other in the ring. They both rushed to each other. The ape jumped going towards Tianming and Tianming was just waiting for this beast to land and even called it a useless ape. But then, Mu Wan said that it's a mistake to belittle the ape since the Vajra Berserk ape is a melee berserk live-bound beast. With speed and strength, it even possesses excessive combat experience. Because of its speed, it suddenly disappeared and instantly arrived behind Tianming. He punched Tianming using his super heavy fist. The crowd thought that Tianming would die or be crippled by the ape. But when both Tianming and the ape are visible, they witness that Tianming managed the blow using his left hand. Ying Hua was also fighting the Thunderbird. He didn't expect that this bird would be so good. 
At this time, while Princess King observed Tianming's movement, she admitted that Tianming is really a strong kid. Mu Wan also added that the most tricky thing about Vajra Berserk Ape is that the more they fight, the stronger it gets so Tianming should not fight with it for a long time. Also, the most troublesome at the moment is not the life-bound beast but Lin Xiao, who is looking for an opportunity to move. When Xiao sees an opening, she then gets her roaring thunder bow and the luminous lightning arrow of the lightning manor. She shot Lai Tianming and Tianming was alarmed by it. Everyone can see how powerful the attack is. Even Chief Mentor Mu Wan is afraid that Tianming is unfortunate this time. The chain came out from the smoke and the ape was tied by it. Tianming smiled and acknowledged Xiao's Zai talent at an early age. However, he doesn't want this young girl to win. The crowd and Zia Xiao were shocked that Tianming managed to catch the arrow. Zia Xiao shouted asking to give her arrow back, but then Tianming cut it off. Zia Xiao begged not to do it as this is her brother's birthday present for her. Don't cry, I'll give you another one next time. Tianming answered, it's not the same, I totally despise you. Zia Xiao answered while summoning a new weapon. She rushed to Tianming with the weapon and attacked Tianming. Tianming this time is only dodging. Mu Wan didn't expect Zia Xiao's melee combat ability is stronger than her long-ranged ability. The crowd thought that Tianming would be defeated this time as they saw that Tianming cannot fight back. Zia Xiao jumped towards Tianming while Tianming was holding the chain that was tied to the ape. Tianming smiled as he realized that Zia Xiao's are incredibly powerful, but she can't control them. He pulled the ape and Zia Xiao struck her life-bound beast instead of Tianming. She was shocked and suddenly vomited blood. According to Tianming, the life-bound beast is connected to its owner. Zia Xiao is not seriously injured and has no way of continuing so he asked Zia Xiao to give up. Zia Xiao doesn't want to admit her defeat. Even her Thunderbird was defeated by Ying Huo. When she saw it, she was furious and rushed to Tianming once again. Tianming cast his clone intermediate battle art but Zia Xiao suddenly kneeled and conceded defeat. The crowd can't believe that Tianming is the victor. Zhang was glad that Tianming made it, while Mu Qingqing was very mad and told herself that Tianming should die. The winner has been announced, Lai Tianming is the victor and will be the prime disciple that will enter heaven's sanctum. When he got down at the ring, he saw Mu Qingqing so he asked why Qingqing was angry that he won. There's nothing to brag about beating a kid five years younger than you. And please, don't call me Qingqing. Mu Qingqing stated in an angry tone, What should I call you then? Should I call you Bloodflower? Tianming answered which made Mu Qingqing shocked. Tianming is very sure that Mu Qingqing is the one who sent an assassin from the Bloodflower chamber. Mu Qingqing decided to leave but she whispered to Tianming first that he should be careful to himself. Tianming told her the same and added that she should wash her neck. It's convenient for bleeding. He stated. Mu Qingqing only smiled while thinking that Tianming will be dead soon. When she left, Zhang called Tianming. Tianming smiled widely as he saw the lady again. Jiang congratulated him on becoming the Prime Disciple and she also handed a paper to Tianming which had information about her and Princess King's address in Heaven's Sanctum. Aside from that, she also asked for a hug from Tianming. Tianming feels thrilled but he also wondered why the lady asked for a hug all of a sudden. He was thinking that maybe because he performed well. But then, Jiang said that when she attached Tianming, she could listen to Tianming's heartbeat and hear the voice inside his heart. He could even see the secret that Tianming hid with himself for the past three years. He could see that Tianming had been bullied. She cried as she told this to Tianming so Tianming realized that Zhang only wanted to comfort him. He held Zhang's cheeks and told her not to cry as he felt distressed by the way this lady cry in front of him. He then hugged Zhang and thanked her for her kindness. Brother, even if the whole world is against you, I will stand for you. Zhang stated, everyone feels jealous of Tianming and even Princess King was angry that Zhang is hugging a man in a public place. Wai Jing also saw the sweetness of her son with a beautiful lady. She was emotional while thinking that it was already time that Tianming should find a person for him. When the night comes, Tianming and his mother are celebrating his victory. They also talked about when will Tianming will go to heaven's sanctum. According to him, he needs to go by tomorrow night. But he needs to go first to Chief Mentor Mu Wan since Mu Wan will introduce him to a supernal mentor. Mother, tell me, when I enter Heaven's Sanctum, what do I have to do to help you get rid of your lifespan? Tianming suddenly asked. At this time, Wai Jing shared the information of her curse to Tianming. She said that only the Sanctum Potentate can help her release her lifespan, which is the master of the Flame Yellow Cyan Institute. 
She was once the daughter of the potentate's daughter, but she offended the potentate so Wai Jing concludes that it's impossible that the potentate will help her. Upon hearing it, Tianeming was shocked as he discovered that the heaven of heaven's sanctum is his grandfather. According to Wai Jing, she was pregnant back then but her father doesn't like Lai and Feng. How could that be? If so, how wouldn't be alive now? Tianeming shouted. He promised his mother that he will do everything for his mother's life no matter how difficult it is. Wai Jing was emotional upon hearing it. After they talked, Wai Jing told Tianeming that he should get Mu Yang once he will choose a supernal mentor. Yes mother, I'll remember the name. Tianeming answered. After a while, Tianeming goes to chief mentor Mu Wan's place. Mu Wan did not open the door so Tianeming informed her that he visited to know about his supernal mentor. Mu Wan doesn't give him any response and the only thing Tianeming hears is the sound of someone bathing. Stop knocking, come inside. Mu Wan abruptly said. She then gets up from the bathtub and raped her body with her robe. You came at a really bad time. I was comfortably bathing but ended up interrupted by you. Mu Wan angrily stated. Tianeming was hesitant to continue with what he needed to do but then Ying Huo seemed like doesn't want to leave the room. Chief mentor Mu Wan gets Ying Huo while saying that this chicken is very cute. She then handed Tianeming a paper consisting of a list of a supernal mentors she compiled for Tianeming. Tianeming gets it immediately and shows appreciation to Mu Wan. You're welcome. I'm interested in your young, handsome, and bloodthirsty flesh. Mu Wan answered. Tianeming continues to read the paper as he knows that chief mentor Mu Wan only wants to tease him. Ying Huo shouted that she wanted to do it so Mu Wan got her and squeezed his cheeks again. While Tianeming was checking the list, he noticed that there was someone he was looking for that was not on the list. And that was Mu Yang, the one that his mother mentioned. Chief mentor Mu Wan told her that a person named Mu Yang is his brother and is now the vice potentate in heaven's sanctum. In the next three years, Mu Yang will become the sanctum potentate. Mu Wan also added that her brother stopped accepting new disciples a year ago after the current potentate announced him as the next leader of the sanctum. Upon hearing it, Tianeming realized that this might be the reason why no one dares to mess with chief mentor Mu Yang. Mu Yang told him that the whole Flame Yellow Cyan Institute only has two people with the surname Mu. Tianeming asked her to beg Mu Yang to give him a chance to accept him as his disciple. Mu Wan rejected her favor and stated that he should forget about her brother because the requirements to become Mu Yang's disciple is incredibly hard, and he even rejected the Chancellor's son. But then three years ago, he had taken in a disciple, and Mu Wan thinks Tianeming knew that person. Someone I know. Who is it? Tianeming confusedly asked. To his surprise, Mu Wan told her that the person is no other than Lin Ziaoding, the person who executed his first ever life-bound beast. Tianeming was shocked to believe that the future sanctum potentate is nurturing Lin Ziaoding for making him his only disciple. According to Mu Wan, Ziaoding is the top genius in the entire Vermilion Bird Kingdom with the help of the sacred beast War Soul, and there's no reason not to cultivate him. Although she knows that Tianeming is a sincere young man who would never do such an indecent thing, no one thinks Tianeming could be trusted. Not to mention the fact that Tianeming is Ziaoding's enemy who has such a strong background. She also concludes that it is likely there will be very few or no supernal mentors who would want to accept Tianeming tomorrow. Even so, she advises Tianeming to behave well and get the favor of some supernal mentor. Otherwise, he needs to return to Mu Wan's class and train under her. She is only a chief mentor and can only give limited cultivation resources. Understood. Thank you, chief mentor. Tianeming answered. The next morning, it's time for Tianeming to have a supernal mentor. Wai Zikin told him that there is a high possibility that no one will accept him as a disciple. Tianeming told him that he already understood it. By looking at Zikun, Tianeming realized that Zikun looks a bit like his mom and he started to think that they might be related since Zikun and his mother have the same surname which is Y. Zikun takes Tianeming to the Hall of the Ancestry and he informs all the supernal mentors and the guardian of the ancestry that he bought the prime disciple from the Hall of Phoenix, Lai Tianeming. Prime disciple Lai Tianeming, raise your head. Let the mentors and I take a look at you. The guardian of ancestry stated. Tianeming followed him and the guardian of ancestry told all the supernal mentors that whoever is interested in Lai Tianeming can now take him as a disciple. All the supernal mentors immediately discussed Tianeming. At this moment, Tianeming accepted the fact that no one will choose him. And if it really happens, he planned to just go to Y family to save his mother. The guardian of the ancestry ordered him to show his ability. Otherwise, he knows fully well that his age is almost past the optimal age to train, and it'll be difficult for the supernal mentors to help him. Yes, but I don't have anyone to spar with. How will I show it? Tianeming asked. 
The guardian of ancestry said that there are some disciples in the area. A man named Wai Guohao stepped up and said that he would do it. This man is now in the peak stage of the spirit source realm. Before he proceeded, he asked for his uncle's permission and Zikun allowed him to do so. Since this man calls Zikun his second uncle, and Wai Zikun's brother Wai Tianxong and the Flame Yellow Science Institute Chancellor, he was thinking that this guy who dared to fight him might be the son of the Chancellor. Guohao faced him and Tianming asked him how they would do it. Guohao told him that he can do whatever he wants. He can use all of his strength to show it to the mentors and that he will not fight back. In his mind, since he senses that no one wants to choose Tianming, he planned to play Tianming a little bit, then get rid of him. Good brother Wai, I will take this opportunity well. Tianming answered and was planning to humiliate Guo Hao. He calls out Ying Huo and informs him not to be careless since Guo Hao is really a stronger disciple than him. They then rush to Guo Hao while holding the Thunder Fire Chain. The Supernal Master and the Guardian of the Ancestry accept that Tianming also has the skill, and that he defeated Xia Xiao purely by his talent. Ying Huo said that he would try to attack first but then, he flew away in just one slap of Guo Hao. Even with how fast Tianming was, he was still able to see Tianming's movement. Tianming tied Guo Hao using the Thunder Fire Chain but Guo Hao is very calm in this situation. He cast his power and the chain broke into pieces which made Tianming shocked. Sorry, I broke your chain, I didn't expect it to be so fragile. Guo Hao uttered. Ying Huo blew a fire to Guo Hao and Guo Hao managed to smile as he thought that it would not work on him. Tianming smiled as he already knew what would happen. Guo Hao rattled since he couldn't put out the fire. The guardian of the ancestry ordered him to take off his clothes and Guo Hao followed him. At this rate, Tianming had succeeded, and Guo Hao really felt that he was humiliated. Ying Huo laughed at this situation and even teased him to also take off his trousers too. Guo Hao is now enraged as he feels embarrassed. He then challenges Tianming to continue the battle. There's no need. You broke my weapon and I already showed my strongest ability. I'm out of tricks. Tianming answered. Zikan also told Guo Hao to stand down. He then asked the disciple what Tianming show is already enough for them. The guarding of the ancestry give a comment to Tianming stating that Tianming's life-bound beast's spirit source ability is good. But he also added that everything else Tianming shows is not worth mentioning. He asked the disciple again who does want Tianming but they are still discussing. As expected, all of the supernal mentors don't want to accept Tianming. Tianming accepts it as he already expects it to happen. Seriously, you all are chasing away the prime disciple, who made his way here by winning the ranking battle. Breaking our words like this, what's this supposed to imply about heaven's sanctum? Someone suddenly stated. Zikun and all of the supernal mentors greeted this man and they called him a vice potentate. Upon hearing it, Tianming concludes that this person is Mu Yang. Mu Yang told everyone that heaven's sanctum always upheld fairness, and prime disciple has always had the right to join heaven's sanctum. This is the heaven's sanctum must uphold, so he doesn't quite approve of the supernal mentors sending away the prime disciple today. The supernal mentors agreed with him. However, they still complain that they all have their own difficulties. Tianming is just listening to them and observing Mu Yang. Since no one wants to accept, then, we'll let the prime disciple choose. Mu Yang declared. He then interviews Tianming and lets him choose the supernal master who can guide him during his days in heaven's sanctum. Tianming declined his offer as he doesn't want to force anyone from these supernal masters. Mu Yang told Tianming that he will lose the chance to join heaven's sanctum. But then Tianming told everyone that he doesn't want to be a disciple of a supernal mentor. Instead, he wanted to be a disciple of the vice potentate. Mu Yang was surprised upon hearing it. And as expected, the supernal mentor laughed at him and called him whimsical. Since Tianming had no interest in any supernal mentors, and Mu Yang declared that he won't be going back to the institute, then when he finds Tianming qualified, he will accept this bond of master disciple with Tianming and that he will easily crush Guo Hao. Until then, Tianming will be in heaven's sanctum to cultivate for his own. Tianming shows appreciation to him. He also agreed that cell cultivation is the best option for him. He knows that he can crush Guo Hao after he cultivates for some more days. Mu Yang dismissed them all but Tianming asked him to talk privately. When they arrived in an area where no one can hear them, Tianming asked Mu Yang if he remembered an old friend. Mu Yang doesn't have an idea so Tianming mentioned his mother's name. Mu Yang was surprised upon hearing it. He suddenly choked Tianming as he concluded that Tianming will use Wai Jing to threaten him. Tianming told him that Wai Jing is his mother which made Mu Yang more shocked and realized that Tianming looks familiar when he first saw him. Don't get excited, Vice Potentate. My shoulders are going to be crushed. Please let go. Tianming uttered as Mu Yang squeezed him. Sorry.
sorry, I lost my composure. Normally I'm very calm. Mu Yang answered and let go of Tianeming. Tianeming shared with Mu Yang that his mother told him that the only one who can save her is inside heaven's sanctum. Mu Yang was clueless so Tianeming told him that his mother has a lifespan. He also informed Mu Yang that Wai Jing got it when Tianeming was born, which means it was already 20 years ago. Mu Yang was disappointed that Wai Jing didn't lower her head for 20 years. He also asked if Lai Yongfeng is still together with Wai Jing. Tianeming said that Lai Yongfeng abandoned him and his mother and is now a proud member of the Lightning Manor. Mu Yang was mad upon hearing it, and he wanted Lai Yongfeng to be dead. At this point, Tianeming asked Mu Yang to bring him to the Sanctum Potentate since Wai Jing told him that the Sanctum Potentate is the one who can help her get rid of her lifespan. Mu Yang warned him that the Potentate will not help and might drive Tianeming and Wai Jing out of the city. Tianeming doesn't care even if it costs his life. What's important for him is to help his mother. All right, I'll take you there. I won't let them kill you. Mu Yang answered. At the area of the Sanctum Potentate, there is a celebration. It was the birthday of Wai Tiangsheng's daughter named Wai Lingxuan. She wished for her birthday that the time would pass slower so that his grandfather would stay young forever and accompany her. Her grandfather is no other than Wai Tiang King, Heaven's Sanctum Potentate, Wai Jing's father, and Mu Yang's master. He promised his granddaughter that he will give her a gift later. That's why other kids also wanted to receive gifts from him. Because of this, his sons noticed that he smiled because of the children. While they are celebrating, Tianeming and Mu Yang arrived. Since there is a celebration happening, Mu Yang was hesitant to proceed. Wai Tian King noticed Tianeming. Tianeming greeted him and told him that he was there to ask the potentate to save his mother. Wai Tian King asked for the name of his mother. Tianeming answered honestly and told him that his mother got a life span 20 years ago, and that she doesn't have much time left. 20 years, which means she would rather endure 20 years than turn back. Wai Tian King stated. Zikan was surprised that Lai Tianeming is the son of his sister. Wai Tian King was mad and ordered to evict Tianeming and Wai Jing. Mu Yang tried to calm Wai Tian King, but Tianeming interrupts by saying to Wai Tian King that he doesn't deserve to be a father. Everyone was mad to what he said. Wai Tian King asked him to repeat the words he stated, but then Mu Yang covered Tianeming's mouth to stop him from saying such words. He grabbed Tianeming to leave, but Wai Tian King said that he changed his mind. Tianeming's eyes were surprised as he thought that it will be good news. We can't let Wai Jing embarrass us. I will not let you run around claiming yourself as a member of the Wai clan. I want them imprisoned. If she dies, she must die in this manner. Wai Tian King stated. He also told Tianeming that Tianeming should also die in the Wai manner. And why should I claim to be part of the clan? Is it supposed to be an honor? Tianeming answered. Mu Yang was disappointed that Tianeming keeps answering to the Sanctum Potentate. Now, Wai Tian King is very furious and ordered Tiang Song to clean the rainforest pavilion and make it out of bounds to throw Wai Jing and Tianming there. Understood father, Tiang Song answered. Wai Tian King also told him that he should do it together with Mu Yang. He then left which made his granddaughter and son annoyed with Lai Tianming. They feel embarrassed that Tianming is their relative. Tiang Song and Zikan told Mu Yang that he should say it first to them. But then, Mu Yang told them not to worry. As for him, the Sanctum Potentate doesn't drive them away. But rather, he concludes that this is the way to bring Tianming and Wai Jing back to Wai Manor. Zikan did not answer about it. He decided to leave and look for Mu Wan to have a drink with. Mu Wan told Tiang Song that he will bring Wai Jing back and lock her up in the rainforest pavilion. And he will be the one to explain it to Wai Tiang Kang. So be it. There is nothing else we can do. Tiang Song answered. Mu Yang and Tianming leave. Mu Yang is not sure that the Sanctum Potentate will help Wai Jing but there is a possibility for him if given the opportunity. He knows his master very well, that's why he can say this. Given the opportunity. What opportunity? Tianeming asked but Mu Yang didn't give an answer. That old codger is pretty stubborn. Someday, I'll pluck that beard, hair by hair, and then I'll strip off his underpants and set them on fire. Ying Huo commented. Mu Yang grabbed Ying Huo and since Ying Huo can take it, he guessed that Ying Huo is part of the parrot bloodline. Tianeming asked him again about what the opportunity is. And Mu Yang answered that Wai Jing and Tiang Kang's relationships depend on Lai Tianeming. Tianeming was confused about what he should do. And Mu Yang told him that he should become stronger. As per Mu Yang, he needs to get stronger in a short period of time, strong enough to get everyone's attention. If he can make the Sanctum Potentate be impressed by him, Wai Jing will be saved. He also added that the Wai brothers are not interested in being the master of the manor. The Wai family's young generation has mediocre qualifications, which is Wai Tiang Kang's condition. Master likes hard-working and motivated people, he stated. In other words, Tianeming needs to get the old man to approve of him. 
Not just that, but also to make Wai Tiang king like him. Then you will be my mentor, master. Tianeming asked. Nominally, not yet. But I will help you. Mu Yang answered and handed a grade 5 weapon blazing dragon chain blade to Tianeming since he saw that Tianeming's weapon had been destroyed. Tianeming tried the weapon and he was amazed since this weapon is so expensive. Before they parted ways, Mu Yang told him that we'll go to the Sanctum Potentate to convince him to let Tianeming go to Pagoda and cultivate. From now on, he's sincere about taking good care of Wai Jing. The Flame Yellow Pagoda is a bit familiar to Tianeming. He then realized that it was time for him to go to Jiang Failing. Meanwhile, Tianeming arrived at the place that Jiang told him. He was checking the paper that Jiang gave him. When he knocked on the door, Jiang opened it immediately. I knew you'd be here, Jiang said with a wide smile on her face. Tianeming instantly asked her to help him cultivate. Princess King suddenly appeared and was annoyed that Tianeming arrived at their place. Ying Huo comes out and informs Princess King that they will take Jiang to the Flame Yellow Pagoda. Princess King was annoyed and squeezed Ying Huo. Oh, harder. Squeeze me more. Ying Huo uttered. Princess King disagreed that Tianeming will bring Jiang as she knows that Tianeming will certainly be bullied. Tianeming said that with the jade pendant that Princess King gave him, nobody will dare to bully them. Instead of letting Tianeming, Princess King asked him to give back the pendant. Tianeming doesn't want to give it back but Ying Huo told Princess King that he will tell her where the pendant is as long as the princess will squeeze him. Princess King followed what Ying Huo said, inside the inner pocket of his pants, so, you just need to use your hands to pull it out. Ying Huo answered, which made Princess King annoyed and squeezed him more. Tianeming and Zhang decided to leave. Tianeming concludes that Zhang can help him with his cultivation and Zhang agrees to him since they can complete spiritual attachment every time. According to Zhang, a complete spiritual attachment will make Tianeming stronger, and she can only attach to Tianeming when he is at the complete level. Tianeming suggested using the wings once more and Zhang did it right away. Tianeming flies and they both feel each heartbeat this time. It resonates so Jiang concludes that the so-called heart and soul is like this. While Tianeming is with Jiang, Mu Yang directly goes to the Sanctum Potentate. He informed his master that he already brought Wai Jing back to their manor, and no one dares to disturb her recuperation. He also informed that he sent Lai Tianeming to the Flame Yellow Pagoda to cultivate. Wai Tianqing heard about Tianeming's previous issue so Mu Yang told him that this matter is related to his disciple Lin Xiaoding. He's also afraid that there's something else going on. The boy's eyes were firm and defiant. He is not a thief. You must investigate and find it out. Wai Tian King stated, Yes master, the truth will come out. Mu Yang answered. Meanwhile, Tianeming and Zhang arrived at the Flame Yellow Pagoda. It is a huge tower and it's the first time that Tianeming saw this place. Tianeming told Zhang that they should go there more often but then, Zhang said that Princess King will get jealous. Jealous? Does she like me that much? She's even getting jealous now. Tianeming answered, which made Zhang annoyed because of how he assumed. Ying Huo also interrupts them by saying that Zhang and Princess King are in a relationship. Zhang slapped him out of annoyance. When they entered the pagoda, several people saw Zhang together with Lai Tianeming. Guo Hao and Ling Xuan were also there and were annoyed that their grandfather let Tianeming go in this place. Both of them wanted to prove that Tianeming is a despicable guy. Ling Xuan headed her way to Tianeming and Zhang. Tianeming already knows her and Zhang asked Ling Xuan about what she needs. Ling Xuan suddenly shouted, asking Zhang not to trust Tianeming. And because of what she said, everyone agreed with her and wanted Tianeming to leave. I can judge for myself who's good and who's bad. Zhang answered. She then held Tianeming's shoulder and called everyone ugly because of how they see Tianeming. She also told them that she likes being with Tianeming. Everyone was dumbfounded upon hearing it. I may not have morals or talent, but failing will still like me. Can't deal with it. Bite me. Tianeming uttered. They then stare at each other and form a heart using their hands while Zhang said that their hearts are connected. All of the people inside the parola can't believe that Zhang still wanted to be with Tianeming despite the issue he had. They were about to leave them all in anger and Ling Xuan concludes that Tianeming used some underhanded means to make Zhang ignore her reputation for him. She stopped Tianeming as he wanted to uncover Tianeming's despicable nature. How stubborn. Being considerate of the fact that you're from the Y family, I'm helping you save face here. If you don't stop, then don't blame me for being rude later. Tianeming answered. At this point, Ling Xuan is full of hatred toward him. She summoned her cultivation and was ready to fight Lai Tianeming. Since Ling Xuan doesn't want to stop, Zhang attaches to Tianeming and doesn't want to step back. Everyone belittled Tianeming for having guts fighting against Ling Xuan despite having lower cultivation than Ling Xuan. Someone suddenly stopped them. It was an old woman and according to her, fighting is prohibited in the Flame Yellow Pagoda, otherwise, both of them will be expelled. 
Xu's kinship, Princess King and Wai Lingxuan's supernal mentor. Lingxuan was rattled upon seeing her and she lied that she was not fighting with Tianming. The old lady informed her that she should not waste her energy and just focus on ascending to the seventh level. Before she left, she told everyone to continue cultivating. And Tianming also invites Zhang to cultivate together. Kin Shi takes a glance at Tianming while thinking that Tianming really causes trouble wherever he goes. After the scene, Tianming and Zhang continued roaming the place. Inside has a huge flame yellow rock. This is where everyone cultivates. Tianming heard of this place when he was just a low rank disciple. The flame yellow rock was said to be placed here by their ancestors on the day the institute was first established. The flame yellow rock took in an endless amount of the spiritual energy of heaven and earth. This spiritual energy can help them with their cultivation. The rock has divided everyone here into five different synchronization level rings based on the distance. Those at level 1 are the furthest away from the rock, and will therefore receive the least benefits from the rock. As for those at level 5, which is the highest possible synchronization level, they are said to have perfect synchronization with the rock, meaning that they can cultivate right beside the rock. It will depend on their endurance to enter level 5. As per Jiang, the spiritual energy of heaven and earth is way too fierce. Not everyone can handle it. The closer they are, the more dangerous it is for them. They might even lose their life to the spiritual energy storm. So basically, however large their bowl is, that's how much rice they should get. They should not get too much, otherwise, they cannot handle it. Jiang also added that there are essentially no people who have perfect synchronization with the rock. Throughout the sanctum's history, there has never been one. The highest level to have been reached is three. And the person that reached this level is the person that Lai Tianming hated the most. Tianming was mad that Lai Ziyoding had reached level three so he asked Jiang to help him attempt to level three. I think it'll be better for us to take it step by step. Jiang answered. Ling Xuan overheard them and made fun of Tianming for planning to challenge level three. She can barely cultivate in the third ring so she concludes that Tianming can't possibly achieve what he wanted. If you can cultivate at level 3, I'll kneel and lick your shoes. She added, you again. There's no way to get rid of you, ha. Huh? Tianming uttered. Ling Xuan smiled and told Tianming that his mother deserved to have lifespan. She was planning in her mind to use the flame yellow rock. She will provoke Tianming to enter the third ring as she knows that even if Tianming will not die, he will be crippled. Jiang feels sad that Ling Xuan publicly humiliated Tianming's mother. But then, Tianming still wanted to continue his plan to reach level 3. You said that if I have reached level 3 synchronization, you'll lick my boots clean. Do you dare to do that in front of everyone? Tianming asked. Ling Xuan confirmed it to everyone and as expected, people underestimate Tianming again. Just prepare yourself to lick my shoes. Tianming uttered. Ling Xuan told him that he must endure it himself for half an hour and that Jiang failing should not help him. Of course, just wait to lick my shoes clean. Tianming answered. Jiang was worried for him so he told Jiang not to worry since if he loses, they both will be punished together. But then, Jiang disagreed and said that she will not bet anything. The crowd gossips about him and underestimates him again for challenging Ling Xuan. They even talk about the past issue of Tianming. Tianming heads to the flame yellow rock while everyone is watching him. He trusted Ying Huo to win the challenge. He believes in Ying Huo's eternal infernal body and codex. Ying Huo was also calm and wanted to enter and get this over with. Tianming reminded him not to cause a scene right away. Reaching the fourth ring is enough for him. Half an hour for Ying Huo is too little. He wanted to show everyone how a real man can last in flame yellow rock. Everyone already noticed that Tianming is heading to the fourth ring instead of the third ring. Ling Xuan smiled as she expected that Tianming would lose, especially since he chose the fourth ring. He stands at the fourth ring and starts cultivating. At this point, Ling Xuan concludes that Tianming is pretending to endure longer on the fourth right. Tianming and Ying Huo were so focused and Zhang sensed that Tianming synchronized with the flame yellow rock. Tianming stayed minutes on the fourth ring and Ling Xuan believes that something might happen once Tianming will still continue. She didn't know that Tianming expected no less from the flame yellow rock, which is known for being an extraordinary cultivating place. In just a short period of time, he already feels the benefits. He was very sure that half an hour is just a short time. After 30 minutes, he was done cultivating at the fourth ring. He then raises his foot to inform Ling Xuan about the deal. Ling Xuan was embarrassed at this point, and every man said that they will acknowledge that Tianming won today. But, they asked not to trouble Ling Xuan. Tianming laughed that the so-called Flame Yellow Cyan Institute Chancellor's daughter publicly broke her promise in front of so many people. Fine, whatever, some people don't deserve to be part of the Y family. 
he said which made the girl annoyed and was about to cry. Tianming told her that she should keep her end of the bet. Ling Xuan didn't want to do it but Ying Huo suddenly rushed to her foot and dragged her to make her fall. Her face was exactly facing Tianming's foot. Tianming teases her because she got a nosebleed and there's blood on Tianming's boots. Everyone was dumbfounded by what they witnessed. Ling Xuan cried so loud and ran away while saying that Tianming should wait for her revenge soon. Since the kid is not around, Tianming and Zhang decided to start cultivating. They both got the idea that Zhang will attach to Tianming to challenge perfect synchronization with the flame yellow rock. Everyone witnessed that they were heading to challenge the fifth level of the flame yellow rock. Zhang immediately attached Tianming. Tianming is standing exactly in front of the rock. He then touched the rock with his metal arm and he feels that the spiritual flames here are extremely fierce. He believes that if Zhang did not help him, he might have been torn apart. Zhang noticed that Tianming's left arm had become a beast claw. Tianming told her that it was a long story so he will tell it to Zhang another day. For now, they need to focus. He already felt the pain. Even Zhang couldn't take the pressure any longer. But then, Tianming told her to endure the pain. What are you doing? One second you're flirting and the next you're moaning. You're sweating all over too. Those who don't know what you're doing would think you guys are doing something else. Ying Huo stated. Tianming doesn't have time to joke around. He asked Ying Huo to help them endure it. Ying Huo followed him, but to his surprise, he saw the spiritual energy storm. Ying Huo tried to stop Tianming, but Tianming still wanted to endure the pain and take for another half an hour. Zhang also started to feel weak. But Tianming doesn't want to surrender and even told her to concentrate her energy behind Tianming and allow him to face it. He's very confident that he can endure it. The spiritual energy storm is coming out. People panicked and run away when they saw it. They believe that Tianming is already dead because of it. Mu Yang was outside his chamber when he noticed that there was something bright at the flame yellow pagoda. He then thinks that someone has the courage to challenge perfect synchronization. After how many minutes, Tianming managed to come out alive which made all the people surprised. Mu Yang and all the master have also come to check about what happened with the flame yellow rock. All I did was choosing a fitting place to cultivate. Why do all of the supernal mentors and chief mentors look shocked? Tianming stated. Mu Yang asked him how he successfully challenged the perfect synchronization and Tianming casually answered that he only relies on his innate talent which none of the supernal mentors acknowledge. All of the masters have regret not choosing Tianming as their disciple. And now, they believe that it's not impossible for Tianming to become a disciple of Mu Yang. Not bad. Perfect synchronization is enough to have your name go down in Flame Yellow Cyan Institute history. Mu Yang said. Tianming only thanked him and bid goodbye to them as he needed to send back Zhang. Mu Yang reminded him to visit him once he will return since he has some words to say to Tianming. When they arrived, Princess King was mad at Tianming for taking Zhang. They fight again in front of Zhang so Zhang told them to stop. Although you're a farmer, if you're willing to serve the Vermilion Bird Clan, I'll make sure to not treat you unfairly. Princess King said and Tianming agreed instantly which Princess King did not expect. Ying Huo told her that Tianming obviously wanted to become a prince. Princess King was thrilled upon hearing it and she said that she needs to talk about it to her father first. Child, you're overthinking. He's not marrying you, but Princess Zhang failing. Ying Huo stated. To make them quiet, Tianming told them that Zhang and King are his two friends. He promised that no matter what happens, he's willing to put his life on the line for them. Ying Huo interrupts him to ask if it's really the only thing he wanted. Tianming punched him for ruining his pledge of loyalty to both of the ladies. Princess King informed Tianming that she will leave for some time and that he should protect Zhang failing. If she comes back and discovers that Tianming did something bad, she's willing to get someone to capture Tianming and make him a eunuch. Tianming promised her that he will take good care of Zhang. But deep inside, he's very excited that he and Zhang can go on unlimited dates. He then asked where Princess King will go, and Zhang told him that King is going to the Abyssal Battlefield. Since it's not right to discuss this matter in their place, she told Tianming that he can ask the Vice Potentate about this matter. Meanwhile, Tianming goes to the Vice Potentate and he instantly asks about the Abyssal Battlefield as Zhang told him. According to Mu Yang, this generation's most talented disciples from different institutes compete in the Abyssal Battlefield. The winner will receive a plethora of prizes. The Abyssal Battlefield also contains plenty of resources. However, there's a cultivation level requirement and spots are limited. I see. So there aren't any more spots, right? Tianming answered. Aside from that, Mu Yang told him that he can look for Mu Yang if he will face any other in cultivating. 
Tianming thanked him and told him that he was looking for some advanced source-ranked battle arts. Mu Yang is willing to bring him to the Hall of Combat so he can pick for himself. The Hall of Combat was where the Sanctum stored its battle arts. The Hall of Combat was home to some of the most unique and powerful arts of all levels. Only the most outstanding geniuses were qualified to choose a battle art from here. When they arrived, the attendant named Yuanji was ordered by Mu Yang to find three advanced source-ranked battle arts. Tianeming smiled since others can choose once while he was allowed to choose three. Five hours later, Tianeming finally chose three battle arts so Mu Yang asked him which three he chose. After Tianeming's careful selection, he was most satisfied with the three battle arts he chose. The first art was a movement art named Flaming Shadow Flash. Once mastered, he would be like a flaming shadow that could appear anywhere in the blink of an eye. The second art was a boxing art named Three Spring Heavy Strikes. This art was made up of three different stances, each blow is more powerful than the last one. The third art was a whip art named Soulless Seven Howls. Its user could vibrate the whip to produce a howling sound that could mentally affect the opponent. The boxing art can increase his beast arm's strength. The whip art combined with a bewildering eye will create an attack that encompasses both sight and hearing. Tianeming senses that he will become invincible. He can't wait to start cultivating. All of the battle arts Tianeming mentioned are advanced battle arts, especially the last one. According to Mu Yong, if he can master 50%, it'll be enough to keep his head up at Heaven's Sanctum. I will work hard, Tianeming replied but deep inside, he believed that he can master the battle arts completely. Mu Yong leaves and tells him that if he needs something, he can find Mu Yong at the manor. Tianeming then rushed to Zhang failing to ask for some help cultivating. But then, he realized that it was already dark and it was not appropriate to look for the lady in the middle of the night so he decided to continue it by tomorrow. When he came home, he was cultivating by himself and he senses an egg moving in his life-bound space. He then grabs the egg and wonders if it will hatch sooner. Don't ask, he's super lazy. It has long past his expected hatching time. He's just keeping himself in there, Yin Huo stated. He also added that someone inside the egg is just sleeping the entire time so he warned Tianeming not to expect too much. He then gives something to Tianeming as a present. It's Princess King's undergarment that he stole when the lady wasn't looking. He believes that Tianeming wants it. Upon seeing it, Tianeming was annoyed at him but then, Ying Huo still had the guts to order Tianeming to smell it as it smelled something nice for him. I don't believe you. Let me see. Tianeming answered and smelled the undergarment of Princess King. After it, he then ordered Ying Huo to burn it as he was afraid that Princess King would find out and would make him a eunuch. The next day, he goes to Jiang and knocks on the door. The one who opens is Princess King and she's annoyed that Tianeming came to their place once again. Tianeming asked her about Jiang. He then went inside without asking for permission, and he was trying to be careful to hide that they stole Prince King's undergarment. Bro, there was a phoenix stitched into the red cloth you wiped to your nose yesterday. Is it Princess King's? Ying suddenly uttered which made Princess King furious and beat Tianeming. He was full of bruises on his face and he told Princess King that she was here to ask Jing to cultivate with him. Princess King warned Zhang not to come with Tianeming but Zhang trusted Tianeming so much. They then both run together while Princess King tries to chase them. Meanwhile, Zhang and Tianeming arrived at the Flame Yellow Pagoda. Tianeming asked the lady about the slot of the Abyssal Battlefield but then Zhang said that it was a known fact. She asked Tianeming if he heard about heavenly septuplets. But then, Tianeming was clueless so Zhang explained that it's the seven highest ranked disciples in heaven's sanctum. First is the person Tianeming hated the most, Lai Ziyoding from the Lightning Manor. Mo Lin from the Occult Athenaeum. Tianeming knows Mo Lin because he already met him when he visited the Hall of Combat. This person helped him out. The next one is Princess Zhang Kingluan from the Vermilion Bird Clan. Tianeming did not expect that she was too strong and ranked third. The fourth one is Zing Kue from Zing and Chen's Merchantry. Fifth is Wai Guohao from the Wai Manor. Ranked sixth is Chen Hao from Zing and Chen's Merchantry. And lastly, Mu Qingqing from the Lightning Manor. Upon hearing it, Tianeming was surprised that Mu Qingqing is part of the seven highest ranked disciples. According to Zhang, Qingqing recently became the seventh. Before, she has always ranked after. This woman pursues her ambitions and has reached so high already. Tianeming is still mad at her for using him as a stepping stone. There were a total of six positions available for the Abyssal Beast Trials as per Jiang, so other than Lin Ziyoding who already had a place confirmed for him. The rest of the Heavenly Septuplets would fill in those positions. Ultimately, Heaven's Elysium will only accept one person. To small nations like them, Heaven's Elysium is an existence comparable to God. Vermilion is just one of the many nations of the Flame Yellow Continent. There are many other nations like them. 
Heaven's Elysium is heaven's sanctum of the entire flame yellow continent. Every single flame yellow science institute on the continent and heaven's sanctums were built by heaven's Elysium. Even their sanctum is just one of its many outposts. That means that the disciples from other nations will also participate in abyssal battlefield. According to Jiang, the competition is fierce since it's a one-in-a-lifetime opportunity to reach the sky. Although it has nothing to do with Xianaming, knowing it makes him even more motivated to cultivate. They then rush to the highest level to cultivate. Looking at him makes Chen Hao mad because Tianeming is the one who beat his brother. There are also a lot of people irritated by Tianeming, and even Ling Xuan and Guo Hao hated him the most. Tianeming started cultivating with the help of Jiang. The lady hopes that Tianeming can participate in the abyssal battlefield too. That way, she can attach herself to Tianeming the entire time. And she is able to help Princess King since she's worried about the lady. Tianeming feels down since he cannot participate in his current cultivation. The only thing he can do now is to use the flame yellow rock to become strong. Don't blame yourself, big brother. Out of everyone I know, you improve at the quickest speed. Jiang replied. But then, Tianeming wanted to be quicker. He felt something the first time he touched the flame yellow rock. According to him, the flame yellow rock is alive. He has been alone here for centuries. He doesn't want to be worshipped by hundreds and thousands of people. The rock wanted to connect with the people and talk with them. But no one understands. And no one dared. It was Tianeming all guessed but he wanted to try it. He removes the bandage that was covered into his metal arm. You guys can see him as a god. But I can see him as a cultivating partner. Tianeming uttered. His eyes and hands are flaming. He wanted to practice with the flame yellow rock. He punched the rock and it was like a great strength happened. All the people inside noticed that the rock produced a light that they had never seen before. Tianeming smiled because his plan successfully worked. Just like what Tianeming expected, the flame yellow stone is interacting with it. It changes. He then did it again and tried multiple times as he was enjoying it. Everyone is rushing to the supernal mentors and reports Tianeming for attacking the flame yellow stone. They are expecting Tianeming will die there. One hour later, Tianeming was so tired that he decided to take a break. When he came out, he saw the people and was shocked that he still managed to stay alive. The masters were also surprised that he have gained two levels at once. Since the people were gossiping about him, Jiang suggested that they should leave. Tianeming agreed as he also wanted to check on his mother. He and Huo suddenly interrupted by saying that Tianeming wanted to introduce Jiang failing to his mother. Big brother, what should I bring to visit Aunt Jing? Jiang asked. But then, Tianeming tapped her head and told her not to bother. You will be the best gift she can ever receive. Tianeming answered which made Zhang thrilled. Ying Huo interrupts them once again because everyone is looking at them with anger at Lai Tianeming. They both rush to go out. At the manor, Sage Chen and Mu Yang are playing something. A subordinate of Mu Yang came to inform him that Tianeming coincidentally gained two levels at once while punching the flame yellow stone, causing a commotion. Mu Yang laughed and was able to always surprise them and even Sage Chen feels that Tianeming is an interesting man. Because of it, he's willing to let Tianeming lend some more money to certainly reap a profit. Mu Yang was confused upon hearing it so Sage Chen told him the story of why Tianeming borrowed some money from him. Going back to Tianeming and Jiang, they were almost at the place where Wai Jing stayed. But then, they noticed that there were people blocking the way to the bridge. Tianeming smiled when he saw the faces of the people. You're finally back Lai Tianeming. If we don't teach you a lesson, we're not qualified to be part of the Wai family, Ling Xuan stated. She's together with Guo Hao and two other men. They wanted to take revenge on Tianeming for humiliating Ling Xuan. There's no way I'll apologize, who's going first? Bring it. I'll teach you what respect is, Tianeming uttered. The men laughed and belittled him. Ling Xuan wanted him to kneel before her and lick her shoes every day. She then summoned her six-winged gold rug while she grips into her sword. Tianeming told Zhang that they will not fight. Instead, Ying Huo himself will be enough to defeat their enemy. Ling Xuan's beast blows out a fire and it has a fierce fire coming out. Tianeming grabbed Ying Huo and he found out that Ying Huo is still sleeping. I was dreaming about a chick. Ying Huo answered. Tianeming threw him away, going to the opponent. Upon seeing it, the three three men were jaw-dropping that Tianeming literally threw his life-bound beast to the flame. When Ying Huo and Ling Xuan's beast collided, there was a huge explosion. You disturbed my sleep, and you're using low-grade fire to burn me. Do you not know that I'm the ancestor of all fire affinity beasts? So it was you who disturbed me. You're tired of living, huh? Ying Huo uttered and attacked the opponent by himself. Ling Xuan and Guo Hao witnessed how Ling Xuan's life-bound beast was humiliated by Ying Huo, and immediately defeated in a short period of time. 
After defeating the six-winged gold rug, Ying Huo then rushed to Lingxuan. Lingxuan prepared herself and boasted that she didn't use all of her powers yet. Ying Huo was not afraid to attack Lingxuan. Lingxuan struggled so Guo Hao helped her and blocked Ying Huo's attack. Ying Huo goes back to Tianeming as he remembered that Guo Hao is the man who went nude because of Ying Huo's flame that was burned when he dared to challenge Tianeming. At this point, Guo Hao wanted to fight against Tianeming. He also remembered what Mu Yang said that if Tianeming will defeat him, Tianeming will be Mu Yang's disciple. Ling Xuan warned his brother that Tianeming's cultivation has increased a lot. But then, Guo Hao doesn't want to back off. All right, I'm very grateful. I'll use this chance to try my new moves. Tianeming answered. Why Tianeming? If you like to argue so much, then I'll cut off your tongue first. Guo Hao answered and summoned his eight-winged gold rock life-bound beast. Yin Huo and Tianeming were too calm and ready to fight. They then rushed to each other and Guo Hao tried to punch Tianeming using his Vajra fist, but Tianeming blocked his attack using his metal arm. Their fight was so intense and everyone only watched them fighting and waited for who's gonna win. You dared to block it with your arm. Your arm is broken now, Gu Hao said. While Tianeming froze, Jiang was worried for him. She also believes that Tianeming's arm was broken by the force. I'm fine, no worries. It's just ticklish, Tianeming answered while waving his metal arm. Guo Hao was shocked when he saw that Tianeming's arm was still fine. He noticed before that there was something odd about Tianeming's arm. He thought that Tianeming was just pretending to be strong, but he really felt something now. Tianeming was worried that Guo Hao is indeed one of the heavenly septuplets. The impact that was left on his arm is painful. He believes that it'll be difficult for the current him to beat Guo Hao. He concludes that he has a chance once Zhang will help him so he asks Zhang and Zhang is immediately attached to him. Since Guo Hao saw that Tianeming is asking for Zhang's help, he realized that Tianeming is now scared with his fist. I'm not scared. Just giving you face by fighting with my strongest state. Tianeming answered. He grabbed his grade 5 weapon blazing dragon chain blade. That reminds me. I have to actually thank you. I got this new chain from the vice potentate because you broke my thunder fire chain. Tianeming added. Guo Hao was irritated that Mu Yang gave such a weapon to Tianeming. He then summons his cryptic gold feather and vows that he will break Tianeming's weapon for the second time. Tianeming challenged him to do it. King Huo asked Tianeming if he needed some help but then Tianeming told him to just deal with the big bird first. Tianeming and Guo Hao rushed to each other for the second time. Everyone in the area witnessed the battle and Ling Xuan was shocked that Tianeming is actually on par with her brother. Guo Hao's beast is attacking Tianeming so Tianeming told Ying Huo to get rid of the bird. Ying Huo rushed to the bird with the intention of showing his real skills. A new technique which is the three spring heavy claw. He blinded one of the eyes of his opponent beast and also planned to launch a surprise attack. He blew a flame to Guo Hao and Guo Hao was annoyed that Ying Huo did it again. The flame clearly looks stronger than before. He wanted to avoid the flame but Tianeming saw an opening. He squeezed his fist and punched Guo Hao using the three spring heavy strike. Guo Hao was on fire and his sister was worried for him. Cousin of mine, do you admit defeat? If so, I can get rid of the fire. Tianeming stated, I admit defeat. It's my loss. Quick, get rid of it. Guo Hao answered. Tianeming is satisfied with how he begged so Ying Huo took a burp to remove the flame. No one expected you to be this strong. But if you think that's enough for you to humiliate us, big mistake. Guo Hao added. He then spoke using the devil's blue incantation and vowed that Lai Tianeming will die today. Tianeming was shocked upon seeing it. This is a taboo technique. You're going to make me die with you. Tianeming answered. Guo Hao is furious and covered with a blue flame. His sister Ling Xuan already cried and begged Tianeming to stop her brother. She's afraid that her brother will die because of this taboo technique. Tianeming wasn't able to stop this kind of technique. He wondered about what great grudge Guo Hao had against him that he must use this technique to execute him. Guo Hao rushed to him at a fast speed. He's already above Tianeming and Tianeming is rattled because his body is not listening to his mind. He wanted to run but he can't because of how powerful the incantation is. Guo Hao punched Tianeming with killing intent. Because of his powerful punch, it creates a big explosion. After the explosion is smoke that only the shadow of Tianeming is visible. When he's completely visible, he's confused as to why still completely fine. Ying Huo believes that someone stopped Guo Hao. Someone suddenly asked about when Guo Hao learned the devil blue incantation. It was the sanctum potentate and their grandfather Wai Tian King. He has forbidden anyone in the clan from practicing taboo techniques. And because of this, he needs to be punished accordingly. You've all disappointed me. Wai Tian King shouted in an angry tone. Ling Xuan kneeled and asked for forgiveness from her grandfather. She also asked to save her brother Guo Hao. According to her, Guo Hao got the devil blue incantation from the abyssal battlefield. 
Guo Hao didn't let anyone tell her that he remained silent. She admits her mistake in front of the sanctum potentate and she didn't expect that her grandma would forgive her. But she pleaded to save her brother's life. The vice potentate and the supernal mentors came to check who used the devil arts. Wei Tiangsong was also present as he was also curious. He shockingly asked about what happened to his son Guo Hao. Wei Tiangqing told him to ask his daughter Ling Xuan. At this point, Tianming was annoyed that he was like heir because his grandfather didn't even take a glance at him. Tiangsong was surprised when he heard from Ling Xuan that Guo Hao was defeated by Tianming, making him resort to devil arts. Tiangsong was mad and he didn't want to believe that his son was easily defeated by Lai Tianming. He asked Tianming about what he did. For him, no one can change so much in a short period of time. Tianming told him that it was because of Jiang failing and his life-bound beast, Ying Huo. Don't listen to his nonsense. The flame yellow rock gave him an opportunity today and he improved by two levels. Mu Yong stated. The supernal mentors suddenly discussed Tianming's overpowering. Tiangsong sighed and accept that it was his son's fault for being too impulsive and lacking experience. He also accepts that Lai Tianming is indeed from the Y bloodline. Not bad at all huh? I'm third in the village. Tianming answered. Tiang Kang is checking on Guo Hao and he said that Guo Hao's condition is fine but he's afraid that Guo Hao needs to stay in bed for three months to completely recover. The Sanctum Potentate ordered all the Supernal Masters to go back and keep silent about what happened. They all follow the Potentate and go back to their areas. Tiang Kang also ordered Tiang Song to bring back and discipline his daughter and son strictly. Since Guo Hao needed to rest for three months, Mu Yang wondered what they should do about the slot for the Abyssal Trial. What about it? The Y clan gave up the spot. Y Tian King answered. But then, Tianming interrupts and tells them that he wanted to take part in the Abyssal Trial. Potentate, I want to fight for the Y clan's glory. He confidently said. He doesn't want to let this opportunity slip into his finger. Y Tian King was mad and told him that their Y clan doesn't need an outsider like Tianming to fight for their glory. Tianming insists that the Y clan needs it, and also him. Wai Tian King concludes that the only reason Tianming wanted this connection is to save his mother and Tian King doesn't want to let it happen. If there's no chance, Tianming still wanted to create one. Otherwise, what? Let all the Vermilion Bird laugh at how the Y Clan of Heaven's Sanctum couldn't even dispatch one youth to the battlefield. How would that be? Tianming uttered. Mu Yang wanted to stop Tianming from uttering words since it was no respect for him. Tian Kong gives Tianming a chance that is more of a gambling. He will only permit Tianming to take part in the Abyssal Trials, and should he emerge victoriously, if that happens he will let Wai Jing live. Once Tianming will not win, his mother will remain the way she is now for the rest of her life. Tianming smiled after he knew that he only needed to win. Then I'll gamble with you. Not just participating in the Abyssal Trials, I'll even die if it means my mother can be saved. Tianming stated. Wai Tiankong told him to be prepared. Eight days later, Mu Yang will bring him into the Abyssal Battlefield. When the Sanctum Potentate left, Tianming asked Mu Yang about the Abyssal Battlefield. Mu Yang allowed Tianming to call him Uncle Yang. According to him, the Abyssal Battlefield is bluntly put. The reflection on their flame yellow continent, filled with darkness and slaughter. There are no rules or laws, only endless slaughter. But there are also priceless treasures like mana, spirit ores, spirit herbs, and spirit hazards. Jiang was too excited that Tianming could now attend the Abyssal Battlefield. As she wanted, she would like to come for Princess King. Tianming also wanted to go with her. But then, Mu Yang advised him not to bring Jiang Failing with him. She would die in there. Mu Yang said, Uncle Yang, is the Abyssal Battlefield really that dangerous? To the point that Failing shouldn't go. Tianming asked. Mu Yang explained that it's never the place that is dangerous, but the people. The talented youths of the Flame Yellow Continent are also the most problematic. They will go on a rampage in such a lawless place and kill ruthlessly. After hearing Mu Yang's explanations, Tianming becomes more interested in attending the battle. Mu Yang told him to come back alive, and that he will prepare some life-saving items for Tianming. Tianming feels like Mu Yang nags like a parent for him compared to Lai Yanfeng. Because of it, Mu Yang was thrilled and tried to defend himself. After they talk, Tianming and Zhang Feiling go directly to Wai Jing. Tianming introduced Jiang to his mother and Wai Jing was surprised that Princess Failing came to visit her. She then ordered Tianming to prepare food for them to eat. Jiang was amazed upon hearing that Tianming knew how to cook. When the night comes, Tianming has finished preparing their dinner. Jiang's eyes sparkled as she saw the food but also confused that all of it was made of chicken. Tianming noticed that Ying Huo was shivering so he scared Ying Huo that they didn't have mushrooms. That's why he couldn't cook this little chicken. 
Yin Huo shouted exactly to Tianming's ear to inform him that he was not scared since he was a phoenix. While they are eating, Tianming lets his mother know that he will be gone for a month. Wai Jing asked him if Jiang Failing would also come with him and Jiang was about to answer but Tianming suddenly interrupted her and told Wai Jing that Jiang will stay. Jiang felt down when she heard it from Tianming. After they ate, they headed back to their respective places. Jiang thanked Tianming for the dinner but then, Tianming noticed that Jiang suddenly became formal to him. Jiang Failing told him that she badly wanted to go to the abyssal trials with Tianming. But Tianming told her that he can protect himself, and that he is afraid since the place is dangerous. Jiang explained that she was worried about Princess King and also, she has decided that in this life, she will share life and death with Tianming. Tianming's eyes rounded upon hearing it. He stared at the lady while thinking about his virtues and abilities to make a girl willing to share life and death with him. Jiang Failing's existence has made his life worthwhile. From now on, he promised to protect Jiang Failing well. She holds Jiang's hand and let the lady come with him to the abyssal training. From now on, we'll be together forever, okay? Tianming stated and Jiang casually answered yes. Ying Huo interrupts them so Tianming punches him away. Eight days later, Mu Kinking was busy with her instrument and Xia Xiao suddenly came as she was worried about Kinking after hearing that Tianming defeated Wai Guo Hao. She concludes that Tianming will seek revenge especially since Tianming will attend the abyssal battle and is higher rank than Mu Kinking. Kinking told her that upon entering the sanctum, they will learn that rankings mean little in battles of life and death and also she has her own trump card. No one will ever look down on me ever again, Mu Kinking stated. She then decided to go to Flame Yellow Pagoda to cultivate. This day has finally arrived. The past eight days felt like years to Tianming. When he arrived at the Flame Yellow Pagoda, Jiang Failing together with Princess King was waiting for him. Princess King was mad because Jiang Failing wanted to come so badly that even their father couldn't convince her out of it. Tianming promised both ladies that he will protect them by all means. Mu Yang also arrived to meet him. What awaits you remains unknown. All that I can do is to pray for the best and hope that you'll treasure your life more than the victory. Mu Yang stated. Tianming feels that Mu Yang has become so serious. Then someone called Tianming from behind. Upon hearing the voice, Tianming knows that it was Lin Xiaoding. I didn't expect to see you again after three years. You sure are lucky, Xiaoding said while walking toward Tianming. Tianming was full of hatred while pronouncing Xiaoding's name. Mu Qingqing and Lin Xiaoxiao were also here and were surprised to see Xiaoding who successfully came out of seclusion and ascended to the Unity Realm. Qingqing rushed to his boyfriend Xiaoding as he misses this man so much. Xiaoding informed his master Mu Yang that he reached the Unity Realm and soon will become a disciple of Heaven's Elysium. Yes, your future is bright. But before that, you're still Heaven's Sanctum Disciple so don't cause trouble. Mu Yang answered and ordered them all to prepare for the Abyssal Trials. Everyone was busy and Mu Qingqing whispered to Xiaoding to execute Tianming in this place. Xiaoding smiled at the idea as he believes that no one will oppose him. He then rushed to Tianming without any hesitation. Tianming was alarmed and used his bewildering eye but Xiaoding is aware of it. It did not work on Xiaoding and he continued to rush to Tianming. When their fists collided, a big explosion happened. Xiaoding guffaws while stating that no one can survive from their generation after receiving his full strike. Mu Yang, Zhang Failing, and Princess King are worried for Tianming as they expected that Tianming did not survive. To their surprise, Tianming comes out from the smoke. Hey Lin Xiaoding, you got so much worse. Did you get lunch or something? Tianming stated while holding his arm. He was acting like he was unscathed but the truth is, Xiaoding's punches are indeed strong that he believes he might die once Xiaoding will do it again. Xiaoding's eyes rounded upon seeing that Tianming managed to survive. He guffawed once again while saying that Tianming will surely die in his hands. He then rushed to Tianming for the second time and Tianming became puzzled about what to do. Good thing that Mu Yang blocked Xiaoding and ordered him to stop. Xiaoding asked Mu Yang to move away as he's too giggled to execute Tianming. But then, Mu Yang scolded him. Tianming is behind Mu Yang raising his middle finger. I get it, master is opposing me for the sake of an old flame. Do you not understand that no one should dare to oppose me once I enter Heaven's Elysium? Xiaoding answered. Mhu Yang suddenly punched him causing him to vomit blood. Mu Yang then reminded him that he's still a member of Heaven's Sanctum which means Mu Yang's word is law. Is that how you address your mentor who has guided you for four years? With a personality like yours, what can you achieve if you enter Heaven's Elysium? Mu Yang stated. Xiaoding smiled and said that Mu Yang will either bow on his feet once he returns from Heaven's Elysium. Everyone was shocked after hearing how Xiaoding disrespected the vice potentate. Mu Yang grabbed Xiaoding's face and slammed him to the ground. Someone like you dares to threaten me. 
Get the hell away from me. From this day, I never had a disciple by the name of Lin Xiaoding, Mu Yang declared. He also let Xiaoding threaten him as much as he wants but Mu Yang will also slap him for every word he says. Chanaming felt excited upon seeing that Mu Yang humiliated Xiaoding in front of everyone. Mu Yang then ordered them to leave together with other disciples. Kinking and Xiaoding Xiao help Xiaoding gets up. Xiaoding suddenly choked Kinking to remind her to do her best to be the first and come with Xiaoding together. Chanaming came back to warn Xiaoding that he will wring every last drop of Xiaoding's blood over Mita's grave after he comes back from the abyssal battlefield. Xiaoding laughed so hard and told Tianming that he was willing to wait. Tianming then went back to Mu Yang. Since Mu Yang stood up for Tianming today, Xiaoding decided to let him live for a few days. And also, he believes that a day will come when Mu Yang will bow before him. If that time comes, he's willing to rip or chop Mu Yang's head. Mu Yang with the disciples has arrived at the entrance of the Abyss Battlefield, also known as the Bottomless Pit. After the six disciples will enter, they won't be able to leave until the Abyssal Trials have ended. As per Mu Yang, after they enter, they'll be sent to different places so it's impossible for them to team up. But since they are all from the same sanctum, Mu Yang told them to look out for each other. Tianming took a glance at Kinking and he doesn't want to look out for each other if the person is Kinking. Mo Lin from Occult Athenaeum volunteered to enter first, and the others followed until Tianming and Princess King with Mu Yang left at the entrance. Before Princess King left, she reminded Tianming once again to protect Zhang Failing. She then jumped leaving Tianming and Maya. Mu Yang knew that Zhang Failing was already attached to Tianming and he reminded Tianming not to let Zhang come out to his body. Tianming promised him and then jumped into the entrance. When he landed on the ground, he instantly saw a pitch black sun. From this moment onwards, Tianming will have no rules, hints, or directions. Ying Huo comes out as he smells danger waiting for them. He then leads the way for them to explore the place. While Tianming runs, Zhang calls him. She informed Tianming that he found a place of mana. Tianming asked her if it was the ability of her other nails, but then the lady said that she only unsealed three out of ten abilities so far. She doesn't know the reason, but she's just ollie sensitive to mana. Tianming flies with the help of Zhang and he asks the lady how he can unseal more of her fingernail abilities. Zhang doesn't have any idea but she thinks that when she's around with Tianming, she feels them throbbing. Tianming was thrilled upon hearing what the lady said. When they arrived on the cliff, Zhang said that she senses the mana is right below. They all can hear the howling below and Zhang knows that there are a lot of wild beasts in the area. But then, Tianming is not scared as for him. He can just send Ying Huo to distract the wild beasts while they'll escape. Ying Huo was annoyed at Tianming for being too shameless. Tianming then went down and Zhang said that the mana is in the cave. When they were about to enter, they smelled an unbridled savage aura so Tianming ordered Ying Huo to check for it. Before Ying Huo left, he assured first that Tianming would not run away. He then went directly inside the cave to check and he found out that there was an enormous beast which he doesn't even know its kind. Tianming decided to follow him and he knew that this beast is a four-star wild beast, the jade-scaled flaming eagle with a jade fire armor innate ability. Combined with those scales, it has a tough, two-layered defense that is practically impossible to pierce. The mana is almost perfectly whole. The eagle is not even 1% into the process. Since the beast had the mana, Tianming planned to steal it. As per their usual plan, Ying Huo will be the bait while Tianming snatches the mana. Ying Huo then went in front of the beast and called it a stupid eagle. Watch a looking at. I'll descale you if you keep staring. Ying Huo stated which made the beast alarmed and keep the mana into his body. Tianming also saw that the beast didn't leave the mana and this is not what they expected. The beast then runs, chasing Ying Huo. Tianming came out, holding his chain blade and rushed to the beast. He then beat the beast using his blazing dragon chain blade and Tianming thought that he successfully defeated it. But then, it used armor which helped it to remain unscratched. Tianming concludes that the jade armor helps the beast so the physical attack he receives will not be effective. Ying Huo then decided to use his internal blaze and blow it to the beast. But still, the beast is completely fine which made Ying Huo and Tianming dumbfounded. The beast is so fierce that even Tianming believes that they cannot beat it. It started to blow a flame so Tianming and Ying Huo ran as fast as they could to get rid of its ability. Ying Huo told Tianming that the mana is exactly on the beast's chest. Tianming then summons his dragon chain blade once again and surrounds it to the beast's neck and wings. Ying Huo rushed to the chest and attacked it with a nether fire ghost claw, from the beast's chest coming out to the beast's head and he successfully defeated the beast and got the mana. Tianming smiled while hoping that the beast's ability could be transferred to him. He ordered Ying Huo to hide the mana and he started to refine the beast's soul. 
Fortunately, Tianming was successful and handed it to Ying Huo to let Ying Huo refine it together with the mana. Ying Huo then hides in the tree hole and asks for Tianming's protection. Tianming patrolled the area with the help of Zhang Failing since he knew that it would take time for Ying Huo to refine the royal mana. From above, Zhang Failing senses someone approaching. This man senses a lifebound beast refining mana in the area. He even knew that this lifebound beast is a small one. For him, refining mana in the abyssal battlefield is like seeking death. This disciple ordered Tianming to speak up about his name and clan. But then, Tianming told him that he should be the one to introduce first. This man stated that he was Jai Chang'an, the seventh prince of the Torch Dragon. Upon hearing it, Tianming believes that Torch Dragon is the nation that committed ruthless crimes in the Vermilion Bird. I'm your father, the Torch Dragon King. Son, do you not recognize me? Tianming answered which made Jai Chang'an puzzled. By what Tianming answered, it gives him a reason to execute Tianming. He then calls out his lifebound beast named Tianju. It's a huge red-colored snake. And Jai Chang'an holds a long sharp weapon. Jiang Failing warned Tianming but then Tianming was willing to fight against Chang'an and ordered Jiang to activate the temporal field. Upon seeing the huge temporal field, Chang'an only smiled as he only saw this field as useless and then rushed to Tianming with his lifebound beast and weapon. Tianming also flies towards his opponents, holding his chain blade. He used a soul-piercing dragon lance to attack but Chang'an managed to dodge. But then, he noticed how fast Tianming is. Because of Tianming's speed, Chang'an didn't notice that Tianming was already behind him. Tianming attacked him helplessly without any idea how it possibly happened. Jai Chang'an, I do not know what the rules of this game are, nor do I want to know. I just know that whoever wants to kill me, I'll return the favor twice over. Tianming stated, when it's almost night, Jiang Failing becomes emotional while thinking if Heaven's Elysium will only allow one person to leave in these abyssal trials. Tianming told her not to overthink too much and that he promised he will not let Jiang be in danger. But then, Jiang is worried about her sister King. Tianming also doesn't want Princess King to be in danger. He's afraid that others will be like Jai Chang'an who will execute whoever they encounter. To make Jiang feel better, he told the lady that they will look for Princess King after Ying Huo refined the royal mana. A day later, a yellow-red colored lightning appeared from Ying Huo's refining area. His arrival is blinding so it makes Tianming think that Ying Huo has improved a lot. When Ying Huo is already visible, Jiang Failing said that Ying Huo looks different than before. But then, the only difference he gained is a pitiful little horn. Tianming underestimated him which made Ying Huo annoyed. Then Tianming said to forget about it first and process symbiotic cultivation so Ying Huo's benefits gained will be transferred. Beg me, Ying Huo answered. Tianming raised his metal fist which made Ying Huo frightened because of the bewildering eye. Jiang Failing feels glad about Ying Huo and Tianming's relationship with each other and even hopes that the abyssal participants should be like them. Meanwhile, despite absorbing all of the cultivation, Tianming still didn't level up to the fifth stage. Ying Huo then motivates him by saying that he looks tougher than before. After they were done, Tianming then decided to look for Princess King. They then fly and encountered a heavenly pattern formation. The formation is closing in on them. According to Tianming, if the heavenly pattern formation continues to shrink, everyone will eventually be gathered together, which means that they'll eventually meet one another. Even how far apart they are, it doesn't matter. Once the semicircle shrinks to its smallest size, that's most likely the last day of the abyssal trials. Tianming is not very sure about the rules but he started to understand things. He concludes that the most dangerous place is definitely outside of the heavenly pattern formation. He then landed on the water and decided to conserve his stamina and strength. He smiled as he thought that no one would be able to find him. But then, in just one step, disciples in the area discovered him right away. What a coincidence to meet you guys here. Tianming answered. It's Chen Hao and Xing Kue who have killing intent on Tianming. Chen Hao confidently said that he can handle Tianming alone. Tianming only sighs and has no intention to execute Chen Hao because of how Chen Hao's father helped him. Chen Hao called out his lifebound beast which he called a solar horn tiger. He then ordered his lifebound beast to attack. Ying Huo is also ready to fight back. The solar horn tiger jumped and Ying Huo rushed with unbelievable speed. Chen Hao also rushed to Tianming while holding his long sword. He swung his sword to hit Tianming but then Tianming flew off. Chen Hao smiled and called out his lifebound beast to chase Tianming. But when he looked at his beast, it was almost defeated by Ying Huo causing him to be distracted. Tianming seized the opportunity and punched him in the cheeks. He then flew away and Xing Kue then rushed to Tianming to help Chen Hao. He was holding a red sun war god Halbert. Tianming is looking at him from above. Xing Kue also summoned his lifebound beast. 
He was mad at Tianming for what he had done to Chen Hao. He then strikes an attack on Tianming using his weapon which creates an enormous white blow. Tianming and Ying Huo managed to dodge. Xing Kue was suddenly transported behind Tianming. He was about to attack but Tianming was aware of his presence and immediately used his bewildering eye causing Xing Kue to hallucinate. He then summoned his chain blade and attacked Xing Kue. Xing Kue vomits blood and Tianming seizes the opportunity to hit him once more. He falls to the ground beside Chen Hao and even his lifebound beast is defeated. Tianming used his chain blade once more and tied these both disciples. Tianming went near them and asked about what they felt. Tianming, don't go overboard. You dare to humiliate us today. One day you'll end up worse. Chen Hao shouted. Tianming hit him several times and ordered him to tell his mother how humiliated he was that day. Chen Hao ended up becoming weak and full of bruises. Xing Kui also shouted as he was worried for Chen Hao. Tianming then goes to him and slaps him multiple times. Tianming wanted them both to regret their actions. He then kicked Xing Kue's face and told them to remember the day that they were humiliated by him. Tianming also vows that he will execute those who dare to humiliate him to the end of the world. He then left, leaving these men in agony. On day 14 of the Abyssal Trial, Tianming with Zhang Failing and Ying Huo continued to find Princess King and they saw several damages in the area that was made by life-bound beasts. They conclude that there are water and fire-type life-bound beasts in this place. Tianming and Ying Huo fist-bumped while thinking that there was also a couple having fun in there. Suddenly, Tianming noticed something. He then bent down to get it. Upon seeing it, Zhang Failing said that it was Princess King's father's blue-fire vermilion bird. Because of it, they were confused about King's opponent. Tianming then told Zhang to fly high so they could see any other traces. They then fly and since they didn't see blood, Tianming believes that Princess King is completely fine. When they were already in a higher part, Tianming's eyes rounded as he saw a pond that was shaped like a whale lord. He then believed that Mu Qingqing was in this area. The time for revenge has arrived. Ying Huo uttered Zhang failing sensing Tianming's hatred. Tianming then told them to go together and find the opponent. At the Abyssal Trials Lake of 10,000 Islands, Mu Qingqing is standing on the water together with her life-bound beast. Unexpectedly, she's trying to cast a taboo technique and summons several beasts. At this time, she has four life-bound beasts with her. The purple blood imprint is consuming too much of her blood. She already tamed two wild beasts, and if she continue, danger might happen to her. But then, she's willing to bet her life on this taboo technique. No one will be able to stop her, not even Lin Xioding. She was still dreaming that everyone would look up to her someday. There is a wild beast she called Hecatonchir's Black Devil who helped her tame a beast. She continues as she needs two more beasts. She told herself that she will be reborn through this taboo technique and hope to ascend higher and prepare a big surprise for Tianming. Two people are on the lake and notice the purple blood imprint. They conclude that Mu Qingqing is crazy for using a taboo technique. They both asked Mu Qingqing's identity and Mu Qingqing refused and let them introduce themselves first before her. These two people came named Lai Qingcheng, a son of an aquamarine admiral and the lady is the seventh princess of aquamarine named Gu Suyu. Who are you to use the taboo technique? I shall report you to Heaven's Elysium. Lai Qingcheng stated. By looking at them, Qingqing knew that the people in front of her were a couple. She then suddenly laughed and told them that she specialized in killing princesses and people with the surname Lai. Gu Suyu and Lai Qingcheng summoned their swords and were ready to get rid of Mu Qingqing. Very good. I'll have both of your lives. As for your life-bound beast, I'll have them too. Mu Qingqing uttered and ready herself and her beast to battle. On the 17th day of the Abyssal Trial, Tianming still continued to search the area. But then, they didn't see anyone so Jiang Failing is worried again for Princess King. The area where they stopped looks familiar to Tianming. This is the place where he found the Saint Beast War Soul. That year, he accidentally found his way here. The lake's temperature is a lot higher than before. Jiang Failing senses something from the lake. They then decided to dive to check what's the thing below. He used his bewildering eye to clearly see it. He then saw a blue spirit herb. Tianming then picks it and Ying Huo is excited to taste it. Tianming handed it to him as he doesn't want to taste it but Ying Huo forced him and called him not a real man. Tianming was annoyed that he keeps on mocking so he decided to taste it. He divided it into halves and he forced himself to eat it. Ying Huo is enjoying it while Tianming coughs and suffers severe pain. His body feels hot and he asked for Jiang Failing's help so he can refine the herb. Jiang Failing hugged him and the lady promised him that she won't let anything happen to Tianming. 
because of Jiang's help. Tianming came back to his normal state and completely refined the blue spirit herb and breakthrough to fifth level spirit source. His power has greatly increased which made him feel confident in fighting against those at the eighth level spirit source. He also feels that his eyes can now see further and clearer than before. They continued to look for Princess King but something caught their attention. They saw a battle from above. They took a glance at it and saw that it was a lady riding a dragon and was fighting against Mo Lin. This lady is Yu Lingji and is willing to execute anyone on the battlefield. She then rushed to Mo Lin with killing intent. Chanaming rushed to block the lady and helped Mo Lin. Chanaming interfered as he wanted to save Mo Lin. Instead of being frightened, the lady was glad that another disciple came to be executed by her. If it happens, Mo Lin and Chanaming will be the seventh person she will kill in total. She was hoping to be the winner of the Abyssal Trial. Tianming was shocked that the lady in front of him had murdered five people in a row. He believes it'll be dangerous for Mo Lin to be in this area once he starts fighting so he told Mo Lin to leave first. Mo Lin tried to resist as he didn't want to abandon Tianming just for him to escape. Since Mo Lin doesn't want to agree, Jiang Failing suggested that they will take Mo Lin away first. Their opponent overheard them and she doesn't want Tianming and Mo Lin to leave without dying in her hands. She then attacks using her sword with great pressure. Mo Lin was about to be hit, but then Tianming grabbed him away. The lady ordered his lifebound beast to chase Tianming and Mo Lin. Tianming noticed that the lady was following them so he told Jiang failing to activate the time field. Upon activating the time field, the lady feels that her movement got slower. But still, she attacked Tianming and Mo Lin with her power. Tianming informed Mo Lin that they were heading to the information boundary and that he should hide and focus on recovering. He then entered the lifebound space and he was dropped on the ground. Since Mo Lin is not with him, he believes that Mo Lin was transported elsewhere. Jiang Failing came out of his body as she was worried about Tianming. But then, Tianming said that he was fine. Because of their opponent just now, Jiang Failing feels worried for Princess King again. Tianming tapped her head and calmed her. Ying Huo then suddenly comes out to tease Tianming so Tianming squeezes him out of annoyance. All of a sudden, Tianming noticed a familiar circle. He then concludes that a semi-circle formation might be everyone's final destination. He held Zhang Failing's hand and they will head to the formation of a semicircle hoping that they can see Princess King there. It's the 19th day of the Abyssal Trial and Tianming came at the center of the Heavenly Pattern Formation, the Lake of Ten Thousand Islands. He wondered if others had arrived and someone suddenly called him. It was Mo Lin and behind him was Chen Hao and Xing Kue. Chen Hao and Xing Kue's moods change upon seeing Tianming. Mo Lin was confused about what happened to them since he saw these two disciples happily chatting a few seconds ago. Tianming then asked Mo Lin if he had seen Princess King but Mo Lin casually answered no. Tianming also tried to ask Chen Hao and Xing Kue but both of these men ignored him. Tianming walked away and instructed them all to stay in the cave since they were injured. He fly as he was planning to continue searching for Princess King. Because of how dangerous it is outside, he was thinking that Princess King probably hid in one of the caves in the area. While he was above, he saw the lady again. This lady is named Yuling Jai, a disciple who's willing to take someone's life as she was obsessed to win the Abyssal Trial. Tianming hid at the huge rock to observe Yuling Jai. Yuling Jai is screaming, looking for any disciples to be killed. At this time, she already murdered six disciples so she concludes that there are only a few people left. Since nobody comes out, she smiles and believes that all of the people in the area are scared to fight against her. If you guys aren't going to come out, then I'll wait here. She said and sat on her lifebound beast. She's also at the center of the heavenly pattern formation and according to her, once the heavenly pattern formation finishes shrinking, disciples might face their impending death. Chen Hao, Mo Lin, and Xing Kui don't have any idea if the rule of the abyssal trials is to execute everyone else. Mo Lin just suggested to them that they just continue staying hidden until the abyssal trials are over. Mu Qingqing is also hiding in one of the caves and she heard what Yuling Jai wanted. But then, she's planning to execute Lai Tianming first before Yuling Jai. A sudden light emerges from the lake and together with it are several dragons. According to Zhang Failing, this is the soaring of nine dragons, a type of mana phenomenon. As per the legends, out of the four different types of royal mana, profound, terrestrial, and celestial mana, profound ranked and above will give rise to strange phenomena when they appear. Jiang Failing heard nine water dragons soaring into the sky marks the appearance of the dragonic water obelisk. Profound mana. She read from a book that a profound mana is about to appear, and Tianming got excited thinking that the profound mana is a power that could easily dominate vermilion birds. If royal mana is worth about 30 times the net worth of Flamehaven, 
then the profound mana was worth at least an order of magnitude greater, and perhaps even more. It could be said that the value of a piece of profound mana was close to that of the Saint Beast War Soul, and it was even easier to use. For profound mana to appear at such a time, it means that the real objective of the Abyssal Trials is to obtain the profound mana. Since Yuling Jai is nearest to the profound mana, she grabbed it and declared to everyone that if no one will appear, she will own this profound mana. Tianeming realized the real rules of the Abyssal Trial. Executing everyone was just a rumor. The person who obtained the profound mana will be first. After all, even if the winner lacks aptitude, mana can make up for that. The Dragonic Water Obelisk is in my hands. The Abyssal Trials haven't ended yet. Is there anyone else who wants to die? Yuling Jai shouted. She also informed everyone that she already executed six people and that she wanted to kill ten in total. Two disciples came out and ordered Yuling Jai to hand over the mana. Tianeming believes that profound mana is extremely tempting which makes people willing to risk their lives. Yuling Jai challenges these two disciples to fight against her. Both of the men summoned their lifebound beast and Yuling Jai rushed to them without any hesitation. She slashed them both which lead to death. Tianeming decided to come out to fight with her. It's you again, who are you? Yuling Jai asked. My name is Lai Dai. Tianeming answered and Yuling Jai told him that his name will be the name of a dead man. Tianeming smiled and told her to remember his dad's name. Lai Dai sounds like Nai Dai which means your dad so basically. Tianeming just made her call him dad. Yuling Jai then realized that Tianeming is just making fun of her. Good daughter, I'll be taking that profound mana. Tianeming added. Yuling Jai was mad that Tianeming made fun of her. Her lifebound beast cast a blizzard breath to attack Tianeming. This skill creates giant ice. Tianeming then moves away and Yuling Jai said that Tianeming is trying to take something that never belonged to him with just a low level of ability. Something that never belonged to me in the first place. So you're saying that it's already been decided that you'll win. Tianeming answered. Yuling Jai is confident that Tianeming cannot beat her. She also believes that her fate is to win the Abyssal Trial. She challenges Tianeming this time. Once Tianeming will beat her, she's willing to give the profound mana together with the first place. She cast a frost tornado and Tianeming fly to avoid it. When he raises, Yuling Jai is already in front of him and slashes him instantly. She thought that Tianeming would die but one thing happened that surprised her. She was surprised when she saw Tianeming's metal arm that he also used to block the sword of Yuling Jai. Ying Huo used an infernal blaze and blew the flame on her. She falls to the lake and was shocked when she saw that Tianeming and Ying Huo's target is her lifebound beast. Tianeming tied Yuling Jai's beast using his chain blade and demanded Ying Huo attack it. Yuling Jai's dragon was defeated and fell into the lake. What do you say, Yuling Jai? Tianeming asked. This time, Yuling Jai didn't want to surrender and became furious. She rushed to Tianeming holding her two swords and shouted that she didn't want to admit that she was defeated by Tianeming. Tianeming then gives her a chance to fight one-on-one. -on -one. Tianeming used his bewildering eye and Yuling Jai couldn't resist and was tied by the chain blade. For his last attack, he cast his soulless seven howls and Yuling Jai is finally defeated. Tianeming smiled thinking that he can now get the profound mana. Meanwhile, he sits on the rock while holding the profound mana and is confused if Yuling Jai will be the winner if Tianeming stole the mana from her. Ying Huo asked him why he still spears Yuling Jai instead of executing her. Tianeming answered that he only wanted to get the profound mana and to be first, so killing was unnecessary for him. He also feels that it appears Yuling Jai might be chosen from the start, and that the lady might have a connection with the Heaven's Elysium. He was hoping that he would get the answer to his confusion after the Abyssal Trial ended. He stomps on the water and screams, looking for Princess King. Come, find me. Someone answered. Ying Huo and Tianeming really believe that the voice is from Princess King. When they turned around, someone was behind them sitting on the rock. It was Mu Kingking. She told Tianeming that he will never see Princess King again. She died, I killed her, Kingking stated. She stood on the rock and repeated what she said. As expected, Zhang Failing is worried for Princess King. Tianeming told her that what Kingking said might not be true. Mu Kingking, I've waited a long time for this day. I want you dead, Tianeming stated. Mu Kingking teases him that the Dragonic Water Obelisk is not fit for him. While looking at her, Zhang Failing noticed that Kinking is currently using the forbidden technique of purple blood imprint. Tianeming is not shocked as she already knows that Kinking can resort to any means possible just to achieve her goal. Lai Tianeming, you're always blocking my path. This time, you must die. Kinking uttered and summoned her several lifebound beasts. Tianeming didn't see Princess King's lifebound beast so he concludes that Kinking didn't kill Princess King. Tianeming held onto his chest. The egg in his lifebound space had wiggled all of a sudden. He thinks that this egg is about to hatch and at the same time, 
He feels that it's also hesitating whether to hatch so it's restless for him. Ying Huo told him that the beast on this egg is just too lazy to fight, and that's why it doesn't want to hatch. Ignore him, let's just focus on the fight. Ying Huo added, Mu Qingqing's beasts are waving into the lake. Qingqing is giving thanks to Tianming as her stepping stone to heaven's Elysium. She even jokes around that if Tianming will die now, she will still remember him as the most important person in her life, more important than Lin Xiaoding. Jiang Failing senses a strong desire of killing intent from Mu Qingqing and she's willing to help Tianming win against her. The wing's shape changed instantly and he believes that the spiritual attachment effect has surpassed to its highest level. As per Jiang Failing, the attachment effect is currently 150%. Tianming and Ying Huo then rushed to Mu Qingqing's beasts. He executed the first beast, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one which shocked Qingqing. Dai Mu Qingqing. Tianming shouted. But then, Mu Qingqing didn't feel frightened and still managed to laugh so hard. Tianming choked her and asked about the reason for her laugh. You defied heaven's will and changed your fate. You're powerful to the point I tremble in fear and regret. And yet, I'm laughing because, in the end, you'll still die by my hands. What a tragedy poor thing. Qingqing answered and continued to guffaw. Tianming was confused about what gave Qingqing the courage to daydream. Tianming is not aware that there's another beast behind him. When he turned around, he saw Princess King carried by a giant centipede. Jiang Failing couldn't hold herself and suddenly came out from Tianming's body. She cried so Ying Huo and Tianming calmed her and promised that they'll save Princess King. Tianming then looked to King King and asked what she wanted. King King gave him two options, either he will die or Princess King will. He gave 10 seconds for Tianming to decide. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Tianming suddenly heard a voice offering some help to him. It's his life-bound beast that's about to hatch. He will give Tianming a plan that can help him get rid of Mu Qingqing. You're not going to kill yourself. In that case, watch her die. Qingqing stated. Tianming got his egg and when he raised it, Qingqing was attacked by lightning. She was confused about how Tianming managed to control the lightning. The lightning continued to strike and even the giant centipede was executed by it. Upon seeing the giant centipede fall into the lake, Zhang Failing shouted as she thought that Princess King would also drown. Ying Huo told her that Princess King is being protected. Princess King is covered by protection from Tianming's egg. Mu Qingquan coughs and she cannot believe that Tianming is still able to defeat her. It's been three years but she felt that Tianming became so strong. Tianming walked toward her. Give me a few moments. When I'm done, I'll have all the time in the world to slowly deal with you. I need to figure out how to clear this debt you owe me. Even if you want to die today, you'll have to ask me first. Tianming uttered. Jiang Failing goes to Princess King and she's glad that the lady is still alive. The second primordial chaos beast is about to hatch. As the egg told Tianming, he could use his birth to summon lightning and Tianming didn't expect it would be to this extent. The smoke appeared when the egg hatched. Judging by the scene, Tianming concludes that it's gonna be a fierce beast that has features of a primordial chaos beast. He then asked his third beast's name. It slowly comes out from the smoke. Its mouth is like a tiger with a claw that has sharp nails and he said that his name is Genesis Chaos Thunderfiend. When it's completely visible, it turned out to be a cat which made Tianming and Ying Huo disappointed. Tianming shouted out of annoyance. He expected that it's gonna be a fierce tiger but ended up a fluffy little thing again. He grabbed the cat and tried to search for a possible way that it can become larger. Jiang Failing saw the cat and she was thrilled at how adorable it is. Ying Huo ordered Tianming to take the opportunity and practice symbiotic cultivation with the cat while there is still a black thundercloud. As per Ying Huo, this place is the perfect place to cultivate. Since it's full of thunderclouds, there will be an abundant source of lightning source for Tianming to absorb. Tianming then grabbed the cat and start symbiotic cultivation. They were covered with protection while they were absorbing all of the lightning. While they are busy cultivating, Ying Huo asked Zhang Failing if who's more charismatic between him and the cat. But then, Zhang answered that the cat is a hundred more cuter than Ying Huo so there should no be competition. Because of her answer, Ying Huo fell down on the side. In a short span of time, the fusion of lightning and internal sources has been achieved. He has now both lightning and infernal source. After cultivating, the cat feels tired and doesn't want to cultivate ever again. All he wanted is to sleep so Ying Huo scolded him for being too lazy. Tianming concludes that his newest beast will be difficult to summon to fight in the future because of how lazy it is. Jiang Failing interrupts and told Tianming not to let the cat fight and let Ying Huo be summoned alone. Since it's obvious that Jiang Failing loves cats, Tianming let her choose a name for this lazy beast. Okay, he's laid back and has dark fur, let's call him Meow Meow. 
Diong Failing suggests, but then, Tianeming was confused about this name. But still, she let Jiang pick what she wants. After a while, Mo Lin, Chen Hao, and Xing Kui come out from the cave. The first thing they noticed is Princess King who is still unconscious. Tianeming told them that Princess King had been poisoned. Mo Lin goes near to the lady and will try to treat her since he is also a medic. After he checked, he saw that it was black devil poison which he can also treat. Mu King King is kneeling on the side. Tianeming go near her and told her that it's time for her to settle her debt. Kinking said that she belonged to Lightning Manor now so everyone will be mad at Tianeming once Tianeming will hurt her. Tianeming doesn't care and believes that Sioting doesn't have a genuine feelings for her. Kinking, do you need a mirror to see how ugly you are right now? Tianeming asked. Mu Kinking cried and asked Tianeming to spear her life. But then, Tianeming doesn't feel even a small pity for her. Chen Hao and Xing Kui overheard them so they were confused if there's something happened for the last three years. Executing Kinking is like letting her off the hook too easily which is not what Tianeming wanted. What he wants is to let Kinking live in a state in which death would do her better. She scattered Kinking's beast veins and spirit source so she will never become a spirit master again. Kinking wanted to die instead of staying alive without a life-bound beast. But Tianeming won't allow her and will let her leave and experience what he went through for the past three years. Because of the pain she received, Mu Kinking passed out. Then the heavenly pattern formation was shattered and Tianeming thought that the abyssal trial was coming to an end. He then told Zhang failing to attach to him immediately so no one can see her once they will be out on the battlefield. Mo Lin removed most of the poison to Princess King's body. And now, she finally woke up. The first thing she saw was Tianeming so she asked about Zhang failing. Jiang Failing then informed her that she almost died and that Tianeming is the one who saved her. She tried to recall what happened and then suddenly got enraged as she remembered that Mu Kinking used a taboo technique to attack her. She wanted revenge but then, Tianeming pointed at Kinking who was behind him, and told Prince Si King that he already crippled Mu Kinking and now fainted from a loss of blood. Princess King becomes thrilled after she confirms that Tianeming really saved her. Don't look at me like you've been enchanted. Even if you want to repay me with yourself, I won't agree to it. Since I can't accept such a bloody plot like flirting with my girlfriend's best friend. Tianeming stated. Princess King was annoyed by what he said so she punched Tianeming in the face. She admits that Tianeming is skilled but it doesn't mean that she will approve of Tianeming coaxing Zhang failing. Mo Ling stopped their fight as he saw something from above. It was like a passageway and two people were going down. It's a man and a lady wearing capes. According to the man, they are the vice inspectors from Heaven Elysium named Jin Yixuan and Yixu. Who's Tianeming? Show yourself. Yixu asked. Tianeming feels like these people have ill intentions and he was confused as to what the reason why they are looking for him. Disciple Lai Tianeming greets the vice inspector. Tianeming answered. Yixu asked if he was the one who took the dragonic water obelisk and Tianeming told them that he had obtained it. Yixuan ordered him to take it out for them to see. Tianeming then followed them and what he believes is that these people must be confirming the dragonic water obelisk. Yixu used her power to get the dragonic water obelisk from Tianeming. Tianeming was confused at this time. Yixuan suddenly smiled and accused Tianeming that he snatched the prize intended for the winner of the abyssal trials. Tianeming explained to them that he defeated Yuling Jai and obtained the dragonic water obelisk so he should be the first place in the abyssal trials. As per heaven's Elysium inspectors, obtaining the dragonic water obelisk doesn't mean placing first. When the dragonic water obelisk appeared, it signaled the end of the abyssal trials. It's the winner's prize. While listening to them, Tianeming believed that these two were making irrational arguments. As per the inspectors, abyssal trials were determined by the person who executed the most. Yuling Jai executed a total of eight disciples, that's why the obelisk appeared. Yuling Jai suddenly comes out in a fine state. Can you even use it? It's water type, so obviously the obelisk wasn't intended for you, she stated. The inspector then handed the dragonic water obelisk to her, and Tianeming confirmed at this point that the winner was already decided from the start. He also realized that they didn't announce the rules so they can change it at any time. If Yuling Jai obtained the obelisk, being the processor would be the winning condition. If she hadn't, killing the most would be the winning condition. A game whose ending is already decided from the start. They invited everyone to participate and made 11 people die just to send Yuling Jai to Heaven's Elysium. Tianeming started to wonder about Yuling Jai's real identity. It's a game vice inspectors decided upon. Their words are laws that Tianeming can't oppose. Before powerhouses, the weak were just mute chess pieces they could freely use. As chess pieces, they can only be moved around and discarded. Fight with me. Who do you think you are? Yuling Jai whispered after she passed to Tianeming. She then continued to walk away while laughing so loud. 
Princess Kane, Molin, Chen Hao, and Xingqi are speechless. Youngsters, I know you all must have certain thoughts now, but this is the test of heaven's elysium. I hope there won't be tongues wagging unnecessarily after this. If your future and your clans were to suffer because of this, it'll be a pity, Yixuan said. It's clearly a threat to everyone and Zhang Failing keeps whispering to Tianming about what they should do since they cannot offend Heaven's Elysium's inspectors. Yixuan admitted that Tianming really had an excellent performance in these abyssal trials that's why they decided to give him a consolation prize which is a royal mana. Yixu asked what he wanted and he answered that he wanted a lightning-type mana. He was annoyed that he ended up getting the profound mana instead of obelisk, but since he doesn't have a choice, then he needs to accept what is given. Yixu summoned a three-pronged electron spike and gave it to Tianming. They then leave and advise Tianming to work harder for him to make it to the ranks in Heaven's Elysium. Tianming then thanked them and he was also happy with what he received since this royal mana is suited for his black cat. All of a sudden, another five passageways appeared from above. It was Mu Yang with four other supernal mentors. Mu Yang then greeted the inspectors upon seeing them. Yixuan told them to take their disciples back since the abyssal trial finally ended. Mo Ling then went directly to Mu Yang and Mu Yang was glad that everyone made it out alive. They were about to leave but Yixuan called Mu Yang and told him that they will leave together since they were also heading to the Ignispolis to pick up a disciple. Upon hearing it, Tianming believes that they are referring to Lin Xiaoding. We're going to Ignispolis to pick up Lin Xiaoding. Would you mind if we went together? Yixuan stated. Mu Yang let them come together with them. They started leaving. But then, Zhang Failing noticed that Princess King was still weak so she asked Tianming to carry Princess King. All right, leave it to me. Tianming answered. Tianming then carried her on his back and Princess King's breast was pressing his back which he can also feel how soft it is. Zhang Failing scolded him as she also read what Tianming was thinking. Meanwhile, they finally arrived at Ignispolis and saw people from different clans greet the vice inspectors. Although Tianming knows that the vice inspectors have respectable identities, he didn't expect the scene to be so dramatic. Even the vermilion bird king named Zhang Chen personally came to receive them. They all greeted the inspectors and bowed down to show some respect. The king invited them to go inside and they also prepared a feast for them. But then, Yixuan rejected to attend the feast. Instead, they wanted to go directly to the Lightning Manor and test Xiaoding's talent. The Lightning Manor clan is also here together with Lin Xiaoding. Mu Qingqing called Xiaoding as if she wanted some help from his boyfriend. But then, Xiaoding ignored her and greeted the two vice inspectors and Yuling Jai. He congratulates Yuling Jai and Yuling Jai holds his shoulder while telling him to do his best once they arrive at Heaven's Elysium. Xiaoding also acknowledges the beauty of the lady and even holds her hand in front of everyone. I'll make sure not to disappoint you, Xiaoding stated. Tianming smiled because Mu Qingqing had been abandoned as what he expected. He was glad that everything was progressing just as he had predicted. Mu Qingqing's karma came too early. The vice inspectors have left so the king ordered everyone to go back to their places. Princess King and Zhang Failing greeted the king and Princess King introduced Tianming to him. Father, I want to say something on behalf of Lai Tianming. Mu Qingqing said. He told everything about what happened when the vice inspectors came to the abyssal trials and the king couldn't believe all of this. All the disciples testified and the king concludes that the winner of the abyssal trial is already planned. The sanctum potentate asked Lai Tianming to show the mana he received from the vice inspectors. Tianming then raised it and asked the sanctum potentate if he can now cure her mother Wai Jing. The sanctum potentate was shocked by the sudden question of Lai Tianming and he didn't give an answer. Potentate, it was impossible for Lai Tianming to be first because the winner was already decided from the start. I hope you understand that his performance should have earned him first place. Princess King stated to help Tianming. But then, the king told her and Zhang failing not to interfere in the Wai clan's affairs. They then leave and the potentate invites Tianming to talk inside the manor. Mu Yang also told him to follow what his grandfather would say. Tianming asked him about the possible chances but even Mu Yang said that no one can completely understand what his master thought. But then, Mu Yang reminded him about the key point which is the potentate's second sore spot. The better Tianming will perform, the less potentate will ignore him. When you get the chance, make sure to go all out. Mu Yang uttered. Inside the Wai Manor, Ling Xuan informed his brother Guo Hao that their grandfather had already returned. The first thing Guo Hao asked was about Tianming's performance in the Abyssal Trial. Ling Xuan told him that Tianming didn't get first place and the winner is a girl from Torch Dragon named Yuling Jai. While they are both talking, the potentate Tiang King has arrived together with Tiang Song, Mu Yang, and Lai Tianming. The potentate was still mad at Ling Xuan and Guo Hao and even told them that seeing youth like them annoys him. 
When Lai Tianming passed through Guo Hao, he asked Guo Hao's recovery, but then, Guo Hao didn't give him an answer and only threatened him. How ill-mannered. Don't be rude to your cousin. Anyway, I was just wondering when's a good time to beat you up again. Tianming answered and left them both. When they are inside the potentate's room, Tianming is asking once again to cure his mother's lifespan which is also the potentate's daughter. Tian King denied that Tianming is his grandson and even said that the father-daughter relationship between him and Wai Jing ended many years ago. However, the potentate also said that their deal with Tianming is not over yet, so Tianming believes that he still has a chance to save his mother. The potentate believes what the Sanctum's disciple said about the abyssal trials, but then, he also wanted to see it himself for him to judge if Tianming is worthy. If Tianming can pass his test, he's willing to save his daughter Wai Jing. Once Tianming will fail, he should stop bothering the potentate. As per Tiang King, the only reason why he will save Wai Jing is because of his contract with Tianming. And since the contract has issues, he will give Tianming another chance. Tianming thanked him while thinking that this old man cares about his honor to the point that he still doesn't want to admit that Wai Jing is his daughter. Ling Xuan disagreed that Tian Kang is giving Tianming another chance, but then, Tian Kang doesn't need her and Guo Hao's opinion. The potentate then ordered to summon of Wai King's grandson named Wai Ziyu. Lai Tianming, if you can defeat Wai Ziyu, I'll fulfill my end of the deal. To my knowledge, your combat power is greatly decreased without Princess Ling's help. Tian Kang stated, According to Mu Yang, Wai Ziyu is older than Tianming and is already in the ninth level spirit source. Tianming only smiled and was very confident in his combat ability. Meanwhile, they are already in the Wai clan's arena and the personal Wai Ziyu also appeared to fight against Tianming. I look forward to learning from you, Tianming said. Ling Xuan shouted, asking Ziyu to teach Tianming a lesson. Tiang Song cannot believe that Tianming dares to challenge a ninth level spirit source without the help of Jiang failing and even his brother underestimated Tianming since Ziyu is known for being composed. While both the disciples were in the ring, Tiang King opened up to Mu Yang. According to him, the reason why he cannot forgive Wai Jing is because of Mu Yang. When he took in Mu Yang as his disciple, he expected that Mu Yang would be his future son-in-law. In everyone's eyes, Mu Yang and Wai Jing were a perfect match made in heaven. Mu Yang told him that those things are in the past. But still, Tian Kang was still mad at the fact that his daughter Wai Jing chose Lai Yangfeng and even compared Lai Yanfeng to Mu Yang's competitor before which is Sage Chen. Master, if you really cared about me, you should let it go. Mu Yang answered. He shared with the potentate that Tianming is just an innocent child and that he likes Tianming a lot. At this time, Ziyu summoned his lifebound beast electrifying rock and his sword hellbreaker lightning saber. Tianming told Ziyu that he is no longer afraid of lightning type because he's already an infernal and lightning source twin beast master. It's time to show you how strong twin beast masters are. Come out, Tianming screamed while summoning his lifebound beasts. Ling Xuan and Guo Hao cannot believe that Tianming instantly became a twin beast master. And even their father said that both lightning and infernal sources are radiation from Tianming's body. Ying Huo then comes out carrying the lazy black cat. Ying Huo keeps scolding the cat and ordering him to defeat the opponent. The cat didn't believe it at first and only thought that they were going to cultivate. But when he saw the opponent, he became furious and blamed the enemy. Upon seeing Tianming's life-bound beasts, Guo Hao laughed and underestimated them. The opponent then rushed to both Ying Huo and Miao Miao. Ziyu at this point senses that Tianming's life-bound beasts were deceiving. Tianming then rushed to him and all of them attacked each other. A lightning storm surrounded Tianming and Ziyu and everyone was waiting to see who would be a victor. Tianming slides and comes out from the smoke but he still managed to smile. When Ziyu comes out from the smoke, he vomits blood and looks up to check his lifebound beast. Ying Huo at the moment continued attacking the opponent and the cat used his chaotic volt ball that created lightning strikes. The electrifying rock falls which mean that Ziyu is now defeated. Ling Xuan was envious that the small cat is a strong one. Her father was also dumbfounded about how Tianming accomplished becoming a twin beast master. Mu Yang is the only one proud of Tianming who manages to surprise him every time. At this time, Ziyu accepts his defeat in front of everyone. Tianming's little cat feels tired after the battle and falls asleep while in free fall. Tianming grabbed him and he smiled that he was now one of the twin beastmasters. Mu Yang approached him to ask about when he became a twin beastmaster. He then answered that his life blood pact allowed him to get two life-bound beasts. He lied that the cat is only his trump card because of its laziness. Tiang Kang was amazed that the blood pacts allowed Tianming to have two life-bound beasts of different types. He never heard of it since then. 
It's already difficult to form a blood pact with one beast that's why he was surprised that Tianming was able to do it with two. That only shows how special he is. As expected of my disciple, he's amazing, Mu Yang proudly said. Tianming then walked towards his grandfather and he kneeled without any hesitation. He asked one more time to save his mother's life. Tian Kang was speechless while looking at him. He cannot believe that a son of the trash Lai Yanfeng is incredible. Because of it, he instructed Tianming to bring Wai Jing to the high cloud chamber. He will be in seclusion for half a month and no one will be allowed to enter during that time. Tianming cannot hold himself and his tears dropped upon hearing that the potentate is now willing to save his mother's life. He continued to cry because of his happiness and even Ying Huo was emotional. Tianming shouted so loud as he was too excited. Since the cat didn't show some happiness, Ying Huo suddenly slapped him and told him to stop sleeping. A job well done Tianming, Mu Yang uttered. At the lightning manor, the two vice inspectors were welcomed by the higher-ups. Thank you, everyone, Yixuan and Yixu answered. As per Lin Ziyoding's father, they will be in-laws with Yuling in the future. Yuling Jai's father named Yuling Zio and the patriarch of the Yuling family named Yuling Hong. Yuling Jai's grandfather are also present in the Lightning Manor. Both clans are willing to bond together and look forward to Yuling Jai and Lin Ziyoding cultivating together at the Heavens Elysium. Yixuan laughed while stating that the union of the two clans will bring great power. The only thing missing from them now is assuming the leadership of Vermilion Bird Heavens Sanctum. Whatever we're about to do to the Y clan will be a huge surprise to Y Tian King. He added, as per Lin Ziyoding's father, the Y clan has hogged this heaven's sanctum for too long. He also added that the Yuling has seen so many young geniuses in the past few years. Not only do they have a miraculous Lady Long, but also a disciple like Yuling Jai who has the qualification to enter heaven's Elysium. According to Yixu, the change of leadership for any heaven's sanctum is quite a normal procedure as per heaven's Elysium. Any clan that controlled a sanctum for a prolonged time can be subjected to a contest by Elysium. It's to make sure that their newer generations aren't falling behind. Yuling Zio asked the vice inspectors if his daughter Yuling Long would be watching the battle of the day. Yixuan suddenly becomes furious and reminds him to address Yuling Long properly even if it's her daughter. Yes, pardon me, it won't happen again. Yuling Zio answered. Yixu said that Yuling Long has done everything within her power for her family. She left her family when she was young, but still has her clan in her mind. Lady Long told them to arrange a place for her family to stay while getting Yuling Jai into the Elysium. The mentioned lady named Yuling Long is Yuling Jai's younger sister. She's the daughter of a concubine, so she wasn't treated very well by the family in her childhood. Due to her father's negligence, her mother was murdered by the Duanmu clan during the chaotic clan wars. She disappeared when she was eight. Everyone thought that she had died. Who knew that after a few years, she suddenly appeared and annihilated the entire Duanmu clan. When she returned, she was already an Elysium child. When the night comes, Lai Tianming still can't get over what happened at the Y Manor. What makes him even happier is that his grandfather and his mom have reconciled. At this moment, he suddenly becomes confused as to why his mother Wai Jing gave up good men like Sage Chen and Mu Yang just for a man like Lai Yanfeng. Ying Huo then suddenly guessed that Wai Jing prefers ugly men. Upon hearing his opinion, Tianming squeezed him as he was annoyed with Ying Huo's statement. One thing Tianming is worried about is that his mother has changed after the lady returned from the Azure Domain. Ying Huo then told him that Wai Jing might have encountered something. Tianming forgets about it for now and he wakes up his little cat to refine the three-pronged electro spike. The cat becomes hysterical because for him, refining is much more troublesome than fighting and he only wanted to sleep longer. Tianeming tried to ask him once more but the cat threw the mana exactly to Tianeming's face. I'm going to sleep, the cat said. Tianeming flicks his balls causing him to get up and scream so loud. Tianeming acted to make the cat feel guilty. The cat then gets the mana and he doesn't have a choice but to refine it within a night. The next day at the lightning matter, Mu Kinking is too busy with her instrument again. She's still in pain and when she coughs, she vomits blood which makes Zayak Xiao rattled and feel worried for her. Zayak Xiao reminded her to take a long rest. But then, Kinking doesn't want to look weak in the eyes of everyone. She then remembered Xiaoding and she asked Zayak Xiao if Xiaoding will marry Yuling Jai. Zayak Xiao was surprised that Kinking knew about this matter. She cried so loud and kept apologizing to Mu Kinking as she cannot do anything. Xiaoding suddenly came, ordering Xia Xiao to leave as he wanted to speak privately with Kinking. Xia Xiao doesn't want to follow Xiaoding but he asked for some guards to ground Xia Xiao for two weeks so she cannot do anything. 
When she left, Kinking continued playing her instrument. Xioding approached her and reminded her about how crippled she is for losing her life-bound beast and for letting his spirit source be broken. You use Li Tianming as a stepping stone to get me, and now I'm doing the same. I'll be getting rid of you for a better woman, Xioding added. At this point, Kinking started to cry and her tears were blood. As per Xioding, he already told his father that Kinking will keep the Lotus Blossom Garden, and she should not leave here as he doesn't want anyone to see Kinking. Once Kinking will pass away in this manner, she will be buried in the Lin family's grave as Xioding's servant. It's my honor to be your servant even after I die. Kinking answered. Xioding cleaned his hands and removed the blood that came from Mu Kinking's mouth. Kinking is so mad while looking at the man she loved the most. While leaving, Xioding even invited her to attend his coming wedding. He will still torture Lai Tianming to avenge Kinking as his last promise to the lady. Thank you. I'll make sure to dress nicely and not embarrass you. Kinking answered while covering her ears and looked like she was going to be crazy. At the Flame Yellow Pagoda, Tianming is cultivating at the Flame Yellow Rock. He, together with his two life-bound beasts, was punching the rock. He smiled as he senses his lightning and infernal power steadily improving. Five days later, Tianming is still at the flame yellow rock and breaks through the sixth level of the spirit source. Mu Yang was so impressed by how hardworking he is. He came by as he received news that the Yulin clan and vice inspectors are still at the lightning manor. According to him, more people from the Yulin clan arrived from the torch dragon and are all currently at the lightning manor. He concludes that these people were planning something that's why they are discussing ways to take precautions. Tianming was confused so he asked Mu Yang if this will affect heaven's sanctum. But then, Mu Yang was not sure about it and they only wanted to be cautious. Aside from it, he informed Tianming that Yuling Jai's life-bound beast has evolved into an 8-star beast using the Dragonic Water Obelisk. Her dragon is now a Blizzard Spirit Dragon which means that she's now stronger than before and is spending a lot of time in secluded meditation. Tianming believes that Yuling Jai wants to reach the Unity Realm before entering Elysium. As per Mu Yang, Wai Jing will completely recover in 8 days so Tianming can now return to the Wai Manor when the time comes. Of course, that goes without saying. But before that, I'm going to stay by the Flame Yellow Rock and focus on cultivating. Tianming answered. 8 days later, Ying Huo is very excited as he feels that he has become stronger now. And as usual, the cat was still lazy and wanted to sleep again. As Tianming experienced, it's much more difficult to cultivate both infernal sources and lightning sources at the same time. But he's much stronger now than before and he's confident that he can now challenge people in the unity realm. He then grabs his cat as he decides to take a break to visit his mom. He then ran so fast while his life-bound beasts were riding on his shoulder. Ying Huo suddenly mentioned Mu Wan and compared that it's better to ride to Mu Wan since Mu Wan has two hills that are softer than marshmallows. The cat then smiled upon hearing it and suggested to Ying Huo that they should change their mount. Unfortunately, we can't. He may be bad, but at least he comes free of charge. Ying Huo answered. After a while, they arrived at the area where Wai Jing took a rest. They wait outside for Wai Jing to come out healthy. Someone then suddenly called Tianming from behind. It was Chief Mentor Mu Wan with Mu Yang. She already heard that Tianming had another life-bound beast and when she saw it, she immediately carried the cat out of excitement. Ying Huo also approached her but at this rate, Mu Wan doesn't want to play with him anymore. The members of the Wai clan also came and even Sage Chen is present to wait for Wai Jing. Meanwhile, the door opens and Wai Jing comes out and she now becomes a child. Tianming was now confused about how he should address his mother. Even the people who waited for the lady are dumbfounded upon seeing her. The potentate also comes out and educates everyone that when someone recovers from lifespan, they'll recover their appearance from before it, even if 60 years have passed. Tianming was worried upon seeing that his grandfather looked so exhausted and had a pale face. The old man suddenly pushed Wai Jing and ordered everyone to leave as he needs to rest for three months. Despite his attitude, Wai Jing knows that her father is just acting like saving her is humiliating. She then ran and hugged his son Tianming. Tianming called her a sister which made everyone laugh. When the night comes, Tianming and Wai Jing eat together. Tianming noticed something on his mother's hand and Wai Jing stated that these three rings only appeared after her lifespan was removed. There have been many through the years who have had lifespan. However, they all removed it by the first year and their arms only had one such ring. As per Wai Jing, it's possible for her that she has three because she had lifespan for far longer. She heard that these rings will boost one's cultivation speed. Her father has one but her brothers don't so she believes that they are weaker. While Tianming raised his arm, he also saw a ring and he panicked when he realized that he also had a lifespan. 
From the other's point of view, there are two people talking on the roof about Wai Jing's three Bayan rings, which means she has the bloodline of three incarnations. They did not expect that they could find an heir with three Bayan rings in this far-flung desolate land. Above the roof is a young lady together with an old woman. The old woman mentioned a Lai Saint clan who has only less than three youngsters with three Bayan rings. According to their ancestry records, this land is one of the further branches of their bloodlines. And yet, they could find a descendant with three Bane rings. They are going to bring Wai Jing back to the Grand Orient sect with them. They already have traveled to 89 nations just to find bloodline descendants. And now, they finally found the talent they needed. Before they will bring Wai Jing with them, they will observe first the lady to make sure her character is good. And if ever Wai Jing will bring Tianeming, they will let her since Tianeming has already awakened one incarnation. Going back to Tianeming, his mother was shocked upon seeing that his lifespan is different from others. She then rubs Tianeming's body for her to confirm that his son is totally fine. When she doesn't see something bad, she concludes that Tianeming might be so strong that his lifespan is cured the moment it appeared. While they are talking, Ying Huo suddenly comes out from the life-bound space. He complained to Tianeming that a booger suddenly appeared on his wings and to the cat. Wai Jing answered him that it was not a booger but a lifespane since lifespane is shared by both Beastmaster and his life-bound beasts. Ying Huo still said that he might have a booger disease so Tianeming pushed him and repeated what Wai Jing stated. He then looked at his lifespane and smiled as he believed that with this, he could now cultivate at an even faster pace. The next day, Tianeming immediately started cultivating at the Flame Yellow Pagoda. Mu Yang and Sage Chen came and Mu Yang will let him train at the second floor of the pagoda. Before they go, Tianeming handed Spirit Herb and ten times the amount of money to pay his debt from Sage Chen. They then went to the second floor and Tianeming is in the middle of the four flame yellow mirrors. These mirrors have purple heavenly patterns, and it will provide a generous amount of spirit energy to help the disciple cultivate. The primary purpose of the flame yellow mirrors is for the disciple to learn battle arts. By looking at the mirror when they practice their arts, they get to observe and reflect on their moves. The mirrors magnify the mistake they will make, thereby helping to correct these moves. Tianeming smiled as he believes that Mu Yang will teach him his battle art which is sword art. As per Mu Yang, he will teach Tianeming an art he created himself which is the demise of man earth heaven. According to him, his sword art is a heavenly ranked battle art for heavenly will stage cultivators, which surpasses unity ranked battle arts. Tianeming becomes disappointed when he realizes that he will still be trained at the spirit source stage. Sage Chen threw him a sword. This is the most valuable weapon of the Zing and Chen merchantry in the entire Vermilion Bird. This sword has both fire and lightning power, and it's a grade 6 weapon, the Grand Thunder Flare Sword. Its body is made mainly of the Thunder Wrath Profound Steel, together with 93 different kinds of spirit ores. This sword used the blood of the Seven Star Wild Beast, the Thunder Flare Lizard, and therefore contains its bloodline. This weapon has both the scorching might of flames as well as the destructiveness of lightning. Mu Yang and Sage Chen agreed that Mu Yang will teach Tianeming battle arts while Sage Chen gift him a weapon. Tianeming feels touched by their kindness. He remembered when he came here to Ignispolis without anyone's support, and his feeling now of being supported feels wonderful for him. As per Mu Yang, this sword art is the only thing he hasn't taught to Lin Xiaoding. He believes that teaching Tianeming this sword art is his only way to help Tianeming fight against Lin Xiaoding. He then grips the sword and told Tianeming that the demise of man earth heaven has a total of seven stances. The demise of man, the first stance, spectral dance. The second stance is soul extinction. The demise of earth, the first stance, earthquaker. The second stance is hell shaker. The demise of the heavens gathers a heavenly sword will. Its first stance is divine fury. Its second is heavenly judgment. And its third stance is apocalyptic will. However, apocalyptic will have the essence of the three demises combined. It's the true will of the gods. Tianeming and his life-bound beasts were focused on listening to Mu Yang. Mu Yang then handed the sword to Tianeming while ordering him to start training the four instances first. And he will come back in the next few days to answer all the questions of Tianeming. Understood. We'll learn from Spectral Dance. Tianeming answered and started the training. After several days, Tianeming looks so tired and even practices the basics in his dreams. When he gets up from the bed, Ying Huo noticed that Tianeming's hair becomes gray. He then looks into the mirror and remembered that the color of his hair is the same color as Wai Jing's hair when she had lifespan. He then realized something. He immediately checked his arm and he confirmed that his lifespan didn't end yet. The next day, Tianeming informed Mu Yang about his lifespan. 
Muyang concludes that the more rings, the better. As per Tianming, he feels much more clear-headed and these rings helped him absorb spiritual energy. Muyang told him that they will look for an answer about it the next day and that Tianming should continue practicing. Tianming then started his training with the thousand repetitions of spectral dance. On the third day, Tianming's hair looked exactly like Wai Jing's hair. Also, a third ring appeared on his arm. He believes that getting an extra ring increases his cultivation speed by a fold. Muyang said that the appearance of the rings and the change in hair color are only outward changes. What really changes is Tianming's body's constitution. Not just his cultivation speed, but also his ability to sense the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, as well as his comprehension abilities have improved a lot. What he doesn't know is whether Tianming will suffer from the same symptoms that Wai Jing got rid of for the past 20 years. Tianming continued practicing and was able to do the spectral dance which made Mu Yang surprised so he now believes that the ring really did strengthen Tianming's body's constitution and talent. On the fourth day, Tianming got another ring again, and he told his mother that he feels like this fourth ring isn't the end. He also showed it to Mu Yang and Mu Yang let him practice the soul extinction. On the fifth day, Tianming already has five rings and his lifebound beasts feel excited for him. On the sixth day, Tianming didn't get another ring so he concluded that it might be the end. Don't jump to conclusions so quickly. Both Meow Meow and I got a new mole on our left side. You should check your left arm, Ying Huo stated. Tianming then checks it immediately and he finds out that the ring also appears on his black arm. It blended to his metal arm which cannot be seen instantly. He was excited while thinking that his metal arm might receive five rings too. On the tenth day, his metal arm has five rings now and he already has a total of ten rings. He stands while holding his sword and he cannot believe the unexpected happenings to him. He told both his mother and Mu Yang about it and Mu Yang instructed him to try practicing the demise of heaven. Tianming then applied it and cast divine fury. While Mu Yang was observing, he was amazed by Tianming's talent. He believes that Tianming is scarier with 10 rings now and even Xiaoding cannot defeat him. On the 11th day, Tianming didn't get any rings and he concluded that he only had 10 rings. Wai Jing then suddenly appeared, informing him that he received a letter from the Lightning Manor. It's Lin Xiaoden fueling Jai's wedding invitation. His mother told him not to go but Tianming insisted and believed that it would be an interesting night. He was planning to settle the debt with Lin Xiaoding. At the Lightning Manor, Xiaoding and Yuling Jai's wedding is happening. Tianming really came and noticed that Yuling Jai had reached the unity stage. Mu Qingqing also attended Xiaoding's wedding and up until this point, she still looked so weak. The newlywed moved to the bridal chamber and Xiaoding removed Yuling Jai's veil, and he promised the lady that he will embrace, protect, and will never abandon her. Let us tread our path together with no regret henceforth, be it in cultivation or battle. Xiaoding added, Husband, I'm willing to love you for the rest of my life. Yuling Jai answered, they both then go to their guest and Kinking approached his ex-lover asking him to have a toast together. Kinking looks different now. She becomes so thin and looks like an old woman. Xiaoding looked at him while holding a cup. Kinking fills his cup and she then drinks while giving thanks to Xiaoding for his guidance and care all this time. I don't need to hear that from you. You should return early to rest. Xiaoding answered. He then turned his back. Yes, brother Ting. I'll leave right now. Kinking answered. Ying Huo and Tianming are looking at them and Ying Huo believes that Kinking added something to Xiaoding's wine. Tianming only smiled as he also wanted the idea to let Xiaoding suffer. Aside from that, they notice that the celebration is so large that even the people from the Vermilion Bird are almost there. While he was observing around, Zikan suddenly asked why he dyed his hair such an exaggerated color. The Y clan isn't a flashy family. Don't embarrass us, Zikan said. Tianming smiled widely while answering that this color is the most popular color of the year. Zikan also noticed Tianming's eccentric cloak. My mom made this for me. What do you think? It's handsome, right? Tianming answered while laughing. Meanwhile, the guests were informed that the vice inspectors had something to announce. As per Yixuan, the Y clan's descendants are ordinary and not enough to lead Heaven's Sanctum that's why they decided to host a Sanctum replacement challenge. Tianming was shocked upon hearing it. Even Tiangsong and Zikan can't believe their announcement. The king told the vice inspectors that what they said doesn't follow the rules. To host a sanctum replacement challenge, it needs to be verified by Heaven's Elysium and we need to receive the challenge from them directly. The king said, Are you teaching me what to do? Yixuan answered, which made the king dumbfounded, and apologized to them. Yixu then said that as the vermilion bird king and the ruler of the land, he has the responsibility of educating the descendants to ensure the future prosperity of the nation. Not only just his responsibility but also in a position that the citizens of Vermilion Bird can trust. 
Therefore, she declared that they invited the king to invigilate the challenge together and validate the battle in front of the rest of the nation. The king can't do anything but accept the vice inspector's request. Yixuan also announced that the Yuling clan is the one that requested the replacement decree and is ready to challenge the Y clan. There are three rounds to it, the battle between the older generations, the current generations, and the younger generations respectively. The two families will each send out a representative into the arena. Whoever they send out, if defeated will be swapped out, until there's no one else who can replace them. Winning in one round gives that clan one point. Whichever clan wins two points first will be the winner. During the announcement, Xioding's father also added that Yin and Yuling's clans have become one. This means members of the Lightning Manor will also fight for the Yuling clan. Zikun and Tiangsong were shocked that the two families would be challenging their clan. Tianeming was mad while looking at them. Because of it, he confirmed that the program is not just a normal wedding but all are planned. Muyong stepped forward and asked if he was also qualified to take part in the challenge since he is the future potentate of the Y Manor and a disciple of Y Tiang Kang. Yixuan said that the potentate's disciples are qualified to participate according to the rules. When the night comes, Xioding and Yuling Jai celebrate their marriage. Yuling Jai started to remove her robe while Xioding was waiting. He then went to his wife and started kissing her neck. He was enjoying the night not until he felt a pain in his stomach. He couldn't hold the pain longer so he told Yuling Jai to call someone. He screamed so loud and in just a second, his father instantly came. When he looks at his son, he believes that his son was a victim of a gelding blight. Xiaoding suspected Mu Kinking and she then shouted in anger that he would shred the lady into pieces. The next day at the Y Manor, the Y clan talked about the coming battle challenge. They started losing hope as they believed that they cannot defeat the two families. Up to this day, the potentate is still in seclusion and has barely recovered. Mu Yang promised them that he will do his best to defend the Y clan even if it will cost his life. Unexpectedly, Wai Jing suddenly cried and was blaming herself for her father's absence. Tianeming then calmed her and told her not to worry and just watch his son get rid of everyone from the Lightning Manor. I was actually trying to find an opportunity to deal with Lin Xiaoding. I've waited for three years. Lin Xiaoding, thank you for giving me this chance. I won't disappoint you, Tianeming stated. And his cousins belittled him once more. They also lose their hopes since for them. It's gonna be a battle of numbers and their clan is outnumbered. Tianeming stands as he was disappointed listening to his family who lost their hopes. He then walks away and informs them that he will cultivate and will master the stance that Mu Yang taught him. Mu Yang is speechless while looking at him leaving the place. He even doesn't know if they have a chance of winning at this rate. When Tianeming arrived at the pagoda, all the people were accusing him of killing someone. He was confused by their accusation but the people believed that he was only pretending. He overheard from the people that this person had taken her life because she was ashamed to live her life. Plus, she was in pain after witnessing the wedding of Xiaoding and Yuling Jai. The people lead him to the dead body of Mu Kinking who was hanging on the three. He was sad for Mu Kinking who never wait for three more days to witness how Tianeming and Xiaoding. She may be dead but Tianeming knows that the lady's spirit is still here. Everything is over between us now, Tianeming whispered. He didn't execute Kinking at the Abyssal Trial because believes that there were punishments worse than death. Mental torment is much more terrifying than physical torture. While she was looking at the lady, everyone noticed words written on the rock. She apologizes to Lai Tianeming for all she has done. It's a pity that this apology came too late. Once a mistake was made, there is no turning back. Xia Xiao suddenly came and was emotional. Shen then removed the rope from Kinking's neck. She looked at Lai Tianeming and blamed him for the death of Kinking. Xia Xiao, you are a good girl, perhaps, the only good person across Lightning Manor. Tianeming responded. But then, Xia Xiao was still mad at him and even called him a criminal. Tianeming is just too calm and asked if Xioding has died. Xia Xiao stopped crying as she was confused about how Tianeming know about what happened to her brother. Gelding Blight was a taboo technique topic that affected the Lightning Manor's reputation. But then, their clan already covered up the news. She shouted once more and accused Tianeming of another crime again. Tianeming turns and believes that Xioding didn't die with the poison and only suffered pain. A few years down the road, you will find out who the true devil is, Tianeming said and walked away. Xia Xiao continued crying and she saw the words written on the rock. She cried and accepted King King's death. While Tianeming was walking, a lady approached him. She's Kin Xuanyu from the occult Athenaeum. She has a message for the Y clan from the king. According to her, his majesty said that if the opponents have the intention to kill, then the Y clan should do what they want with those people from the Lightning Manor. But, they should not harm anyone from the Yuling clan and just do their best to defeat them. 
That's the Y clan's only chance of survival. She added and left. Upon hearing it, Tianming realized that the Yuling clan was the vice inspector's target of protection. Whereas, the Lightning Manor was just a clan that had value due to Lin Xioding's existence. He then grips his sword and starts practicing the apocalyptic will. Everything will be determined tomorrow. He whispered, the next day which is the day of the Sanctum Replacement Challenge. Everyone in the crowd was expecting the Y clan's defeat. The deputy inspector is personally attending the battle. The king concludes that there's little to no chance for the Y family to research. He was afraid that in the future, the two greatest families will no longer be the Vermilion Bird Royal Family and the Y family, but instead, the Lightning Manor and Yuling family. The Y family has arrived together with the Sanctum Potentate. Tianming is confident knowing that he has progressed a lot in terms of sword Dao comprehension and only needs a little push to break through the bottleneck. His grandfather knew that Tianming had a grudge against Xiaoding so he told Tianming that this was going to be his chance for revenge. The old lady asked how sure he is to defeat Xiaoding and he confidently answered that he was 110% sure. Just watch, I'll beat him so badly that he won't be able to take care of himself. Tianming added, Stop bragging. It's good to have confidence, but don't overestimate yourself. Guo Hao said, On this day, there are so many people from the Yuling family and Lightning Manor, probably in hundreds, five times more than the Y family. The Lightning Manor was ready for the challenge. While looking at them, Tianming noticed that Xioding was not present. But still, he was hoping that Xioding will appear and is capable of putting up a fight. Mu Yang's spy from the Lightning Manor informed him that Xioding got inflected with Gelding Blight. But then, Xioding will surely arrive the day after tomorrow. The king then started the opening and welcomed the competitors from each clan to enter the arena. Yixuan suddenly interrupts him and activates a heavenly formation. According to him, this is different from the ones used to keep the monsters out. They can get into this formation but they cannot get out. This way, both sides can do all out during the battle without worrying about the audience getting hurt. Once the winner is determined, he will open the formation so that the members can enter and exit. He then declared that the battle will finally begin. The potentate's brother named Y King has volunteered to take the lead so Tiang King told him to be careful since they are the only ones of the Y clan's older generation. He then went to the arena and asked the opponent who was willing to fight against him. Tianming smiled while looking at him because he knows that Y King is known as the fighting devil of the Y family. Back in the day, he almost defeated his elder brother. Lin Sheng stepped up and declared that he was willing to fight against Y King. He's too confident that he can defeat Y King because of their age gap which is he's 10 years younger than Y King. Just a coward, who can fight only with provocations. Y King answered. Lin Sheng summoned his Sky Thunder Black Panther and Y King also summoned his Heavenly Purple Rock. They both then rushed to each other together with their life-bound beasts. Mu Yang told Tianming to focus and observe the battle between two masters of the Heavenly Dao. Tianming is very interesting to learn. But then, he can't see a thing because of how fast the two masters are. For the first battle, the winner has already been decided and Y King is the victor. Want to take me on? You're still too young. Who else? Come forward. Y King said. Lin Hao comes out and this person has lost 18 times against him and wants to fight again now. He then summoned his Kang Yun electric mosquito causing Tianming to be surprised since this type of beast is good at draining the opponent's energy. He now concludes that the Lightning Manor will now focus on draining energy. The battle between Y King and Lai Hao started and in just a short time, the king declared that Lin Hao was defeated. Y King, even if you defeated me for the 19th time, so what? Look at yourself, do you think you can still beat my third brother in this condition? Lin Hao said. You are subjected to the poisonous mist of the Kang Yun electric mosquito. You will only get weaker and weaker with time. Back off. Send in the next competitor. Y King answered. The next competitor from Lightning Manor is Lin Rong. They didn't spend much time and immediately rushed to each other. When their strength collided, Y King felt that Lin Rong was much stronger than his two opponents from before. And that, the poison in him has started to kick in. Even Lai Tianming senses that Y King with his companion beast was already poisoned deeply while the current opponent is no weaker than him so Tianming believes that their side will lose this time. Y King's rock bird was struck by Lin Rong causing Y King furious. Lin Rong then rushed to him with killing intent and Y King stood while holding his long weapon and immediately attacked Lin Rong's lifebound beast to take revenge for his rock bird. Lin Rong was surprised that Y King still managed to assassinate his lifebound beast despite the situation. Y King at this point has declared that he surrendered since he believes that he cannot take it anymore. He requested the vice inspectors to open the barrier, but it seems like no one is listening to him. 
Lin Rong continued to rush to him and they both fought at a fast speed using their weapons. The king reminded Yixuan that Y King had forfeited already but Yixuan ignored him. Tianeming was annoyed that the vice inspectors were clearly biased. Since Y King became weak because of the poison, Lin Rong saw a chance to attack him and slashed his one arm. His brother Tian King was worried and shouted once again that Y King had already given up. Yixuan heard him and apologized. He reasoned that the battle was so intense which made him immersed. White King immediately comes out TK the barrier after the vice inspector opened it. Lin Rong wanted to chase and kill him but Mu Yang blocked his way. If you dare to take a step forward, I'll make you die without a burial place, Mu Yang said, causing Lin Rong to be frightened as he senses that Mu Yang's intent is so strong. Lin Rong was ordered to retreat so he cannot do anything but follow the higher up. At this point, the two brothers were emotional about what happened with Y King. Tian King then ordered someone to bring back Y King and cured him as soon as possible. This day is a battle between old Gen so Tianeming can't do anything. But then, he swore that he will defeat the opponent the day after tomorrow. Y Tian King stepped forward and was ready to battle. Yuling Hong volunteered to fight against the Sanctum Potentate. Your Excellency doesn't have to fight me to death. I'm here just to assess your strength. Yuling Hong said. Tian King didn't waste more time and immediately summoned his 8 rank Emperor Beast. Tianeming was amazed since this was his first time seeing the Emperor of a Companion Beast. Yuling Hong and Tian King started fighting together with their beasts, and Yuling Hong regretted fighting against the Sanctum Potentate because of how strong the old man was. His beast was defeated by the Emperor Beast and he even declared that he surrendered. Yixuan heard it but then, he noticed that Tian King didn't stop attacking Yuling Hong. Since their duty is to protect the Yuling clan, he then opens the barrier to let Yuling Hong come out from the arena. Tian Kang was mad and stared at Yixuan with annoyance. Lin Tao stepped forward and went inside the barrier to fight. He then summoned his lifebound beast and rode into it. Tian Kang also rode to his emperor's beast and when they both were in the middle, they let their beasts fight him while Tian Kang and Lin Tao started attacking each other. The crowd witnesses how strong the potentate is, but then, Tian Iming knows that his grandfather's style for this duel is to end it as quickly as possible which consumes more energy. And if this continues, he believes that Tian Kang won't be able to hold it for long. As he predicted, Tian Kang becomes weak and falls to the ground. He vomits blood and seems like he cannot be able to fight anymore. Everyone was worried about the potentate. Tian Kang still managed to get up but then, Lin Tao slashed him while shouting that this is the fate of the weak. He believes that he will rise to the top once he will defeat the Sanctum Potentate. The Potentate shouted, ordering Mu Yang to assassinate all the sons of the Lin clan. Mu Yang was worried for him and he then told the vice inspectors that Tang Kang already conceded defeat so he should be out of the barrier. Did he admit defeat? Why didn't I see it? Ikshuan answered, causing Mu Yang to be mad and get the sword to Tianeming. He then told everyone to stay away and cast the heavenly ranked battle art, the demise of heaven. Earthquacker that triggered the heavenly thunder. He struck the sword on the ground which creates a heavenly pattern and makes the boundary vanish. The vice inspectors were shocked upon seeing it as they didn't have any idea that Mu Yang could possibly make it. Mu Yang immediately went to his master to assist him. At this point, the audience was all silent. Mu Yang suddenly speaks. He vowed in front of everyone that he was willing to exterminate the clan of anyone that will kill his master. He then guided Tian King to leave the arena which made Lin Hao tremble in anger. The crowd was amazed by what he did and for them, Mu Yang deserves to be the next patriarch. The Lightning Manor's patriarch is asking the vice inspectors to execute Mu Yang for interfering with the other's battle. Even the vice inspectors regret letting the disciples be allowed in the duel. As per Yixuan, rules cannot be changed since the battle has already been started. Don't be too emotional. From my point of view, Mu Yang was just anxious. Alright, why Tian King was defeated, so it's why Manners lost today with the Yulin clan gaining one point. The king told them. Yixuan also said that they should not stir up problems unnecessarily since Lady Long wouldn't like it if the whole country was agitated and the lady hates big commotions. The king then declared to everyone that the matches had come to an end for this day. He also informed both sides to prepare for the competition for the current generation. The next day, it will be the second day of the battle. Up until this point, Tianeming still didn't see Lin Xioding in the arena so he concludes that Xioding needs more time to recover for a while longer. One person then catches his attention. His father Lai Yanfeng is present. Tianeming then believes that Lai Yanfeng will surely fight on behalf of Lightning Manor's clan. At this time, the battle is going to start and the heavenly pattern formation is being activated. Let's cut the nonsense, let the battle between the current generation begin, the king declared. He also reminds all the participants to not interfere anymore. 
they should not pursue an opponent who has conceded defeat. He then instructed both sides to send their people inside the heavenly pattern. According to Tiang King, there are simply too many opponents and the opponents may use the wheel warfare so he advises Mu Yang to join the battle at the end and let Tang Song and Zikun destroy a few first. Mu Yang agreed to him and Zikun then took the lead. He goes inside the heavenly pattern and Lai Yanfeng is the one who wants to fight against him. The last person that Zikun is scared of is Lai Yanfeng since this man is the definition of cannon fodder. Wai Jing was annoyed that Yanfeng had the guts to fight on behalf of their adversary. The crowd was also looking forward to Lai Yanfeng as this will be his chance to prove himself. Zikun smirks as he knows that Yanfeng just recently reached heavenly will. Lai Yanfeng on the other hand was confident that he is now much stronger than before. He then summoned his sky white flame bird and vows that he will execute Zikun today. Zikun smiled and belittled Yanfeng's lifebound beast. He summoned his five clawed Vajra rock while saying that Yanfeng can only spend his life as other people's dogs. Yanfeng was mad upon hearing it. He then rushed to Zikun and wanted that Zikun would kneel down to him and beg for mercy. Kneel for a punk like you. Have you forgotten how my father kicked you out? Zikun answered while also rushing to Yanfeng. They started attacking each other and one old man from the Lightning Manor thought that Lin Yanfeng reached a tie with Wai Zikun. But then, the Lightning Manor Patriarch disagreed with him, and as for him, Zikun and Yanfeng are not a tie. When the old man focused on the battle, he now realized that there was a big gap between the participants. Yangfeng easily slashed Zikun and his eyes were full of hatred and determination to kill Zikun. He activates the hellish downfall sword art first stance, Yellow Springs, a lifeless hell sword that made everyone shocked how Yanfeng made it happen if he just breakthroughs. The green flame with a skull on it surrounded Zikun and even Zikun was confused about how Yanfeng became so strong. Yanfeng is rushing to him while holding a sword. He was also flaming and when he was about to strike Zikun, the Vajra rock blocked the sword to save him. Yanfeng smiled and was ready to execute Zikun but Zikun conceded defeat and surrendered. Even if he conceded, Yanfeng still attacked him and a big explosion happened. Zikun suddenly ran away and was asking to open the exit. Yixuan commented that if not for Zikun's life-bound beast covering him, he would have died in Yanfeng's attack. He opened the exit since the king was asking him. At this point, Tianeming was furious and confused why his father Lai Yanfeng suddenly became powerful. As per Yanfeng, he achieved the peak of unity five years ago, but he came from a lowly background with no support, and he has no heavenly will techniques. He said that God has forsaken him for five years just because he has no backing. He never wasted a single second of five years. Even without the techniques, he tried to develop his own heavenly will, and today, he proudly declared that he's here to execute every single person who still looks down on him because of his background. Tiang Song entered the heavenly pattern and instantly rushed to him. They are fighting using their swords. The Lightning Manor Patriarch then screamed to say that their manor respects those who climbed from humble beginnings. And if Yang Feng can bring Tiang Song's head to him, he promised that Yang Feng can be the second in charge within their manor once he will retire. Other than my son and I, you will be the one with the most power. He added, Yang Feng thanked him for his recognition and he was now ready to cut down Wai Tiang Song's head and give it to him. He attacked Tiang Song and even their lifebound beasts were fighting each other. The crowd witnessed how Lai Yanfeng became more powerful just now. One man concludes that Yanfeng became like this because of how Tiang King looked down on him back then and still holding on to that hatred until now. Since Mu Yang also saw that Tiang Song would be defeated, he ordered Tiang Song to concede as he was willing to take over. He doesn't want Tiang Song to be hurt so much which makes his master feel sad again. At this moment, Tiang Song is already wounded and he believes that if he tries to force things in this battle, only Wai Jing will be the only one who will send off their father in the future. That's why he followed what Mu Yang ordered, he surrendered. Wai Jing, do you see this? Your Wai family is nothing special. All this time, I've never had the chance to announce it. However, I want to clear up something since I have the chance today. Some believe I've let down that mother and son. However, today, I want to tell everyone, I owe Wai Jing nothing. Lai Yanfeng declared. He confidently told in front of everyone that Lai Tianeming is not his son. According to him, Wai Jing found him when she was three months pregnant and both of them agreed to marry. After Wai Jing gave birth to Tianeming, she suffered from a disease so they truly never became husband and wife. The crowd was making fun to think that Yanfeng got a free son from Wai Jing. They become interested with what Yanfeng said so they're all waiting for another word from Yanfeng. Instead of being sad, Tianeming was glad that Yanfeng was not his father. He now understands why Yanfeng chose to help Kai Yang rather than him. Now, he won't feel burdened in his heart when dealing with Yanfeng. 
On the other hand, he was also confused about the real identity of his father, one daughter pregnant out of wedlock and two incompetent delusional trash. Why Tianqing, how could you look down on me with such a kid? Now, I'll kill your favorite disciple. Jianfei uttered and Tianqing stared at him angrily. Silence, you willingly married Jing'er in hopes of latching onto Wai Manor. And look at what you're doing now. Don't you feel embarrassed? Mu Yang answered. He was about to fight against Tian Feng but Sage Chen came and was willing to fight on behalf of the Wai clan. Sage Chen ordered Wai Jing to announce that both of them were relatives so that he can freely help Wai Manor. Wai Jing then accepted it. For the sake of the Wai family, she has long cared nothing of worldly fame. They go in the middle and worship. Sage Chen's wife almost passed out because of what they are doing. At this point, Wai Jing and Sage Chen announced that they are now husband and wife causing the Wai clan to be dumbfounded. Yixu wanted to stop Wai Jing and Sage Chen but Yixuan was having fun with this setup. Sage Chen then entered into the heavenly pattern and Yan Feng immediately challenged him that surrendering in their fight is not allowed. Sure, I don't like executing people, but today I'll make an exception for you. Sage Chen answered. Yan Feng then rushed to Sage Chen and in his mind, killing and surpassing Sage Chen was worth more than killing Wai Tiangsong. He was excited to make a name by executing Sage Chen. Sage Chen is just waiting for him. He summoned his octo-starred imperial lion and it instantly attacked Yang Feng's life-bound beast. Yan Feng and Sage Chen also fought using swords and Yan Feng was annoyed because Sage Chen always countered all his moves. From what he noticed, Sage Chen didn't use a single move while he used up all his moves which is already a big difference from them. Defeating Wai Tiangsong made you think that you're matchless in the Vermilion Bird. With that hellish downfall sword art, do you intend to challenge Mu Yong? Watch closely Lai Yongfeng, and witness what a real heavenly ranked battle art is. You think you're the only person in the world who worked hard for five years, Sage Chen stated. And his dragon blows a star river annihilation that creates a powerful lightning and the lion becomes so big that it makes the heavenly pattern formation broken. It's so powerful that even Tiananmen covered his ear. But then, Mu Yang was not surprised as he was used to seeing Sage Chen become stronger and stronger. The vice inspectors on the other side were annoyed as they didn't expect that Sage Chen is so strong. Yixuan even thought that Sage Chen was just a small character who was clamoring for attention. Because of the annihilation that the lion blew, Yan Feng spit some blood and he was full of wounds. Sage Chen has pierced four of his seven spiritual sources, and now, Yan Feng has lost most of his power. Sage Chen can certainly take his life as this is a death match. However, on account of giving Wai Jing a home for how many years, Sage Chen chose to give some mercy to him. Sage Chen admitted that Lai Yan Feng is indeed strong. But according to him, Yan Feng doesn't have the heart of an expert and only has hatred. He ordered Yan Feng to go back to his place and get lost in Ignispolis. You and I have a huge difference in strength. Today, I accept my defeat with conviction. Yan Feng answered. His wife Louis King was about to go and will assist him but the Lightning Manor Patriarch stopped the lady. And he even screamed that Lai Yan Feng is a useless man. Yan Feng will have no use to the Lightning Manor now. And he was ordered to stay away from his wife Louis King and not to show his face ever again. Louis King cannot accept the decision of the patriarch while his brother Kian Yang was still glad since Yan Feng had a lot of benefits to their manor so he was sure that the Lightning Senor and Marshall will reward them greatly. Upon hearing what the patriarch said, Lai Yan Feng was furious as he didn't expect this to happen. He clenched his fist and he suddenly laughed so loud. He walks away while his head is down. Tianeming is staring at him and he doesn't feel any pity as he remembers how Yan Feng treated them. The vice potentate instructed them to continue the duel and Sage Chen instructed the remaining people from the Lightning Manor not to come down as he will leave them to Mu Yang. But, he challenged the two remaining men from the Yuling clan. The two men then went into the heavenly pattern and were very confident that they would defeat Sage Chen since the battle was one as to two. Without wasting more time, they immediately attacked each other together with their life-bound beasts. Yin Huo came out and saw how Sage Chen defeated two men in just one snap. Who are those two comedians? Ying Huo asked. Sage Chen comes out from the heavenly pattern and will let Mu Yang do the rest. Mu Yang then summoned his ink Killin and he confidently declared that he is now ready to fight. He said that he doesn't want to fight for too long so he also challenged the three remaining participants from the Lightning Manor. The three men were shocked and they even think that Mu Yang, challenging them there is no different from suicide. Since none of them went to the heavenly pattern, their patriarch shouted at them and ordered them to move. They then rushed to Mu Yang together with a woodland thunder wasp, tempest high wolf, and vajra arm nape. 
before they attacked. They kept underestimating Mu Yang and they even thought that they could execute Mu Yang in this battle. Mu Yang is just so calm riding on his life-bound beast without any words, and they all then attack each other. As Ying Huo noticed, the three men were strong so he concluded that Mu Yang was at a disadvantage. But then, Tianeming was very confident in Mu Yang. He believes that Mu Yang's aim is clearly not just to win. According to him, these three men are the main members in the middle-aged generation of the Lightning Manor, and that Mu Yang wanted to end them today. He was thinking that if Mu Yang fights a normal battle, then at least one of his opponents will surrender and escape to death. He concludes that Mu Yang doesn't want to miss this opportunity to kill these men. Mu Yang is the ink killin' with dual attributes. He casts his Demise of Man, Soul Extinction, and the three men fall to the ground. He cast another skill but this time, it's the demise of Earth, the Earthquaker. A flame then appears that creates a line going to his enemy. At this time, the Lightning Manor Patriarch realized that they had fallen into Mu Yang's scheme. He screamed, ordering his three sons to concede defeat. But he was too late since Mu Yang is casting Heavenly Judgment, the demise of Heaven, divine fury that creates a giant flame. Both of these three men were slashed into halves when Mu Yang attacked them with his flaming sword. Tianeming was amazed as he witnessed how powerful the original fury was. The Lightning Manor Patriarch was emotional as he witnessed how his sons were being killed by Mu Yang. In my whole life, I was never one to pick a battle with those who meant me no harm. But if people insist on making me suffer, to hurt those that I love and treasure, they will pay the price in blood. Mu Yang uttered. He acknowledges Tianqing for making his whole life possible. Tianqing taught him everything that he knew, even passing him the position of the Sanctum Potentate over his own sons. Therefore, if the Lightning Manor wishes to eradicate the Y Clan, he's willing to execute every last soul of the Lightning Manor. The Lightning Manor Patriarch vomits blood and he is sad that his son is no longer alive. The Vice Inspectors already expected that the Lightning Manor will be defeated against Mu Yang but they never thought that the battle would end like this. That guy is even qualified to join Heaven's Elysium as Vice Inspector. We better not mess with him, or he will ruin the competition. Yixuan said, As per Yixu, we'll most likely give up on Lin Xiaoding. She said that the Lightning Manor no longer has any value so there's no need to look after them now. Xiaoding suddenly appeared and he was worried that his father died and his grandfather passed out. He was mad and he swore that he will murder every last person that Mu Yang know, and torture him until he longed for death. Lin Xiaoding, you said you will torture my uncle Yang until he wishes to die. Tell me, how about you? Don't you wish that you still had a certain something? That's right. I'm talking about the gelding blight that made your manhood shrivel and rot away. How does it feel to become something that is neither male nor female? Is it cool to be a eunuch? Eunuch Lin, Tianeming said to tease Xiaoding. Everyone in the crowd laughed so hard because of what Tianeming said. And Xiaoding grits his teeth because of anger. Tianeming then told him that Kinking is still watching him from under the tree. Pull yourself together and tell everyone here. Tell them about how you stole my Saint Beast War soul, murdered my life-bound beast, and then pushed all the blame to me three years ago. Tianeming stated. The whole stadium went silent. And suddenly, a lot of discussion and commotion from the crowd. Stop spouting nonsense. Do you have any evidence? Why Tianeming? Do you dare face me tomorrow in front of everyone in a death match? Xiaoding answered. He declared that only one person shall walk out of the heavenly pattern formation alive. Tianeming then confidently accepted his challenge. He has longed for this day and tomorrow is the day that he will kill Xiaoding with his own hands. From the other point of view, Princess King and Failing wanted to come out to go to the duel. But the guards don't want to let them leave is what the king ordered. They don't have a choice but to go back to their room. Jiang Failing raised his finger as she unsealed another ability from her nails. She wanted to escape to help Tianeming with his battle tomorrow. Her new ability is called a spatial wall. It can create an invisible wall, and can even hide people behind it. Since she's still not proficient with it, she asked Princess King to help her increase its proficiency. And once it will happen, they can use it to escape and attend the duel, and make sure to meet Tianeming before his decisive battle. The sky is raining and Tianeming and his mother finally come home. Since no other people were with them, Tianeming seized the opportunity to ask about his real father's identity. Why Jing really didn't know how to tell it to Tianeming, and she had been bothered by it for too long. That year, she was about Tianeming's age. She was fourth of the heavenly septuplets, while Mu Yang was first. During training once, she went to the eastern domain of the abyssal battlefield alone. The eastern domain also has a tall month phoenix. That time, she climbed to the top. And there, she met the real father of Tianeming. And then, what happened? Sparks flew, and a flame was set ablaze between the two of you. Ying Huo suddenly said. Tianeming punched him as he was annoyed that Ying Huo interrupted his mother's story. 
Wai Jin continued her story. According to her, sometimes, the man she met on the mountain was just a blurry shadow. He couldn't be seen and touched. But other times, he was a real person who can be touched. Wai Jing found it really interesting so she began having a conversation with him. The man said that he was going through the most painful time of his life. He was trapped in the position and was at risk of dying any moment. He said it was really boring in the cave, so he asked Wai Jing to talk to him. Wai Jing had an outgoing personality so she started talking about herself. Wai Jing said that the man was really a funny person to talk to. He tells a lot of jokes and would say that he was the most extraordinary person in the world. He was such a boaster. It kind of reminds Wai Jing of how Tianming is right now. He talks about many mystical things, making Wai Jing believe that he came from a very far world. He said that mortal beastmasters can become saints and extend their life to leave for thousands and millions of years, and those who overcome the twelve life-death tribulations become gods. They'll become immortals who can look down on life for eternity. He also said that Wai Jing looked like a fairy, in all of his years living through the constant edge of both life and death. He rarely met people like Wai Jing, naive, pure, and unconstrained. Wai Jing was thrilled, saying all of this is making her feel shy. Tianeming was also excited while listening to his mother. After around 20 days that the man and Wai Jing are seeing each other, Wai Jing realized that the man was very mysterious, intelligent, and interesting. She started liking him, but she wasn't expecting anything to happen. Since their worlds are far apart to the point, she wondered if he was just a part of her dream. But one day, the man was extremely upset and angry. He said that his location had been exposed. His enemies have discovered his location. He's not willing to just allow them to take everything away from him. But there's literally nowhere he can hide. When he painfully told this to Wai Jing, Wai Jing thought he was just joking so he could scare Wai Jing. So then, Wai Jing asked him what he was hiding and that Wai Jing would safeguard it for him and make sure that no one will ever find out. He said that the only way was through passing it down his bloodline. That's why they make love. And after that, he said he would lure those people away. And Wai Jing never saw him again. Tianeming feels that his mother's story is fake while Ying Huo stated that their mother has been scammed. But Wai Jing was confident in this man since the man never lied to her. You have the thing he wanted to protect. Or else, where do you think those ten eggs in your life-bound space came from? Wai Jing said. Upon hearing it, Tianeming was shocked that his mother knew about the ten eggs in his life-bound beast. He now realized why his mother was not surprised at his strength. As per Wai Jing, she tried to hide it since no one wants to believe her. Somehow, Lai Yanfeng found out about her pregnancy. And for Tianeming, she accepted Yanfeng's proposal. Before the man left, he told Wai Jing to wait for three months for him. He said that if he doesn't return, it means he is dead. Wai Jing waited three months for him, but he never appeared. She couldn't hide her pregnancy anymore either. She doesn't know if the man died since his existence is beyond their knowledge. But if Tianeming will encounter him one day, Wai Jing is very sure that Tianeming will realize him right away. She was confident to say this because the man also has a black arm just like Tianeming. Tianeming now realized that his arm is from his father's genes. Wai Jing also told him that he doesn't need to change his name because his father's surname is also Lai. And his complete name is Lai Maiang. Tianeming was excited as he thought that it was Mu Yang but then, his mother said that it was just a coincidence and has nothing to do with the vice potentate, Mu Yang. That name, what a coincidence, Tianeming answered. He then informed his mother that he will be heading to the Flame Yellow Pagoda as he feels that his level will increase tonight. When he comes out, the rain is dripping just like the night three years ago when his first life-bound beast was murdered helplessly. Princess King and Zhang Failing also came to the pagoda and they saw each other. When they went inside, Failing informed Tianeming that she has a new ability. Tianeming was amazed by it as he knows that Failing can not only block the opponent's long-ranged attack, but she can also remain invisible while doing so. Because of it, she invited Failing to cultivate together so he can break through. Failing agreed to him while Princess King was annoyed that she seemed like a third wheel for them. They started cultivating and there's someone who's observing them. It was an old lady together with a lady that is the same age as Tianeming. The next day, it will be the last duel. People were expecting that Tianeming would be defeated. But then, some also feel pity for Tianeming because of how he was robbed by Xiaoding. Up until this day, it was still raining so hard but there are still a lot of people to witness who will win. The vice inspectors then announced that the battle would begin. Tianeming's eyes are flaming. The day he was waiting for has now arrived. Yesterday, he successfully leveled up to an 8-level spirit source. Today's fight won't be as exciting for him. The one who takes the lead is Yu Lingji. She was riding her lifebound beast and was very confident to fight against Tianeming. 
Lai Tianming. There are no grudges between us, and I don't wish to be the main character today either. I won't kill you easily, but I'll let you realize that the difference between us is something you can never erase in your entire life. You'll definitely lose your life today. On the day of your death, I'll definitely let you experience the true power of Heaven's Elysium's disciple. This is the greatest gift in your life, I, Yu Lingji, giving you. Yu Lingji uttered. You're done talking, right? Then I'll begin now. Tianming answered. He then summoned Ying Huo and Miao Miao. At this time, Miao Miao is very determined to fight and help Tianming win this match. Tianming then ordered them both to fight against Yu Lingji and her life-bound beast since he believes that Yu Lingjai isn't worth fighting. I'm not worth fighting. Are you mentally retarded or something? Yu Lingjai answered. Let's talk about it if you can first defeat my two little brothers, Tianming said. Yu Lingjai was annoyed and immediately rushed to Tianming but the one who faced her was the cat and chicken of Tianming. She slashed Ying Huo but Ying Huo activated his purgatory shield to block her attack. Ying Huo also uses his demise of man and ghost blades causing Yu Lingjai annoyed as she never thought that the chicken has sword tactics. When Ying Huo attacked her using the demise of man, soul extinction, it was so strong causing her to flew away and slam on the ground. The cat is surrounded by purple lightning strike and he becomes a giant life-bound beast as he activates his Genesis Chaos Thunder Fiend. He then rushed to the blizzard dragon and attacked it without hesitation. Yu Ling Jai feels worried for her life-bound beast upon seeing that it was electrocuted by Miao Miao. She was so clueless as to why her opponent was too strong. She's already in the unity realm and she doesn't want to lose against the companion beasts of the spiritual source realm. She cast a powerful skill and is willing to end Ying Huo's life. Ying Huo on the other hand doesn't feel scared as he was confident in his ability. When Yu Ling attacked him, he used the sword art that Mu Yang taught them. The crowd also witnessed it and they saw how Yu Ling Jai became so weak because of a little chicken. Yu Ling Jai is already spitting blood and is kneeling on the ground. Tianeming went in front of her to ask her if she still wanted to fight. Your 8-star beast doesn't seem so scary after all. Your pathetic state at the unity stage has ruined my expectation for it. Does Heaven's Elysium really accept trash like you? Tianeming uttered. Yu Ling Jai at this point cannot hold back the pain anymore. She took back everything she said and she asked for mercy from Tianeming. I've lost. I concede. Lai Tianeming. I admit defeat. Yu Ling Jai stated while she was vomiting blood and she was crying so badly. The audience is in an uproar. They cannot believe that a person they underestimate has defeated Yu Ling Jai. All they thought was that Tianeming was just pretending to be strong. Lin Xiaoding with his father, the Lightning Manor potentate was staring at Tianeming and already furious. Tianqing was also impressed by how his grandson managed to become stronger in a short period of time. Wai Jing on the other hand was emotional to see that his son changed a lot. This kid is far stronger than before, Princess King said, and Failing was proudly looking at Tianeming. As per the vice inspectors, nothing went according to their plan since their side was almost defeated. When Tianeming saw Xiaoding, he immediately ordered Xiaoding to come down and fight each other. Your melodramatic revenge plot has sincerely touched me, Xiaoding said, and he went inside the heavenly pattern formation while reminding Tianeming that their battle is a life and death duel. The fight won't end unless one side dies. The heavy rain today is the same as it was three years ago. For three years, Tianeming has been waiting for this. These past three years, he hasn't forgotten how Jin Yu was tortured to death. Now, he wanted to repay that pain twofold. Lin Xiaoding, today is your death day. He stated, Don't think you're invincible just because you defeated Yuling Jai. You are way too weak. Xiaoding answered and dashed towards Tianeming. Tianeming wanted to execute Xiaoding with his own hands so he instructed his two life-bound beasts not to interfere and just stand by. The crowd was shocked that Tianeming sent back his companion beast. The fight is 1 versus 3 since Xiaoding summoned his scarlet terrestrial beast and four-eyed divine lightning eagle. Tianeming was holding a sword and ready himself to attack. He cast the demise of man, spectral dance, and slashed his opponents one by one at a fast speed. Xiaoding was already wounded and he was kneeling on the ground. Xiaoding, Xiaoding, this is just the beginning. Come, let's continue, Tianeming uttered. Everyone in the crowd was jaw-dropping seeing Tianeming in the lead even without his life-bound beasts. Tianeming rushed to Xiaoding fearlessly, and Xiaoding also did the same. Xiaoding was holding his Scarlet Electro Halberd and he was attacking Tianeming with it, but Tianeming only used his metal arm to block the enemy's attack. Xiaoding was shocked upon seeing that Tianeming was easily blocking his weapon. At this point, he ordered his two life-bound beasts to rip Tianeming into shreds. But then, before both beasts can go near Tianeming, Tianeming strikes an attack using the demise of man, spectral dance, 
and Xiaoding's lightning eagle is slashed into its wing. The eagle fell to the ground near Tianming, and Tianming ordered Ying Kuo and Miao Mao to rip out all of the eagle's feathers and store it away. He will put it before Mita's grave. Xiaoding was furious and immediately cast his Saint Beast War Soul. It was the War Soul that he stole from Tianming three years ago. He then rushed to Tianming with his remaining beast and Tianming also dashed to face him. He still remembers every detail that happened three years ago. Xiaoding attacked Tianming at a fast speed and everyone was looking above to witness the fight. Tianming is also attacking Xiaoding in a speedy move. Even the audience cannot see anything because of how fast they are. Although Lai Tianming is fighting against two opponents, it's still obvious that he's much faster. Xiaoding was annoyed because Tianming is fighting with ease even though Xiaoding's Scarlet Suini Beast is giving it all out. Tianming saw an opening and seized the opportunity to punch Xiaoding in the face. Xiaoding vomits blood and he flew away to his lifebound beast. Tianming at this time is holding the sword that Sage Chen gave to him and he throws it exactly to Xiaoding. The sword was struck on the ground in front of Xiaoding and Tianming cast his demise of Earth, Earthquaker. Xiaoding's eyes becomes big as he saw how big the flame is and it was heading to him. The two vice inspectors were dumbfounded as they witnessed that the technique Tianming casting is giving off heavenly will stage vibes. And the king on the side is secretly happy as he supported the Y clan. Xiaoding was full of bruises and lumps and he was sad to see that his last lifebound beast is also dead because it blocked the Earthquaker to save him. Your Scarlet Suini Beast was willing to die for you. You're even worse than a bastard, Tianming uttered. Xiaoding grits his teeth and even though both of his lifebound beasts are all dead, he still cannot accept that he lost the match. He stands and activates a taboo technique, Devil Blue Incantation. Everyone was shocked and even Jiang Failing was worried for Tianming. But Tianming was not surprised and he was still calm. Xiaoding guffaws as he thought that he would win this time but then, Tianming choked him. Tianming was staring at Xiaoding with hatred and he slammed Xiaoding on the ground. Xiaoding cannot believe that he cannot still able to fight despite that he used the Devil Blue incantation. He is also confused about how Tianming becomes so strong after three years and he concludes that Tianming might hide his true strength all this time. Tianming was still choking him until he admit that he was wrong. He also accepts defeat and he was begging for a quick death. Ha, huh. wishful thinking, give you a quick death. Who will pay for what I experienced for the past three years then? The world is fair. For every debt, there is a debtor, and I have finally come to collect. Tianming answered. Xiaoding is already crying and he remembered the time after he stole the Saint Beast War soul from Tianming. He showed it to his grandfather and his grandfather asked where did he found it. He then answered that he got it from a poor, powerless countryside boy. His grandfather also asked if he killed the true owner of the soul beast and he answered no. He was boasting that Tianming was yelling and screaming about sending him to hell one day that's why he murdered Tianming's lifebound beast. I even pushed the blame on him and made it, so I was the hero of the story. Did I do it right, Grandpa? He added. But then, his father was in favor that he should have killed Tianming and searching for Tianming's background to rid the world of those related to him. At this present battle, Xiaoding's grandfather, the Lighting Manor's patriarch was also crying and was begging the vice inspectors to save his grandson. But, no one listens to him. Tianming continued torturing Xiaoding in front of the audience and everyone can hear the painful scream of Xiaoding. The audience looks away and some covered their ears. Lin Xiaoding's screams continued for an hour. Those were mournful screams. Perhaps, centuries later, this would still be passed on from parent to childhood. The story of the day Lin Xiaoding suffered the punishment of death by a thousand cuts. Since the Yulin clan and the Lightning Manor lose the duel, the vice inspectors regretted picking the Vermilion Bird, thinking that the Lightning Manor would be strong enough to help the Yulin clan. After the battle, Tianming took back the Saint Beast War Soul that was originally to him, and Yixuan now believed that the true owner of the War Soul is Tianming. He called Tianming and Tianming politely answered him. As per Yixuan, since Lin Xiaoding is dead and Tianming reobtained his Saint Beast War Soul, Tianming can replace Lin Xiaoding and go to Heaven's Elysium. Upon hearing it, Tianming was surprised by the vice inspector's offer. The sun started rising. Yixuan said that if Tianming wanted to accept the offer, he can go to the Heaven's Elysium after three days. According to him, everything Lin Xiaoding has is now to Tianming. Tianming successfully made them choose to place importance on him and give up on Lin Xiaoding. He even said that it will be a waste if Tianming's talent is buried in a place like a vermilion bird, and that the optimal choice for Tianming is Heaven's Elysium, the overlord of the Grand Orient realm. 
Tianming was still speechless but he was focusing on listening to Yixuan. Let me break it down for you. With your talent, you might still not have entered heavy will within 10 years in such an area with poor resources. Here, mana, spirit ores, herbs, and hazards, they're all lacking. Or still, the people here have too small a worldview and are narrow-minded. Yixuan added, Heaven's Elysium is where all the resources of the Grand Orient Realm are gathered. Countless high-quality mana, even terrestrial and celestial mana are there. There are also droves of geniuses competing there. Yixuan said too much as he wanted to force Tianming to go at Heaven's Elysium. As for him, it will be the perfect chance for Tianming to replace Ziyoding since he has regained the Saint Beast War soul. If you don't wish to trouble us, you may use Lin Ziyoding's name. In the end, it's up to you if you have the boldness to seize your future. Yixu uttered. Tianming was annoyed as she didn't like how the vice inspectors handled things. But, going to Heaven's Elysium is an appealing option for him. He was thinking that if he accepted the offer, he would be going to a place far away. The person he'll miss the most is his mom. He wanted to ask first for his mother's opinion. He knows that it would be a hard decision for any mother to send her son into a new world filled with unimaginable risks and danger. He looked at Wai Jing and Wai Jing nodded. She wanted Tianming to follow his heart and chase his dream. Even the audience is cheering for Tianming to accept the offer as they believe that Tianming really belongs in Heaven's Elysium. They are also shouting that they will make Tianming their role model from now on. Tianming smiled and told the vice inspectors that he will go. However, he wanted to use his own name and make a name for himself. Both vice inspectors smiled and accepted what he wanted. They then leave and remind Tianming to prepare as he will go to Heaven's Elysium after three days. Yuling Jai, stop being in a daze. Hurry up and follow us, Yixuan ordered. And Yuling Jai then instantly followed them. As the vice inspectors and the Yulin family departed, it announced the Heaven's Sanctum Replacement Challenge. As Lai Tianming became Heaven's Elysium's disciple, the Lightning Manor was left with nothing. They will only be humiliated waiting for them. From now on, the Lightning Manor was no more, and Lai Tianming and Mu Yang were destined to be the peak of Vermilion Birds. That night, an intruder assassinated the drunk Lightning Sainor. At the same time, Leo Oing's whereabouts became unknown. At the Y Manor, they celebrated their victory and celebrated Tianming's identity as a Heaven's Elysium disciple. As per Tianqing, Tianming has truly astonished him today. Tianming widely smiled and acknowledged Mu Yang as his great instructor. I didn't teach you well, it's your talent that's extraordinary. Mu Yang answered. Tianxong and Zikun also apologized to Lai Tianming and Wai Jing for their ignorance before and for not accepting them instantly in their family. Wai Jing smiled and told them that they should drop all grudges and help their father together. Tianqing also ordered the youngsters to apologize to Tianming. There's nothing wrong with being ignorant while you're still young. Now that you've learned your lesson, remember to behave as members of the Wai clan should. Tianming stated, and his cousins now politely accepted what he said. At this time, the Vermilion Bird also came together with Zhang Failing and Princess King. The king explained to them that the two inspectors completely prevented him from helping. Now, he was ashamed he didn't really help the Y clan much this time. He was glad that the Y clan had also helped him root out the Lightning Manor which was plotting against his throne. Tianqing told him that there was nothing for him to be ashamed of. He suggested moving on and preparing for a better relationship in their nation. If your majesty really is uncomfortable, why not grant a small wish for my grandson, Lai Tianming? Tianqing uttered. The king then looked at Tianming and he believed that Tianming is definitely worthy of being the younger generation's role model. He asked for Tianming's wish and he promised that he would agree to it as long as it was within his ability. He doesn't know that Tianming is focusing on Zhang failing. Tianming's face becomes serious and fearlessly tells the king that he likes Zhang failing. The king's mood instantly changed and he walked away. Zhang failing told her father to just permit Tianming as she also wanted to go to Heaven's Elysium. She even warned her father that she would sneak out if he did not agree to what Tianming wanted. The king cried as he couldn't bear to send his daughter to such a faraway place. Tianming admits that his journey will be dangerous so he promised to the king that he will ensure the safety of Zhang failing. The father and daughter are both emotional and Princess King told Tianming to wait for at least three days for the approval of the king. Tianming then agreed to her and he said that he will visit the Vermilion Bird Palace after three days in the hope of his majesty granting his wish. Although he says that, he can tell that the Vermilion Bird King treasures failing deeply. He believes that the chances of bringing her with him are slim. Meanwhile, Tianming visits Mita's grave and puts the feathers of Xiaoding's eagle in front of the grave. Even though this first beast of him is already dead, he still informs that he will go to Heaven's Elysium soon. 
Let's be brothers again in the next life. Tianming uttered. Two days later, Tianming went back to the Y Manor from Mita's grave. His whole family was worried for him as he didn't come home for two days. Tianqing then informed him that there were two people who wanted to see him. After that, decide if you still want to go to Heaven's Elysium. Tianming was clueless and he didn't even know what was going on. In just a minute, they arrived at Heaven's Sanctum. He is together with Mu Yang, Tianqing, and Wai Jing. They met the old woman and the lady that is the same age as Tianming. They were the people who always observed Tianming from afar. Tianming seriously looked at them and he was confused about who these people were. According to Tian King, the old woman is Lai Jingwu from the Grand Orient sect. Lai Jingwu smiled at Tianming and told him that he can call her as Granny Lai. Tianming then greeted Jinghu and he was thinking about what the Grand Orient sect is. He has only heard of the Grand Orient realm which is part of the Flame Yellow Continent. The Grand Orient Realm is a vast realm filled with innumerable beings. It's composed of numerous smaller nations. Vermilion Bird is one such nation. Tianming heard that Heaven's Elysium is the ruler of the realm. Together with Lingji is her granddaughter, Lai Qingyu. She's younger than Tianming by five years, but her power is far beyond. Qingyu then greeted Tianming, and although Tianming doesn't know which level Qingyu is, he believes that someone like her is considered a legendary genius who only appears once every tens of thousands of years in the Vermilion Bird. Because of this, Tianming concludes that the Grand Orient sect is much larger than what he expected. Lingju politely asks Tianqing to explain to Tianming about what they have discussed together earlier. Tianqing then agreed and decided to start talking about lifespan. He asked if Tianming has an idea of where their lifespan comes from and Tianming then answered that it originates from an ancestor on the maternal side surnamed Lai. It is what Wai Jing told him. As per Tiankang, the ancestors that Tianming said actually came from the Lai Saint clan of the Grand Orient sect. And their lifespan is actually the reason why the Lai Saint clan has been able to reign over the Grand Orient realm for thousands of years. Is the Grand Orient sect as large as Heaven's Elysium? Tianming suddenly asked. And Jingwu then answered yes. However, Heaven's Elysium has been slightly stronger for the past thousands of years, so they're temporarily ruling over the Grand Orient realm. She said that their Grand Orient sect has just as many geniuses as Heaven's Elysium does. Jingwu also added that the Grand Orient realm is filled with over 700 nations, and its border stretches far and wide. But their Lai Saint clan has been one of the most powerful clans for countless centuries. Only the clans that have thrived for tens of thousands of years can be crowned as a Saint clans. And the Grand Orient sect is passed down through their Lai Saint clan. This means every sect master is also the head of the Lai Saint clan. Tianming never heard of this. He knows that the Vermilion Bird is certainly too small. He cannot wait to go out and explore beyond this place. Excuse me, may I ask what everything you just said has to do with me? Tianming asked. Jingwu said that everything she explained had everything to do with Tianming. She told Tianming to explain what he understood about lifespan. And as Tianming knew, it is a curse that causes people to age. But then, Jingwu said that he was wrong. According to her, lifespan is the exact cause behind their Lysani clan's glory. It's the source of their incredible aptitude for cultivation. While lifespan does speed up the aging of their body and drain their life away, their cultivation speeds up by leaps and bounds once they get rid of it. Their ancestors have suffered from lifespan for a great deal of time, and they figured out a way to break the curse. They've learned how to break the curse and convert its banes directly into talent. The more rings one has, the more gifted they are. An example of this is, King Wu has a bloodline of three incarnations, which gave her the chance to challenge the saint stage in the future. Within the entire clan, there are not more than ten of them, and each of them has the chance of breaking through to the saint stage. Tianming becomes excited upon hearing it. Jingwu also added that the premise is that their life-bound beast's tier is high enough. Did you know that throughout the history of our Lai Saint clan, all those with four Bane rings were the pinnacle of existence in the Grand Orient realm, and that each of them would usher in at least 500 years of prosperity and greatness? I don't know that, Tianming answered with a shocking face. Because of how the granny talking with excitement, her spit is getting to Tianming. On the other side, Tianming was confused if the Vermilion King would allow him to take Zhang failing away. Before, the king hesitated because their initial destination was Heaven's Elysium. Now, they'll be going to the Grand Orient sect that's tied to the Saint Lai clan and their lifespan. Tianming concludes that the king might allow it this time. They went out from Heaven's Sanctum and Jingwu was glad that's why she kept staring at Tianming. But then, Tianming was annoyed and wanted the granny to stop looking at him even for a moment. King Wu also smiled at Tianming and Tianming sensed that King Wu's gentle and elegant demeanor attracts people. He asked King Wu's current stage of unity and King Wu humbly answered that she only reached the fourth level of unity. 
She even said that she only reached this level as she's not talented. Tianming was wowed when King Wu said that she was not talented in fact she reached the fourth level of unity while the Vermilion Bird's previous first genius Lin Xiaoding only reached the first level of unity. King Wu smiled as she said that Tianming will be able to catch up in a few years since he has a five bane ring physique. Even old Jing Wu agreed to what King Wu said. She said that Tianming will awaken later so he should not be worried about his current cultivation level. She knows that Tianming's goal is the saint stage so she advises Tianming that he must look beyond what's before him. Once he reaches that stage, Jing Wu believes that Tianming will leave beyond 200 years. In fact, if he can accomplish it before 70, he'll be one of the Grand Orient Realm's powerhouses. Once Tianming becomes a saint, he'll be able to ask heaven for another hundred years. In that hundred years, work on utilizing the talent of his five bane ring physique and continued cultivating and expanding his lifespan. Jing Wu knows that Tianming's future is bright, and she's looking forward to it. Meanwhile, they arrived at the Vermilion Bird's palace, but then, they noticed that there were no guards, and Jing Wu suddenly senses something. She feels the presence of someone named Ling Yichen. She immediately jumped inside the palace and ordered both Tianming and King Wu to follow. The guards were inside the palace and most of them were killed. The people from Heaven's Elysium are here and they tied up Zhang Failing. As per Yixu, the sanctum replacement of Aquamarine has been very successful. She also mentioned that Murong Kanghai is dead, and there are no descendants left. So the Yuling family is now free from worries. At this point, it can see from Jiang Failing's eyes that she's full of sadness. Jing Yu saw them all and confirmed her prediction. Why is an inspector of Heaven's Elysium like you here? She immediately asked. Tianeming instantly saw Jiang Failing and he was worried for the lady. Failing also saw him but since she was tied up, she cannot go to Tianeming. What are the people from the Lai Saint clan doing here? Someone asked from the Yuling clan. Jing Hu then let them know that Tianeming is her son's Lai Wudi's illegitimate son. She told them that she had searched all over the Grand Orient realm for his grandson. Naturally, I'm bringing him back to the Grand Orient sect with me. She added, Tianeming was confused because they had agreed with Jing Wu that he would be adopted. And now, he becomes the illegitimate son. But he instantly forgets about it as he was worried for Jiang failing. That's Lai Wudi's son. You're wrong. He's the disciple of Heaven's Elysium. We recruited him three years ago, and now we're back to pick him up. The old man from Heaven's Elysium said. Jing Wu then told them that Tianeming will no longer be admitted to Heaven's Elysium since he was now part of the Lai Saint clan and is a talented heir of three banes. You'll chase him out in the end anyway, even if you take him with you. She added. The old man then accepts what she said and tells his companion that they should leave. Jing Yu stopped them and ordered them to leave behind her granddaughter-in-law, and she's referring to Jiang Failing. To their surprise, the old man said that Jiang Failing will be the new servant of Lady Long. Upon hearing the word servant, Tianeming becomes furious at them. His eyes were flaming in anger and he was confused about who's this Lady Long that the old man mentioned. And he then saw a short lady together with these people. This lady was so quiet and only stared at them. He concludes that this is Lady Long. This woman's killing intent makes him instinctively fear her. The force he feels is truly that of a heaven-defying genius of the Grand Orient realm. Jing Yu politely asked Lady Long to let Jiang Failing go and she even explained that Jiang Failing is her granddaughter-in-law that's why she doesn't want them to bring Failing into Heaven's Elysium. And what if I say no? Lady Long answered with a fierce face. If not, then you all won't be able to leave Vermilion Bird. Jing Yu answered. The old man warned Jing Yu as he believes that if they will fight against Jing Yu's clan, Jing Yu won't have the chance. Yixuan on the other side also thought that Jing Yu was just bluffing. You've all underestimated me. If I truly wished to trade a life for a life, killing Lady Long wouldn't be difficult at all. It doesn't matter how heaven-defying her talent is. She's still developing. In my hands, she's just a chickling. It's worth exchanging the life of Lady Long with our threes. So would you like to test me? I'll actually do it. Jing Wu confidently stated. The old man was annoyed that Jing Hu knows that they won't take any risks when it comes to Lady Long. Lady Long. Although we wouldn't lose if a fight were to start, she's known for being crazy. I'm afraid. I don't think it's worth taking such a risk for a mere servant. What do you say? The old man whispered to Lady Long. At this point, Lady Long decided to let Zhang Failing go. Zhang Failing then runs to Tianeming. I will remember that you threatened me today, Lai Jingu. Lady Long said while she slightly smiled. All right, all right, stop bragging. I get it. You're super duper awesome and badass. One day, the world shall tremble at your feet. You're the main character, you're a special snowflake. Blah blah blah, Tianeming said with annoyance. Lady Long stared at him and called an ant. 
Jiang Failing pointed to Lady Long and according to her, Lady Long stole five of her sealed abilities. She doesn't have any idea how Lady Long did it, but she said that Lady Long took those five seals and transferred them into a sphere for her to store them. She even forces Jiang Failing to spiritually attach to her. It was a grade 7 attachment and raised her strength. That's why Lady Long wanted Jiang Failing to be her maid. Lady Long confidently stands while admitting that Jiang Failing is a good treasure. She believes that Tianeming doesn't qualify for Jiang Failing. She was asking for Tianeming's help to take care of Jiang Failing for the next few years. Lady Long pointed her finger at Tianeming and said that she will take away Jian Failing after she exterminates the Lai clan. If you take care of her until then, I promise to spare you life. Lady Long added. Tianeming then whispered to old Jingwu, asking for some help to seize those five seals back. But then, Jingwu said that it'll be troublesome to snatch it from Lady Long. She believes that Jiang Feiling's life is more important now. As for the seals, she advises Tianeming to take it back ten years later. After all, she knows that Tianeming's talent isn't lower because of his bane rings. He just has a later starting point as per Jingwu. Jiang Feiling held Tianeming's shoulder and she said that it's fine for her as she will not get her five seals since she still has five. Lady Long, you said that you'll exterminate my whole clan in a decade, right? No need to wait a decade. I'll go to Heaven's Elysium by myself before then. Tianeming proclaimed. He was planning to remove Lady Long's head in front of all the Heaven's Elysium while taking back Jiang Feiling's seals. Lady Long thought that Tianeming was only boasting. She even said that Tianeming should better wait until she exterminates Tianeming's entire clan. They all then leave and Jiang Feiling asked Tianeming if they should go to her father. When they arrived, his father was already awake as he fainted when the people from Heaven's Elysium attacked the palace. The king was glad that his daughter is safe, and Jiang Feiling acknowledged Tianeming's help for saving her. The king was confused about how Tianeming saved his daughter since the people who came are from Heaven's Elysium and one of them is Lady Long who is impossible for Tianeming to be defeated. He then noticed that there were people besides Tianeming. Tianeming was glad to introduce King Wu and Jing Wu to the Vermilion King. Lai Tianeming told the Vermilion King everything that had happened. The king realized that he couldn't protect his daughter, Jiang Feiling, so he entrusted her to Tianeming. Then, Lai Tianeming brought Jiang Feiling with him and followed Lai Jing Wu to the Grand Orient Realm. They are riding Jing Wu's companion beast which is the Kunpeng. It has two forms. One can cover 10,000 miles of flight in a day, while the other can be underwater. As per Jingwu, it's a life-bound beast of dual attributes and dual species. In the past, their Lai Saint clan had even been called the Kunpeng clan. Upon seeing the Grand Orient sect, Tianeming was amazed as it was bigger than he imagined. When they arrived, the sect was a good sightseeing. Jingwu was planning on making Tianeming as the junior sect master. At Kunpeng's sacred hall, several people were outside the hall and were angrily asking for Lai Wudi to get out and face them all. These people were mad because their whole wind bloodline was ruined by him according to the people. They are annoyed that their legacy now is at risk and Lai Wudi still dares to hide his face from these people. They knocked on the door of the hall and they wanted Lai Wudi to hand over the supreme blood. All of them suddenly look up above as they all heard the voice of Lai Jingwu and are now irritated that these people are revolting again even if she just only leaves for a bit. A strong whirlwind landed in front of Kunpeng Hall causing all the people to move away. Do you think I'm dead? Get the hell out of my way, Lai Jingyu ordered. Tianeming stared at the people and he was clueless why all these people called the patriarch by his name. Even Ying Huo comes out in confusion. Both of them were curious why the legendary Kunpeng's hall is in this state. Matriarch, you're finally back. We've been waiting. The man said, waiting. Waiting for what? To drink the water I use to wash my feet. What the hell are all of you crowding around here for? Get lost, Lai Jingyu answered them. A man said that Jingwu's son is the trashiest sect master in all their sect's history. Jingwu was furious and asked them all what they wanted. They said that they wanted Wudi to come out. If he doesn't, then, Matriarch, make the decision, and please open the gates so we can talk inside. The man uttered. Jingwu instantly opened the gate without any hesitation and ordered all of them to come inside the hall. When they entered, they confirmed that Lai Wudi was not really inside. As Tianeming noticed, the surroundings inside this hall is very dirty, and there was a smell of alcohol everywhere. He then concludes that maybe because his grandma is not here for a long time. The seats are too rotten and had obviously been moved here from somewhere else. The man told Jingwu that they didn't come here to cause trouble. Instead, they have important matters regarding the Lai Saint clan's wind bloodline to discuss with Lai Wudi. They were begging for Jingyu to tell Wudi about this matter. Otherwise, the Apex branch will have doomed the wind bloodline as per the lady. Jingyu knows that these people were just pretending for what they wanted so she ordered them to tell straight to the point about what they need. 
as per the man. The informants they have in the metal, thunder, and fire bloodlines have received word of it already. In five days, members from those three bloodlines will force Lai Woody to pick a genius from among them to be the junior sect master. Those of them in the wind bloodline have controlled the Lai Saint clan for 10,000 years, and throughout all that time, their prestigious legacy has never once been broken. But in the past millennium, their line has produced fewer and fewer talented descendants, causing their great clan to fall to these lows. Not to mention, Lai Woody already had his body horribly ruined from what happened back then. He's already in his 40s, and he can have a chance to birth a male heir in this lifetime as per the man. They said that the moment the junior secret master is selected, the future legacy of the Grand Orient sect will be up to one of the other three bloodlines. That's why all of them from the seven starry branches are unwilling to let the position of the junior sect master, thus losing the position of the Grand Orient sect to the other bloodlines. They screamed that they wanted to stand out and defend the glory of the wind bloodline. So, how do you intend to defend our pride? Jing Wu asked. Though not all of those here are for selfish interests, most of them are. No matter how far the Lai Saint clan has fallen, the Lai Mausoleum is eternal. Only the sect master and junior sect master were allowed to enter the final resting place of the great ancestors of the Lai Saint clan, as per an ancient order given by their founding ancestors. According to this man, to ensure the position of junior sect master remains within the wind bloodline, those of them of the seven starry wind branches are willing to contribute. The seven of them are willing to let Lai Wudi adopt their talented sons, who they have raised with care since birth. He suddenly becomes emotional while saying that as long as they let Lai Wudi be assigned the junior sect master, they can stop the other three bloodlines from depriving the junior sect master position. The seven of them swear that they would no longer consider whoever is appointed junior sect master as their own son. While most of them were crying, Tianeming was annoyed as he sensed something fishy. Wow, how touching. I almost cried myself a river. I'm already touched by the fact that you're all fighting for your own children to be the young sect master. He suddenly said. All of them were annoyed that Tianeming interfered and they thought Tianeming is just an outsider and is not part of their sect. Old Jingyu smiled and hold Tianeming's hand. You think your degenerate spawns deserve to be my grandchildren. Not one of the seven could catch my eye. Don't bring them here to embarrass their fathers. Not of those seven boys can compare to my granddaughter, King Yu. Yet, you dare to plot for the position of junior sect master. Dream on, Jing Wu stated. The people became hysterical as they thought that Jing Wu was willing to let the position of junior sect master flow to the other three bloodlines. Jing Yu screamed and ordered them all to shut up. She then proudly introduced to everyone that Tianming is the illegitimate son of Lai Wudi and is the young sect master of the clan. Although this is not what Tianming expected, he feels that Jing Wu really treated him like his own grandson so he is willing to see this through to the end. The people were jaw-dropping not all this time, Lai Wudi has an illegitimate son. Jing Wu explained that during Lai Wudi's youth, he was handsome and dashing, and before he got married to a lady named Muhi, he traveled around and made love with a few women. She told everyone that among this girl is from a vermilion bird named Wai Jing. She said that Lai Wudi didn't want her to disturb his son's life, but these people forced her to do so. She proudly says that Lai Tianming is Wudi's flesh and blood. She even said that Tianming is just 16 years old which is one year older than King Wu. Tianming at this point was thinking that Jing Wu is really good at making up stories because of how this old lady lied about his age. One man also concludes that Jing Wu is just lying and only paid Tianming to act as his grandson. And Jingu only laughed at her response to them which made them all confused. I'm laughing at your short-sightedness. My grandson Tianeming has lacked proper guidance in the past 16 years, having had to train in a backwater nation. So naturally, his level isn't that high. By the time you all know how truly talented and powerful my grandson is, I bet everyone here will kneel and shiver before him. Jingu stated. The crowd then laughed at what Jingu said and they even challenged to inspect Tianeming's talent. So many years of resentment, so many years of hatred. Back then, Jing Yu watched her son fall from the skies to the ground. Anz has been devastated ever since. Lai Jing Yu was pressured almost every day by various forces with ulterior motives. She has been struggling to support herself alone and has long been physically and mentally exhausted. And now, this grandson has finally appeared. Tianeming looked at them with fierce eyes. He extended his arm and removed the metal cover to show everyone his five bane rings. The people were about to be annoyed by how Tianeming talked to them. But then, they realized that Tianeming had the five bane rings. That's right. This is the body of the five bane rings that only the first ancestors had. Why don't you kneel and worship now? Jing Wu proclaimed. Everyone in the hall was shocked. 
it's impossible for them that Tiananmen has five Bayan rings since only the founding ancestor had five that they knew. They took a closer look because they doubted that Tiananmen only drew the rings on his arm. They even doubted Tiananmen's hair due to its color. Tiananmen is just so calm while getting some booger on his nose. He knew from the very beginning that these people weren't gonna believe him this easily, but he knew how to convince them. He believes that the key thing now is that their attention is no longer on the matter of suspecting that Tiananmen is Lai Wudi's son. Jingwu was mad knowing that these people are really hard to please even after she showed Tiananmen to them. King Wu calmed her, while Tiananmen offered that he could chase the people away. He then called out the attention of everyone and shared to them that his first cultivation technique started at the age of 15 years old, and only then he started cultivating. That's to say, he has cultivated for only the past five months. He told them that he started from zero and made it to the eight spirit source level in a mere five months. The people started murmuring again after Tiananmen told this to them. A kid named Lai Kungsu, a 15-year-old and is now in the second level of unity, spoke. So if I claim that I started training yesterday and reached the second level of unity, does that mean I have six Bane rings? I don't believe a word you say. He stated, Tiananmen slightly smiled and challenged all of the people in the hall who aren't older than him. If I can beat you all, will you believe my Bane rings are real and that I'm Lai Wudi's son? Tiananmen asked. The people think that he was crazy for challenging those in higher realms. Lai Tiananmen, if you can really succeed in the challenge, we will, of course, recognize you. After all, this kind of thing can only be done by someone with five Bane rings. The man said, and if Tiananmen cannot do it, it proves that he's an imposter. In that case, they would rather just have Lai Wudi adopt one of their sons instead. Kungsu asked Jingu if Tiananmen's word counted. And Jingu was speechless. Tiananmen is the one who answered and said that whoever can beat him will be the junior sect master. Jingu asked him if it's really okay with him to fight several kids in a high realm and Tiananmen was very confident with his performance. Jingu allowed them to have a battle but it should be outside the hall. Up until this point, the oldies still believe that Jingyu is just lying to them. They then come out from the hall and Kungsu will be the first one to face Tiananmen. Tiananmen grits his teeth and it was easy for him to beat up kids under his age. Kid, make your move. Let me beat you up a lil. Tiananmen uttered. You have got a big mouth. I'll have to knock a few of your teeth to keep your mouth shut in the future. At least you won't dare open your mouth if there are missing teeth. Kungsu answered. And he then summoned his companion beast, a hurricane Kunpeng. Jiang Failing is together with Tiananmen but Tiananmen didn't allow her to help fighting these kids as he believes that he can do it perfectly with Ying Huo. Kungsu is waiting for Tiananmen to summon his Void Kunpeng, and as for him, having a Void Kunpeng can also prove Tiananmen's identity if he really is the son of Lai Wudi. Tiananmen called Kungsu as blind and he then introduced that his Kunpeng is no other than Ying Huo, a little chicken. Since this is the first time that these people here saw Tiananmen's life-bound beast, they burst into laughter and belittled him. Kungsu clenched his fist and accused Tiananmen for desecrating their beast. He then rushed to Tiananmen together with his Hurricane Kunpeng. And Tiananmen and Ying Huo do the same. Kungsu grabbed his Gale Whip and attacked Tiananmen with it. To his surprise, Tiananmen only grips into the whip and he was not harmed by it. Tiananmen smiled while holding the whip and pulled it causing Kungsu to fall on the ground. So this is what the second stage of unity amounts to. Truly, your skills are beyond peerless to fall flat on the ground so gracefully. 10 points for the landing. Tiananmen stated, Ying Huo was still fighting against the Hurricane Kunpeng and Ying Huo blows using Infernal Flame. But at this time, the Hurricane Kunpeng easily blows away the flames using his Wild Storm Howls so Ying Huo believes that this beast really is good at fighting. Kungsu was annoyed that Tiananmen makes fun of him and he reasoned out that he still doesn't use his full strength. Tiananmen grabbed his sword and both of he and Ying Huo performed the Demise of Man, Spectral Dance, and slashed their opponents. The people was surprised to see a unity battle art and they feels a heavily will. They cannot even believe that Ying Huo can also use a sword skills. Ops accidentally knocked some of his teeth. Is anyone else not convinced? Tiananmen uttered while dropping the two teeth of Kung Su. Kung Su screamed in agony and his mount is bleeding. The people started gossiping and some of them now believes that Tiananmen is really the son of Lai Wudi. But then, they were confused why Tiananmen doesn't inherited the Void Kunpeng and only have a mere seven-star chicken. In their clan, some of the former sect masters from the Apex branch didn't have Void Kunpengs either. That means that while the bloodline changes, it isn't really severe. Enough bullcrap. The point is, I still don't buy it. Do any of your sons want to fight? If not, I'll have Ling do it. I'm sure, nobody will dispute he's the strongest among the youths here. Right? The man declared. The kids agreed that Ling should face Tiananmen now. And one adult said that if Ling still cannot defeat Tiananmen, 
then there's no use for them sending the others. Ling then came out and he was very willing to fight and defeat Tianeming. For him, Tianeming's moves were nothing to be afraid of. He was greedy to defeat Tianeming as he wanted to get the junior sect master position. Ling, the time has come to change your destiny. You know what to do, right? His father asked, and Ling looked slightly at his father and promised that he would beat Tianeming. He then walked to the battle area while saying that Tianeming is not worthy of holding the sword in front of him. Tianeming's eyes sparkled and he didn't even feel scared. Ling challenged Tianeming to fight above the water and Tianeming instantly accepted his challenge. At this time, Tianeming is asking for Zhang Feiling's help. Ling smiled while thinking that Tianeming will be defeated this time. He believes that there's no way for Tianeming to win against him in a battle above the water. He jumped into the water and summoned his mid-tier 8-star beast. Ying Huo and Tianeming were both dumbfounded upon seeing this beast since this beast is the same level as Mu Yang's ink Kailing back in a vermilion bird. He was surprised to think that it would be so easy for juniors to process this kind of beast here. While Ling is standing above his life-bound beast, he senses that Tianeming feels scared. A sword wielder must be virtuous. You foul scum on the diabolic path. Ling huttered while holding his sword and attacked Tianeming using his flow stream sword technique that creates an azure light circling him, and a bunch of water going towards Tianeming. Tianeming was still calm and performed the demise of Earth, Earth Shaker. At this point, they cancelled each other which made the crowd surprised, especially when they witnessed that Tianeming isn't losing despite that he doesn't use water type Kai. Tianeming is standing still and was shocked that his adversary disappeared. Ying Huo then looked up above as he saw that Ling was attacking at them. Jiang Feiling easily cast the spatial wall to block Ling's attack, and Ling cannot believe how it happened. Tianeming's wings appeared and he flew while holding the sword. Ling began to be confused seeing that Tianeming had this kind of ability which he didn't expect. If it's a fight above the water, why are you flying upwards earlier? Do you think I couldn't fly? Tianeming uttered. He then cast the demise of Earth, Hell Shaker, and attacked Ling with it. Upon seeing the flame, Ling instantly cast his heaven-defying flow stream mantra hoping that he can deflect Tianeming's attack. But then, the Hell Shaker is too powerful as it destroyed Ling's mantra and he was burned by the flame. Ling's father was unprepared that his son would be defeated as he had high expectations for Ling. Tianeming smiled slightly and told him that Ling will not die as he held it back. Ling lies on the ground with bruises and is already weak. His hair was burned and his body was full of blood. Tianeming then landed on the ground and since he won against Ling, he asked the other possible participants if there are still participants who wanted to challenge him. Everyone was silent and bent over in fear. Jing Wu laughed confidently and asked them all if they still doubt that Tianeming is his grandson. She told them that even Tianeming doesn't have a Kunpeng life-bound beast, but both he and his life-bound beast have five bane rings. He may not have avoided Kunpeng now, but who's to say his children won't? She added, a man grits his teeth as he doesn't believe that Tianeming's little chicken has five bane rings. Ying Huo confidently volunteered to show it to them, but Tianeming suddenly stopped him as Ying Huo was about to show them the wrong side. Tianeming rattled that Ying Huo might have revealed that they actually have ten because it's hard for these people to believe him for having five bane rings, and he knows that there might be a conflict once all of these people will discover. He was a little bit annoyed at Ying Huo for not knowing where the left and right side were. Because of this, he's planning to dye the dots on Ying Huo's left arm from black to yellow. Ying Huo then spread his wing and the five bane rings were clearly seen by these people. The crowd was noisy and Jing Wu then stopped them and ordered them to leave. But still, there is a man who said that persuading them to acknowledge Tianeming as the junior sect master is pointless. Ling's father stated that if Jing Hu really wanted to make Tianeming as the junior sect master, she should wait and see whether the other three bloodlines would allow it. If Jing Wu wished to use the same method to secure Tianeming's position, then he wanted to see if Lai Tianeming is powerful enough to challenge the younger of those bloodlines. As per the man, their wind bloodline is ranked last and the rest of them are far ahead. It's not that they're far ahead. It's you who couldn't manage to keep up with them. Everyone is falling behind. It's simply a race to see who can last longer. Jing Wu answered. The people began to walk away and Ling's father still uttered words. He said that in five days, Lai Xuanyi from the Metal Bloodline will definitely be coming to discuss marriage matters between Xuanyi's son and King Wu with Jing Wu. According to the bet between Lai Wudi and Lai Xuanyi, King Wu will need to marry Xuanyi's son when she turns 16. The man even stated that Lai Wudi really was a fool to have made that bet and even had the sect elders serve as witnesses. He believes that Lai Xuanyi will use the Council of Elders to pressure Jingyu to honor the bet. Lai Xuanyi lucked out this time. 
to think that his trashy, fat, and ugly son could get a beautiful genius like King Wu as his wife. King Wu, it's a shame that your father is such a fool. Prepare yourself for that tragic fate, he added while heading his way home. Tianeming stared at King Wu and saw that King Wu trembled in anger. Jing Wu then approached her and told her not to be afraid as she's willing to stop those people who will try to take her granddaughter even if it costs her life. Tianeming was just observing them and didn't speak any words. As what he believes, the Council of Elders is the highest authority in the Grand Orient sect. The elders from the various lines of the sect within the council held absolutely control. In five days, the three other bloodlines will definitely come. Whether he can become a junior sect master, it will still depend on how the encounter turns out. After a while, they all go back inside the hall and Jing Yu was impressed by Jiang Feiling's talent as she had never seen anything like Ling'er ability before. She also advises Tianeming to treat Ling'er well. She knows that Ling'er is Tianeming's treasure and Ling'er even left home to be with Tianeming. I'm extremely satisfied with my granddaughter-in-law. Extremely satisfied, Jing Yu said with excitement. Jiang Feiling was also glad to tell her that Tianeming treats her pretty well. In the hall, there was someone with a shaky voice who was calling for Tianeming. The man was drinking liquor and he was claiming that Tianeming is his son. Come, let father take a good look at you. In a blink of an eye, you're already 16. Father has really failed you. The man said. Tianeming becomes shocked and realizes that this man is the Grand Orient sect's current sect master, Lai Wudi. Lai Wudi smiled at Tianeming and a black streaks are flowing from his body. Tianeming concludes that it's a miasma. It's a bad air believed to cause illness. They're sucking away his life force like parasites. Wudi also noticed that his daughter, King Wu, has become prettier. And she even invited King Wu to have a drink together. King Wu's mood has changed and she bids goodbye to her grandmother. Tianeming then asked a favor to Jiang Feiling to help him ask King Wu about the details of the marriage. Jiang Feiling followed his order and she immediately followed King Wu. Wu Di is walking towards Tianeming. He held Tianeming's shoulder and showed his excitement that they met each other. At this time, Tianeming can smell that Wu Di stinks. Even Jing Wu was annoyed as she also smelled her son. Don't tell me you haven't showered once when I was away. Jing Wu asked with an angry tone. Wu Di drinks again and he answers that showering is just a waste of his youth. With all this time, he rather drinks with his ancestors. While Wu Di is talking, Jing Wu keeps shaking her head and she sighed as he disagreed with her son. From being the Grand Orient sect's first genius, Wu Di is now the sect master everyone now despises. And because of this, Tianeming was confused about what in the world Wu Di goes through. Wu Di asked him to show the five bane rings and Tianeming did as he said. Tianeming raised his hand and Wudi mentioned that Tianeming's five bane rings are much cooler than his four bane rings. While looking at her, Tianeming questioned himself if he should really accept Wudi, a drunken man, as his father. Even addressing the father to Wudi is very hard for him. Good thing that Jing Wu said that he can call Wudi by name since that's what everyone in the Grand Sect does. But then, for Tianeming, it's not fine because Wudi is a senior so he should still be respectful. Wudi said that he's very satisfied with Tianeming. He spoke while he was getting something on his robe. He showed a Kunpeng sacred seal and he wants to bestow Tianeming with this. He then throws it to Tianeming that the Grand Orient sect is his turf. You can do whatever you'd like and beat up whoever you'd like. He stated. He even said that if a girl catches Tianeming's eyes, he can simply snatch the lady. He's willing to assist Tianeming in forming a harem so that Tianeming can enjoy all the luxuries life has to offer. Tianeming was disappointed and he told Woody that he would much rather cultivate. And since cultivation is what Tianeming wanted to do, Wu Di told Jing Yu to get a mana, spirit ore, spirit herbs, bestial weapons, and others that Tianeming can use to become stronger. He drinks some more and suddenly lies down while laughing and falls asleep. Jing Yu sighed as she couldn't believe that her son fell asleep in random places. As what she observes, Wu Di's body isn't as healthy anymore, but he still doesn't know how to cherish himself. While looking at the lady, Tianeming feels weird as he doesn't see any hint of scorn and blame in her eyes. Rather, there's only sorrow and regret. Normally, any mother would be upset and wish their child to work harder if they became like Lai Wudi. They bring Wudi to his bed and Jingu mentions the Kunpeng sacred seal. Tianeming then gets it and he feels weird about its texture. As to him, it feels like jade, or perhaps even metal. But it's squishy. According to Jing Wu, it's a seal formed from the condensed blood of the clan's ancestors. It contains traces of the blood of the clan, all the way from the founding ancestors up to her husband. Blood essence, Tianeming then realized that this item comes with a heavy burden. It's the symbol of succession. This seal holds the legacy of the entire bloodline. 
Only the greatest of clans would have an heirloom like this. Tianming questioned what this Kunpeng sacred seal does and Jingwu said that it's the symbol of the sect master and junior sect master. The seal has been passed down since the ancient days of the Lai Saint clan. There are two of them, each infused in the blood of the sect master and the junior sect master respectively. Someone without the blood of the Lai Saint clan won't be able to assimilate it as per Jingyu. Assimilating it won't increase strength, but she said that Tianming needs to have it on him for him to be allowed entry into the Lai Mausoleum to pay respect to their ancestors. Tianming asked Jingyu if there's a fortune he can see in the mausoleum and Yu said that it's not quite but the others in their clan believe there is. As for them, they don't possess the blood of the Lai Saint clan, so they can't enter even if they have the Kunpeng sacred seal. If there were fortunes inside, their sect wouldn't have fallen so behind during the past thousands of years. By this information, Tianming discovered that the whole point of condensing the blood of the ancestors is just for identification. Jingyu stated that the three bloodlines want the seal because they want to see what's inside the mausoleum, and these people stopped believing them a long time ago. Tianming stared at the seal and he was confused if he would be able to assimilate this Kunpeng sacred seal. He then asked Jingyu if the three bloodlines' plans will be cut off once he will assimilate now and become the junior sect master. As per Jingyu, it's possible. However, she wouldn't encourage doing it before convincing the rest. Because once it assimilated, the seal will come back out when the user dies, with the oi difference being a drop of blood will have been added to the blood essence. Means, if Tianming can assimilate it without convincing them, they might kill him to retrieve the seal. If the three bloodlines aren't willing to yield even then, the Tianming situation will be troublesome. But, for as long as Jingyu is alive, she will never allow anyone to kill Tianming. For Tianming to assimilate the seal, he should make a cut at the part of his skin where the bane rings are. The seal will enter his blood through the cut. Tianming bit his arm and Jingwu was shocked. The blood flows and he told Jingwu that he's not afraid of losing his way out since he came here intending to become the junior sect master. He was very determined not to give the three bloodlines a chance. Trust me, since you swore to protect me, I will do everything not to disappoint you. Tianming uttered. Jingwu was touched by what he said. And Tianming started annihilating the seal with his blood. He said that he likes how empathetic this granny is, and since he has acknowledged Jingyu as his granny, he have also accepted himself wholeheartedly as a member of the Lai Saint clan. Tianming grits his teeth as he feels the pain. He was extremely thankful to Jingyu for helping him to save Zhang failing from the hands of the Yuling clan. After seeing Jingyu in a dilemma, he's more than willing to contribute his strength. After a while, annihilating the seal worked. The blood essence has dispersed, and it's gathering all within his blood. Tianming's eyes become red as the annihilation is in process. Every ancestor's will is flowing through their blood. It's as if they're all still alive. Tianming's blood is shuddering with vigor. Perhaps, it's gathering his blood. And at last, the annihilation is completed. He feels changes in his body like the core qualities have been reborn. Jinhu was glad that Tianming made it. She becomes emotional as she always wanted to have a grandson like Tianming. Granny, I will be your grandson from now on. Tianming stated. All of a sudden, Wudi was dreaming and mentioned a name, Muhi, several times. According to Jingu, Muhi is Wudi's wife and Kingu's mother. She said that Wudi may seem frivolous in his youth. There has actually been only one person whom he helped, and that is Muhi. Tianming was confused how Wudi became like this, and since Wudi is the first genius here, he believes that there's no one should be capable of hurting him. Jingyu agreed that his son was once the strongest junior sect master, but if it were just an enemy, no one in the entire Grand Orient sect would have been able to hurt him. However, the person who hurt him was not an enemy, his sworn brother. Back then, Wudi was both talented and accomplished. He was full of zeal and made many sworn brothers. One of his best friends was Yuan Taiji, the son of Yuan Fengxian, a member of the Council of Elders. When they swore the oath of brotherhood, they pledged to go through life and death together. As per Jingwu, Yuan Taiji appeared to be polite and unambitious, and the two of them have been together since youth when Yuan Fengxian discovered Wu Di's talent. He even came often to help. Jingyu felt sad while sharing this. She said that there has not been a genius in the Lai Saint clan for so long that she had not thought of guarding against them. And just like that, the two children were brothers who cultivated together for four to five years. Wu Di was really close to Yuan Taiji. As what Jingyu observed, people from the Yuan family are way too good at acting. During those four to five years, Taiji's talent wouldn't match Wu Di's, but he was able to make Wu Di willing to die for him. That year, Wu Di had just gotten married, and King Wu had just been born. The Council of Elders decided to hold a competition for the geniuses at the Abyssal Battlefield. During the competition, Yuan Taiji took advantage of Wudi's trust in him, 
and stabbed Woody's heart with the bestial weapon. His father, Yuan Fengshan, gave him the Venom Drake Spike, which was very terrifying. Once it's in, it can never be pulled out. If it is pulled out, the person will die. That Yuan Teiji pretended to be innocent and had actually planned it long ago. He even worked with others to create an alibi for himself. Without any evidence, Woody's words will not be enough. He was set up. There's nothing the Council of Elders can do even if they wish to. Such a betrayal hurt him even more emotionally than physically. Yu and Teiji decided not to kill Woody on the Abyssal Battlefield, but instead choose to torture him in such a way. It was because he secretly loved Muhi, Woody's wife. Teiji hated Woody, so he chose to torture him. After all, it was more satisfying for him to watch Woody fall from grade than to finish him off. Muhi never bothered herself with him, but Yu and Teiji would often come to Fate Path Peak and pretend he's here to visit. But then, his true goal is to take Muhi away. Muhi and Jingu strongly resisted Teiji, but Muhi couldn't take it anymore. She took her own life and left the three-year-old King Yu behind. That day, King Yu saw her mother die before her eyes. That Yu and Teiji forced Muhi to take her own life. Jingu really wants to avenge them, but Yu and Teiji is now the strongest person in the Grand Orient sect. Jingu didn't say all of this just because she wanted Tianeming to do something for them, but she just hopes that Tianeming can make full use of his five bane rings and properly train. Always be on guard against others. The hardest attacks to avoid are those you don't see coming. Don't be like Lai Wudi, who's his own brother betrayed. She stated, although Yu and Teiji is now the strongest cultivator, Jing Yu believes that the Council of Elders can still control him. The council may be as powerful and just as they used to be, but there are still members who remember what the Lai Saint clan has done for them, and Jing Yu was sure that they can protect Tianeming. After listening to her, Tianeming didn't expect Lai Wudi's past to be so tragic. He concludes that it hasn't been easy for this family. The boulder granny shouldering is way too heavy for her age, way too heavy. In the future, Tianeming vowed that he will do his part as a family member and make the Yuan family pay for what they did. Woody woke up and instantly drank his alcohol. He was surprised that Tianeming and his mother, Jingwu, are still not done talking even though he had finished napping. Hey, did you shove that thing in your body? He asked. Tianeming concludes that Woody is talking about the seal so he told Woody that he has done assimilated it. Woody was glad that Tianeming could now go into the Lai Mausoleum with him. My son Lai Tianeming, your father will bring you to the mausoleum now. Are you ready? Father will show you how to sing and dance. He stated while smiling brightly. From the other's point of view, Zhang Failing is still together with King Wu. King Wu showed Ling'er the room where Tianeming and her can stay, and Ling'er was confused why there's only one room. King Wu then asked if Ling'er and Tianeming don't live together. Ling'er felt shy while she answered that they only got to know each other not too long ago. Where do you live, King Wu? Why don't I stay with you instead? She asked, and she shared that she has been sleeping next to Princess King since childhood. She begged King Wu to sleep together as she was lonely if she would sleep by herself. King Wu then agreed to her and Ling'er invited her to walk by the river. As per King Wu, she envies Ling'er and Tianeming as they both look nice together. Jing'er then asked about Wudi's promise to marry King Wu off to someone she doesn't like. They both held each other's hand and King Wu felt sad while saying that it happened because those people mentioned her mother. That's why Wudu got angry and wanted to punish them through a bet. But then, he ended up losing. Plus, he's an impulsive person, so he even asked the Council of Elders to serve as witnesses. That actually happened ten years ago. Her mother had just died so Woody was extremely irritable. It can be seen from King Wu's eyes that she really felt bad about this. Jing'er then asked if she hates her father because of it, and King Wu said no. She said that she understands her father. Also, her grandmother Jing Yu said that sometimes that's life. Things don't always go the way they would like them to. We shouldn't give up on ourselves or resent those around us for it. We must continue to fight to our last breath. Only after we've tried our best can we die without regrets. She uttered, If they really move forward with the marriage and use the council to pressure us, what should we do? Ling'er asked, and King Wu answered that she really has to get married to the man. She planned to disfigure herself by burning off her face to see if they'll still take her with them. Jing'er was worried and told her not to do it. But then, King Wu was determined to make those who wronged her pay a heavy price one day. He grits her teeth due to the anger she felt while saying that even if she ends up in tatters, she will never forget how she fell right in front of her eyes. Ling'er feels sad for her and she hugged King Wu. You're not alone. Tianeming and I will help you. Don't burden yourself with everything, she said, causing King Wu to become emotional. She cried and gave thanks to Ling'er. Ling'er shared to King Wu that Tianeming also once fell to the bottom, but fate did not abandon him. Going back to Tianeming, he was still together with Woody, and they were heading to the mausoleum. 
Woody saw Tianeming's little chicken and cat so he asked if they are Tianeming's life-bound beasts. Tianeming was confused why he suddenly asked, and Woody suddenly laughed loudly while saying that he can make a dish out of them. Why Tianeming didn't give him an answer, and Ying Huo senses that this place is full of monsters, and it seems fun for him. He spread his wings and invited Miao Mao to play together and catch some fish. Miao Mao then came with Ying Huo and Tianeming and advised them not to devastate the sacred spirit too much. After a while, they arrived at the mausoleum. Within this blood-colored formation is the Lai Mausoleum. As of now, Bloodbane formation is still the strongest in the entire Grand Orient realm as per Wudi. Come, my son Tianeming, help me bring these fine wines inside. Wudi ordered while showing a lot of wines. You aren't serious, right? Do you plan on drinking yourself to death by bringing this much wine inside? Tianeming answered, and Woody then told him that it is not for them. Even he was hesitant to drink all this wine. According to him, all of these are all high-quality items he has spent a hefty sum on. He sighed while saying that their ancestors drink way too much and not do anything for them if they don't give them some good wine. Tianeming was shocked as he thought that the ancestors are still alive. But Woody said that they will only pour the wine on the ground. Tianeming was thinking that the offering is just an offering. But Woody makes it sound like the ancestors are actually going to drink it. What are you standing there for? Bring the wine over, Woody demanded, which made Tianeming startled. They then passed through the blood-colored formation and upon entering, Tianmin wondered if Ling'er can enter with him here using a spiritual attachment. Let's go, I'll introduce you to the old crooks, Woody uttered. They first saw a mountain called Xingxiao Mountain, the tombstone of their Lai Saint clan's founding ancestor, Lai Xingxiao. Tianeming was amazed as he cannot believe that a mountain as high as the cloud is a tombstone. As per Lai Wudi, Xingxiao is the person to have been afflicted with lifespan. At that, there was no cure. However, his terrifying power allowed him to cultivate with his life bane ridden body and last 50 years without dying. In the end, he finally found the technique to cure it. His body returned to how it was when he was 15, and from then on, he soared through the ranks and defeated countless champions. After that, he founded the Grand Orient sect in the then chaotic Grand Orient realm and dominated the realm. Not only was he the strongest man in the whole realm back then, but also the strongest cultivator in their Grand Orient sects in their Grand Orient sects history. Legend says that he ultimately broke through to the Empyrean Sane realm. Upon listening to his history, Tianeming believes that the founding ancestor, Lai Xing Sao, is certainly one of the entire Lai Saint clan aspires to become. Woody continued walking and invited Tianeming to follow to show him the old crook's tombstone to drink. He stated that this one was the greediest out of them all, and the majority of his inventory is offered to him. Below the mountain is a large cave and this is where Tianeming and Woody pass. Tianeming's eyes were rounded after they passed by a beast. A beast instantly stared at Tianeming with a fierce look and there was some lightning on its body. Tianeming and Woody are standing in front of this beast and Tianeming was surprised about how massive the beast's entire body is bound by miasma. He also knew that this life-bound beast was owned by Woody. According to Woody, this is the legendary life-bound beast of their bloodline, the Voided Kunpeng. Tianeming corrected him that it might be a voided kunpeng. But then, Woody said that voided with N stands for void and wounded. Tianeming feels pity for Woody's life-bound beast, to have been awakened to this state. Like Lai Woody, it's also suffering from the torture of the Venom Drake Spike and struggling to survive. They both then continued walking and Tianeming predicted that the cave was perhaps going to lead them to the mountaintop. According to Woody, the remains of their ancestors rest at the top of every single mountain here. In the mountain beside them is the tomb of their second ancestor, Lai Zing. He was the son of Lin Xing Sao. His bane rings were blood-colored bane rings, which gave him the ability to blood morph. When they finally arrived at the tomb of Lai ancestors, Woody ordered Tianeming to quickly put the wine down and pay respect to their ancestors. The tomb is surrounded with a golden light and they then put their offerings in front of the tomb. Tianeming then kneeled while Woody was just standing behind him. Founding ancestor, your descendants Lai Tianeming pays his respects. Here are my no towns, Woody uttered. Woody doesn't have a son of his own but for him, he is quite satisfied with Tianeming. He mentioned that he saw Tianeming defeat Lai Ling, and he can tell that Tianeming really knows what he was doing. He believes that Tianeming is a talent of his level. Based on Tianeming's bone structure, the shape of the back of his head and pelvis, Woody can tell that Tianeming has a talent for cultivation. Tianeming feels awkward while listening to him. Woody said that since fate has brought them together as father and son, he shall give Tianeming a pointers. From now on, he wanted that Tianeming will train here in the ancestral grounds. As Tianeming's father, he will slowly unveil the astounding depths of the Lysane clan to Tianeming. 
Are you ready? He mortal. He asked. I'm ready, please begin. Tian Nug confidently answered while thinking that this mausoleum does have a secret. Good. Now, piss on the tombstone. This old crook has a refined taste. You see, he loves virgin pee. Woody ordered, which made Tianming annoyed and told Woody to be serious. Woody is wearing a wide smile on his face and he was holding one of the wines and throwing it in front of Lei Xing Sao's tomb. Lai Xing Sao, you stinking crook. Toying with me, ha. Huh? I brought my son here, but you still won't give me a face. Fine, I'll make sure you die drinking. Oh, wait. You're already dead. Please drink less, my ancestor. I don't have much left. Woody uttered in front of Lai Xing Sao's tomb. Unexpectedly, a bright light appeared and the tombstone turned white, causing Tianming to be surprised, especially when it's not simply turning white. More accurately, it's turning into a tombstone that embodies spiritual energy. Tianming feels like the spiritual energy that radiating from this tombstone is 10,000 times more powerful than that of the flame yellow rock. He concludes that if he will cultivate here, the result will be heaven-defying. According to Woody, this tombstone has white heavenly patterns and saintly heavenly patterns. It's Tianming's first time seeing a high-level heavenly pattern, and Woody warned him that it's terrifying. Tianming was confused about how Woody discovered that pouring wine here with the founding ancestor's tombstone changes, and as per Woody, he has been drinking here for more than 15 years now. And as far as he knows, no one else knows. He stated that the tombstone was personally made by their founding ancestor during his time. Nobody else in the 10,000-year history of the Grand Orient Realm has the craftsmanship to inscribe 81 saintly heavenly patterns into spirit ores. In fact, it's not just this tombstone that can be activated by splashing wine. The other top ancestors will also reveal their secrets in the same manner. In other words, they're alcoholics even after death. Is it okay for you to tell me a revelation of this magnitude just like this? Tianeming suddenly asked. He was worried because they had just met and in his mind, Woody was only forced to tell about this. What else would I do? Tianeming, the world is huge. Since you of all the people came to become the junior sect master, it means we're bound by fate. Woody answered. For him, fate is the ultimate law of the world. He said that sometimes, they cannot just judge the people with just one glance. Perhaps, he senses that Tianeming thinks he's not worthy to be his father. But Woody knew from the first time he saw Tianeming that Tianeming is worthy. Tianeming explained to him that he didn't see that Woody was unfit. It's just that he cannot acknowledge anyone as his father right away. He was planning to only decide based on Woody's behavior. Go now. Let these old crooks protect you. Let's see if your fate is intertwined with them. Woody stated. Tianeming casually answered yes and called out his two life-bound beasts to begin their cultivation. After Ying Huo and Miao Miao came to the tombstone, they both were also shocked to witness such powerful heavenly patterns. They immediately start and plan to convert spiritual energy into Beast Kai using the Eternal Infernal Codex. They both feels amazed by it, and all of a sudden, Ying Huo ordered Miao Miao to stop jumping around so much since he was scratched by this cat. Woody on the other side was drinking his wine and advised Tianeming to do his best. It seems like that old thing has taken a liking to you, he uttered. He then walked away while believing that they still have hope for the future with Tianeming. At this time, he was motivated to continue his own cultivation. With his fierce look, he removed his cloth and it can clearly see that there's a spike that was struck on his breast. A red flame appeared as he began his cultivation. Woody grits his teeth while he suffers in agony. He held his chest, and there was blood appearing from him, together with a lightning in the sky. It's been 14 years. For 14 years he has been cultivating at the brink of death. He has stepped on the line between life and death countless times. He crossed the yellow springs and the bridge of helplessness. He has seen demons, and he has seen gods. He still has a grudge against Yu and Teiji for making him suffer like this for 14 years without knowing that he's not afraid of death at all. He bet Yu and Teiji also didn't know that he was engaging in vain severing cultivation. The affliction of the Lai Saint clan depends on no heaven, prays to no god, and fears no demon. All they believe in is their will and spirit. Ying Huo felt a sudden commotion and he was confused about where it was coming from. But then, Tianeming ordered him to ignore it and focus on cultivating. Four days later, Tianeming finally reached the ninth level spirit source. The other three bloodlines will arrive tomorrow so he decided to return and prepare for the three bloodlines arrival. Tianeming directly went to Ling'er and King Wu, and he proudly informed them that he made a breakthrough. At this point, he also noticed that King Yu is a lot more cheerful so she concludes that both these ladies are getting along well. Last time, Brother Tianeming was able to defeat Lai Ling with the help of Ling'er's spiritual attachment. Now, I'm afraid even though I'm not your match now, 
King Wu uttered. Tianming then told her not to be discouraged since Tianming is already 20 while King Wu is only 15. He believes that King Wu has a bright future. And for Tianming, it's only reasonable for him to work hard and catch up. For King Wu, the reason why Tianming's stage isn't high is because it hasn't been too long since he started his cultivation. Tianming at this time told King Wu to address him as big brother. Tianming doesn't have a sister of his own, so he'll regard King Wu as such from now on. Tianming admired how reliable King Wu is and she believes that King Wu would also be happy with him as her brother. Ling'er and King Wu looked at each other, and King Wu shyly asked a favor that she wanted to hug Miao Miao. Ying Huo was envious and said that he was cute too so King Wu could hug him for free. Tianming was dumbfounded to realize that King Wu was lively just because of the cat. He then gave permission to King Wu, and King Wu and Ling'er were enjoying the cat. Ying Huo felt sad as he also wanted these girls to hug him. But then, both of the girls just ignored him. When the night comes, Tianming is holding the thing that Mu Yang gave him way back in the heavenly sanctum. And tonight, he decided to open it up. He was wondering all along what Mu Yang gave him. And this time is the time that he is gonna find it out. The box has a name which is Archfiend. So Tianming concludes that it's probably a demonic bestial weapon. Upon opening it, a shining bright appeared and discovered that the thing inside was a black chain. Tianming was amazed by looking at it. There are spikes across the entire chain. If such a chain struck an enemy, one pull would probably rip their flesh out. No wonder why it's called an archfiend. It's a lot more terrifying than the blazing dragon chain blade that also Mu Yang gave to Tianming. When Tianming tried it on a tree, the chain was extremely powerful. Tianming also noticed that this chain has a special effect too. For a moment, he saw an illusion. He tried it once more, and now, he confirmed that it really has a special effect. When it's used, it can affect the opponent's mind. It's as if this chain was made just to be used with his bewildering eye. Combining those with his soulless seven howls, he believes that it's gonna be a terrifying attack. Because of excitement, he decided to practice using this chain as he waited for the three bloodlines arrival tomorrow. The next day, Tianming went to the Kunpeng Sacred Hall together with King Wu. As per the old lady, people from the three bloodlines will be arriving soon. She advises them that they should not worry too much. Yesterday, she visited the sect to discuss Tianming's pentabane with the council elder, Yi King. Jing Wu stated that Yi King will come by today to watch. Tianming boldly assimilated the Kunpeng sacred seal, forcing the three bloodlines to a dead end. Tianming was confident about how to resolve everything later. He knows that he has to prove his identity as a pentabane to elder Yi King. As long as he does, he'll be safe. Jing Wu mentioned that currently, none of the members of the Lai Saint clan can enter the Council of Elders. That's why, the three bloodlines will have to obey whatever Elder Yi King says. Tianming was glad that someone from the Council of Elders was willing to help the Lai Saint clan. As per Jing Wu, Tianming just needs to show his talent just like the last time. As long as he will prove his identity as a pentaban, Jing Wu believes that Tianming's seat as a junior master will be secured. She also said that the three bloodlines have many capable youths. It won't be worth fighting against them if Tianming will get hurt as per Jing Yu. Tianming asked for more information about the three bloodlines, and Jing Yu said that the Lai Saint clan has four bloodlines, four patriarchs, and 28 branch heads. 10,000 years ago, each of them would be amazing figures. But then 10,000 years later, not a single one of them is in the Council of Elders. So far, among the four bloodlines, the metal bloodlines have managed to preserve themselves the best. Ever since Lai Wudi gave up on managing the clan, the affairs and disputes were all handled by the second patriarch Lai Xuani. Lai Xuani is now the strongest person in the entire Lai Saint clan. As someone in the saint realm, he is the last bastion of prestige for the clan. The other branch head followed his lead. As such Lai Xuani will be the one leading the other branch heads here. Tianming got that Lai Xuani desires the sacred seal the most to enter the Lai Mausoleum. While they were talking, someone shouted at them in anger. When they turned around, they saw that the three bloodlines had arrived. The three bloodlines wanted to hold a sacred assembly to decide who would become the junior sect master. But then, an older man was mad and accused Jingu of doing something foolish. Judging by his imposing manner, Tianming believes that this guy is like Xuani. Then why don't you tell me what foolish thing I've done? Jingu asked. According to Xuani, Jingu picked up an outsider and called him Lai Wudi's son, then announced he'll be the junior sect master. Xuani believes that Lai Wudi doesn't have a son of his own and doesn't seem like he'll last much longer. He believes that picking the junior sect master is a matter of utmost importance for their clan. He said that Jingu selfishly appointed her own, 
While them, the three bloodlines were discussing a fitting candidate among themselves. The youth from these three bloodlines were protesting and were mad at Jinghu as they know that Jingyi doesn't have the authority to appoint someone to be a junior sect master by herself. Lai Xuanyi ordered Jinghu to hand over the Kunpeng sacred seal to them. He stated that as long as they'll pass it down to a talented descendant, there's still hope for their clan to rise again. You make it sound so justified. Your son Lai Xuanchen is the disciple of Yuan Taiji and the strongest youth in our clan. You're obviously doing this for your son. Is everyone else agreeing to this? Jing Hu answered. But then, the people disagreed with Jing Hu's statement. They believe that even if their sons cannot compete with Lai Xuanchen this time, there's still a chance their grandson and descendants down the line can. They also conclude that if the seal stays with the apex branch, they will have no chance at all. They even advise Jing Wu not to make the bogus claim that someone outsider is a pentabane. Who said that my pentabane is fake? Did those of the seven starry wind branches not tell you how I defeated Lai Ling? Tianeming suddenly screamed. Chuan Yi then said that they are not as foolish as those from the seven starry wind branches. We won't be easily fooled. Don't test your luck and go against us for a small benefit like that. He added, he also declared that the consequences of standing against them will die a horrible death. He glared at Tianeming and believed that this murderous glare from him would scare Tianeming. Tianeming dramatically yawned. You all just want your sons to fight me, right? I stayed up last night, so I'm in a rush to sleep. Hurry up and tell your sons go bring it on. After I defeat them, I'm gonna go to sleep. Tianeming uttered. Everyone was mad at Tianeming and called him a mannerless kid and Xuanyi was annoyed that his glare didn't even scare Tianeming even a bit. A lady suddenly spoke and told them all to calm their anger. She said that she'll make Tianeming understand the consequences of impersonating someone from the apex branch. This lady is Lai Chiling and Tianeming was surprised that he faced a daughter instead of a son. He was also confused why the lady is using an umbrella inside the hall. You stinky bastard. I'll make you stop laughing soon. Lai Kingu, your ill-fated life is a perfect match for your foul brother, Chiling stated and King Yu only glanced at her angrily. As per Jiang failing, Chiling has always bullied King Yu. She was attached to King Yu's body before so she knows that Chiling is the person King Yu hated the most. Make sure to teach her a lesson brother, she stated. Babe, it's over for you. If Linger says something herself, then things become serious, because I need to go all out to fulfill my wife's request. Tianeming uttered. They went outside the hall and faced each other. You dared to taint our Lai Saint clan ancestors' blood essence. The only ending for you is death, Chiling stated. And Tianeming was annoyed that the lady was talking more. Chiling then summoned her crimson flame sunderer and ninefold aqua shield. While looking at it, Tianeming knows that these weapons are a fire-type sword and a water-type shield. He now agreed that Chiling really is stronger than those guys he fought before. Chiling summoned her crimson flame, Azure Si Kun Peng and it's flaming fabulously with a scary aura. Ying Huo then comes out and Ling'er activates the wings for Tianeming. Ying Huo suggested letting Miao Miao fight and help them, but then Tianeming said that Miao Miao should sleep for a bit. With a perfect smile on her face, Chiling then rushed to Tianeming together with her life-bound beast, and this Azure Si Kun Peng blew a crimson flame meteor. Ying Huo laughed and he didn't feel scared by the flame since he is an eternal inferno phoenix. Tianeming activates infernal armor and the flame armor covers Tianeming. After the crimson flame meteor, Tianeming was still completely fine causing Chiling to be shocked. She activates her crimson flame field and was planning to fight using her specialty which is close-range fighting. They all then rushed to each other and started attacking. The crowd was jaw-dropping upon witnessing that Tianeming isn't losing to Chiling even in a close-range battle. Jing Yu on the other side smiled as was having fun watching the duel. Tianeming kicked Chiling from above to hit her at the spatial wall behind. The Kunpeng blew some flame, but Ying Huo remained fine and still capable of defeating the Kunpeng by normally punching it. Chiling is already wounded and grits her teeth while looking at her companion beast being beaten by Ying Huo. To her surprise, Tianeming rushed to her and showed her the bewildering eye. Chiling then saw an illusion that something tied her up and there was something she was sucking. Tianeming was shocked when he discovered that this is what Chiling used to imagine. She concludes that this lady is a pervert. Without wasting more time, Tianeming grips into his new chain and decides to try the chain technique he has been practicing all night. He hit Chiling in the butt using this chain. Chilling keeps moaning and everyone hears it and feels shameful for her. Some also know that Tianeming's chain has an illusion effect. In the end, Chilling was defeated by Tianeming and she already lost her combat power. Tianeming then told her to stop making moves on the sacred seal. He declared to everyone that he had already assimilated the Kunpeng sacred seal, visited the Lai Mausoleum, 
and paid his respects to the ancestors. If you are unwilling to accept it, then fight me, he confidently said. The youth was annoyed at his behavior, and someone said that he cannot accept Tianeming. It was Lai Chenlei who vowed that he will end Tianeming on this day. He wanted to kill Tianeming for annihilating the sacred seal without their permission. There's something flaming in his mouth and he was holding a long sword. Nice, it'll be you. I'll start by sending your teeth flying. Tianeming uttered. He then ordered Ying Huo to rest for now as he will test Miao Miao's new ability. Ying Huo then went to King Wu and vowed that he will protect the lady. My lady, do you find me exciting? Ying Huo asked. Very, my handsome chicken. And King Wu answered. However, Tianeming is more handsome than her. Ying Huo was annoyed and believed that King Wu and Ling'er were too blind for them to be immune to his boundless charm and complex personality. When Chen Lei saw that Ying Huo left, he thought that Tianeming was not going to fight with his life-bound beast. But then, Tianeming summoned Miao Miao and told him that he will play with another life-bound beast. Up until this matter, Miao Miao is still sleeping peacefully without knowing that it'll be his turn to fight. The crowd was so noisy upon knowing that Tianeming is indeed a twin beast master. They were confused about what Tianeming intended for letting his life-bound beast fight separately. Some also makes fun of him for having a chicken and a cat as his life-bound beast. They even joke around that Tianeming is a part of a theatrical troupe. Chen Lei was annoyed with how Tianeming delivered his words. He then summoned his Sky Thunder Yin Water Kun Peng and his intention is to kill Tianeming with his own hands. Tianeming immediately woke up Miao Miao and informed him that it's time for them both to fight. Miao Miao declined as he felt tired and wanted to rest more so Tianeming was forced to do something bad. He flicked Miao Miao's balls and Miao Miao felt a severe pain which forced him to wake up. Miao Miao roared and the purple flame then appeared and he became a devil monarch wild soul. Upon seeing it, Chen Lei was dumbfounded and his curiosity made him think about what kind of life-bound beast this cat is. If Mao Mao can defeat their enemy, Tianeming is willing to let him sleep for three days in a row. Without any words, Mao Mao immediately rushed to the enemy and Tianeming was riding above him, and they flew to fight against the opponent. While they are above, their powerful force can be seen. Miao Miao bumped the Thunder Sky Yin Water Kunpeng with a great force. At this point, the strength of Miao Miao's powerful body is definitely far stronger than the beast of its rank after transforming. Tianeming can't even count Miao Miao's learning bestial arts, so he'll just have him rely on his powerful and lightning source to fight. Now, the people witness that this cat is much fiercer than the chicken. Miao Miao is as if he's venting his anger. Chen Lei now realized that facing Tianeming is really difficult to deal with. But then, he believes that Tianeming's beast cannot go underwater so he immediately dives and challenges Tianeming to come and attack them. This scene brings Tianeming back to his past memories. He chuckled while questioning himself if all the geniuses really go in the water when they cannot beat their opponent. He then ordered Miao Miao to attack their opponent, and Miao Miao blows a lightning strike. Chen Lei is too calm as he was confident facing Miao Miao because he is also a lightning type. Miao Miao strikes an attack using the Chaos Lightning Ball causing Chen Lei to be frightened since this is the first time he saw this black-colored lightning that looks powerful. He screamed, ordering his Kun Peng to dodge, but still, they were hit by the Lightning Ball. As per Tianeming, dodging is not possible. This entire area will be engulfed. The Lightning Strike continued and Chen Lei was screaming in agony as he and his life-bound beast was electrocuted. Miao Miao, go down and catch fish. I'll wait for you up here, Tianeming demanded. Miao Miao loves catching fish so he immediately dives into the water and rushed to Chen Lei who is now wounded. Upon seeing Miao Miao, Chen Lei felt scared and immediately ran away together with his Kun Peng. Tianeming grips into his sword and casts the demise of Earth, Earthquaker into the water. It was going towards Chen Lei, and Chen Lei was electrocuted by it once more. He screamed in pain, and after the lightning strike, he lay on the ground while his Kun Peng was being attacked by Miao Miao. At this point, he already accepted that Tianeming is much stronger than him. The youth also accept that Tianeming is really capable, and is completely overpowered compared to Lai Chenlei. While Lai Chenlei did nothing but shriek, who'd like to fight now? Tianeming asked. And up until this point, there was someone who still wanted to defeat Lai Tianeming. He said that Tianeming should get to him first before becoming a junior sect master. This man was flaming all over his body, and he was staring at Tianeming with a fierce look. Tianeming slightly smiled and asked about his identity. The boy smirked and said that he's like Shuanchen of the Metal Bloodline, a 16-year-old kid, and is now at the sixth stage of unity. His master is no other than Yuan Taiji, the person who betrayed Lai Wudi. Am I enough to be your opponent? He asked, and Tianeming realized that he was now facing the top genius of the Lai Saint clan. 
The two of his opponents before Xu Anqin are just small fries for him, but this time, Xu Anqin is six realms above him. That surpasses his limit. What do you think, Lai Tianming? If you fear death, you may hide in your shell like a tortoise. Xu Anqin uttered. He even said that hiding is what Lai Wudi is doing right now. Hiding in the mausoleum like the tortoise he is. Like father, like son, I suppose. I wonder if a new tortoise will be born. He added. The crowd laughed so hard and made fun of Tianming because of what Xu Anqin said. Tianming was emotionless while thinking that Xu Anqin is a hundred times stronger than Lin Xiaoding. He believes that even if Lin Xiaoding entered Heaven's Elysium, he would have been at the bottom. Jingwu approached Tianming together with King Wu to tell him that Xu Anqin is provoking him to fight. Tianming, it's not necessary. It'll take far more than a pentaban for a spirit source beastmaster to defeat one at the sixth stage of unity. That's nothing short of a miracle. A pentabane still has its limit. It doesn't make you omnipotent. You've already proved yourself as the pentabane. Ningju stated. Tianming then told her that she should not worry as already understands everything. Although it'll be difficult for him to defeat Xuanchen, he believes that it will not be easy for Xuanchen to defeat him either. This concerns so much of his honor. Xuanchen smiled as he thought that Tianming fell scared of him. Tianming then also smiled at him and challenged him to come to defeat him. Who have I, Lai Tianming, ever feared? Let's get this done. Tianming answered. You said it yourself. Xu Enchen uttered and rushed to Tianming at a fast speed. He tried to punch Tianming. And despite that he's too fast, Tianming still managed to catch his hand. When both of their hands collided, it created a big explosion which made both of them flew away. Both of them held onto the ground while their feet were sliding. As what Tian already expected, Yu Enchen is really a strong one. One experimental punch from him was able to injure Tianming's black arm. Xu Enchen's mood changes abruptly since he was confused why Tianming's arm wasn't crippled by his punch. Instead, his hand was bleeding from the impact. Is that the extent of what someone at the sixth level of unity can do? Tianming asked. He can't forget about the insults coming from Xu Enchen. These people usually have unexpected effects. This time, he also insulted Xu Enchen's master, Yuan Taiji. He said that Taiji isn't that strong. And him, decided as the strongest in the Lai Saint clan was decided by feet or something. Because of what Tianming said, Xu Enchen was trembling in anger. He grits his teeth and decides to continue to battle. Ling'er suddenly speaks and she advises Tianming to stop fighting for now since she already used all of her power to take on the punch that was dealt by Xu Enchen. Xu Enchen is not using his lifebound beast, and Ling'er believes that if Ling'er will go all out, they probably wouldn't be able to fight back. Ying Hua went to Tianming and offered some help. Tianming's plan is not to fight against Xu Enchen for real. He has more than enough means. If he cannot win, he will just annoy Xu Enchen to death. Sure, whatever. Come at me quick. Don't bother relying on petty tricks like surprise attacks. After you did it, I'm fine. But look at you. Doesn't it hurt to injure yourself? Tianming uttered, causing Xu Enchen to be annoyed more and was greedy to end Tianming's life. Tianming is calmly standing while waiting for Xu Enchen's attack, and he was together with Ying Huo, fearlessly waiting. Xu Enchen was triggered by how Tianming makes fun of Yuan Taiji. While he was rushing to Tianming, Tianming then ordered Ling'er to prepare to escape with celestial wings. Damn, you really do be scared during the most crucial moments, Yin Huo uttered. And Tianming answered that this is called a strategic retreat. All of a sudden, someone screamed, ordering Tianming and Xu Enchen to stop fighting. Tianming and Xu Enchen then paused and looked at the old man. It was Council Elder Yi King. The people then immediately greeted him. Yi King then said that there is no need to continue the battle between Tianming and Yi King since both of them are in the same clan, and Yi King is in favor that they should not cause discord amongst themselves. The two battles earlier are enough for him to decide about Tianming. Xu Anqin grits his teeth and told the elder that he still wanted to settle his fight with Tianming. He doesn't want Tianming to be trusted by the higher up so easily. You're at the sixth level of unity. What can defeating a spirit source beastmaster prove? It's already a miracle that the spirit source beastmaster can survive after a punch from you. Yi King answered. Xu Enchen doesn't have a choice but to follow his order. But then, he still had a grudge against Tianming and was hoping that he could fight Tianming next time. At this point, Ying Huo concludes that Tianming is just fearless knowing that the elder will interfere. But then, Tianming said that his conscience is clear. If he had known, he would have been ten times more arrogant. The council elder, Yi King, went to Tianming and checked the five Bane Rings. Yi King was amazed that these Bane Rings are extraordinary. He asked Tianming if he entered the mausoleum and Tianming casually answered yes. Yi King also confirmed if Tianming paid respect to the ancestors, and Tianming is very confident since he already faced the ancestors at the Lai Mausoleum. 
the king asked about Tianming's opinion about the Lai Saint clan, and Tianming confidently stated that the Lai Saint clan existed for a glorious myriad of years, with their dominance unchallenged. That precedent is something we should try to emulate. Life's bane has the potential to change fate and presence the will of our bloodline, Tianming stated. While he was talking, Ying Huo was staring at him and was impressed that Tianming can really pretend. Upon hearing what Tianming said, Yi King commented that Tianming doesn't seem to be a 16-year-old because of how mature, sensible, and thoughtful he is. Even though this is an internal matter of the Lai Saint clan that Yi King shouldn't meddle with, he still faced everyone and declared that Tianming's talent makes him deserving of the position of junior sect master and heir of the Lai Saint clan and their customs. Tianming being a pentabane, whether or not he's really Lai Wudi's son is no longer important to him as he also believes that Wudi doesn't have any other son. Since Tianming already assimilated the Kunpeng sacred seal, he told everyone that they are killing off the only miracle to happen in 10,000 years, the resurgence of the Pentabane, for their petty ambitions. I think that would be the deed of a sinner. Like Xuani, do you want to be a sinner? He asked. Elder, I must say, isn't it too soon to say that he's really a Pentabane? We all know what that represents. Xuani answered. Yi King then asked Xuani about what kind of talent he knows that will allow a spirit source to defeat someone at the fourth level of unity. Xuani was about to respond, but Yi King instantly interfered and realized that Xuani's concern was reasonable. As far as he knows, being a pentabane only affects cultivation speed. He remembered that Tianamin claims that he reached the eighth level of spirit source in half a year of cultivation. However, no one here has witnessed this progress. He then declared that if Tianming can reach the third level of unity within a half a year, it will confirm that Tianming is indeed a pentabane. And if Tianming doesn't reach the third level of unity in half a year, then he will not interfere if the three bloodlines choose to change the junior sect master. The people were glad with this announcement as they thought that Tianming can't really attain these requirements. Then half a year later it is. I'll try my best not to betray all of your expectations, Tianming said while smiling slightly. He was confident that he could take the junior sect master position as he had ten bane rings which these people didn't know. Plus, he has the blessing of numerous ancestors that will make him cultivate faster. Xu Anchen challenged Tianming to have a duel after half a year from now to see whether Tianming actually reached the third level of unity when the time comes. All right, all right, don't worry, I'll definitely be waiting for you. Tianming answered while waving his hand. To his surprise, Yi King shows the talisman of an inner sect disciple of his Azure Immortal Mountain. From now on, Tianming is considered one of his disciples as well. Tianming is allowed to come and cultivate at the Azure Immortal Mountain. Any disciple of Yi King will have their safety guaranteed. Yi King vowed that he's willing to protect Tianming at all costs. Tianming received the talisman and showed appreciation to the elder. Tianming was glad to think that Elder Yi King handing a talisman in public is a warning that no other people should touch him. Tianming didn't expect this grandpa to be so virtuous, and he claimed that Yi King is one of their people. Everyone was jaw-dropping witnessing the scene of Yi King handing a talisman to Tianming. Work hard and prove you're a pentabane. I'm really curious about you, Yi King uttered. He also mentioned that the founding ancestor is a legend that he has admired all his life. Since Tianming has the same bane count as the founding ancestor, Yi King would like to see what Tianming will become after 10 years from now. Tianming then vowed that he will do his best to impress the elder, and Yi King is looking forward to it. Jingwu approached Yi King and thanked him for acknowledging Tianming. Xuani suddenly spoke. He introduced his youngest son, Jinkan, a 15-year-old kid. Lai Wudi signed a marriage agreement with Xuani, and eight elders from the council signed their names as witnesses to the contract. The agreement stipulates that when Lai Kingwu reaches the age of 16, she will be weeded to Jinkan. This time, Xuani asked the elder if this agreement is valid for life. While he was talking, his son Jinkan keeps saying that he's hungry and wanted to eat. But then, Xuani ignored his son and focused on talking about the agreement to the elder. Lai Kingu grits her teeth and she was furious about this agreement. I can tell with one look that this little chub is stupid, Ying Huo stated. But Tianming didn't give any comments. As per Yi King, he wasn't part of the signing so it's not his place to meddle. Xuani understood what the elder said and he explained that he only wanted to reconfirm the agreement's validity. Yi King concludes that Xuani was just afraid that he will stop the marriage. But then, Xuani denied it and said that this thing is a small matter to the council, and he will not worry if the elder will stop the agreement. And what if I do? Yi King uttered, and Xuani thought Yi King was just joking. He then said that he doesn't have a choice now but to seek out the elders who signed the agreement. 
Naturally, I'm aware that you're a busy person, so you definitely wouldn't bother yourself with petty matters like this. He added, since it's a petty matter, don't bother me with it. Annoy me enough, and I'll tear your agreement up. Ye King answered. Shuani was frightened and instantly decided to leave to avoid annoying the elder. Before he left, he glanced at King Yu to inform her that he will come to pick his soon-to-be daughter-in-law, King Yu, up for marriage on her birthday. He even teases Jing Wu that she will be delighted once King Wu will give birth to a great-grandchild. King Wu, I want you to give me five children to make my dad happy. Jing Ken uttered, The hell, this damn chub is disgusting. It's literally beauty and the beast. Ying Huo said, You think a fat pig like that can wed my granddaughter over my dead body? Jing Wu said with an angry tone, since she doesn't want to approve. Xu Yi reminded her that this agreement is what they agreed with Lai Wudi. And if Jing Wu tries something inappropriate, he believes that the council elders will be involved. At this point, he was very sure that his son would marry Lai King Wu. Ying Huo then suggested killing Jing Ken. But then, Tianeming had his own plan. Tianeming then told King Wu not to worry. If Lai Jing Ken dares touch one of your hair, I'll turn him into meat paste. If I can't save you, I'll make my head into a chamber pot for you. Tianeming promised. Big brother, I don't need a chamber pot. I'm not that fragile. Don't worry. King Wu answered while laughing. The elder Yi King needed to leave so he reminded King Wu and Tianeming to focus on cultivating. He believes that no matter what happens, only by becoming stronger will they have the opportunity to change things. They both then give thanks to Yi King, and Yi King then leaves. At the Gold Gleam Mountain, Xu Enchen is spending his time practicing his skills. He was so mad at Lai Tianeming and wanted to kill him. A man suddenly came, saying that he didn't expect the junior sect master position to be stolen from Xu Enchen. If I were you, I definitely wouldn't accept it, am I right? Brother Lai, the man uttered. Upon seeing him, Xu Enchen mentioned his name, Yu and Xing Cheng. Xing Cheng came here to congratulate Xu Enchen on becoming a junior sect master, but then, he accused Tianeming for ruining the chance for Xu Enchen. It can see on Xu Enchen's face how mad he is towards Tianeming, and he's willing to wait for half a year to have a battle against Tianeming and put him to death. He doesn't believe even a little that Tianeming is a pentabane. He said that their ancestors only managed to awaken the pentabane after 50 years. He doesn't have a clue what special techniques Tianeming cultivated. But for him, it's very likely that he's at the unity stage without a unity field. Shengchen also mentioned about the coming marriage of Xu Enchen's brother with King Yu. He commented that King Yu's beauty is not bad at all. He also heard that King Yu takes after her mother, who his father used to like. Xu Enchen concludes that Xing Cheng is interested at King Yu and Xing Cheng confirmed it himself. He's interested at King Wu because of King Wu's beauty. Xu Enchen jokes around as he believes that Xing Chen is still a virgin. He then offered to make some arrangements for Xing Chen. Really? Then sure. All the women around me are the granddaughters of the council elders. I wouldn't dare to make a move on them. Xing Chen answered with excitement. As per Xu Enchen, his brother doesn't know anything. So on the night of the wedding, he planned to knock his brother out and replace Xing Chen to be with King Wu. If his brother will try to fight back, he's very willing to kill him. While they are heading their way somewhere, Xing Cheng stated that he doesn't want to only have King Yu at once. He wants her to belong to him entirely and be his bitch. And, he doesn't want anyone else to know. No problem, leave it to me. She should thank you for releasing her from the hands of my idiot brother. Xu Enchen answered. Xing Cheng liked the idea. His father couldn't have King Yu's mother back then. And now, he was very sure that he could have King Yu instead. During the night, Ying Huo and Miao Miao are having a hard time cultivating. They are arguing just because of King Wu. While they were busy, Tianeming and Ling'er were sitting on the cliff. Tianeming was thrilled because of their sweetness. Ling'er suddenly asked if his heart settled here, and he answered yes as he already viewed this place as his second home. Ling'er lay down on his legs and Tianeming stated that this place is a pretty place. Besides, his home is wherever Ling'er is. While Ling'er is using Tianeming's legs as a pillow, she feels something hard so she asks Tianeming about what it is. Tianeming was dumbfounded and was stunned to speak. He then told Ling'er that it was a Grand Thunder Flare Sword, and Ling'er then asked him to put his sword aside. Tianeming also lay down on the ground and Ling'er is in the same position. Ling'er, do you mind doing some fun things before our wedding? Tianeming suddenly asked. Ling'er didn't get what he wanted to say and Tianeming answered that they did something wicked. At this point, Ling'er understood so she got up and choked Tianeming out of annoyance. Ling'er was thrilled despite how she reacted, and Tianeming can clearly see her beauty and sexiness while the lady is above him. Ling'er became serious and was about to give what Tianeming wanted. Even Tianeming feels the flow in their blood. But then, King Wu suddenly came as she needed to talk to Tianeming. Tianeming and Ling'er immediately get up while their faces were blushing. 
Tianming told her that they should talk by tomorrow but King Yu doesn't want to. She also feels a weird atmosphere between the two. King Wu came here to inform Tianming that she's a disciple of the Azure Immortal Mountain, the same as Tianming. According to her, tomorrow, a grand mentor named Yi Sheoking will explain the key to breaking through to unity from the spirit source. Yi Sheoking is the elder son of the elder Yi King, and is a very accomplished man. Since Tianming is stuck at the peak of spirit source, King Yu invited Tianming to go together at the sermon of the grand mentor since she believes that Sheoking's sermon is extremely popular and can also help Tianming. Tianming becomes excited to hear that there is something sermon like this. Without hesitation, he decided to come with King Wu. Breaking through to a new realm is difficult, especially since Tianming needs to understand the state of mind. It'll be more advantageous for him to listen to a master's teaching than just to try it himself. After talking about this matter, Tianming asked a favor to King Yu to have a good tour of the Grand Orient sect. King Yu then agreed and Ling'er also wished to come. They then ride a King Wu's white bird. It's the prettiest lifebound beast that Tianming has ever seen. It's a female white Grand Kunpeng, a moon-type lifebound beast named Shuo Yu. Tianming was impressed knowing that it was a moo-type beast. Even Ying Huo agreed and stated that a moon-type beast is the moon's favorite which will be a perfect match for him. Babe, I'm in love with you. You won't be able to escape from me, Ying Huo said while facing Shuo Yu. But then, Shuo Yu called him an idiot. According to King Wu, Shuo Yu is less than half a year old. Practically, a baby which she believes doesn't fit with Ying Huo. Ying Huo confidently said that he can wait for Shuo Yu. After a while, they arrived at the Azure Immortal Mountain. As per King Wu, the elders have the highest rank, and each of them controls an immortal mountain. There are ten hall perfects on each mountain who are in charge of the normal operations of their immortal mountains. Under the hall prefects are the exalted masters who guide the disciples in their cultivation. Most of the hall prefects and exalted masters are saints. They form the backbone of the Grand Orient sect. King Wu also stated that Elder Yi King's son, Yi Sheoking, is one of the hall prefects of Azure Immortal Mountain, the highest rank. He's also an exalted master at the same time. King Wu heard that Sheoking is going to become an elder soon and probably be one of the youngest elders. Since King Wu mentioned that Sheoking is just one of the youngest, Tianming was confused about who the others were. King Wu then said that it's Yuan Taiji, the ninth elder, and Yuan Fengshan, the third elder. The Yuan family is the Grand Orient sect's largest family. Tianming suddenly becomes interested in the disciple ranks. So King Yu told him that starting from the lowest, it's the outer disciples, inner disciples, direct disciples, and prime disciples. Are prime disciples the equivalent of the Elysian children of Heaven's Elysium? Tianming asked, and King Wu said that he's right. Every prime disciple is among the most ridiculously talented people in the sect. As long as they're allowed to mature, they'll definitely be as powerful as the elders. Each generation usually only has one or two, or even none. However, the current generation under 20 is an exception, and there are four of them in this generation. Their realm is in the peak of unity, or perhaps even the heavenly will stage. Tianming was impressed by them and he concluded that these people might grow up stuffed full of medicines and herbs. All this time, Tianming thought that he would be the top among the geniuses of the Grand Orient sect. But now, he knows that he can't even be compared to the Prime Disciples. Among the Prime Disciples, there's one from the Yuan family. It's Yuan Taiji's eldest son named Yuan Shendu, the strongest disciple. Tianming then realized that it looks like their path to revenge is still quite long. But then, King Wu is already prepared to embark on it his entire life. When they both check from above, there's quite a lot of people. Tianming smiled to think that he can also see some people at Unity here. Even though today's lecture is about Unity, it's still effective for the people at the first level of Unity as per King Wu. Since Tianming is already 20, King Wu kiddingly asked him if he didn't feel awkward attending lectures with 13-year-olds. But then, Tianming forgets about his real age and doesn't forget that in this world, he's 16. At this time, the grand mentor Yi Sheoking came, and he was holding his fan while greeting the children. Hello disciples, I'm Yi Sheoking. He stated, Today, Sheoking planned to talk about the formation of a unity field. He then instructed everyone that no one should speak during his lecture. Yes, exalted master. The children responded. While looking at his students, he instantly saw a boy with white hair which is Lai Tianming, and believes that Lai Tianming is most likely the junior sect master his father spoke of. Tianming also stared at him and was glad that Sheoking's gaze is confident and steady. According to Sheoking, unity means returning to one form, fusing two into one, or perhaps even three into one. The uniting aspect of the unity realm doesn't just refer to fighting together. Instead, their thoughts, mindset, will, and fighting spirit must be perfectly fused. 
the perfect state would have man become beast and beast become a man. To achieve the unity realm, one doesn't need to consider nexuses or energy synchronization yet. While Tianming was listening to the lecture, he was also taking notes. He was satisfied with how Shayoking delivered his knowledge. Two hours later, Shayoking finished his lecture and was hoping that everyone would leave in an orderly manner. Ling'er reminded Tianming that she was sleepy and she wanted to go to sleep. When she looked at Tianming, she was confused why Tianming was still taking notes. She even thought that Tianming cannot remember the lecture. Tianming then told her that some things need to be reviewed multiple times, and that's why he was taking notes. Tianming then walked together with the other disciples, and some noticed that it was him, the junior sect master. So our junior sect master came to listen as well. A man said, and he was together with a lady. Tianming was looking at them with confusion as he doesn't have an idea about who these people are. But then, it was Lai Ling. Lai Ling was so annoyed at him that he forgot Ling even if it's only a few days since they last sought each other. Oh, I don't remember those who I've won against. Tianming answered. Ling grits his teeth and tells Tianming to stop being arrogant for now. He introduced the lady he was with. According to him, this lady is the elder Yi King's granddaughter, and she has something to say to Tianming. King Wu then informed Tianming that this lady is the exalted master Yi Shaoqing's niece named Yi Zi. So you're the one who defeated Lai Ling and became the junior sect master. Do you know that he's my friend? Yi Zi uttered. Tianming was a little bit annoyed that there was another spoiled brats who wanted to have a fight against him. A friend? Are you sure he's not your pet? Tianming answered. Who are you calling a simp? Watch out or I'll bite you to death. This is our Z's turf. Do you even know your current place? Ling screamed with annoyance. Tianming then stated that he was right about him saying that the owner was mad for defeating her dog, causing Ling to be more annoyed. Z then smirked and said that Tianming was not around the time that she messed with Lai King Yu back then. Tianming becomes serious after he knows that Z is bullying his sister King Wu. Z even boasts that she has messed up King Wu hundreds of times since childhood. She believes that Tianming cannot do anything about it. And now, she also wanted to humiliate Tianming too. Tianming is staring angrily at her while thinking that Zi is using her to establish her place. In the past, he would have slapped Zi already. King Wu told her to ignore Zi and just leave. Tianming was indebted to Elder Yi King, so it would have been good to slap Zi for him. He wonders if Exalted Master Yi sees what's going on. All of a sudden, Yi Shaoqing came and told her to get out. From now on, she's not allowed to join Shaoqing's lecture. Zi felt nervous upon hearing it, and she turned around to her uncle and saw how mad he was. Leave, Shaoqing ordered. Zi grits her teeth and she almost cries. She's furious that Shaoqing treats her like this. Because of this, she blamed Tianming and decided to leave without any words. She then walked away together with Lai Ling and she even threatened Tianming. Shaoqing closed his fan and ordered Tianming to show his bane rings. Tianming then showed it to him without any words. Upon checking, it really looks real for him. It makes him wonder if Tianming will really reach the third level of unity in half a year. Tianming was confident in himself, but still, he told Shaoqing that he was not confident at first. But after listening to Shaoqing's lecture, he has suddenly come to understand everything that makes him confident now. Shaoqing was glad that his hours didn't go to waste because of what Tianming said. He also noticed how attentive Tianming was during his lecture which he liked the most. Tianming then told him that the lecture was a great help for him. In that case, Shaoqing suggested Tianming to give the Imperial Ninefold Gates a try and see if Tianming can break through to the first level of unity straight away. Tianming was full of confusion as he didn't know what this imperial ninefold gate was. Shaoqing then concludes that King Wu didn't tell Tianming about this. As per King Wu, she was about to bring Tianming to the Grand Orient Sacred Mountain after the lecture. She said that she'll give Tianming an explanation once they get there. Shaoqing drew a great smile on his face and decided to give a small lecture to Tianming. According to him, the Imperial Ninefold Gate is also known as the Instant Unity Maker. It's able to suppress Tianming's lifebound space. Under the immense pressure, Tianming will be able to synchronize his mind and energy with his lifebound beasts. It's really helpful in reaching unity. Tianming is already a spirit source now, and only by breaking through to unity will he have a much easier time. Head there, young man. He stated while holding Tianming's shoulder. Thank you, exalted master. I'll go now. Tianming answered. Shaoqing then left while advising Tianming to work hard. He also told Tianming to greet Lai Wudi on his behalf. Both Tianming and King Wu were staring at Shaoqing leaving the place with a great smiles on their faces. Because of what Shaoqing said, Tianming was motivated to go to the Imperial Nine Fold Gates immediately. Meanwhile, they arrived at the Grand Orient Sacred Mountain. 
This area has a lot of people inside, and as per King Wu, there are many important spots in a sacred mountain, and the Imperial Nine Fold Gates is one of them. The nine stone gates are made from the highest grade of spirit ores. The saintly heavenly patterns inside the stones make cultivation here crucial. The first gate has one saintly heavenly pattern, the second has two, and so on. The ninth gate has a total of 45 patterns. Tianming smiled as he thought that these were just simpler versions of Lai Sheng Sao's tomb. But the 81 patterns of Lai Sheng Sao's tomb are way too strong for him, so the effect has been limited. Tianming believes that this place is the perfect cultivation for him and knows that there's hope for him to break through today. King Yu told him to select a gate that is suitable for him. She said that pushing Tianming's self will cause his life-bound space to collapse. Once it collapses, Tianming's life-bound beast will die a miserable death, which is a very serious consequence. At this time, King Wu is using the fifth gate and she doesn't dare to go further. Tianming was confused if anyone tried the ninth gate. And King Wu told him that thousand years ago, there were many. Her father, Lai Wudi, also went there when he was younger. But now, there's no one. As per King Wu, since Tianming's life-bound beasts have seven stars, he should cultivate at the first gate. She said that as long as Tianming will not cultivate at the gates, he won't feel any oppression. But if you do, he will feel that his life-bound beast is being suppressed immediately. I see. So it only suppresses half of your life-bound space. Tianming answered. King Wu invited him to come together at the fifth gate. She decided to give Tianming a demonstration before he'll attempt the first gate. King Wu then started walking to the fifth gate while Tianming was very excited following her. From the other's point of view, a bald man and a lovely lady talked privately while drinking some tea. The man reminded the lady that they're holding a banquet tonight to celebrate Xing Cheng's 13th birthday. He asked the lady if she wanted to reserve a seat, but the lady instantly answered no. She's the sacred mountain chief Yi Yuxi, a saint realm, and the man is the sacred mountain chief Yuan Kaidai, also in a saint realm. The lady directly told Kaidai that she doesn't want this man. Why must you waste time on me? You don't lack women anyway, she stated, and Kaidai said that those other women isn't his true love. He slightly smiled while believing that Yuxi will be his lady one day. They then changed the topic, and Kaidai said that he heard his father and older brother saying that Yuxi's second brother is going to become an elder. He stated that there are five candidates, and Yuxi's brother received 18 votes. Among them, two came from the Yuan clan. You know, I spared no effort in convincing them to do so, right? Kaidai uttered. He can't become an elder without your two votes. If one of the four candidates can become an elder, it means it's easy to become one. So I can be one too, Yuxi confidently said. Kaidai boasted about his father and brother's influence in the council. He stated that if it weren't for his family's stance and the others just simply following along, he believes that Yuxi cannot say for sure who would have received the most votes. Yuxi suddenly laughed, and Kaidai added the E-Clan will now have two elders. According to Yuxi, millennia ago, the E-Clan was easily ten times that of the Yuan clans. Back then, the Lai Saint clan was hundreds of times mightier than the Yuan clan, with the E-Clan being second to none. In Yuxi's mind, Kaidai really believes that the Grand Orient sects belong to him. All of a sudden, they heard some noise, ordering the people to move aside. The girls were thrilled when they saw that Ching Cheng came. Because of his beauty, every girl here admired him so much. Kaidai stood and smiled upon seeing his nephew Ching Cheng. He was also impressed that Ching Cheng was surrounded by all sorts of beauties from the prominent families at only 13. He even believes that Ching Cheng is more of a playboy than his brother. Yuxi then told him to watch Ching Cheng well as she doesn't think that Ching Cheng can mess around just because of his powerful clan. At this time, Ching Cheng faced a kid that was kneeling in front of him while apologizing many times. Ching Cheng told him to leave and not bother to see his face again. Tianeming also saw him and he was annoyed about how arrogant Ching Cheng is. As per King Wu, Ching Cheng is the prime disciple of Yuan Shendu's younger brother. He has talent but not much of a character, and she even stated that everyone from the Yuan clan is like that. They are now facing the first gate and Tianeming asks King Wu if she's going to try breaking through to the fifth level of unity. He even offered to lend Ling'er to her. Ling'er then popped out and agreed to Tianeming. Tianeming then held King Wu's hand and King Wu was amazed after she experienced Ling'er's magic. Go for it, King Wu. I genuinely want to help you become stronger, Ling'er said. King Wu thanked her and promised that she'll work hard. Let's go straight to the fifth gate, Tianeming said. Ching Cheng is looking at them from behind and believes that the man with King Wu is no other than Tianeming. He stopped both King Wu and Tianeming from walking. Tianeming and King Wu instantly look at him, and there's several ladies behind Ching Cheng. Look, it's the sect master's daughter. Are you here to cultivate again? 
Haven't you broken through to the fifth level of unity yet? With that talent of yours, how can you be from the Lie Saint clan's apex bloodline? What source of the apex is this? The lady said. This scene feels familiar to Tianming. King Wu was also mocked all the time just like him. And King Wu then said that he was used to it. Don't worry, proving yourself with strength is much better than wasting your time talking. Tianming said, which helps King Wu feel better. There are also some other girls who get curious about Tianming and some think that Tianming is King Wu's boyfriend. There is also one person who reminded King Wu for not completing her mission from the Waiyu faction. She warned King Wu to be careful not to be kicked out by what they called Sister Waiyu. She said that if it happens, King Wu can only go to the Abyssal Battlefield by herself in the future. Tianming wondered about what's this Waiyu facting and King Yu then explained that all sex disciples are free to form factions with a leader and administrator who are chosen from among the inner disciples. The main reason why one would join a faction is to fulfill sect missions and train in the Abyssal Battlefield in groups. Since that place is dangerous, it would be advantageous to go with more people. The Waiyu faction is one with only female disciples. Tianming realized that King Wu has been intentionally isolated by the people from this faction. But they all say that you can't do anything. What should you do at a time like this? Tianming asked. King Wu grits his due out of annoyance and confidently says that she'll prove herself. Good, now go and prove it to them. Tianming added. King Wu then enters the fifth gate, and Tianming is cheering her and is willing to wait for a positive outcome. The ladies then belittled King Wu and believed that King Wu will still not break through this time. Listen up, King Wu. We, from the Lai Saint clan, don't fear hardship, and we don't surrender to fate. If what lies ahead of us is the hard path, we'll defy fate and carve our own path. This is the will of our clan. Any clan may experience a decline, but a Lai Saint clan is one with a powerful will. We've inherited our ancestors' blood, so we will carry on their will as well. We won't perish without a fight. This is what Tianming screamed which everyone can hear even King Wu. Because of this, King Wu becomes more motivated. She always repeated the last sentence Tianming uttered. Her eyes become white and her body is in an azure state, while her hair is floating up above. She focused on herself and even Linger gave her best. A flame that appeared that burst out, and she finally broke through in an instant. Tianming smiled upon witnessing it. He already had a feeling that King Wu would break through but he didn't expect to go this smoothly. King Wu then comes out from the gate and was glad to inform Tianming about her breakthrough. Thank you, thank you. From now on, you're the most important person in my life. King Wu uttered with tears while hugging Tianming. Calm down. You're making it seem like you haven't made a breakthrough in years. And why are you crying? Tianming responded. Linger also cried, and she informed Tianming that breaking through this time isn't a simple matter. She told Tianming to check King Wu's arm, and Tianming discovered that King Wu's three rings became five and turned into silver. King Wu is still emotional while saying that these rings are Pentamoon Skybane. It's an extremely rare morphing lifespan. Tianming was amazed by it, but then, he told King Wu to hide it so others couldn't see. He smiled while thinking that only the second ancestor has experienced a change like this, but he only had four while King Wu has five. At this point, there's a part of him that feels like everything wasn't a coincidence. Everyone in the Lai Saint clan believes the number of Bane rings that appeared on the day their lifespan was cured would remain constant throughout their lifetimes. But, Tianming is afraid that these people will underestimate lifespan. He is also curious about King Yu's feeling now about having a pentamoon, and King Yu said that her mind feels a lot clearer, and she is now able to understand the things she wasn't able to. She also stated that the 6th and 7th levels of unity all seem very straightforward to her, and the unity battle arts she cultivated, but wasn't able to understand in the past, all seem very clear now to her. Plus, the pentabane sky has also appeared under Shuo Yu's wings. Tianming was impressed and glad that his sister King Wu practically received an epic booster. I succeeded brother. Now, you should try to see if you can reach unity. King Wu stated. Tianming then agreed with her and believes that he can also awaken a pentamoon skybane too. The ladies in the crowd were dumbfounded upon witnessing that King Wu was finally breakthrough and is now stronger than them. Lai King Wu, I heard that you're marrying Lai Jinken who is both handsome and talented, a peerless Adonis. Yet, here you are showing affection to a young man. Where's your sense of propriety? A lady shouted. King Wu ignored her and both she and Tianming still overheard the lady accusing her of flirting with another man before marriage. Tianming asked if she was angry. But then, King Wu decided to change herself as she agreed with Tianming's statement that one can only prove themselves through strength. No one will listen to a loser speak. She added, Tianming was proud of her knowing that King Wu is nailing his style. 
The lady was annoyed at King Wu for ignoring her. She even said that King Wu lacks basic manners despite that she was about to become a wife. There is also a lady beside her who also agreed with her. She stated that King Wu is a disgusting woman that looks pure and innocent. Their gossiping ended when Xing Cheng spoke and educated them that the man together with King Yu is her brother and Lai Wudi's illegitimate son. He also told them that Tianming recently returned to the Grand Orient sect and is now the current junior sect master. He then evilly smiled as he was thinking that he was the man who will make King Wu cheat on Jin Ken. A lady couldn't believe that Tianming is now the junior sect master since he was still not at Unity yet. And she even commented that Tianming's dyed hair is disgusting. You're all wrong. This junior sect master is a peerless genius. He's a pentaban and claims that he reached the peak of spirit source in half a year. Qing Cheng answered which made all the ladies laugh while saying that Tianming is a fool with one foot in the grave. They also joke around that in less than three years, the rest of the Lai Saint clan will be annihilated. Qing Cheng liked how the ladies laughed as he wanted Tianming to become everyone's laughingstock. He was looking at these ladies' boobs and butts and he knows that these girls are trying to seduce him every day despite the fact that these ladies are the granddaughters of sect elders. But then, Xing Cheng doesn't want to touch them as he doesn't want to marry either one of them. While Tianming and King Wu are standing in front of the gate, the bystanders are gradually approaching to watch Tianming. Some were also betting that Tianming cannot make it last longer. They conclude that Tianming will back down as the junior sect master because of their mockery. Their voices were so loud that it made Ling'er mad knowing that these people judge too much without knowing the person. King Wu also noticed that even the quiet disciples who usually don't say anything are chiming in. Tianming was not bothered by them and he even told King Wu and Ling'er to calm down. For him, all beings are the same, influenced by their emotions and worldly desires. In this secular world of mortals, who can escape? He asked, mocking him makes these people superior and good about themselves. But since they have this sense of superiority, they must prepare to taste defeat as per Tianming. He was cut off by Ying Huo who told him to start immediately before Miao Miao fell asleep again. He then sat and began his cultivation. But then, the life-bound space wasn't suppressed and he didn't feel any pressure, which made Ying Huo wonder if Tianming really started cultivating. Tianming feels weird as he doesn't also feel any pressure. He knows that even if it's not strong, he should be able to feel it a bit. He comes out from the gate and King Wu was confused so Tianming told her that he doesn't feel any pressure, and that the gate might be broken. Since he felt nothing in the first gate, he decided to try the second gate. King Wu believes that there's no way the Imperial Ninefold Gate is broken, so she concludes that Tianming's life-bound beasts might not be the seventh star. Upon seeing that Tianming was heading to the second gate, the people were mocked again and underestimated him. Qing Cheng on the other hand was boasting that he had broken through at the fifth gate when he was ten. When Tianming started cultivating at the second gate, he still felt the same, no pressure at all. Ying Huo then instantly demanded to try the other gate, and the men were laughing while underestimating Tianming. Tianming then told King Wu that the gates are not working on him so he will go directly to the fifth gate. But then, Tianming becomes emotional when the fifth gate still does not work on him. Because of this, he thinks that the gates were really broken. There's rarely a challenge suitable for me, but why is this so bad? Is it working or not? King Huo stated with annoyance. The cat was also annoyed to think that his rest will be delayed due to the gate that didn't work on them. Tianming then rushed to the seventh gate hoping that it would work this time. But then, Xing Cheng blocked and asked him if he was here to perform monkey tricks. Yes, and the monkey I'm trying to fool is you. Tianming answered, which made Xing Deng furious and gritted his teeth. No one dares to speak to him the way that Tianming did. That's why he cannot accept that Tianming dared to act like this. The ladies were also shocked and concluded that Tianming doesn't know Xing Cheng's position in the sect. What is that? Higher than mine. The junior sect master. Tianming confidently answered them. The girls laughed loudly while stating that the junior sect master cannot be compared to Xing Cheng's position. Are you provoking me? Xing Cheng angrily asked. And Tianming told him that he was not worthy of provocation and only delaying Tianming's cultivation. Tianming then passed by while he still heard Xing Cheng saying that what Tianming is doing right now is not cultivation but more likely showing a comedic trick. Tianming really doesn't have any intention to be bothered by these people so he instantly goes and doesn't waste much time. Yuxi also witnessed the scene and she also heard that Tianming has a frightening pentabane constitution. She asked if Yu and Kaidai believed this. Of course, I do. This young man looks extraordinary. I bet he'll reach third level unity in 30 years. Kaidai answered while laughing. Yuxi then looked at Tianming again with confusion about why isn't Tianming cultivating but wandering around instead. 
when Tianming started at the seventh gate, he finally felt a bit of pressure. Ying Huo was not satisfied by this and even Miao Miao suggested that they should go directly to the ninth game so that he can rest. All right, all right. Stop being so noisy. I'll go now. Tianming answered. King Hu was worried for him and didn't believe in his ability. But Tianming explained to her that he was not trying to show off. But then, his both life-bound beasts weren't holding back. Ching Cheng was shocked to see that Tianming is heading to the ninth gate, and also the men in there were annoyed as they believed that Tianming was just putting up a show, and was only trying to fool them. Tianming only smiled and told himself that his own opponent in this Grand Orient sect is himself. No one can stop him despite what the people said about him. He went directly to the ninth gate, which is the last gate, and he smiled before he started the cultivation. Some people belittled Tianming and even thought that Tianming planned to sacrifice his life-bound beasts just to show off. They even believe that Tianming is just a puppet chosen as the junior sect master. While Tianming is cultivated, his life-bound beasts finally feel the pressure, and it makes Ying Huo's muscles relax, and also he feels comfortable with it. On the other hand, Miao Miao can't even catch his breath. He called Tianming a cultivation maniac and a perverted masochist. Tianming then ordered them not to focus on themselves and protect their brothers who haven't hatched yet. Leave it to me. Leave it to me. You don't need to worry about us. Then again, we look forward to your disciple that will make us tremble and break through to unity. Ying Huo answered with excitement. Tianming at this point feels that he will break through. He was very thankful in advance for Master Yi's guidance and the Imperial Ninefold Gates. As for him, the most important thing to understand in unity is the connection between Beast Master and Beast. There is me and you and you and me, Tianming said to his life-bound beasts. Ling'er overheard everything they said and it made her confused. What type of conversation are you guys even having? Ling'er asked. Both Tianming and Ying Huo asked the same question to her if there was anything wrong with what they have said and Ling'er casually answered no. Tianming stayed for too long in the ninth gate, and the lady beside Xing Cheng was confused why Tianming didn't come out yet. According to her, under normal circumstances, Tianming's life-bound beasts would be crushed to death under pressure, and Tianming would be heavily injured as well. At this point, she already thinks that Tianming lied to them about having Fourth Order Saints beasts, that even the Prime Disciples don't have these kinds of beasts. Sheng Cheng was annoyed listening to her as he believes that Tianming doesn't deserve to have a Fourth Order Saint beast. There are a lot of people outside the gate waiting for Tianming to fail. But, in the end, Tianming made a breakthrough with the Ninth Gate and had now ascended to unity. Everyone was murmuring because of how surprised they were that Tianming made it. As per the history, no one has done this in a thousand years. That's why they now all believe that Tianming's life-bound beasts were Fourth Order Saint Beasts. They are all jaw-dropping to think that Tianming is really a pentabane and has Four Order Saint Beasts, which is heaven-defying. Cheng Cheng grits his teeth as he was furious to think that Tianming had a breakthrough which is not what he expected to happen. He even believes now that the gate might be broken. The ladies behind him were also surprised and compared Tianming to Xing Cheng's brother who doesn't have a fourth order saint beast. Because of this, they have concluded that Tianming might be stronger than Xing Cheng's brother. Xing Cheng ordered them to ship as he cannot accept these words from them. Tianming finally came out from the gate and he was enjoying his cultivation in the ninth gate. King Wu was also glad for him and she congratulated Tianming wholeheartedly. Sheng Cheng cannot hold it back so he walked towards Tianming and accused Tianming of cheating. How can someone like you have fourth order beasts? He angrily asked. Little friend, what's with that expression of yours? It's like you are shit. Tianming answered. In his mind, he was confused why Sheng Cheng always gets angry all of a sudden. The crowd laughed at what Tianming said to Sheng Cheng and Xing Cheng looked at them with annoyance and warned those who would laugh again. Why Tianming? How dare you mock me like this? I want you dead. Xing Cheng uttered while casting his skills and was ready to attack Tianming. Tianming was annoyed that Xing Cheng dared to start a fight here like he sees this place as his home. Tianming forgave Xing Cheng's earlier provocation. But now, since Xing Cheng seems to ask for it, Tianming didn't hesitate to stand still. He raises his bewildering eye and Xing Cheng hallucinates girls with big breasts. Tianming also easily caught Xing Cheng's fist and squeezed it which made Xing Cheng scream in agony. Little rascal, I hope your parents teach you a lesson. Tianming uttered and instantly slapped Xing Cheng. Xing Cheng flew away and slammed into the ground. The people were jaw-dropping that Tianming dared to slap Xing Cheng, who is a future prime disciple when he had only just broken through. They now believe that a pentabane is indeed terrifying. The disciples of the Lai Saint clan and other sects have been here and have witnessed Tianming ascend to unity. Everyone is cheering for Tianming now instead of Xing Cheng. 
and Tianming was glad to see that not everyone in here now is against them but instead, supporting them. And for King Wu, many disciples of the Lai Saint clan were just upset that Tianming didn't meet their expectations. She said that these disciples hate arrogant and immoral people like you and Xing Cheng the most and wish nothing more for him to get a beating. Xing Cheng got a lump on his face and was full of bruises. But still, he has the guts to challenge Tianming to fight a death match at the Second Grand Orient Battlefield. I admit that I underestimated you. I will show you the full extent of my power and tear you into a million pieces. He uttered. Tianming gets some booger on his nose while asking King Yu about the second Grand Orient sect that Sheng Chib mentioned. As per King Yu, it's a place on a sacred mountain where they can have private duels under the watch of the mountain chiefs. As long as both sides agree, they can duel to death. However, the biggest location for that is the first Grand Orient battlefield. It's the largest sacred dueling ground in the sect. It's where the yearly evaluation and the council summit are held. Tianming looked back at Xing Cheng and informed him that he agreed to the duel. Xing Cheng then ordered King Wu to find a place to bury Tianming's dead body. Who gave you the confidence? Take a look in the mirror. How swollen is your pig face? King Wu answered. Tianming was surprised that King Wu is pretty good at ridiculing Xing Cheng, and he was confused about where King Wu learned it. Xing Cheng was triggered when King Wu called him a pig face. He clenched his fist and rushed to King Wu. He cannot accept that King Wu also treated him like this. Tianming stared at him while thinking that this was the first time he had seen an impulsive man. He can only say that Xing Cheng has been spoiled. Is this all you've got, as the son of Yu and Taiji? He asked. Yuxi screamed and slapped Xing Cheng in front of all the people to start a fight at the Imperial Ninefold Gates. Do you think we, mountain chiefs don't exist? Yuxi stated. Xing Cheng's uncle, Kaidai also speaks, ordering Xing Cheng to be polite and respectful. Xing Cheng stared at him, and Kaidai told Xing Cheng to calm down and not make a scene. He also ordered Xing Cheng to go home for now. He knows that if Xing Cheng's father finds out about Xing Cheng challenging someone to have a death match, Xing Cheng's father won't let him off. Xing Cheng doesn't have a choice but to follow his uncle. And before he left, he still told Tianming about their deathmatch and he said that he will teach Tianming how to be a person. Save it for when you start growing hair. Tianming answered. Yuxi was annoyed and reminded Ching Cheng that she already gave him enough face to not punish him. You still dare to continue talking. Leave, Yuxi said. Ching Cheng then ran away so quickly and King Wu said that Mountain Chief Yu is Yi Shaoqing's young sister and is scary when she gets angry that's why Ching Cheng ran as fast as he could. Tianming and King Wu then greeted the two mountain chiefs, Yuxi and Kaitai. Yuxi then ordered Tianming to show his life-bound beasts, and Ying Huo and Miao Miao come out excitedly. Ying Huo then acknowledged Yuxi's beauty which reminds him of his chief mentor Mu Wan. You mean, she's a superb mount. There's a huge soy egg next to her. Miao Miao stated and was referring to Kaitai. Kaitai was annoyed that Miao Miao called him a soy egg but he cannot do anything because Yuxi loved Ying Huo and Miao Miao so much. Upon checking Ying Huo and Miao Miao, she learned that these life-bound beasts aren't saint beasts but ordinary 7th level life-bound beasts. She then concludes that it may be because Tianming is a pentabe and that's why he ascended to unity. After checking, she then let Ying Huo and Miao Miao go back to Tianming. In her mind, Tianming succeeded because something might have happened at the ninth gate. Tianming was confused at this point why Yuxi was checking his life-bound beast. He bids goodbye to both mountain chiefs and he then leaves together with King Wu. After reaching Unity, Tianming felt very vigorous and his body continued to grow. For King Wu, Tianming's constitution is special. Even Ling'er feels something odd with Tianming's body. According to her, Tianming's body is certainly growing. More accurately, he's aging and at a rate of ten times the speed. Upon hearing it, Tianming was shocked and he became worried for himself. Ling'er also said that at this rate, Tianming's body will age to thirty in a year, and she's afraid Tianming won't leave in the next ten years. King Wu stated that this was perhaps Tianming's lifespan. Tianming feels down as he thought that receiving the Bane Rings meant overcoming lifespan. He never thought that he would experience it now instead. He suddenly smiled as he believes that this still has benefits for him in which his cultivation speed is also ten times faster than others. Linger was irritated that up until this point, cultivation is what Tianming thought about. According to King Wu, people peak passes when they reach 50. At that point, their cultivation will not increase anymore, and it may even regress, so she concludes that the amount of time Tianming left is closer to about two years. Linger cried as she didn't want Tianming to die. Even Tianming's life-bound beasts were also emotional upon hearing this bad news. Ying Huo was begging Tianming to look for a solution and do something. But then, Tianming said that he will not do anything. He accepted that his fate has long been determined by the heavens. If I lose, my death is certain. 
If I win, I'll have overcome fate, he uttered. But in his mind, he still has a chance. If he can reach the Saint Realm in three years, he knows he'll be able to lengthen his lifespan. It all depends on whether he can overcome limits. Meanwhile, they arrived at the Kunpeng Sacred Hall. Tianming then informed Jingwu that he had some good news and bad news, and Jingwu wanted to hear the bad news first. Tianming then informed her he had been afflicted with an enhanced aging disease. Jingwu disagreed that it was a big deal as she was confident that she can cure it since it was a common disease in the Lai Saint clan. Tianming was thrilled upon knowing that Jingwu can really cure him. Jingwu said that it's his specialty that no one in the Lai Saint clan can do better than her with this. Jingwu then tried her beast to cure Tianming but after 5 hours, she said that she cannot cure Tianming because Tianming's pentabane constitution is different from the ones she has cured before. Still, she told Tianming that there was no need to worry. She said that it's just aging quicker than the average person and if Tianming will continue cultivating, it'll help reduce the effect. She believes that Tianming days are long. King Wu was about to tell Jing Yu how much time Tianming had left, but then Tianming interrupted her and told her to tell Jing Yu about the good news. King Wu felt sad to realize that Tianming doesn't want to let Jing Yu know about his remaining time. Since she becomes silent, Jing Wu then asked about the good news and King Wu then showed her Pentamoon. King Wu cannot see clearly and what she saw is five white bane rings, and King Wu then told her that she now has five bane rings, and it's a Pentamoon Skybane. Upon hearing it, Jing Wu was shocked and suddenly passed out. Tianming already expected that Jing Wu will be like this as she knows that Granny is too weak in these things that's why he also doesn't want to let Jing Wu know about his other five bane rings. When the night came, Jing Wu finally gained consciousness and she was so happy to the point that she was dancing. Tianming then stopped her and informed her that he had something to discuss. What is it, my grandson? Jing Wu asked. Without being hesitant, Tianming informed her that he and King Wu will train at the Abyssal Battlefield nearby. In the past, Jing Wu probably stopped them, but now, one of them has reached unity while the other awakened a Pentamood Skybane. Their potential is limitless so for her, it's time for Tianming and King Wu to test their true abilities. Tianming then told Jing Wu that they'll rest for tonight and will head out tomorrow morning. At the Yuan household in Fengshan Mountain, there was a man with long hair who was facing a mysterious monster that kept on roaring. Kaidai then arrived and called him by his name, which is Shendu. How's it going? Kaidai asked. As per Shendu, his grandfather and father are helping so he believes that it's almost done. The monster roared once more and a spike on its body appeared instantly. Shendu smiled and declared that it was done. Kaidai laughed and congratulated him for being the first person to have a fourth order saint beast before the age of 20. He is now the first prime disciple to have one fourth order saint beast. Yuan Shendu is a prime disciple and the eldest son of Yuan Taiji. Shendu was looking for his brother Xing Cheng as he knew that Xing Cheng always wanted to see Shendu's fourth order lifebound beast. Kaidai then informed Shendu that Xing Cheng was pissed off at the Imperial Ninefold Gates and left for the Abyssal Battlefield with his group of beauties. The Abyssal Battlefield is chaotic. Who knows what kind of dirty antics he's up to over there with these beauties. Kaidai added. He also informed Shendu that Xing Cheng got angry and he told everything that happened at the Ninefold Gate. An hour later, Kaidai explained everything to Shendu. But then, Shendu had no reaction which made Kaidai confused. But then, as per Shendu, his opponent is an Elysian child, and from now on, he won't concern himself too much with those in the Grand Orient sect. Let Xing Cheng handle trivial matters like this himself. He needs to experience hardship, he stated. Kaidai also agreed and since Xing Cheng is getting older, he also believes that Xing Cheng needs some training and hardship by himself. As for Shendu, he commented that Shendu's battlefield is now the whole of the Grand Orient realm. Shendu screamed and vowed that he will become the strongest existence. Tianming and King Wu have finally arrived on the Abyssal Battlefield, and Tianming asked King Wu about their true purpose for coming here. King Wu then answered together with Tianming that they are here to make money. Tianming was emotional to think that King Wu's family is way too poor, and the Kunpeng Sacred Hall is so broken down. What's worse is that he needs to buy good quality wine to enter Lai Mausoleum, in high volume too. He's tired of being broke. He needs to earn some money, and he was planning to find some treasure here to sell them. When Tianming saw a cave, he ordered King Wu to move immediately. They are now heading inside the cave and Tianming asks Ling'er if she senses any treasure. Ling'er said yes, but then, she sensed that it belonged to someone and she knew that there were people inside. People, all more the reason why we should head in further then. Tianming uttered. When they continue walking, there are five people in the cave. Look who we have here. It's Lai King Wu and her cheap brother, Yuzi said. Both Tianming and King Wu were shocked upon seeing her together with the other four people. 
King Wu then told Tianming to ignore Zi and just leave. But then, Zi didn't want to leave and she ordered her companion to surround Tianming and King Wu. She was offended last time because of Tianming and King Wu so she wanted to avenge. She even told Tianming and King Wu that they are cowering away now because her uncle is not here. Well, if you want to back down, kowtow to me, and I'll let you go, she stated. Tianming then confirmed to King Wu if Zi is the one bullying her, and King Wu said yes and she never won against Zi back then. Tianming then told King Wu that they should stay and that King Wu should beat Zi up and give the test what King Wu felt in the past 15 years. Go, bet her up King Wu. Vent all your resentment that piled up over 15 years. Tianming uttered. King Wu grits her teeth out of annoyance. She wanted to follow what Tianming said, but she was hesitant because Zi is the elder Yi's granddaughter. Tianming held her hand to calm her down. He also said that beating Zi is fine since Zi caused her to cry so many times, and now, she only needs to do it once and it's not like she actually has to injure Zi. People can only move forward when they step out of their shadows, Tianming stated. Ling'er also motivates King Wu and she said that King Wu will only teach Zi so if she will beat Zi now, Zi will avoid her when they both see each other in the future. King Wu then realized all the words they said and she now decided to fight back against the person she hated the most. Back off King Wu, I'm teaching your brother to respect me today and make sure he bows to me whenever she sees me at the Azure Immortal Mountain in the future. A loser like you should just back off, Zi stated. At this point, King Wu summoned her full moon blade and ready herself to attack. Tianming smiled as this was the first time he saw King Wu's weapon. King Wu also summoned her crescent spin blade and threw it to Zi. Zi was slightly hit in the face and she jumped away to avoid it. She grits her teeth out of annoyance and she already has a bit slashed on her face. She then shouted to King Wu that she will rip off all King Wu's clothes today so she'll never have the face to go out again. She summoned her purple wing batrake and it dashes while groaning. Zi didn't expect King Wu would fight her back now. She believes that King Wu dared to challenge her now because of Tianming. If I don't teach you a lesson today, you won't know who's boss in the Azure Immortal Mountain. Zi shouted. King Wu then next summoned Shuo Yu, the moonlight mirror and it suddenly became a giant whale which Tianming didn't expect. Tianming also noticed that King Wu's lifebound beast is spraying water vapor from its mouth. And at this point, the water vapor formed a mood and King Wu was fearlessly standing in the middle. King Wu cast her bright moon slaughter and jumped in cast her 10 mile moon breeze. Zi smirked as she had already seen this technique before from King Wu and at that time, King Wu had lost against her. She then cast her purple wing twister and this is also what she had done back then. But still, King Wu slashed her at a fast speed and King Wu was instantly behind her. As per Tianming, it'll be different from the past, even if the same technique is used. With the aid of King Wu's pentaban and with Ling'er, Tianming believes that King Wu's power has been strengthened many times. Zi didn't expect that she would be defeated this time. She vomited blood and was coughing while kneeling on the ground. The other people were looking at Zi and they were all worried for her. King Wu stood in front of Zi and stated that those who humiliate others will eventually be humiliated themselves. I'm thankful to Elder Yi for his care of the Lai family, but that doesn't mean I should have endured your many years of bullying. You're not my match anymore. From now on, you've lost all qualifications to be my opponent. She stated and walked away while Tianming was following her. Zi grits her teeth and she cannot still accept that King Yu defeated her this time. Lai King Yu, so what if you defeated me? You're going to marry Lai Jinkun in the end anyway. Congratulations. Zi answered while she was laughing and her tears dropped from her eyes. When they're outside, Tianming reminds King Yu about her upcoming birthday and King Yu feels sad as she thought that Tianming was trying to bring up the marriage matter. Big brother, my mentality has changed because of you. I'm really thankful. You've made me become like you unyielding and fearless of heaven and the world. So, I no longer fear this marriage. Worse comes to worst, I'll fight even if it means losing my life. King Yu stated with happiness in her eyes. Tianming was glad that King Yu thought of it that way. For him, the world's best solution to everything is only one and that is to become stronger. They then asked for Ling'er's help as they planned to look for some mana. A day later, Tianming and King Wu faced some wild beasts. Tianming sighed as he was annoyed that they attracted many wild beasts instead of finding any mana. And now, they have finally finished them off. Ying Hua was glad as for him. Fighting these wild beasts wasn't all for nothing. In their battle just now, he awakened a new ability and he feels now that he has become stronger. Tianming was glad for him to think that their effort of fighting had paid off. Ying Hua was excited to let Tianming know that his new technique transforms his feather into sharp steel nails and he can shoot unlimitedly. The nails also have an infernal blade, and this skill is called a skyscorch feather blast. 
Ping Huo demonstrated it and Tianming was hit in the face. What's wrong with you? Who asked for a demonstration? And why didn't you do it further away to avoid injuring the innocent? Tianming said. Ying Huo kept apologizing to him. Ling'er comes out to inform Tianming that she senses some mana but it's useless for Tianming cause it's a royal mana. But still, Tianming ordered her to lead the way as he wanted to get it and sell it to earn some money. They dive into the river as Ling'er said since the mana is inside the rock gate underwater. When they entered, Ling'er was right. They instantly saw the royal mana and King Wu was amazed that Ling'er still detected it despite the fact that it was a hidden place. Tianming also proudly said that there are more amazing things about Ling'er. After Tianming got the royal mana, Ling'er then informs them that she senses another two more royal mana in this area. They then went directly in the direction that Ling'er gave, and they found a lot of items in the area. Tianming was glad as he can now earn more money. All of a sudden, Ling'er stared somewhere. She then informed Tianming that there is a high-tier profound mana near the shore. Tianming was so excited upon hearing it. But then, Ling'er said that someone is already approaching for it. I don't care. I call dibs on this high-tier profound mana. Let's go. Tianming answered. They immediately rode to King Wu's life-bound beasts, and they were heading in the direction that Ling'er gave. Tianming asked Ling'er if they would be able to get the profound mana before the other people arrived to get it, and Ling'er said that they could possibly get it with their current speed. According to her, a lot of people are approaching it but they are too slow. She was glad to think that they can get the mana before the other people do. While they are above the water, Linger then pointed to the area where the profound mana is. There is a mist of five different colors and according to Tianming, only the emergence of high-tier profound manas has this phenomenon. King Wu suddenly spoke and she said that this is not the usual phenomenon. She believes that it's an extremely rare one. The Ascension of the Five Energies Tianming was still clueless so King Yu explained that among the five energies are flame, thunder, wind, earth, and ice water, and there may be five profound mana present at the same time. She also concludes that not many people came to this area, and ahead of them is the border of the Grand Peace Domain. Upon hearing from her that it's a five profound mana, Tianming becomes more excited to think that these are all high-tier mana. Ling'er then informed Tianming that the people who were approaching for this mana are almost near so Tianming should not delay any further. Quickly find the five profound mana and place them inside the ring. Ling'er ordered. Tianming then rushed to it as fast as he could. And upon seeing it, Tianming was amazed by its different colors and shapes. Tianming then immediately started sipping in the five profound manas, and even Ying Huo was excited and wanted to eat it now but Tianming won't let him as they should need to return to the Kunpeng Sacred Hall first before they bump into others. Before they could leave, King Wu saw them arrive. Tianming then turned around and saw several people hopping in. They are all women and they were all surprised upon seeing that someone already came before them. Tianming was shocked to see that the people who came were all girls. As per King Wu, they are the Waiyu faction she told about before. She's also a part of it but she has been isolated. To think you showed up before I went through the trouble of finding you. Ching Cheng said. He was also here together with the ladies and he is the only man who accompanied the Waiyu faction. He was glad that Tianming appeared before he started searching for him to avenge. Damn, how womanlike. Ying Huo uttered. You don't say. If he wore a different outfit and hid among the women, I wouldn't be able to tell he's a guy at all. Tianming stated. Because of his words, it makes Xing Cheng's blood boil. But the lady besides Xing Cheng told him not to waste some time bickering with Tianming as they need to get the profound mana from Tianming. She even claimed that they had found these manas first before Tianming did. For Xing Cheng, the real owner of this mana is them and he believes that Tian and King Yu cannot escape since there are a lot of them. My sister, watch how I make our Grand Orient Sect's junior sect master kneel before me. He said while chuckling. You wanna fight? Come, who's scared of who? Tianeming said. The ladies were murmuring a lot of words about Tianeming. They even compared Tianeming to Xing Cheng. Some also thought that Tianeming had brain damage for challenging Xing Cheng despite that he had just reached the unity stage. Xing Cheng smirked and asked Tianeming if he would hand the mana over and get beaten or get beaten first before handing the mana. He then demanded Tianeming and King Wu fight against him together. But Tianeming ordered King Wu to wait somewhere and just watch the show as he believes that he can deal with Xing Cheng. King Wu then hid in the tree behind Tianeming and was cheering for Tianeming's battle. How reckless of you. Do you dare to be arrogant when you just reached unity? Do you really regard yourself as a great genius or something? Xing Cheng stated and summoned his lifebound beast that creates a flame before it can clearly be seen. 
Ching Cheng has a four-armed touty which looks scary. Tiananmen was dumbfounded to see this kind of beast and even Yin Huo said that Ching Cheng's touty is so ugly. From the back, King Wu explained that the Yuan clan is also known as the clan of touty, especially weirdly shaped ones. She said that they are dark type lifebound beasts which are on the rarer side. With Tiananmen's reaction, Ching Cheng thought that Tiananmen was now scared. Which one of your eyes sees fear? Tiananmen asked. He also ordered Meow Meow to come out, otherwise, his balls will be flicked again. Because of what Tiananmen said, Meow Meow came out as if he was afraid. Don't, don't, don't. Stop using that to threaten me all the time. Meow. Meow Meow uttered. Tiananmen then assigned Yang Huo and Meow Meow to deal with their opponent's ugly beast. And at this time, Meow Meow is very determined to defeat Taudi and he was blaming this beast for disturbing his sleep. Ching Cheng summoned his sword and even said that Tiananmen deserved to play family with small animals. Tiananmen then also summoned his sword and challenged Ching Cheng to show what he got. Before they attack each other, Tiananmen reminded Ching Cheng that no one will interfere now so he must use all of his power. You don't need to say that. You trash now die. Ching Cheng replied while rushing to Tiananmen together with his life-bound beast. Tiananmen also rushed to his enemies together with his determined life-bound beasts. They started attacking each other with their swords. Ying Huo and Miao Miao also attacked the Taudi fearlessly. The ladies were too focused on watching the battle and there was a lady who was worried that Ching Cheng would really kill the junior sect master. A lady beside her reminded them that the duel is happening on the abyssal battlefield which means no one cares if someone will die there. At this point, Ching Cheng was annoyed knowing that Tiananmen suppressed him even though he was going all out. He cast a demonic rabid slash which is his ultimate move hoping that Tiananmen will be defeated by this. He attacked Tiananmen and Tiananmen kept dodging and seized the opportunity to attack using the technique, the demise of man's spectral dance, and slashed Ching Cheng without any hesitation. Prepare to receive my tornado-like attacks, Tiananmen stated, and everyone was dumbfounded seeing how Tiananmen attacked Ching Cheng using his sword and bewildering eye. Even King Wu was impressed by how powerful Tiananmen is that the current awakened her is not Tiananmen's match. Mao Mao was attacking the Taudi and he was practicing hand-in-hand -hand combat, as Ying Huo ordered. Ying Huo also informed him that he will be going to use the Taudi to practice his new technique and pierce the Taudi into a bloody hive. At this point, Young Huo casts his Skycorch Feather Blast for the first time and the Taudi is howling in pain. Ching Cheng was full of bruises and lumps and he was asking for mercy from Tianming. Do you accept this outcome, you and Ching Cheng? Tianming asked. Ching Cheng was lying on the ground and was groaning in pain. The ladies were worried for him and decided to fight against Tianming to avenge Ching Cheng. They all then rushed to Tianming while ordering him to hand over the profound mana. Tiananmen only smiled as he knew that these girls were easy for him to handle since they are all spoiled disciples. King Wu then summoned her sword and offered some help to Tiananmen. Ling'er then activates her celestial wings so Tiananmen can fly. Don't rush, King Wu. This is where the fun starts, Tiananmen stated. The Waiyu faction continued to rush to Tiananmen with a killing intent, and Tiananmen easily raised his bewildering eye which made all the girls stop and hallucinate something. Tiananmen then seized the opportunity to dash at them and attacked them one by one with the use of his sword. King Wu was also fearlessly fighting and one lady warned them not to underestimate King Wu and just summon their life-bound beasts and fight a steady battle. Meow Meow then told them that their life-bound beasts should get through them first. Gosh, this is never ending, when can I sleep? Meow Meow said. Several life-bound beasts of their adversary then rushed to them and Meow Meow immediately transformed while Ying Huo used his Skycorch Feather Blast that created a powerful flame. Tianming then slapped the girls near him one by one. I've always been a fair person. I view everyone equally, so you'll receive one slap. I guess I taught you all a lesson in the stead of your elders. Now you all won't embarrass yourselves in public. Tianming uttered. King Wu suddenly said to Tianming that every gentleman doesn't strike women and slapping these girls was so harsh for her. Tiananmen asked if she sympathized with these ladies. Of course not. What I meant was, leave something like this entertaining to me. King Wu answered with a thrilled face. It's over. King Wu has picked up your bad traits. Ling'er stated. Ching Cheng was looking at how Tiananmen beat his lady's companions. But then, he cannot do anything as he cannot get up anymore due to the pain he felt. His tears were about to fall while saying that Tiananmen is going overboard. Despite the severe pain he felt, he pushed himself to rise and decided to fight with his all. Tiananmen gets some booger while punching Xing Cheng from behind. He then told King Wu that they should return to the hall. They both left, leaving his enemies trembled in anger. Meanwhile, Tiananmen and King Wu arrived at the Orient Hall. It is the most important place of exchange in the entire Grand Orient sect. 
If Tianming will sell three of the high-tier profound mana he doesn't need, he will earn a lot. As per Kingu, the value of high-tier profound mana is ten times that of mid-tier. Because of the expensive price, the demand is low. But, King Wu doesn't think that Tianming should sell three because selling only one will make him enough money to use for a very long time. King Wu also advises him not to rush and sell and just roam around first to understand the current market. Tianming was too excited and immediately walked towards the Orient Hall. Before entering, someone knew King Wu and they were confused about who the man was with her. Then, one man answered and told them that Tianming is King Wu's cheap brother who's been quite famous lately. When they were inside, Tianmen was amazed to see different items. He saw a necklace that caught his attention. This necklace is called the Sky Spirit's Affection. Tianming then remembered that the necklace symbolized the love between him and Linger since Lai Tianming contains the Sky character while Linger's name contains a character that has the same pronunciation as Spirit in Mandarin and almost looks the same. King Yu then told him that this necklace is only good for looking as it was not practical at all and it costs too much. She even heard that this necklace has been here for centuries since no one wants to buy it. Tianming really likes the necklace as it was too pretty in his eyes so he asked King Yu about the price. And King Yu then explained that this charm is carved from a spirit ore with violet heavenly patterns by Zhang Fusheng, the most famous sculptor in the continent. It's elegant and gorgeous. The violet heavenly stones contain violet heavenly spiritual energy. If the user is attacked, the necklace will automatically form a violet heavenly shield, blocking fifth level heavenly will and below attacks. The violet heavenly shield can only be used once. After that, it will fall apart, and the value of it is 520 violet heavenly pattern spirit gems. Tianming was shocked it can only be used once but has an absurd price. For Tianming, its value lies in its beauty and the workmanship of its creator, Master Zhang Fusheng. Its real utility is less than a tenth of its value. King Wu believes that wealthy people won't care about its function and only admire its beauty. Tianming is guessing that Linger really likes the necklace, and Linger said yes but was disappointed with its price. Tianming then told her not to worry about money. He was determined to always give what Linger wanted. Tianming then called a clerk to inform them that he wanted to buy the necklace. Both King Wu and Linger were dumbfounded upon hearing it from Tianming. At the same time, King Wu was amazed how Tianming treated Linger as his girl. Linger felt shy that Tianming decided to buy the necklace for her. I call it an investment. If you're happy, won't wealth naturally come? Tianming answered. And by this, he was referring to Linger's ability to detect mana. Tianming rattled upon realizing that he got carried away and almost said it out loud. The clerk then came and belittled Tianming. He thought that Tianming wanted the necklace to pick up girls. He believes that this necklace is something that Tianming cannot afford. Without any words, Tianming then showed him the five profound manas and the clerk was jaw-dropping upon seeing it. His mood then suddenly changed and let Tianming bought the necklace using the profound manas. The people witnessed the scene and even said that Tianming lost his mind to exchange the profound manas for the useless necklace. Tianming then wore the necklace to Linger and named it Linger's love from now on. The necklace suits you well Linger. You're so beautiful. Even if I'm a girl, I can't help but wish you were mine. King Wu stated while facing Linger that looks gorgeous wearing the necklace. Even Tianming said that Linger is the most beautiful woman for him. After buying the necklace, Tianming then invited them to follow as he will buy some wine and will head home after. Other men saw Linger together with Lai Tianming and King Wu and they were confused about her identity since this is the first time they saw Linger. For them, Linger is much more beautiful compared to King Wu, that's why they become envious of Tianming. A day later at the Lai Mausoleum, Tianming found Lai Wudi who was drunk again. Tianming doesn't believe that the Venom Drake Spike is torturing Woody because is what he has seen. Woody is enjoying his life, living his days with leisure. Hey, you stirred up trouble, and now your daughter's about to marry a pig. You still have the nerve to feast and drink to your heart's content. Tianming stated in the face of Woody. Woody suddenly woke up as he heard Tianming saying that there's pig meat to eat. He then stood and was too excited looking for the meat as he was too hungry for days. He then ordered Tianming to grill the pig, and Tianming was irritated to think that Lai Wudi is really broad-minded. He believes that he cannot depend on Lai Wudi to face Lai Xuan when they come for marriage. Tianming then informed Wudi that he brought wine. He raises his finger with the ring to let the wine come out one by one. Tianming brought a lot of high-quality wine which made Wudi so excited. Since you're a filial son, Tianming, if there's anything you desire, just let me know. If you desire it, I'll even get you the sun. Woody stated, enough of that. The wine is for our ancestors. Be grateful even if only a tenth of it is left later. Tianming answered. Woody laughed while saying that he's also Tianming's ancestor since he is the current father of Tianming. 
He was so overjoyed that he would share these wines with their ancestors. He then spilled the wine on the tombstone and Tianming then started cultivating. Woody heard that Tianming reached unity, and he was so proud that Tianming's speed is quite fast. As expected of my son, looks like I taught you well. I'm a competent sect master, Woody uttered. Tianming smiled since cultivating here for him is a smart choice because the result to him is apparent. With the help of these founding ancestors, he believes that he'll be able to cure lifespan. When the day comes, he can't wait to see what other heaven-defying effects his ten bane rings have. While cultivating, he told some good news to Lai Wudi. It's about King Wu who awakened as a pentamut in the Imperial Ninefold Gates. He was glad to let Wudi know that King Wu's bane rings now became five moons. Unfortunately, Tianming didn't hear any response from Wudi and when he turned around, Tianming noticed that Wudi was not moving. He concludes that Wudi fainted due to excitement. But then, since he heard that Wudi is snoring, he then realized that Wudi fell asleep again. Without his knowledge, Wudi's tears were about to fall. Tianming then continued his cultivation until the night came. All of a sudden, Wudi wondered what Tianming's weapon was. He demanded Tianming to show it to him and Tianming then summoned his sword and chain. He explained that he uses the chain as a whip. Wudi commented that Tianming's sword arts is mediocre, and as for his whip art, Wudi decided to introduce to him their 18th ancestor, Lai Wushan, a master of the whip. Tianming, my son, come with me. I'll take you to worship those old crooks, oh, I meant ancestors, Woody stated while leading the way. Tianming was confused if they will now go to another peak but Woody told him to just follow and avoid more questions. After a short period of time, they arrived at Lai Zing's tomb and Tianming then kneeled in front of it to give some respect. They also went to the tomb of their ancestor Lai Shendao. He is the third ancestor, consisting of stir-fried potato, eggplant, and green peppers, oh, my mistake. This is your third ancestor, not a dish. Apologies, I must be hungry, Woody stated which annoyed Tianming to think that Lai Woody is really a corny man. And lastly, they have arrived at the tomb of their 18th ancestor, Lai Wushan. He explained that Lai Wushan was often called a devil. He sent the masses scrambling in fear during his time. He was the god of slaughter, and as far as Woody knows, Wushan's weapon is a chain. Woody then ordered Tianming to serve Wushan a wine and let his youthful energy relieve Wushan's loneliness. Tianming was startled when there was a black smoke appeared at Wushan's tomb. There was a face in the smoke and it was smiling at Tianming. And Tianming is then confused if Wushan really is a devil. Even Ying Huo felt scared because of its sound which was so terrifying to listen to. Miao Miao then hugged him and was willing to protect him from demons. At this point, Tianming was holding the jar of wine and spilled it above Wushan's tomb. It creates a golden light and Tianming's eyes are rounded upon seeing a whip art. It is called Life Death Whip Art consisting first form Soul Hook, the second form, Death, and the third form is Transcendence. Tianming then applied it himself and he instantly got it. Woody believes that the ancestor has already passed the whip art to Tianming. Tianming was glad by it and he wondered what other fortunes awaited with all these ancestors. My ancestors have guided me with care and bestowed me with such fortune. Tianming stated, he believes that these ancestors are unwilling to watch the decline of once a brilliant clan. Since Tianming accepted that he was a descendant of the Lai Saint clan, and the blood of countless ancestors flows within him, he was determined to take all the responsibility of reviving the clan. At the Gold Gleam Mountain, Xu Inchen was glad to inform his father that he had already sent the wedding gifts over to Fate Path Peak. He said that when he came, the doors were tightly shut and he wasn't allowed to enter, so he placed all the gifts at the entrance of Kunpeng Sacred Hall. His father then laughed as he believes that with this marriage contract, victory will be guaranteed to them no matter what they will do. Your wisdom back then was truly impressive, Dad. Xuanchen stated. His father then said that Jinken was born with a poor life and doesn't have much talent and isn't the brightest child either. Being able to find a wife is the only thing he can do for Jinken, as a father. Xuanchen asked if he was not worried that Jinken might not control King Wu, and his father then answered that King Wu is indeed stronger than Jinken. But when King Yu comes to Gold Gleam Mountain, he believes that everything will be hopeless for King Yu. In the end, she's just a young girl. He added, Xuanchen then informed her that he had plans for Lai King Yu. Xuanchen informed him that Ching Cheng likes King Yu too much, and that's why he made a deal. He then explained everything to his father. And a moments later, his father was mad to think that Xuanchen had the guts of destroying his brother's marriage. Everything has been properly decided, yet, you selfishly made your brother a fool. He shouted with anger. Xuanchen then explained to him that he only wanted to hear his father's opinion. He concludes that his father wanted to revive the Lai Saint clan. And if that's the case, he told his father to snap out of it. 
he said that the Council of Elders rules, the current Grand Orient sect, and at least half of them side with his master. He even believes that the Grand Orient sect will eventually become the Yuan's clan. He was just trying to get on Yuan Xingcheng and Yuan Shendu's good side for their family. They already came too far and he was annoyed that his father was still bothered with Jin Ken's happiness. He called his father a short-sighted and his father became furious. Xu Anqin then changed the topic and informed his father that Tianeming had beaten Xing Cheng up on the abyssal battlefield. Because of this, a part of him believes that Tianeming is indeed a pentabane, and he now thinks that it's impossible for him to get the Kunpeng sacred seal to Tianeming. His father cannot utter any words and he still continued talking. He stated that as long as the grudge forms between Lai Tianming and the Yuan clan, Tianeming will die. And once he will die, that's the time for him that he can freely get the Kunpeng sacred seal. With this premise, if he will give King Wu to Yuan Shengcheng, the bitterness between them will only increase. But, your younger brother was already so pitiful. This will make it even worse for him. His father answered, Dad, I hope you understand. Everything I do is the future of our family. Xu Anqin responded. In his mind, he doesn't care if Jinken will die as he never acknowledges Jinken as his younger brother. His father sighed and walked away and ordered Xu Anqin to escort King Yu to them tomorrow. During the night, King Yu is practicing her sword technique. Ling'er was enjoying seeing how cool King Yu is while practicing her sword. King Yu was glad to let Ling'er know that she discovered the usefulness of the Pentamood sky. Is that so? Tell me. Ling'er answered. Ting'u then explained that at the night when the moon shines, she can fuse with the moonlight through the Pentamood skybane. The power of moonlight will permeate her surroundings and assimilate into her body. This all owes her to fuse it into her life-bound beast, enhancing it in the process. It's basically boosted during battles as per King'u. During a full moon like this, she felt like she was half a level stronger, almost like when Ling'er used her spiritual attachment on her. Ling'er was excited listening to her knowing that King Wu finally becomes stronger when the mood appears. King Wu then asked if Tianeming was still at the mausoleum, and Ling'er said that Tianeming will probably come out by tomorrow. She told King Wu not to worry as she believes that Tianeming will make it tomorrow. Thank goodness you guys are here, or else, I don't know how I would have endured through tonight. Ling'er stared at her and was pity for her current situation. King Wu was staring at her sword, wondering if she would be able to kill someone tomorrow for the first time. As per Ling'er, King Wu doesn't need to fight and let Tianeming do the moves. She advises King Wu to just hide behind Tianeming as she's very sure that Tianeming will protect King Wu no matter what. It's so nice having a big brother. We'll see what happens tomorrow. King Wu uttered while looking at the moon. The next morning, Tianeming was still focused on cultivation and he already felt tired while pushing herself to give more a little. Tianeming was panting and he was irritated that he was almost close to reaching the second state of unity, but he just can't somehow. He realized that he underestimated the difficulty of cultivating unity. He believes that no matter how much talent or how many resources he has, he still has to take things step by step. He then decided to go as he remembered that this is the day Jinken will go to the Kunpeng Sacred Hall for the wedding. And he believes that a fight will be going to happen. Although he didn't make a breakthrough, it's not like he gained anything. Ying Huo and Miao Miao have both refined the profound manas which greatly increased their strength. Godfather, Lai Xuani will be bringing his son to take King Wu away for the marriage. Will you come along with me? Tianeming asked while standing in front of Wudi. But then, Tianeming clearly saw that Wudi was really sleeping because of its saliva that was dripping out. He sighed with disappointment and he didn't have a choice but to leave and go back to the Kunpeng Hall as soon as possible. At the Kunpeng Sacred Hall, the fireworks were so loud to celebrate the wedding that was going to happen. Like Shuanis, people were heading the way while carrying the bridal sedan chair as they were going to escort King Yu. We have come to escort the bride today. Please open the doors of the Kunpeng Sacred Hall and have King Yu sit in the bridal sedan chair. Shuani stated. Jinken was beside him and was excited to finally become King Yu's husband. To their surprise, Tianeming finally came from the Lai Mausoleum. You want to enter, then you must go through me. Tianeming uttered. Jinken laughed as he believed that Tianeming was here to ruin his wedding. Shuani then told him that he should do it the old ways. He ordered Jinkin to call his other sons to break through the doors of the Kunpeng Sacred Hall. Follow me, brothers. Hold tight to the red envelopes and prepare to push. Shuani uttered. When two of their men were to forcefully open the Lai Kunpeng Hall's door, Tianeming easily kicked them both. Are you out of your mind, brother-in-law? Jinkin angrily stated. Shuani is now furious that Tianeming interfered despite the fact that there's a marriage contract at hand. Tianeming then told him that he doesn't care and he doesn't want to let them bring King Wu with them. 
Xuanchen is now standing beside his father and Xuanyi orders him to take Tianming down so Jinken can enter. Why Tianming? Even if you die from interfering with today's marriage, it'll be for naught. This is a marriage Lai Wudi agreed to himself, Xuanchen said, and rushed towards Tianming with the other members of their bloodline. The Kunpeng Sacred Hall suddenly opened, and as Jingyu, she doesn't care about the marriage contract these people have. She told them that if they wanted to bring King Wu with them, they should kill Granny first. If you don't, I'll end your metal bloodline by killing both of your sons. Jing Wu added. Xu Enchen and Xu Eni were dumbfounded to hear that Jing Wu was willing to sacrifice herself for King Wu. Xu Eni grits his teeth while saying that Jing Wu should not push herself as she's already too old. He boasts that he's now in the saint realm which he believes Jing Wu cannot even fight back. Jing Ken tried to beg Jing Wu and even vowed that he will treat King Wu well. Up until this point, Jing Yu doesn't want to surrender her granddaughter even if it will cost her life. Try killing me. Let's see how you uphold your honor then. Jing Yu uttered. Xu Yi gives her a chance that she will not to be put to death if she will give her granddaughter peacefully. Xu Enchen was listening to their arguments, but Tianming suddenly called his name. As per Tianming, he will give Xu Enchen a chance today to obtain the Kunpeng Sacred Seal and become the junior sect master. Xu Yi then told Xu Enchen to ignore Tianming and focused on gathering some men to take King Wu away. Despite what he ordered, Xu Enchen still asked about what Tianming was trying to say. Tianming then told him that they will fight against each other. This will not be a spar like the last time they had a battle. If Tianming loses, he's willing to give up his life, and Xu Enchen is able to retrieve the Kunpeng Sacred Sil from Tianming's body. And if in case Xu Enchen will be defeated, the marriage contract should be voided, and these people from the metal bloodline should live peacefully. It's just that simple. Do you dare to accept it? Tianming asked. How do you pledge to keep your word? Xu Enchen answered. Tianming then told him that he will swear the life and death oath in front of them to serve as a guarantee. All he has said is of his own will. Matters pertaining to his own life and death are for him to decide. Tianming then vowed that if he dies in the battle, the Kunpeng Sacred Seal will be owned by Xu Enchen. It would be nobody's fault but his own, and Xu Enchen should not be blamed or punished if Tianming will die. Xu Enchen was excited hearing it and he asked everyone if they heard what Tianming said. He then glanced to his father and Xu Enyi was thinking that even if they'll bring King Yu back with them, they'll have to give her to Yu and Xing Chang as Xu Enchen told him a day before, so they can get the Sacred Seal. Rather than allowing Jinkin to be cheated on or fight Jing Wu, he decided to take this chance. He then declared that he will let Xu Enchen fight against Tianming for the sake of the junior sect master position, and before the battle will start, he told Xu Enchen not to disappoint Tianming and give what he deserves. Jinkin becomes emotional to think of the consequences once his brother will be defeated by Tianming. Xu Enchen was annoyed by his negativity, that's why he received a punch from Xu Enchen. Xu Enchen called him a useless trash and Xu Enyi just sighed. Tianming then apologized to Jing Wu for using the Kunpeng Sacred Seal as the wager. However, he will definitely make sure not to regret this fight. Jing Wu suddenly cried while saying that she doesn't care about the seal. What she cares about the most is that Tianming should leave on. Then, that's easy. Just sit there and wait. Let me show you how I'll send those crocs pissing off and crying. Tianming confidently said. Jing Wu is behind him and she said that she's willing to execute whoever harms Tianming. She promised in front of Tianming that she will cultivate with a hundred times the effort to protect her own dignity and her loved ones, and that includes Tianming. King Wu became serious all of a sudden so Tianming calmed her down. He held King Wu's shoulder to let Ling'er get into his body from King Wu's body. All right, let's begin, Tianming uttered. The people then move aside leaving Tianming and Xu Enchen in the middle. Xu Enchen smirked and was expecting that he can now finally kill Tianming. He then summoned his golden weapon, a grade 6 bestial armament and by looking at this weapon, Tianming concludes that Xu Enchen will really give all out to win. Xu Enchen then called out his 16-winged gold kunpeng, and Ying Huo was amazed upon seeing it. Tianming thought that he was scared, but then Ying Huo said that it makes him more interested in fighting. Mao Mao and Ying Huo then rushed to the gold kunpeng, and the adversary did the same thing. Xu Enchen didn't waste a lot of time and instantly attacked using his immortal Vajra spear technique. Ying Huo backed out first while Miao Miao continued rushing to the golden Kunpeng and transformed his body. But then, the immortal Vajra spear technique hit Miao Miao which is able to blast Miao Miao's teeth even after he transforms. Tianming witnessed how it happened, but he still managed to smile as he was already expecting that Xu Enchen really is a strong guy which is what Tianming wanted. Xu Enchen is fighting against Ying Huo while Miao Miao is trying to take down Xu Enchen's Kunpeng. 
Tianeming is just observing the battle for now and he witnessed how powerful Xuanchen is since his realm is too high. Even under the suppression of the time field, Tianeming still clearly saw Xuanchen's speed, still very fast. The Kunpeng fired some bullets at Miao Miao and Miao Miao was hit by it all over his body. Ying Huo saw it and he was worried for his brother. He was also mad at the Kunpeng for hurting Miao Miao. Xu Enchen grits his teeth while he was looking forward to his Kunpeng killing Miao Miao in front of everyone. Ying Huo was annoyed at him so he cast a sword of disillusionment. Xu Enchen tried to block Ying Huo's attack using his golden armor, but to his surprise, Ying Huo's attack was too powerful which made his armor broken. The Kunpeng activates his gold kun while rushing to Miao Miao, but at this point, Tianeming uses the chain and the technique he learned from the ancestor at the Lai Mausoleum. He tied the Kunpeng using the chain and Tianeming was glad that the technique he learned had worked for his opponent's lifebound beast. Xu Enchen then turned around and saw his Kunpeng in danger. He then dashed to Tianeming while holding his spear, but Ying Huo from behind him didn't want to let him pass. He blew a powerful flame to attack Xu Enchen. Xu Enchen was irritated and got back to Ying Huo with a killing intent. Xu Enyi was confused since his son's realm is much higher than Lai Tianeming. But in the combat experience, his son was led by Tianeming from the very start. Ying Huo, you and Mao Mao take care of his companion beast. I'll deal with him, Tianeming ordered. He then rushed to Xu Enchen and Xu Enchen instantly attacked him with the spear. He tried to block it using his sword but it was still too powerful which made him slide backward and vomit blood. Tianeming then realized that it is still too difficult to fight head-on as the realm difference between him and Xu Enchen is too much. Like Xu Enchen, I have to admit you're much stronger than I imagined. But today, I won't give in. As long as I am here today, none of you can take King Wu away. Unless I die, you will not be able to touch my family. Otherwise, crooks like you shall be beset by countless disasters. Tianeming uttered. King Wu was emotional with what he said. She was about to cry but she did her best to hold it back. Xu Enchen then rushed to Tianeming while saying that only raw power and cultivation decide life or death. And for him, Tianeming deserved to die as he was weak. Tianeming then activated an air wall to make a boundary. But still, the air wall really can't stop Xu Enchen and he was even able to break it. Tianeming decided to delay Xu Enchen for a bit so he could find a good opportunity to attack. Xu Enchen keeps attacking him with the spear and Tianeming only blocks the weapon and doesn't attack back for now. Xu Enchen laughed at him and even found a way to hit him. Tianeming was already wounded on the side of his chest and Xu Enchen then smiled as he thought that he now finally defeated Lai Tianeming. Tianeming grips into the spear while saying that destructing Xu Enchen is really hard work. The loser is you. You have placed yourself in the perfect position, Tianeming uttered. Because of his statement, Xu Enchen senses something bad will happen without knowing that Miao Miao is casting a long-charged big electric ball behind him. This long-charged electric ball is here just for you, Ying Huo said and Miao Miao then blew it towards Xu Enchen causing Xu Enchen to electrocute and kneeled on the ground. Like Xu Enchen, I have to thank you for helping me comprehend the unity stage even deeper. The essence of this stage is the beast master fighting alongside his beasts, counting on one another with their lives on the line. Tianeming stated while pointing the sword to Xu Enchen. He then smiled and gave thanks to Xu Enchen once more as he had broken through the second level of unity. Since Xu Enchen failed to defeat Tianeming, it means that they cannot bring King Wu with them. Jin Ken becomes hysterical and he cannot accept that King Yu will not be his wife anymore. King Wu was overjoyed that Tianeming won the battle against the strongest disciple of Yu and Taiji. And even Jing Wu was glad that Tianeming didn't fail her expectations. Tianeming then faced Xu Enyi while asking him to heed their previous agreement voiding King Wu's marriage contract. He also said that this matter should not be brought up ever again. Like Xu Enchen is the one who made that bet with you, not me. Why Tianeming? The marriage contract has the elder's signature on it and shall not be voided. Doing so will be respecting the elder who signed it. Xu Enyi answered. Tianeming smiled while thinking that Xu Enyi only pretended that he didn't agree with the bet. Tianeming then concludes that Xu Enyi might not want to save his son. Xu Enchen was tied up by the chain and was screaming in pain while asking his father to save him. Time is running up. Piss me off and I'll crush his spirit sources. Regret will be pointless by then. Tianeming stated with an evil look while holding the chain. Xu Enyi then stopped him and handed the marriage contract to Tianeming. He now accepted the fact that his son has been defeated by Tianeming and the contract will now have no effect. Tianeming then ordered Jing Wu to check the contract if it was real, and Jing Wu instantly confirmed it to him. Jing Wu didn't waste more time and was enjoying scratching the contract in front of the metal bloodline. As of this moment, this contract is void, and never be mentioned again.
King Wu becomes emotional because of happiness. She was glad that she was free from this contract again because of the help of Tianming. After the contract was voided, Xuanyi then ordered Tianming to release Xuanqin. But then, Tianming told him not to rush to prevent making trouble afterward, and also, Tianming wanted them to wait a little bit. Tianming then asked Jingyu to tell Elder Yi King that the marriage contract has been voided by the metal bloodline of their own accord. Jingyu then agreed and acknowledged Tianming for being courageous and knew when to be cautious. All of a sudden, three people came. It was the Elder Yi King, Mentor Yi, and Mountain Chief Yi. Tianming breathes deeply upon seeing them as he knows that they can now be safe and sound. The metal bloodline also greeted them. Before anything else, Elder Yi King ordered Tianming first to let go of Xuanqin, and without any words, Tianming followed him politely. When Xuanqin stood, Elder Yi King handed him a pill for the pain he felt. Elder Yi King then continued to speak and he said that Lai Xuanyi really disappointed him for trying to suppress and kill Tianming for his own ambition to pave the path for his son's future. He also reminded Xuanyi that Lai Tianming and Lai Qingyu are disciples of Azure Immortal Mountain and if Xuanyi still has the guts to touch them both in the future, Elder Yi King is willing to give him a punishment. He then ordered Xuanyi to leave together with his bloodline. And Xuanyi then bowed down to him and took his leave. Take the young master away. Everyone disperse and go back. Xuanyi ordered his people. After they left, Tianming then approached Yi King and thanked him for coming and confirming the void of the marriage contract. Yi King then said that he doesn't do anything, and that only Tianming proved himself and won the people's respect. Frankly speaking, he's in awe of Tianming. Jing Wu interfered as she heard that Xiaoking will be accepting an appointment from the council to become one of the 33 elders today. Elder Yi King confirmed it to her and he said that they are on their way to the council in a moment. Jing Wu then faced Xiaoking and congratulated him. She was glad that the Yi clan now has two elders in the council. Patriarch Lai, there's also something I'd like to congratulate you on. Xiaoking stated which made Jing Wu confused. As per Xiaoking, after he becomes an elder, the council will give him an Azure Dragon Sword Mountain. He still doesn't have any direct disciples himself so he's planning to take in two direct disciples for a good start. And these two disciples will be Lai Tianming and Lai Qingyu. Tianming and King Wu were shocked upon hearing it and they became too excited as he heard them from Xiaoking. Xuanyi still overheard them despite the fact that they were heading their way home. In the entire Lai Saint clan, only his son Lai Xuanqin is a direct disciple. And now, he was mad that Tianming and King Wu finally became a direct disciple. Everyone knows that a direct disciple is like an heir to an elder. He then concludes that the Yi family is determined to shelter Tianming and King Wu. Jing Wu was thrilled upon hearing that Xiaoking decided to get Tianming and King Wu as his direct disciples. Lai Tianming and King Wu then kneeled in front of Xiaoking to worship him. Xiaoking then told them that there was no point in worshipping now. He instructed both King Wu and Tianming to pack up their belongings tonight, then head to Azure Dragon Sword Mountain by tomorrow for the formal ceremony. On behalf of our Lai clan holy ancestors, I thank Exalted Master Yi Xiaoking. Jing Wu politely uttered, as per Xiaoking. There's no need to thank him since he shared the fate of Master Disciples with Tianming and King Wu. He also said that their future achievements will depend on their destiny. Yi King knows how hard-working Tianming and King Wu are, but he still advises them both to work harder. He reminded Tianming and King Wu for the ceremony tomorrow, and they then bid goodbye. Why go so fast? Hello there, beauty. Lai Wudi stated. He suddenly appeared and as expected, he is still holding a bottle of wine. The lady he called beautiful is the mountain chief and he even told Chief Yi to wash up before visiting his room to serve him. Chief Yi was annoyed at him and told him to get lost. Lai Wudi was still about to say flowering words, but Xiaoking cut him off and told him that they will meet to drink again next time. But now, they need to leave first. They instantly left and King Wu was happy to let her father know that she was now a direct disciple of Xiaoking. It can see in her eyes how happy she is, but without any reason, Lai Wudi suddenly runs away. Get away from me. You stink. Don't you dare sully my clean, sweet-scented body. Woody uttered. You're the one smelling of alcohol and body odor. You've not taken a bath for hundreds of years, you stinky old man. King Wu answered. Tianming and Jing Wu then laughed as they knew that Lai Woody is only shy to his daughter. At the metal bloodline, Xuanyi punched his table out of annoyance. Today, we have lost all face. Why is the Yi family so bold? Are they planning to go against the Yuan family? Especially Yi Xiaoking. I heard it was Yuan Taiji who first guaranteed his position as sect elder. Now that he achieved his goal, he turned his back on them. Xuanyi stated with an angry voice. As what Xuanqin remembered, the Yi family's rise to power was assisted by the Lai Saint clan. 
Perhaps the servility in their bones is at work. He also knows that Yi Sheoking was once good friends with Lai Wudi while Yi Yuxi pursued Lai Wudi for a while. When Lai Wudi chose to marry Muhi, it led to a period of time when the two parties were at odds. Shuani then realized that the Yi family is lost in the illusion of the past, thinking they're still the second greatest family and do not know what's good for them. Shuanchen then smiles as he concludes that the Yi and Lai family won't end up too well. Now that Lai Tianming has become the direct disciple, Xuanchen believes that Tianming will certainly be noticed by the Yuan family, and that he will be the one to end Tianming. The next morning, Tianming and King Wu came to the Azure Dragon Sword Mountain. Both of them and the other disciples greeted Yi Sheoking as a new elder. Although Sheoking is new here in Azure Dragon Sword Mountain, he promised that he'll be responsible here in the future. In honor of today's occasion, I shall accept two direct disciples. Henceforth, let the entire sect know that Lai Tianming is my senior disciple and Lai King Wu my second disciple. Sheoking declared. Tianming and King Wu then acknowledged it and gave thanks to him. Sheoking then ordered all the disciples to rise and he ordered the hall prefect Yuan Hunchen to give Tianming and King Yu the special token of direct disciples. One disciple suddenly spoke and refused to accept Tianming and King Yu as new direct disciples of Sheoking because, for him, one of them is merely at unity while the other is mediocre and lazy which is not qualified to be direct disciples. His name is Gu Yu, Yuan Hunchen's disciple, a 15 years old kid and is at the sixth level of unity. I want to challenge them, he declared. His master, Yuan Hunshin, the hall prefect, ordered him to be silent. Hunshin then apologizes to Sheoking for his disciples' impulsiveness. Sheoking then said that it doesn't matter to him why some become so impulsive. He said that this elder position originally belonged to Hunshin so it is understandable for him that Hunshin's disciple has some grievances in his heart. Elder Yi defeated me with just three moves, and I'm convinced of my defeat. I have been living in this Azure Dragon Sword Peak for a long time. I know it like the back of my hand, and I will definitely help Elder Yi with all my heart. Yuan Hunshin answered. Tianming is observing him and he smiles knowing that Yuan Hunshin is indeed the real deal. Do you, if I give you a chance and you win, will you worship me as a master instead of Hall Prefect Yuan Hunshin? Sheoking asked. But then, Gu Yu answered no. For him, once a teacher always a teacher. He said that even though his master isn't an elder, he is still his master for life. King Wu then told him not to worry as he also appreciated Gu Yu's show of backbone. Gu Yu is a good disciple which made him envy Yu and Hunshin. He then told Gu Yu to just forget the challenge since it's a meaningless, and Tianming and King Wu is also not an opponent. According to him, five days later, Tianming and King Wu will represent the Azure Dragon Sword Peak in the prime struggle held in the prime tower. Tianming and King Wu were surprised upon hearing it and Tianming at this point was clueless about this so-called prime struggle. As Hunshin, sending Tianming and King Wu with their current strength is the same as sending them to their death. He said that this prime struggle is a matter of their Azure Dragon Sword Peak's reputation and not child's play. As per Sheoking, the participants of the prime struggle must be direct disciples, and not participating in this will be more humiliating for them. He agreed that his two prime disciples' talents are a little weak so he asked Hunshin to pass on Gu Yu to him as his disciple and will be the one to challenge Prime Tower. Gu Yu was annoyed once more as he really only wanted Hunshin as his master. At this point, Hunshin agreed to send Tianming and King Yu to the prime struggle since it was a decision from the elder, and also, he said that the Azure Dragon Sword Peaks are already accustomed to the embarrassment. Sheoking laughed and adjourned the meeting. The disciples then leave, aside from Tianming and King Wu. Since Tianming and King Wu agreed to be his direct disciples, he's willing to give a present to them, anything they like. King Wu said that accepting them is already the greatest gift possible, while Tianming becomes excited hearing that they will receive a present from Sheoking. Since Sheoking didn't receive an answer about what King Wu and Tianmen wanted, he decided to give each of them a Saint Beast War Soul. They both then accepted it, and Tianming stated that the pressure seemed to be a little overwhelming when Sheoking gave such huge gifts as soon as they met. Is that so? Then I guess I won't be giving this gift, Sheoking kiddingly said. That won't be right. As a man and an elder, your words are worth their weight in gold. You can't go back on them so easily, Tianming responded. According to Sheoking, this Saint Beast War Soul is temporarily without a master. For over a thousand years it has been waiting for a new master. It will take merely five days to refine it. This will give a boost and support for Tianming and King Wu for the coming prime struggle. Tianming then told him that he hadn't heard about this prime struggle. Sheoking smiled slightly and was willing to spend more time explaining it to Tianming. The battle is called the Tei Tower Battle. Tei Tower is one of the holy places in this Grand Orient sect. 
Usually, only direct disciples and Tei disciples can enter the Tei Tower, so ordinary disciples are prohibited from entering. And the Tei Towers open every three years. This time, each council elder has two places for direct disciples, who can enter the Tei Tower. This Tei Tower consists of three floors. If they can climb three successive levels and climb to the top of the tower, they can become a Tei Disciple. As what Tianming knew, the Tei Disciple is the highest status of a disciple within the scope and it is only the entire sect. Tianming then realized that this student status is equivalent to Yuan Shendu. Other than that, only council elders can manage Tei disciples, even then they have to pass elders' meetings. And also, Tei disciples can enjoy the best resources in the entire Grand Orient sect, such as training in other holy places including the Tei Tower. In terms of resources, the ancestral land is better for Tianming. Tianming then asked Shaoqing if there were any special troublesome rules in the Tei Tower, and the percent chance it would pass. As per Shaoqing, there are no special rules and only needs to finish the exam and climb the floor. Tei Tower is divided into three floors and each floor has its own test. All exams are designed by the sect association. What is meant by sect association is all clan elders take part in this exam. But the problem is that on the third floor, which is called the sacred place of the Tei Tower, the sect elders won't know what happened to the disciples inside. It is a magical place created by Lai Shengzu with a sky pattern barrier. Even if they can get in, they cannot see if they can get out there. Upon hearing it, Tianming lost hope. With his current condition, becoming a Tei disciple is more difficult for him than ascending to the sky. But then, Shaoqing told him not to worry. He said that usually the third floor is closed, and besides that, they don't have to struggle to become a Tei disciple because the goal of the Tei Tower battle is not who can become a new Tei disciple, but the treasures of the first and second floor. The reward from the first floor is the item that evolves the companion beasts, and the next reward is the earth level god source. With this god source, they can turn their beast into a third level divine beasts. Tianming was jaw dropping upon hearing it and he believes that if he can get all of this reward, he can become a beast master of the third order sacred beast. He even concludes that these rewards were too much. Shaoqing added that the treasures on the second floor are determined by the ten elders, so he doesn't have the right to know. But obviously, the gifts are more valuable than the gifts on the first. Tianming was more surprised to hear it from Shaoqing. Although it is very difficult to enter and become a Tei disciple, the treasures from the second floor seem more interesting to Tianming. Teacher, after five days, shall we go straight to the Tei Tower? King Wu asked. She understands that before entering the Tei Tower, there was an elimination round, and last year was the same. Shaoqing then explained that according to the rules of the previous years, the first selection will be made on the first battlefield. In the end, 17 people decided to enter the Tei Tower to compete. This is the real Tei battle. There are two elimination rounds, which will be adjusted for half a month. And the Tei Tower battle was officially held one month after the elimination round, meaning that the year Tei Tower battle will be held in 50 days. According to Tianming's current cultivation speed, maybe he can still have a chance to fight. If everything goes well, he believes that soon he will definitely become a Tei disciple. At Fengshan Mountain, Yuan Shendu is busy cultivating but he was disturbed when he heard his brother's voice. Xing Cheng ran towards him with excitement because he succeeded in his companion beast evolving into a second-tier holy beast, and also managed to break through to the sixth level of the unity realm in one go. Shendu laughed and teased him that he wouldn't be able to catch up to Shendu's level. As per Xing Cheng, the breakthrough this time is very useful for him. He said that he has made great progress now, and Lai Tianming is just trash in his eyes. Xing Cheng asked his brother if their father knew about Tianming's whereabouts, and Shen Du said yes but according to him, their father didn't say anything. Xing Cheng felt sad as he heard that Tianming is now a direct disciple of the council elder, and he wanted Tianming to be exterminated as soon as possible. His brother then explained to him that their life now is not like 10 years ago so their father has more important things to do. He believes that no one in the Grand Orient sect is qualified to be their father's opponent. Other than that, he must prepare for the Tei Tower. He also senses that Lai Tianming is a good opponent and he leaves Lai Tianming to Xing Cheng. He told Xing Cheng that a strong opponent he will be defeated alone will have a huge impact on his training and mental training in the future. So brother, I hope you can do wonderful things to prove your growth. He stated, Xing Cheng started to cry while saying that his brother let him face an interesting opponent to hone himself. But for him, this is really like taking the family's responsibility. 
As for Shendu, their father wanted Ching Cheng to participate in the Battle of Taiyi Tower, and if he continues to be spoiled, their father would surely be angry with Ching Cheng. And when Ching Cheng reaches 16 years old, he's sure that Ching Cheng will surely be a disciple of the Taiyi. That's why their father arranged for Lai Tianming to be Ching Cheng's opponent in the first battlefield. First round tomorrow, Ching Cheng then smiled while thinking that he can now finally take revenge for what Tianming did to him. Lai Tianming, you knocked out my teeth and made me lose face. Tomorrow, I will make you regret it. You never thought that I would break through this time. In front of me, you can do nothing but tremble. Too strong, I'm too strong. Tomorrow I can kill Lai Tianming. Ching Cheng uttered. Shendu said that their father will watch the match tomorrow and Ching Cheng will receive a gift from their father once he will defeat Tianming. Ching Cheng suddenly changes the topic and asks why their father is very strict to Shendu. In terms of practice, he noticed that Shendu never made a mistake. Someday, you'll know. Since I was three years old, I've been practicing life and death every day. Just for the day to come. On that day, I will set foot against the heavens for the Yuan family and seize the most important things. This is the most important step in my life. I have been preparing for it since I was three years old until today. Shendu uttered. Xing Cheng then asked him to take back the Holy Sword Grand Orient, and Shendu casually answered yes while clenching his fists. He vowed that he will bring the sword back to the Yuan family even if he spills his blood and burns his body and soul. The next day at the Grand Orient's first battlefield, several people came to watch the battle. Some council elders are also here. The elder of the Grand Orient sect's first council, Huan Fu Fengyun, a saint realm, the fourth council elder of the Grand Orient sect Shang Yuan Jingshu, also a saint realm. They both then greet each other and Fengyun brings up the story about Lai Wudi's illegitimate son who has the five bane rings. He also heard Yi Shaoqing accept Lai Wudi's son as a direct disciple. He learned that Tianming had broken through two levels in half a month and can also defeat an opponent whose realm is higher than his. Jingshu then said that it was all because Tianming had five bane rings, and the ancestors of the Lai family's sacred clan had finally appeared. Therefore, Feng Yun believes that Xiaoqing's acceptance of disciples is clearly against the Yuan family. It is clear that sooner or later, Lai Tianming and the Yi family will definitely get a disaster from the Yuan family. He added, as per Jingshu, the Yuan family is not satisfied with their status. They are eager to obtain the Grand Orient Holy Sword. Once they have the Grand Orient Holy Sword, then the Yuan family's intention of wanting to be number one in the Beast Emperor realm will be achieved. It may sound ridiculous but now, Jingshu hopes that the Heavenly Palace sect can take good care of the Grand Orient Holy Sword. Once Yuan Taiji gets the Grand Orient Holy Sword, he can't be stopped and Jingshu is afraid that after this, the elders of the council can be annihilated and the Eastern Emperor realm will be chaotic. Upon hearing this, Feng Yun becomes speechless. Meanwhile, the host then went in the middle of the arena and announced the elimination battle to enter the Taiyi Tower officially begins. The first match between the Taoji Mountain Yu and Xing Cheng against Lai Tianming's Blue Dragon Sword Mountain faction. Xiaoqing advises Tianming not to underestimate Xing Cheng as he heard that Xing Cheng broke through to the sixth level of the Unity Realm, and its companion beast has also evolved into a second order companion beast, and its combat power has automatically increased. Rest assured, teacher, no one can surpass me after I beat them. Tianming confidently answered. Xing Cheng also ready himself, and his father told him that this is the chance for him to kill his opponent. Ching Cheng smiled while thinking that Lai Tianming is Xiaoqing's direct disciple but his father asked him to beat and kill Tianming. He then concludes that his father's power in the sect has reached a level where he is not afraid of everyone. This way, he believes he can do whatever he wants. They both then entered the ring and the people murmured about how Tianming knocked out Ching Cheng's four front teeth. They also believed that this match was arranged by the council elder Yuan Taiji to give Ching Cheng a chance for his revenge. Lai Tianming, a disciple of the Azure Dragon Sword Mountain, greets. Tianming uttered while smiling. Taiji Mountain faction Yuan Ching Cheng is ready to fight. Ching Cheng also said while staring angrily at Tianming. Ching Cheng then said to Tianming that their battle this time is no winner and loser. Instead, there is only life and death. So ironic. You kill me, someone will solve it for you. If I kill you, will there be a defense against me? Tianming answered. Ching Cheng stated that a coward like Tianming will make excuses just to respect his supreme bloodline. He even said that Tianming can get out now if he was already afraid. Enough with talking. Come on, Tianming said. Ching Cheng then summoned his white bone divine sword and rushed to Tianming while ordering his eight-armed Taoti to come out. This time, his Taoti is scarier than the last time Tianming beat Ching Cheng. 
The audience was amazed upon seeing it and confirmed that Xing Cheng really mastered the strength of the Seventh Order Beast Warrior. They were also impressed with Xing Cheng's weapon as they knew that this weapon is suitable for killing. They now witnessed that Xing Cheng really changed like never before. Tianeming then calls out Ying Huo and Miao Miao while believing that Xing Cheng really has become stronger. Ying Huo and Miao Miao then rushed to the opponent and while rushing, Miao Miao instantly transformed his body. They both face the Taoti while below them is Tianeming versus Xing Cheng. They attack each other using their swords and despite Xing Cheng becoming stronger, Tianeming is still able to fight back. They are so fast that even the ground was crumpled by their movement. Tianeming was able to calmly block Xing Cheng's sword and Xing Cheng realized that he cannot still keep up with Tianeming and he feels Tianeming is still too strong. Hey boy, what are you worried about? Get ready for the main course. Tianeming said and smirked. He then attacked using the Earth Shaker and combined with the Man Killing Sword, Ghost Dance, Heavenly Slaying Sword Wrath, and Xing Cheng cannot be able to fight back. The people also witnessed how Tianeming battered Xing Cheng. Ying Huo noticed that the upper part of the Taoti is really hard so suggested that they should attack its bottom part. They both then rush together with Miao Miao and the audience feels pity at how Tianeming's lifebound beast defeated Taoti. The way Miao Miao and Ying Huo fight is so lewd and in this short period of time, Xing Cheng accepted that he's really not stronger than Tianeming. But still, he doesn't want to lose the battle. He knows that he will lose this time, he will lose everything. He was looking at his Taoti hoping that it would help him. But to his surprise, Taudi's fate is even worse than his. Since he lost focus, Tianeming seized the opportunity to punch him in the face causing him to spit some blood and fall on the ground. Tianeming stomped Xing Cheng's face and Xing Cheng still had the guts to tell Tianeming not to be complacent yet. He even dreams that one day he will pay Tianeming 10,000 times worse than he experienced right now. If you want to repay me, I'll be waiting for it. Tianeming answered. The host then declared that the result had been determined and both parties were requested to stop. In this battle, the victor is Lai Tianeming and the next participant is now requested to prepare for the next battle. The people started to cheer for Tianeming and Gu Yu together with his master Hun Chen was also dumbfounded to witness how strong Tianeming is. Hun Chen then asked his disciple Gu Yu if he still wanted to challenge Tianeming despite what he witnessed and Gu Yu then answered no. Now that he realized it, he promised that he will not cause any trouble with Tianeming in the future. After all, he now sees Tianeming as a heaven-defying person with his five bane rings. Hun Chen becomes silent while thinking that he has been finding the answer lately. He honestly admires Yi Shaoqing. He believes that Shaoqing has the ability to make Azure Dragon Sword Mountain even better. After Xing Cheng was defeated by Tianeming, he went to his father and his father ordered him to kneel down and not come in here again. Chen Du apologizes on behalf of his brother as he knows that Xing Cheng has never been in this kind of trouble before. As his brother, he wanted to repay him. He realized that Lai Tianeming is an interesting opponent and he was wrong for underestimating Lai Tianeming before. Yu and Taiju then told him that he doesn't need to get involved in this matter and just let Xing Cheng handle it himself as Chen Du has his own mission to complete. Okay, dad. I know, Shen Du answered while gritting his teeth. Yu and Taiji agreed with what Shen Du said that Lai Tianeming is interesting. But then, he believes that Tianeming is not the son of Lai Wudi. Shen Du asked him why, and he said that no one knows Lai Wudi better than him. Even if he has the five bane rings, in front of me, he is a fly, and even Yi Shaoqing is nothing to me, so I can kill him at any time. Yuan Taiji stated, As per Yuan Taiji, if he has the Grand Orient Holy Sword, he can be able to kill Yi Shaoqing and the Grand Orient will kowtow to him. He asked if Shen Du understood what he wanted to say and his son Shen Du then said yes. He understood that as long as there is a Grand Orient Holy Sword, a body with five bane rings or even ten is just nothing. While they both were talking, Xing Cheng was just quiet while kneeling beside his brother. His father then stood and walked towards him while saying that after three years, he will give to Xing Cheng everything that he has prepared and he will have Yu and Jiangxing to guide Xing Cheng. He wanted Xing Cheng to become a Tei disciple and chase after his brother. If you disappoint me again, I will make you prostrate and apologize to the ancestral grave. After that, I will kill you on the spot, you understand. Keiji stated, and Xing Cheng then answered yes while trembling. He was furious at Tianeming and he was blaming Tianeming for what happened to him no. Even if this is his case now, he still has the guts to plan for revenge. He suddenly cried in pain while holding his cheeks because of his teeth that were damaged again by Tianeming. Going back to the arena, the host then comes out and declares the next battle. This time, it's gonna be Lai King Wu against a lady named Su Rian. Su Rian is currently at the seventh level of the Unity Realm. Lai King Wu, no need to be nervous, I won't hurt you, Surin stated. 
as what King Wu recalled. Shaoqing told her that Su Rian is not an enemy so King Wu shouted to admit defeat immediately and just keep her trump card. With King Wu's current talent, Shaoqing knows that King Wu will surpass Surin in less than a year. Without wasting a lot of time, King Wu then declared that she was giving up. Both the host and Surin were shocked upon hearing it. The host then declared that King Wu admitted defeat and the winner was Su Yuren. Boring, too bad I can't show off to my brother Xing Cheng, Yuren uttered. But deep inside, she was glad that King Wu admitted defeat quickly so she didn't need to bother to fight. The host then hereby announced that the next round will take place half a month later. At the Azure Dragon Sword Mountain, Shaoqing and Tianeming are talking about the elimination for the participant of the Taiji Tower. Shaoqing was thinking if Tianeming still wanted to continue the elimination exam after half a month. Tianeming was confused so Shaoqing said that he was worried that Tianeming would be in danger upon entering the Taiji Tower. Tianeming then asked if Yuan Taiji would kill him and Shaoqing answered no. He said that Yuan Taiji doesn't like troublesome things, but he's afraid that the disciples of the tower might tell Tianeming to enter the third floor of the Taiyi Tower. And once Tianeming will enter, Shaoqing will have difficulty protecting Tianeming. Tianeming smiled and told his master not to worry. He was confident to face those people as he was expecting that these people were also just a student. As per Tianeming, if he cannot deal with the other disciples and he chooses to run away, then he doesn't deserve to be called a direct disciple of the council elder, and he believes that other people may kill him in the future. Shaoqing was glad to realize that Tianeming is really a brave person just like Lai Wudi. He said that Wudi was also brave the moment he entered Tei Tower. Wudi's personality is too kind and naive, and he is not as smart as Tianeming. And also, he is a person who suffers easily. Shaoqing then told Tianeming to always remember, once he experiences a loss, his life will be ruined so he needed to take precautions for that. While they were busy talking, someone suddenly came. And unexpectedly, it was Yuan Taiji. Shaoqing and Tianeming were shocked upon seeing him as they didn't expect that Taiji would go to them personally. This is not Lai Wudi's son. Hey son, where are you from? Taiji asked while staring at Tianeming. Shaoqing slightly smiled and asked how sure Taiji is that Tianeming is not Lai Wudi's son. Taiji then told Shaoqing not to say meaningless words. He also said that Shaoqing can fool anyone but not him. Whatever you want, he is my disciple, it has nothing to do with you. Shaoqing answered, My disciple Yi Shaoqing, let me ask you, what plan do you really want to do? Do you want to fight me? Did you forget who made you a council elder? Yi Shaoqing, you know how determined I am. Taiji uttered, he also stated that if someone dares to hinder him from obtaining the Grand Orient Holy Sword in the past two months, even with the slightest use of force, he will never hesitate to kill. Well, are you that strong, teacher? Shaoqing replied. As per Taiji, he hasn't given any guidance for the past few years which is the reason for him why Shaoqing forgot that provoking him is an immoral act. In that case, he challenged Xing Cheng to come with him to the Shen Yuan battlefield to teach him a lesson. Then let me see in the last four years what skills you have to fulfill that crazy ambition of yours. Shaoqing said, crazy ambition, whatever you say. Yu and Taiji then answered and flew away. Tianeming was worried for Shaoqing but Shaoqing told him to train hard and not be lazy as he needs to go away for a while. He also promised to Tianeming that he will be back later on. Shaoqing then followed Yu and Taiji, leaving Tianeming alone and was still worried that his master would fight against Taiji just to protect him. King Wu and Ling'er suddenly came and asked if Yuan Taiji came. Tianeming then said yes and explained to them Shaoqing followed Yuan Taiji to fight against each other in the Shen Yuan battlefield. He also told the ladies how worried he is for his master. King Wu then told him not to worry as she expected that Yuan Taiji cannot dare to play games with Shaoqing since Shaoqing is already part of the council elders. Ling'er also calms him down by telling him that Shaoqing will be safe since he was so strong. Tianeming then told them that he understands that nothing will happen but he really feels that there will be a threat. He's afraid that Yu and Taiji will do something wrong to Shaoqing. Meanwhile, someone came and it was Shaoqing stating that he was completely fine. Tianeming then instantly asked the result of the battle against Shaoqing and Yu and Taiji, and Shaoqing then admitted that Taijin is indeed great, but he believes in himself that he's not bad either. The first thing that Tianeming noticed was Shaoqing's hand as it was bleeding. Shaoqing raised his hand and he only had four fingers left. But still, he was so calm as he was confident that he can still use a sword with these four fingers. He then told Tianeming not to worry since Yu and Taiji didn't take any advantage which means that the Azure Dragon Sword Mountain didn't lose. At this point, Tianeming believes that Shaoqing's finger that was cut off is not an injury caused by a battle. He clenched his fist as he knew that this was Shaoqing's punishment after being defeated by the opponent. 
he becomes furious and cannot accept that his master teacher was insulted by Yuan Teiji. Because of his anger, he swears in his mind that he will avenge this insult one day. You practice here and take good care of yourself. Don't let other people get close to this area. Got it, Xiaoqing stated. Well, teacher, Tianeming answered. When the night came, Xiaoqing was still cultivating despite the heavy rain. He was so determined to become more stronger as he wanted to fight against Yu and Teiji once more. He grits his teeth because of anger and it can clearly see the hatred in his eyes. All of a sudden, a strong lightning in a red path appeared. At this time, Xiaoqing is focusing on his cultivation but his eyes are rounded as he sees someone appear. Shockingly, it was Lai Wudi with a fierce look and was clenching his fist out of anger. He was like a demonic look who was floating above together with a continuous lightning. Xiaoqing was surprised upon seeing him. Brother Lai, why are you making such a face? Xiaoqing asked. How can I not be angry? Your little finger has been cut off. Lai Wudi answered in an angry tone. Xiaoqing then told him that the pain is nothing compared to Wudi's suffering for 14 years. Despite Wudi being angry, he is still very grateful to Xiaoqing. Xiaoqing told him not to be polite and just go back to his place. He doesn't want Yu and Teiji to know that Lai Wudi made progress. Please give me a little more time. When the time comes, our revenge will begin. Lai Wudi uttered. As per Xiaoqing, the time has come to see how strong Lai Wudi is right now. He informed Lai Wudi that he tested Yu and Teiji's strength for him and he discovered that Yuan Teiji's strength now is really beyond reason. And if happen that Yuan Teiji will get the Grand Orient Holy Sword, Xiaoqing believes that Teiji will become invincible. Lai Wudi said that the Grand Orient Holy Sword has always belonged to the Lai clan and he doesn't want to let Teiji get it from them. Otherwise, he will put Teiji to death. By the way, your acting being crazy and weak is good too, until other people notice, and your daughter's marriage contract has been cancelled. Now, you can finish your training in peace, Xiaoqing stated. Yes, I expected it. My son Lai Tianeming, he is really a miracle. Even you can imagine how genius he is. Lai Wudi answered. Xiaoqing was hesitant to believe that Tianeming is a genius so Wudi suggested testing Xiaoqing's anti-heavenly sword technique so he can be able to see how talented Tianeming is. They continued talking until Xiaoqing realized that Tianeming is the man who turned his life against heaven so he wanted to see for himself how strong the pure spirit was in Tianeming's heart. The next day at the Yunjai Mountain inside the Yunjai Holy Palace, the female members of the Waiyu faction are eating their meal together. The Waiyu faction leader and a Taiyi disciple is also here named Su Waiyu. All Waiyu members, thank you for coming. You don't have to hold back your date. Let's toast together and enjoy the meal, Su Waiyu stated. The ladies then raise their glasses to have a toast and wish to have a long life for their Waiyu faction. Despite that they are all females, Yuan Shengcheng is also here and he was staring at Su Waiyu while embracing the lady's beauty. Su Waiyu likes Shengcheng's brother. That's why he cannot be able to make a move with this lady. His imagination was cut off when Su Waiyu mentioned his name. As per Su Waiyu, she heard what happened with Shengcheng and she told Shengcheng not to worry as she and Shendu are ready to help Shengcheng. After all, this is a test from your father for you. You don't have to worry about it, and he also arranged to give you a chance to take revenge. Su Waiyu stated, as per Xing Cheng, he cannot take revenge alone by himself and he needed his cousin Jiang Xing to help him get rid of Tianeming. Su Waiyu noticed Xing Cheng's worried face so he told Xing Cheng to just be happy as they are all here to have some fun. Xing Cheng then smiled widely and asked Su Waiyu if Lai King Yu is really a member of their faction. Su Waiyu said yes but since King Yu didn't appear together with them for a long time, she decided to fire her. Xing Cheng's face was thrilled while asking the lady not to fire King Yu. Su Waiyu then senses that Xing Cheng likes King Yu so she offers to set a date for both Xing Cheng and King Yu. Xing Cheng then stated that if it happens, it will be a wonderful feeling for him. Someone suddenly held Xing Cheng and was asking how he is. Upon seeing the face, Xing Cheng instantly knew that it was his cousin Yuan Jiangxing, niece of Yuan Taiji. Jiangxing then asked about who Xing Cheng fell in love with as he was willing to help Xing Cheng. Instead of answering his question, Xing Cheng informed him that he had something important to say. Xing Cheng asked Jiangxing to take Tianeming to the third floor if he will meet Tianeming in the Taiyi Tower. Make sure he goes in and kills him there. Xing Cheng added. Jiang Xing then laughed loudly while telling Xing Cheng not to worry. He said that he was good at acting and he promised that he would make Tianeming's body explode. When the night came, Xing Cheng went to Xuanchen, and Xuanchen was confused why Xing Chen invited him to meet all of a sudden. Do you remember what you laid out last time? Xing Cheng asked. Xuanchen then understood that Xing Cheng was referring to King Yu. He then told Xing Cheng not to worry as he was preparing a well thought out plan for Xing Cheng. And now that everything is ready, they can now do it anytime. 
Xing Cheng was clueless about what Xu Anchen's original plan was, so Xu Anchen explained that he had investigated Lai Qingyu recently. He said that in the Waiyu faction, there is only one person close to Lai Qingyu and the name is Guo Zaiafu, an inner sect disciple who had just been from another sect, and had neither strength nor background, and they had worked together with Qingyu before. Xu Anchen knows that it's been a long time since King Yu did the Waiyu faction mission, and Xu Anchen suggested that they can ask Su Waiyu for help to give King Yu and Xiaofu a pair mission outside the sect. He believes that King Yu trusted this person after leaving the Grand Orient sect, and in that pair's mission, it's gonna be Xing Cheng's time to take over. Xing Cheng smiled at this plan and he asked Xu Anchen about what he would do. Xu Anchen showed him an item and he prepared this for Xing Cheng. It is an apple that can make people lose their memory a little. If they eat too much, it will burn the brain and make people an idiot. Ching Cheng smiled upon hearing it as he planned to imprison King Wu outside the sect once she will become an idiot. After that, he will make her gratification for his lust. And he was confident that no one can King Wu once their plan will be successful. Xu Enchen was proud of himself that Ching Cheng agreed to his plan and he said that they only need to wait for the right time for now to carry out their plan. Ching Cheng widely smiled with his incomplete teeth and was hoping that King Wu would become an idiot forever with the help of the apple that Xu Enchen gave. The next day, King Wu summoned her sword and this was the first time Tianming saw it so he asked where King Wu got this weapon. According to King Wu, this sword is a gift from their teacher Shaoqing, and this is called a Demon Slayer Moon Katana. This katana belongs to the 7th tier Beastmaster weapon. And Shaoqing also taught her a battle technique for two days. The technique is called the Galaxy Moon Sword technique which she feels is very powerful. Shaoqing also told her that she's a peerless genius, which in fact, she can only master four moves out of five moves. She almost completely learned it. Tianeming was shocked upon hearing it and he was thinking that their master teacher is spoiling King Yu a lot while he was forgotten. King Wu then informed him that their teacher is waiting for him at the Azure Dragon Sword Master. Tianeming then hurried and was excited as he was expecting something good from Shaoqing. When he arrived, he immediately approached Shaoqing. But then, Shaoqing didn't give any response to him so he asked if his master teacher was mad at him. To his surprise, Shaoqing cast magic from his finger and he rushed to Tianeming. The magic from his finger formed a purple sword and he almost hit Tianeming with it. Tianeming was shocked as he thought that his master teacher would end his life, but not until Shaoqing blew the flame in his hand and smiled at Tianeming. Young man, did you feel that? Shaoqing asked. I did. Are you going to kill your own disciple? Tianeming answered. And Shengchen then said that he was referring to the Void of God Sword's intense might. Tianeming thought that Shaoqing was asking about the average. He then asked if Shaoqing would teach him the skill. Tianeming is hunting some boogers again on his nose while thinking that Shaoqing showed some terrifying moves. He believes that it's a tear stronger than his demise of Man Earth Heaven's apocalyptic will as he almost peed his pants. Not really, since you don't think it's impressive. I won't bother. Shaoqing answered. Tianeming rattled upon hearing it so he said that he can live with it despite that it was just an average. Shaoqing then challenged him that if he can practice the first strike of Void God's sword intent within a month, Shaoqing is willing to become Tianeming's disciple. Are you serious? I wouldn't mind taking a disciple this early on. Tianeming said with an excited voice. As per Shaoqing, he has seen too many ignorant, disrespectful ones who think skills above heaven's rank are that easy to master. He teases Tianeming to just tear up and cry before him at the very end. Tianeming just smiled as he was confident that he can make Shaoqing his disciple. Shaoqing is looking forward to it and for now, he ordered Tianeming to go to the mountain near the river as he will show the true form of the Void God's sword intent. Don't tell me you're going to teach me badly because you're afraid you'll lose to me. Tianeming kiddingly said, Me, afraid of you. Now that's a joke if I've ever heard one. Shaoqing answered. After a while, they arrived at the mountain near the river and Shaoqing then immediately showed the Void God's sword intent. He was holding a sword and ordered Tianeming to watch closely. He explained that the Void God's sword intent is a battle art beyond the Heavenly Will stage, and he will simplify it a bit for Tianeming. But in turn, it will be at least five times harder for Tianeming to master it as per Shaoqing. He said that if Tianeming can master it, it'll be much stronger than normal Unity-ranked battle arts. Tianeming was so focused listening to every word he said and he even stated that Tianeming dared to make a bet with him on mastering something so hard. For him, Tianeming really doesn't know the heights of the heavens or the breadth of the earth. According to him, the key to Void God's sword intent lies in the name, the Void. Void is a kind of unyielding will. A will to rebel. A will to break rules and destiny. This technique was created by the ancestors of the Lai Saint clan. Perhaps, Tianeming can be able to comprehend it easily as he has lifespan. 
Shayoking showed first the first strike counter current. He swung his sword and it created a strong pressure that was able to create a hole on the huge rock. Ying Huo's eyes rounded upon witnessing how powerful it was. It is so strong that even Ying Huo wanted to learn it. Next up is the second strike starfall that breaks the ground. The third strike is called a cosmic break and Shayoking spins his body and it creates a powerful force in a circle shape. Lastly, the fourth and final strike which is the quintessence of the technique and makes it a saint-ranked battle art. It's called Myriads Only. It was the strike that Shayoking displayed to the elders before. He instructed Tianeming to stay focused as he wanted to show it only once, the most difficult being the sword intent. There are four strikes in Void God's sword intent, but they can also be considered one because only one will prevail through all four strikes and that is the void god will. Shayoking handed a book to Tianeming and he instructed Tianeming to read it while recalling the strike. Tianeming thanked him and apologized for the reason that he will be starting the practice right away as he cannot wait to take Shayoking as his first disciple. Ha, huh. how dare you talk big after watching my display. Good, it's good to at least have that fighting spirit, I'll be waiting here. Shayoking answered while leaning on the rock. He was staring at Tianeming thinking how stubborn he is. He believes that if Tianeming can pass the second round, he'll definitely try the third as well. If he can master the Void God's sword intent before that and break through once more, he might just stand a chance. To his surprise, Tianeming made the first strike, counter current. Come, greet your new master, Tianeming said to Shayoking. Shayoking was dumbfounded to witness how Tianeming made it. Before he learned it, he studied it for half a year, and now, Tianeming made it in one glance. At this point, he was thinking that he might be seeing things and that Tianeming used is definitely not the Void God Sword. Tianeming noticed that Shayoking was staring at him and Shayoking then ordered him to do it one more time. Tianeming easily made it once more and for him, the technique is so easy even if how many times he will do it. Monster, monster, you're definitely a monster, Shayoking shouted. Tianeming smiled widely and said that this is but a small feat that he believes that his master teacher will get used to it. Also, he concludes that Shayoking is making an excuse to not take Tianeming as his master. Shut up, when did I say I will do that? Shayoking replied. He added that he is just excited to have a super genius as a disciple in his lifetime. He even had the guts to tell Tianeming to practice harder until he made it perfect. He also told Tianeming to always be complacent even if he's fast. Tianeming then understood Shayoking and he said that he already has his goals out there was no way he can be complacent. Shayoking grips into his sword and hands it to Tianeming. It is a grade 7 bestial weapon, an onyx dragon. It contains the blood of the third order demon beast, an onyx vile dragon. He said that if Tianeming can tap into the power of its blood, the sword will open up endless possibilities. Tianeming then held onto the sword and was amazed by it. He then gave thanks to his master teacher for the wonderful present. At this point, Shayoking really sees Tianeming as a monster upon witnessing that the bestial weapon is already resonating with Tianeming. He then realized that pentabanes are indeed fearsome after all, and no wonder the founding ancestor of the Lai Saint clan could reach the Empyrean Saint stage. He concludes that if Tianeming survives, it's only a matter of time before he defies fate itself. Half a month later, Tianeming went to the Lai Mausoleum and was facing the tomb of their ancestor Le Sheng Sao. He was currently cultivating with Miao Mao and Ying Huo. At this moment, he finally broke through the third level of the Unity Realm. Lai Wudi was also here covering his ears as he didn't want to hear the loud noise of Tianeming who was enjoying his achievement. He stood while stating that Tianeming is a cultivation maniac. He was irritated that he cannot find a quiet place to sleep as long as Tianeming is around. Tianeming is staring at his hand while saying that this breakthrough of his is critical. In the past half month, he had a breakthrough in his whip art and sword intent, plus got the archfiend and onyx dragon. He was confident now that there will be no problem entering the Grand Orient battlefield by tomorrow. Linger comes out and shows her support to Tianeming. As per Tianeming, Linger is his secret weapon and he advises Linger not to take a move till a critical moment. Next, just wait for a good show tomorrow, he stated. The next day, the battle is happening again at the Grand Orient Sex No. 1 battlefield. The host then announced the second round of trial began. According to her, this round will determine the final qualifiers. Both sides, please prepare yourself for the round, he uttered. King Wu and Tianeming are together and King Wu asks if Tianeming already has an idea about his opponent. As per Tianeming, his opponent now will be King Wu's previous opponent, Su Yuren. King Wu then let Tianeming know that Su Rian and Yuan Zhengxing are couples and are now both at 7th level of unity. According to her, Yuan Zhengxing is the one that wants to kill Tianeming the most. And she concludes that Su Yuren might also try to kill Tianeming for his boyfriend Zhengxing. 
Besides them, there are two more people to watch out for as per King Yu. The first one is Chen Zaioji, the grandson of the seventh elder, Chen Nanchen, and is currently at eight levels of unity. His life-bound beast is a second-order saint beast called the Indigo Scaled Unicorn. Elder Chen Nanchen is a loyal ally of Yuan Taiji, and Chen Zioji and Yuan Shendu have a good relationship. And once Tianeming will enter the Prime Tower, he's one to watch out for. At this point, the battle starts with Chen Zioji and he wins against his enemy which means he is able to enter the Prime Tower. Chen Zioji was staring at Tianeming and Tianeming also saw it himself but he only smiled. King Wu continued with her statement and she said that the other one Tianeming needs to be aware of is Gongsun Chai. Gongsun Chai from the Gongsun clan. His life-bound beast is a fire type of brood mother beast known as the Imperial Flame Locust. Imperial Flame Locust relies on the locust born from her to attack. It can probably birth a hundred thousand sky-blazing locusts. This locust will burn and eat everything that crosses their paths. His life-bound beast is quite difficult to deal with so King Yu advises Tianeming to be careful once he encounters Gongsun Chai. Chen Zioji, Gongsun Chai, and Yuan Jenxing are all after Tianeming and each is harder to deal with than the other. After hearing it, Tianeming realized that these enemies are in a lot of trouble, especially the one with the bug companion. But then, these people don't scare him even a bit. His goal is the treasures in the prime tower, and nobody can stop him. He was drooling while King Wu concluded that Tianeming only thinks about money. At this time, the host declared the Nine Paths Mountain Suyurin against Azure Dragon Sword Mountain Lai Tianeming are requested to come on the stage. Tianeming then went to the stage wearing a wide smile on his face. The crowd believes that Tianeming is really much stronger than Xing Cheng who is at the sixth level of unity. But against Suyurin, for them, it will be a losing battle for Tianeming. With Tianeming's talent, they know that he made progress, perhaps, they can see a fighting chance. But this time, they guess that Su Yuren will teach Tianeming a lesson on Yuan Xing Cheng's behalf. They conclude that this battle between Tianeming and Su Yuren will be phenomenal. Su Yuren held her head and complained that she has a headache. She wanted to pretend to lose to Tianeming, without him catching on. She was acting to look weaker than Tianeming, and let him enter the Prime Tower. This time, she decided to first test Tianeming by exerting 70% of her strength and slowly start to act weaker. She then summoned her hundred-eyed winged serpent. Ying Huo also comes out while saying that he hates snakes, especially Su Rian's life-bound beast with wings. Junior sect master, would you agree if I said that you're a reckless fool? People like you usually don't leave long. Su Rian stated. Well, you're right. I really don't have long to leave. Tianeming answered. Su Rian's life-bound beast starts attacking by blowing a heartburn toxiflame. And to Su Rian's surprise, Tianeming suddenly disappeared. She first concludes that Tianeming was burned to dust by her toxiflame. Because of it, she thought that Tianeming's defense was too low. If she had known, she would have used only 30% instead of 70% of her strength. Later then she realized that Tianeming was above her and was going to attack using Void God Sword Intent. Tianeming used the first strike, countercurrent, and it had a powerful force that made the ground crumble. Su Yuren becomes furious as she feels humiliated by Tianeming. The people were impressed by Tianeming's unexpected movement. They believe that Su Yuren would have been finished if it wasn't for her companion beast blocking her. You're so weak. You have wounds all over your body just from a single slash. Are you really at the seventh level of unity? Tianeming uttered to tease Su Rian. What did you say? How dare you humiliate me? I admit it was my loss today. But just wait. You're a goner for sure. Su Rian answered. Tianeming then concludes that Su Rian wanted him to enter the Prime Tower to deal with him. Thanks for the heads up. I won't be going then. Tianeming said. Su Rian then lied that this is not what she meant to say. She panicked that Tianeming figured it out because of her stupidity. Tianeming creates the flame on his hand that he learned from her master teacher, Shaoqing. He then dashed to the lady while forming the flame into a sharp edge and slashed her instantly at a fast speed. Su Rian is too stunned to speak while Tianeming is already behind her. She then realized that her pinky finger had been cut off. Upon realization, she screamed in agony and kneeling on the ground. Tianeming then instructed her to tell his boyfriend Yuan Jenxing that he knows Jenxing is watching him. Tell him that in the Prime Tower a month from now, I will take his hand. He added, some people in the crowd admired Tianeming for his guts and straightforwardness. They were also amazed at how Tianeming dared to chop off Su Yuren's finger in public. Upon seeing what Tianeming did to Su Yuren, Yuan Jenxing was furious and vowed that he would pay Tianeming back 10,000 times what Su Yuren suffered. He shouted at Tianeming to just wait a little bit longer. So you were there watching the whole show, did you enjoy it? Tianeming replied. The host then announced Lai Tianeming's victory, 
and will be one of the people to enter the Prime Tower. Tianming stared evilly while saying that these people watching over him and have the intention to kill him will die soon after a month. The two elders of the Grand Orient sect were also talking about Tianming, and even Feng Yun was amazed at Tianming's guts and straightforwardness. He even hopes that the heavens will give Tianming more time to cultivate. As per Jingshu, cultivation isn't simply a matter of time. There will be different kinds of obstacles and challenges. It won't be much smooth sailing for Tianming from now as per Jingshu. Feng Yun guesses that only time will show them if Tianming can adapt to the prime struggle, survive and emerge with some. If Tianming really becomes a prime disciple, Feng Yun believes that nobody will be able to stop his rise anymore. Jingshu can clearly see that Tianming doesn't care if Yuan Jengxing, and the others will gang him up if he goes into the prime tower. What a hot-blooded young man. He cut off someone's pinky finger to avenge his master. I wonder what Yuan Taiji thinks about this, Jingshu stated. According to Feng Yun, for someone of Yuan Taiji's level, if he kills the junior sect master over such a trivial matter, He'll no doubt be made into a laughing stock across the Grand Orient Realm. That'll just invite quite a lot of criticism for when he wants to become a sect master in the future. However, the council elders cannot do anything if Yuan Taiji really wanted to go for the kill. All of a sudden, someone approached them. It was Shangguan Jai, Shangguan Jingmei's great-grandson. And he's together with Huangfu Feifei, Huangfu Fengyun's great-granddaughter. Jingshu then told them to work together and support each other to compete for the treasures in the Prime Tower since Elder Jingshu believes that this couple's strength is not bad at all. Jai Yi then promised that he would protect Feifei at all costs. Feng Yun advises them not to be hostile towards Lai Tianming once they enter the Prime Tower. He wanted this couple to focus on the treasures, but also not help Tianming even a bit. We'll leave the rest for after the Realm War, understood. Feng Yun said, understood. We won't help either side. The couple answered. At Taiji Mountain, three people were in the cave and were talking about something important. One of these people is Yuan Fengshan, the third patriarch, and the father of Yuan Taiji. Behind him are Yuan Taiji and Yuan Shendu. According to Fengshan, their success and failure are at stake. They were checking Shendu's lifebound beast at this point. It suddenly growled loudly with a strong force as it successfully comprehended the heaven will. Shendu was glad that he successfully took the final step before the realm wars. He really didn't let me down, as expected of my grandson. He has had an iron will and tenacity since he was young, Feng Shen uttered. For him, no one can stop Shendu in the realm wars with the divine items they have prepared for Shendu's heavenly will stage cultivation. He noticed that Taiji doesn't have any reaction to what Shendu accomplished so he thought that Taiji isn't excited at all. Taiji then said that there was no need to celebrate until the Grand Orient Sword is in their hands. Feng Shen then honestly told him not to push Shendu too hard as Shendu never let him down before all these years. Push him too hard? You can't say that. Our world has a strict hierarchy. If he wants to climb up, he needs to put in more than a hundred percent effort and devote all of his focus to the task. Yuan Taiji answered. He also told his father not to blame him for pushing Shendu. He believes that one day, when Shendu reigns over the Grand Orient Realm, Shendu will thank him. According to him, when Shendu retrieves the Grand Orient Sword, it will be Xing Cheng's turn to experience everything his elder brother has. For him, their Yuan clan only needs shocking talent, not embarrassment. Shendu interfered and said that he agreed to his father's statement. Feng Shen stated that Taiji is not only strict with himself but with everyone. And for him, that is the reason why their family has reached such heights. There are not two months left until the Realm War, and as per Taiji, this is the last stretch for his son, Shendu. Henceforth and until then, he and Feng Shen will be here the whole way, guiding Shendu in heavenly-ranked battle arts, except for the day of the Prime Struggle. Until the start of the Realm War, at the Azure Dragon Sword Mountain, Tianming spends his time with the new skill he has learned. Shayoking suddenly came, clapping his hand as he was glad to witness Tianming achieve great mastery in Starfall. He was glad Tianming mastered two out of the total of four stances. Shayoking used to think the Tetrabane Lai Wudi was hot stuff and a heaven-defying unparalleled genius, but still can't be compared with Lai Tianming. He now understands what peerless and heaven-defying truly means. He glanced at Ying Huo and was surprised that Ying Huo can also do the heaven-defying sword in Tent Starfall. What are you looking at? Haven't you ever seen such a handsome chicken? Ying Huo stated upon seeing Shayoking staring at him. Tianming laughed as he believed that Shayoking was still not used to the speed of his progress. King Wu also appeared and informed Shayoking that she had cultivated all the steps of the Moonset Galaxy Blade art. Also, she has broken through to 6th level unity and already mastered the path-severing flying blade that Shendu taught her. Your whole family are freaks in nature, Shendu stated. 
He also noticed how energetic his direct disciples are in their life-bound beast, except for Meow Meow who slept beside the three. He slightly smiled to think that he has immense pride and joy to be Tianaming and Kingu's mentor. He was confused if risking Tianaming and Kinyu's life was worth it. After all, he really wanted to see how exciting their future would be. From the other point of view, Mountain Chief Yuxi was heading somewhere and all of a sudden, Mountain Chief Kaidai was blocking her way. Yuxi, you're in a hurry. It just shows how uneasy and fearful you are. Have you heard that Shendu comprehended heavenly will, successfully breaking through to the heavenly will stage? He's likely to seize the Grand Orient Sword in the Realm Wars. The E clan is doomed, Kaidai said. And Yuxi then stated that she doesn't care about his words. She walked away while Kaidai told her that he will give her one last chance for the sake of their friendship. Your second brother Yi Sheoking took an annoying bug as his disciple. Although a bug poses no threat to them, his behavior has made the Yuan clan unhappy, Kaidai stated. He also added that once they will get the Grand Orient Sword, the first thing they will do is slaughter the Yi clan, which is Yuxi's father Yi King, and the second brother Yi Sheoking. They were just clearing any obstacles and making an example. He also let Yuxi know that Hyunfu Fengyun and Shangyuan Jingshu, the two elders, will take refuge in his brother. At that time, the Grand Orient sect will be unified. And if Yuxi will follow him, as a daughter-in-law of the Yuan clan, she still has her life as per Kaidai. Yuxi glanced at him and told him that they are too self-confident. Kaidai then said that he's not too self-confident. He said that Yuxi's eldest brother Yi Tianlong has already submitted to them. Yuxi was mad to hear this and for her, his eldest brother doesn't deserve the name Yi. I just want to say, aren't you too confident in you and Shendu? Not to mention the flourishing Heavens Elysium has seven Elysian children, four of which are at Heavenly Will. The forces rank second, third, and fourth are all eyeing the Grand Orient Sword. Even if you and Shendu has some means, how can he seize the Grand Orient Sword in a battle of such talented geniuses? So if you want me to surrender, wait until you actually possess the Grand Orient Sword. Yuxi answered. Kaidai told her that she doesn't know Shendu's abilities. Even without the Grand Orient Sword, as long as his brother keeps advancing, he believes that Shendu will break the balance in the Council of Elders one day. Yuxi continued to walk away while saying to Kaidai that she'll wait and see. Kaidai was staring at her leaving the place while thinking all that will become Yuxi is a skeleton no matter how beautiful she is. Up until midnight, Tianeming was still practicing. He lies down on the ground as he feels exhausted and that what he already learned is not enough yet. For him, the remaining 10 days are obviously not enough for him to break through to 5th level unity. With his current strength, he doesn't know if he can deal with Yuan Jenxing and the others, breaking through for added insurance. If not, it'll be a life and death battle, he uttered. He believes that this prime struggle is definitely very dangerous, a path of life and death. On the edge of life and death, he just needs to ensure that he's stronger tomorrow than he is today. The next day, King Wu came together with Ling'er and they both wondered why Tianeming trained the whole night. Tianeming then told them that he had doubled the time of practicing. Tianeming also asked where the both girls were going and King Wu stated that she was going to spend a few days with a friend. So she came by to Tianeming to meet him before she left. Tianeming was confused about whose friend she was referring to since she didn't mention any when he came here. Since the prime struggle will be happening in a few days, Tianeming asked if she will not watch the battle. Of course, I'll be back soon. I'd never miss any of your fights. A friend from the Waiyu faction asked for a little help. King Wu answered. She then leaves while waving her hand to Tianeming and Ling'er and even says that they don't have to worry for her since she's not like Tianeming who attracts attention wherever she goes. After she leaves, Tianeming feels something is wrong and that a friend of King Wu from the Waiyu faction is looking for her at this moment. Ling'er then told him not to worry about King Wu as she witnessed the progress of King Wu which is no slower than Tianeming. It's just that, everyone's eyes are on you, and she has instead been a little transparent. Tianeming then agreed that King Yu is getting stronger as he also noticed that King Yu is almost catching up to him and is about to break through to the seventh level of unity. Tianeming believes that if King Yu keeps a low profile, she'll get an advantage with surprise attacks when the time comes. During the night, King Yu is already with her friend Xiaofu, and what King Yu thought is they're heading to Xiaofu's hometown, the Fueling Town. As per Xiaofu, they are almost near and just across the mountain ahead. At this moment, Xiaofu looked so downcast so King Yu thought that she was feeling unwell. They can clearly see the sadness in her eyes, but still, she said that she was fine. What King Yu knows is that Xiaofu's parents have been kidnapped and the kidnappers will only let Xiaofu's parents to let go after seeing a disciple from the Grand Orient sect. That's why King Yu is here to help. 
as per Ziafu, her parents offended the bandits, and the bandits heard that she was a disciple of the sect so they didn't dare go overboard. King Wu then told her not to worry as she made progress lately so she was confident that she will be able to help her friend Ziafu, but she only believes that she can deal with bandits on the fourth level of unity. After a while, they arrive at the said area. King Wu thought that they went in the wrong direction since she didn't see anyone in the place, and it doesn't look like a town to her. Ziafu started crying and apologized to King Wu. She also promised that she will pay back what she owes in the next life. She then ran away without any other words and there was someone standing in front of King Yu. King Wu was surprised as she didn't expect that it was a trap to catch her. It was like Xuanchen, standing while smiling while staring at her. Xianfu kneeled to Xuanchen and was crying while asking him to tell Su Waiyu and the others that she did what she was told. She also begged him to release her parents from being kidnapped. So you threatened Xiaofu with her parents to lure me out. Like Xuanchen, what are you planning? King Wu stated. You'll soon find out. Xuanchen answered. Yu and Xing Cheng then suddenly appeared. King Wu, you should ask me that question instead. Xing Cheng stated. He was laughing after realizing that he finally got King Wu out. King Wu was mad and asked about what he was planning. And Xing Cheng said that his plan is to take revenge. He wants to pay King Wu and Tianmin back 10,000 times the pain he suffered. And he wanted King Wu to forever leave in his shadow. He also said that he wanted to ruin King Wu's mind and make her as his meat slave that dances at his every beck and call. He'll even make it difficult for King Wu to die. King Wu then said that Ching Cheng was mistaken since he's the one who keeps messing with others and nobody can realistically bully him. If anyone's to blame, it's your cowardice and overconfidence. King Wu said, Shut up. How dare you look down on me. You're nothing but a pathetic member of the Apex branch. Why King Wu? I'd like to see if you still dare to act so defiantly once I strip you naked. Ching Cheng said with an angry tone. King Wu confidently answered that Ching Cheng didn't scare her. Since she's already here, she ordered Ching Cheng to stop bullying Xiaofu and let her parents go in exchange that she will come together with Ching Cheng. Xiaofu is still crying and feels guilty for King Wu. All of a sudden, she was struck to her neck from behind. Xuanchen did it using a spear and told Xiaofu that she was useless now. King Wu screamed Xiaofu's name out of anger. Xiaofu died and Xuanchen said that King Wu will be the next. King Wu feels sorry for her friend Xiaofu, and she vowed in her mind that she will make sure her friend will rest in peace. She's trembling in anger while gritting her teeth and clenching her fist. She then summoned the sword that Xiaoqing gave while saying that the crime Xing Cheng and Xuanchen committed is unforgivable. Today, I shall bring heavenly justice under the brilliance of the full moon. King Wu uttered. Xing Cheng and Xuanchen laughed to think that King Wu wanted to fight them back. Then I'll play with you and let you know what desperation is. Xing Cheng stated. They both then rushed to King Wu under the full moon and King Wu did the same thing. Two days later, at the first Grand Orient battlefield, the people were excited about the opening of the Prime Tower or what they sometimes called Taiji Tower. Some of these people wondered about what the level is the junior sect master now. They also heard Yu and Jenxing and the rest made some preparations for Tianming. At this moment, a heavenly pattern projection that the elder Su Zhen created appeared in the arena. It enables the audience to see clearly all that happens on the first and second floors of the Prime Tower. Up until these days, King Wu hadn't come back yet which made her master teacher worried for her. As per Tianming, Jing Yu has gone out to look for her granddaughter. What Jing Hu knew is that King Wu went to the fueling town, and based on the speed of the Grand White Kunpeng's flight, she should have returned a day ago. Xiaoqing smiled as he believed that King Wu will surely come back for something as important as this. Tianming felt down as he was thinking that King Wu had been delayed by something. It always felt for him that the Waiyu faction was up to something, and he was hoping that his hunch was wrong. Xiaoqing noticed that Tianming became silent so he told Tianming that King Wu isn't someone that usually makes others worry. He believes that King Wu is fine, and that Jing Wu is familiar with King Wu's companion beast. She might be back soon. You just have to focus on not losing your life today. Xiaoqing added, Don't worry, the least I can say is I won't die inside. Tianming confidently answered. Xiaoqing told him to try fighting for the treasures on the first and second floors while preserving his life. As for the third floor, the one to pass the third floor becomes a prime disciple. But the elders have decided the maximum number of prime disciples must not exceed four. Now, there are already four. If Tianming passes the third floor, a competition will be arranged to eliminate one person. Tianming understands what Xiaoqing is saying and he was planning to better get the two levels done first. The prime tower will be open soon and the 17 direct disciples were ordered to come to the host. 
while Tianming is heading his way. Xiaoqing advises him to always remember to think twice before doing anything dangerous. All the direct disciples have been ordered to come forward once the host calls out their names. One of them is Shang Yuan Jiayi, Gong Sun Chai, Huang Fu Fei Fei, Chen Zai Oji, Jiang Honglin, Yuan Jiangxing, and from Azure Dragon Sword Mountain, Lai Tianming. Prepare to enter the tower, the host declared. There are several doors in this tower and the host lets them choose where they want to enter, as what Tianming has observed. The reason why there are a total of 17 participants is that the tower has 17 doors. During their entrance, Yu and Jiangxing approached Tianming just to tell him to do his best and rush to the third floor, and Tianming then answered no problem. Jiangxing then walked first heading to the door while calling Tianming a trash. For him, Tianming recklessness will be his end. His friends Gongsun Chiai and Chen Zaioji were behind him and told him to focus on getting the treasures on the first two floors while they will both stop anyone attempting to fight Jiangxing for them. They all then entered the tower to start the contest. At Fengshan Mountain's Observation Hall, the Yuan family is here and also Su Waiyu. According to Yuan Taiji, the first floors of the Prime Tower have been prepared by them to ensure that Jiangxing will get the treasures. Yuan Taiji noticed that his son Yuan Shengchen is not there and even Yuan Shendu wondered so he asked his girlfriend Su Waiyu since he knows that Ching Cheng is always in the Waiyu faction. Su Waiyu doesn't know how to explain it, but still, Taiji knows that Su Waiyu has an idea where his son is. Su Waiyu was hesitant to answer but in the end, she didn't have a choice so she told Taiji that Ching Cheng and Xuanchen went to find Lai Qinghu. She explained everything to Taiji and after hearing all of her explanations, Taiji became mad and punched the ground. Because of his disappointment, he ordered Kaidai to send someone out to drag Xing Cheng back. Xing Cheng will be grounded for three years and Taiji will not allow to let him out no matter what. Kaidai was hesitant to follow his order and he reasoned out that Xing Cheng is still too young and can't take the humiliation, so he suggested to just letting Xing Cheng off some steam. For him, Xing Cheng is only out to mess around. He was about to tell Taiji not to ground Xing Cheng but Taiji cut him off by just staring at him with anger. Kaidai doesn't have a choice but to follow his demand. You have spoiled that animal. Hurry up and get him back, Taiji stated. Shendu blamed his girlfriend Su Waiyu for letting Xing Cheng do such a vile thing. And Su Waiyu said that she noticed how frustrated Xing Cheng is so she was just trying to help. Don't you want him to vent so he can calm down and cultivate? She added, Waiyu, don't try to be smart with me. It'll only serve to put us apart. Shendu answered. Su Waiyu felt nervous and there were no words coming out of her mouth. As per Shendu, he'll be joining the Realm Wars. His survival is not guaranteed. He said that if he died, he would scatter like the clouds. And he will survive. He'll rise much farther than before. If he managed to achieve it and Waiyu still wanted to stay with him. He said that the lady should not do things that make him look down on her. Su Waiyu becomes mad at what he said but she cannot say such a thing for now. The only thing she can do is to accept what Shendu said. She clenched his fist and gritted her teeth out of annoyance. Going back to the Prime Tower, the disciples were all greedy to get the treasures and Tianming can clearly say that all of these people have a clear goal which is to go straight to the treasure. He was guessing that many would get in trouble from the start. At this time, they were in the cave and he feels that this cave terrain is so complicated. As what he observed, the walls are translucent, and the first floor structure is like an ant colony, with massive maze-like tunnels. Tianming is observing Jiangxing and concludes that this bald man seems familiar with the maze and looks like he knew the route in advance. With the power their family holds, it's highly likely that he's cheating as per Tianming. His minions are also going forward without any trouble. Because of this, Tianming is 100% sure these men were cheating. In that case, Tianming decided to use his bewildering eye to figure out the route. Upon raising his metal arm, he immediately saw the item. It's only one path that leads to it. And Yu and Jiangxing and the rest obviously know which one it is. It's the mana ball, a receptacle used to store mana. Getting it is the same as getting the terrestrial mana. Linger states that it's so unfair for them as she senses that the treasure is basically handed to Jiangxing. She was so disappointed to think that these men were all so strong but still have the guts to cheat. Tianming ordered her to activate the celestial wings as he decided to catch up to Jiangxing. Linger then followed his demand and they then flew. Up until this point, Tianming still used his bewildering eye to make sure that he was heading the right way. The other direct disciples who saw Tianming were surprised to see how fast he is. And even the crowd was confused about how Tianming made it. They saw that not only Tianming is fast, but even the path is accurate. They started to wonder about what kind of flying skill Tianming had. At a fast speed, Zaioji is rushing to chase Tianming using his horse. Want to catch up with Jiangxing? Get past me first, Zaioji confidently said. 
He then attacked Tianming using his technique, a star gathering divine light, and the demon star falls. Tianming then flew higher to avoid the powerful attack of Xiaoji. Xiaoji ordered Tianming to get back and Tianming then summoned Ying Huo and Miao Miao together to hold Xiaoji as he needed to chase Jiangxing to get the treasure. Leave it to us and you go grab the treasure for us. Ying Huo answered. Xiaoji was confident that these both life-bound beasts of Tianming cannot hold him back. Tianming then told him that he will not ask them to try to stop Xiaoji if he knows that his life-bound beasts cannot beat their enemy. He then smirked and called Xiaoji a dumbass. Xiaoji was annoyed and stated that he can still catch up to Tianming soon. Tianming only hid and he just deceived Xiaoji to look for an opportunity to kill him using the Void God Sword intent, Counter Current. Without wasting much time, he attacked Xiaoji using the technique and Xiaoji was too stunned to speak. The crowd was shocked that Tianming was able to attack Chen Xiaoji with a powerful move. Some wondered if Xiaoji would die and some also believed that Tianming would not dare to kill someone at the first level no matter how absurd he is. Xiaoji is currently kneeling on the ground, the same with his horse. Why Tianming, you're despicable. I'll rip your head off. Xiaoji screamed in anger. Tianming then said that it's not over yet while rushing to Xiaoji and holding the sword. Go to hell, Tianming answered. Tianming attacked Xiaoji Void God's sword intent, and Xiaoji tried to block his attack. But then, he was still fooled by Tianming because Ying Huo is already behind Xiaoji and was going to attack using the Void God's sword intent. Niao Miao also helped and bit Xiaoji. The battle was so intense and the crowd was murmuring about the scene that just happened. They were impressed by Miao Miao and Ying Huo with how fierce they are and they didn't expect that Young Huo also has the Void God Sword intent. Since Xiaoji looked behind him, Tianming seized that opportunity to punch him in the face. In the end, Tianming defeated Xiaoji and he fell to the ground with his weak body. Tianming didn't waste more time and instantly flew using Ling'er's celestial wings. Outside the tower, Tianming crushed Xiaoji in two to three hits was being announced. The people were jaw-dropping to witness the strength of Tianming. They cannot believe that Tianming improved a lot in a short period of time. And now they commented that Tianming is indeed outrageously strong. Hunshin reckoned the junior sect master would have improved and be able to match Chen Xiaoji evenly. But to his surprise, he realized that he still underestimated Tianming. Even Gu Yu stated that Tianming's movement is so terrifying. They all expected that Tianming will improve greatly in a short period of time, given his speed of progress. But it turns out, he is even more unbelievable than Gu Yu thought. Elder Yi King is also here together with his son and daughter. He was in awe to witness Tianming's strength, and Shayaking told them that there were more good shows waiting for them. As per Yi King, they must protect Tianming after the battle. Shayaking smiled as he didn't have a problem with it since that was what he was doing as always. All of a sudden, Yuxi mentioned about his other brother who chose the Yuan clan instead of them. But then, Yi King told her to let her brother as it was his choice. Shayaking also told her that after making a choice, they should be fearless and stick to it. In your words, I just have to be a running dog. Yuxi answered. Going back inside the tower, Gongsun Chai saw that Xiaoji was already weak and was kneeling on the ground so he wondered why. Xiaoji then told him that Tianming is the one who hit him. Gongsun Chai then laughed and he was confident that Tianming cannot beat him even with how powerful Tianming is right now. Stop it. Hurry up and go after him. Don't let him ruin Jiangxing's big event. Xiaoji demanded. I know. You just rest and recuperate. I'll take care of it. Gongsun Chiai answered. He then rushed and he cannot believe that Chen Xiaoji was defeated by Tianming so easily and was humiliated by the whole audience. He smiled as he was confident that he would not be like Chen Xiaoji. He was thinking that he could make Tianming's life worse than death. At this point, Tianming is almost Jiangxing. All he thought was that he could catch Jiangxing and get the treasure. Jiangxing noticed that Tianming was behind him. He was shocked to see that Tianming is almost near him and he concludes that Xiaoji and Chai weren't able to manage Tianming. He then saw that Tianning had wings and he believed that Tianming was able to come after him because of it. But then, it doesn't matter to him since he's much more closer to the treasure. He then summoned his blood friend Zuyu to block the entrance of the treasure. His life-bound beast successfully blocked the way which made Tianming annoyed. Ying Huo was rushing as he was not aware that the life-bound beast of Jiangxing was blocking the way. In the end, he bumped into it and he flew away because of the hard skin of the blood friend. Ying Huo ordered Tianming to get rid of the big monster of Jiangxing before it's too late. But then, Tianming stated that it's already too late as he saw that Jiangxing already got it. Jiangxing held on to the treasure and slowly got it. He smiled as he finally got the first treasure in this tower. The gate to the second floor of the tower has finally opened. 
and the stair to enter the entrance then comes out. At this time, everything went according to Zhang Xing's plan. He then called his life-bound beast to let it know that there is already an entrance. Lai Tianming, you have worked really hard to get this far, Zheng Xing stated, and rushed to the second floor. Yin Hua was angry that Zheng Xing got the treasure instead of them. No hurry, let him be happy for now. Next time we catch up with him, we'll snatch it from him, Tianmin answered. He then walked towards the entrance going to the second floor and upon entering, there was a thick fog and they couldn't even see a thing. Tianming then used his bewildering eye and Ying Huo then said that eye really comes in handy at every critical moment. Because of his bewildering eye, he can see something. There's nothing around but a bell in the distance. He believes that this bell is the second floor treasure they fought for. At this point, the fog gradually dissipates. Looking at the situation, the floor is meant to be for melee fights. They're not completely shameless. Fortunately, that mist hindered Yu and Jenxing for a while or else he'd already have the other prize too, Tianeming stated. Yin Huo and Tianeming were about to follow Jin Cheng and were planning to grab the treasure, but then, Tianeming sensed a skill that was attacked going to him. He successfully dodged and saw Gongsun Chiai from afar. Your reflexes are very fast. You actually dodged it. I'm not Chen Zioji to get sneak attacked by the likes of you. Don't even think about going anywhere. Just stay where you are and let me enjoy torturing you. Gongsun Chai stated. Yin Huo noticed that the fog is slowly dissipating so he thought Jiang Xing will definitely get the treasure again. Don't worry, Baldly won't have it easy this time around. Others are coming up as well, Tianeming answered. He believes that not all the participants are on Jiang Xing's side. At the moment, Jiang Xing is facing the couple and they are blocking his way for him not to get the treasure on this floor. Jiang Xing was annoyed to think that these couples dared to compete with him. As per the couple, they have no intention of holding a grudge against Jenxing. But this is supposed to be a fair fight. They may not be a match against Jenxing in a duel, but the situation changes now since it is two versus one. Cut the crap. Come at me, Jenxing said. Tianeming was glad that his prediction was right. As long as someone is holding Jenxing, he knows that they still have a chance. Come on, bug freak. I'll have some fun with you. Let's see who will torture whom, Tianeming stated. The crowd can clearly see the status inside the tower, and they also witness the fighting spirit of Tianeming. Tianeming, let's see what you can do. Gongsun Chai stated and summoned his imperial flame locust. He then ordered its children to charge at Tianeming, and the little babies of the imperial flame locust instantly flew to attack Tianeming. Because of the thousand troops of the enemy, Tianeming asked his life-bound beasts for some opinions on what they should do. You are really asking a chicken how to handle an insect. Are you mentally retarded? Ying Huo answered. Big brother, didn't you say you hated being treated like a chicken? Meow Meow stated. You nugget, what do you know? Grandpappy here is the chicken when it's time to eat insects. Meow Meow, let me show you which is faster. Its birth rate or my peck rate? Ying Huo uttered. He then blew an infernal blaze that created a powerful flame going to the little bugs. The bugs were flaming and Ying Huo then told Meow Meow to follow him for dinner. Meow Meow then understood and immediately transformed. Both Meow Meow and Ying Huo are rushing together to kill all the little bugs. At this point, Gong Sun Chai was mad seeing Tianeming's life-bound beast restraining his locust swarm. He then realized that he really underestimated Tianeming so much. Tianeming widely smiled as he will not be worried anymore since Meow Meow and Ying Huo do their thing. Xiaoji suddenly appeared and offered some help to his friend Gong Sun Chai to get rid of Tianeming. In your state, you'd just hold me back. Go and help my companion beast. Gong Sun Chai answered. He was very confident that he can handle Tianeming by himself. He grips into his inferno scythe and challenges Tianeming to start their battle. To his surprise, Tianeming disappeared. Xiaoji was annoyed and told Gongsun Chai that Tianeming is running away. And he was right. Tianeming ran away as he didn't want to waste much time with these two people. What he only cares about is the treasure on this floor. Both Xiaoji and Gongsun Chil were furious after Tianeming ran away without any words. They both chased Tianeming and Tianeming senses that they are about to catch Tianeming from behind. He then strikes an attack using the technique Void God Sword Intent, Countercurrent. The two men were hit by it and it even made the ground crumpled. Despite that Tianeming cast a powerful technique, Gongsun Chai still had the guts to belittle Tianeming's skill. He said that Tianeming is laughable for acting like an invincible with such a qualification. And deep inside, he was irritated about how Xiaoji was defeated by Tianeming. At this point, since Tianeming can clearly see that Gongsun Chiai is still fine, he was thinking that this match might take a while, which is so troublesome. Didn't expect I'll have to use this trick so soon. Tianeming uttered and attacked his opponent using the Super Void God Sword intent. This attack creates a water dragon and when Gongsun Chiai saw it, 
he also cast a soul cleverly. But still, his attack of him cannot beat Tianeming. Instead, he was the one being beaten. He screamed in agony while confused about what power Tianeming used since he feels that it's completely different. He fell to the ground and accepted the fact that Tianeming is really not an ordinary person. Let me ask you, who is going to enjoy torturing who now? Tianeming asked to tease Gongsun Chai. Tianeming then kicked Gongsun Chai's face and he fell to the ground once more. He's now too weak and he was thinking that the information he got about Tianeming was not true. He then told himself to hurry and slip away to save his strength. He then runs away while saying that he still has some work to do so he's gonna let off Tianeming today. He even has the guts to say that he will teach Tianeming a lesson next time. Because of his actions, Tianeming knew that Gongsun Chai was just pretending. He then called Miao Miao and Ying Huo and ordered them both to stop fighting as they needed to focus on the treasure. Ying Huo was enjoying eating the bugs. That's why he almost forgot about their main business. Tianeming together with his life-bound beast were rushing to the treasure and was seizing the opportunity that Jiangxing was busy fighting against the couple. While rushing to the treasure, Tianeming glanced at the battle and he clearly saw how powerful Jiangxing was and was standing his ground against two foes. But then, Tianeming believes that Jiangxing cannot finish the couple in a short period of time. Unfortunately, Jiangxing saw Tianeming and Jiangxing ordered him to stop. He then chased Tianeming and forgot that he still had two enemies. And the couple also chased him to get the treasure from him. Hey, you wanna catch up to me? Tianeming said. He then flies using the celestial wings. Want to catch up to me now? Dream on. Tianeming added to tease Jiangxing. Because of how fast he is, Jiangxing becomes furious. Tianeming then held on to the treasure. But then, he was confused as it was not responding after all. He thought that they should ring the bell or smash it. But then, Ying Huo said he was stupid for not thinking that the treasure is under the bell. Tianeming then got it as what Ying Huo stated. At this point, Jiangxing still wanted to stop him from getting it. But he was too late since Tianeming already held the treasure with his two hands. Tianeming then stores it on his ring to make sure that it will not be stolen from him. Jiangxing was furious and was asking him to hand over the treasure. He tried to punch Tianeming but Tianeming managed to dodge so Jiangxing only hit the ground. Since Tianeming got the treasure, the couple is asking him to leave the treasure to them. He then flew away since he knows that he will be the next target of this couple now, and all eyes were on him. He believes that getting the treasure is harder and much harder keeping it. In just a few seconds, the entrance to the third floor appeared. Good luck. I'll see you guys on the third floor. Tianeming uttered. Upon entering the third floor, the fog is even denser compared to the second floor. He can't see anything at all. And even his bewildering eye cannot see even a thing on this floor. He believes that Jiangxing will be on this floor soon so he decided to avoid fighting him for now. He knew that he must find a place to hide in the dense fog and wait for an opportunity. Outside the tower, they cannot be able to see what's happening inside the third floor. And the host announced that there were five people who went in. They are Lai Tianeming, Yuan Jiangxing, Gongsun Chai, Huang Fu Feifei, and Shang Yuan Jiayi. The crowd was disappointed as they were hoping to see the fierce fight on the third floor. But even the elders are unable to see what was happening inside the third floor. They were confused at this rate if Tianeming was deliberately led by the other participants to the third floor. Even Kaidai can clearly see how fearsome Lai Tianeming's improvement rate is. From Lai Xuanchen to Su Yuren and now Chen Zaioji and Gongsun Chiai. The elderly of their clan said that they were counting on Kaidai's son, Jiangxing. They saw that Jiangxing managed to hold his ground even when fighting against two foes so this elderly believes that Jiangxing is much stronger than Tianeming. Well, killing is my son's forte. After all, not to mention, Gongsun Chai is there with him. It's fine. Even if Jiangxing doesn't kill him today, he's just a brat. We can kill him anytime we want, once we get the Grand Orient Sword. Kaidai asked you and Teiji's thoughts but Teiji only said that there's nothing much they can say about it and only watch for now. At the Fengshan Mountain Hall, the two council elders were talking about the scary improvement of Tianeming and they even acknowledged Yi Shaoking for choosing a great disciple. They said that it now depends on whether Tianeming will emerge at the top of the Prime Tower or be carried out as a corpse. The third floor is a place that no one can control, and they were looking forward to seeing if the ancestors of the Lai Saint clan could support their descendants. Feng Yun stated that if Tianeming can survive, he'll have a chance to rest and recuperate when the Yuan clan goes to fight in the Realm Wars. Jingxu agreed with him and said that as long as Tianeming has time, he'll definitely grow at breakneck speeds. As for them, they'll just have to wait for the results of the Realm Wars. What if he becomes a prime disciple today? 
Jingxu suddenly asked, and Feng Yun answered that they'll have to stand out to protect Tianming until the end of the Realm Wars. Jingxu challenged to bet on Tianming and Feng Yun accepted it while commenting that Tianming's improvement is ridiculous. According to Jingxu, if Tianming can become a figure like the founding ancestor, not even 10,000 Yuan Tejis or Yuan Shendu will be able to match up to him. Going back to the Prime Tower's third floor, Tianming found a temporarily safe area on this floor so he decided to check the treasure. He asked for Linger's help to check what kind of treasure he got on the second floor. And as per Linger, this mana ball holds an organ. She suggested Tianming to open it. What's this mechanism? Let Master Chick help you, Ying Huo said. But Tianming rejected his offer as he already had an idea of how to open it. When the mana ball opened, there was a hand figure inside. Tianming is covering his nose as he smells something bad. Ying Huo then demanded to put away the treasure as he thought it was toxic. As per Meow Meow, it was a strong smell of blood. Tianming said that this treasure is truly a divine mana but he's not sure what exactly it is. To answer his confusion, Linger said that it was a celestial mana venom fiend blood claw. Tianming then becomes excited to hear it. According to Linger, among low-grade celestial mana, this claw is the best kind. If the assimilation works, the lifebound beast's star count will grow to 47 close to the level of a fifth order saint beast. Tianming while sipping back the treasure on his ring while saying that a huge amount of money was spent for this prime struggle. It turned out to be a celestial mana. However, looking at the attribute, it is obvious that it is prepared for Jenxing as what Tianming observed. He believes that this is definitely the best reward ever to be given in a prime struggle in the past thousand years. Linger then explained that the Venom Fiend Blood Claw contains Blood Fiend Venom. The moment it enters the opponent's bloodstream, it'll start corrupting their blood. The more wounds there are, the more Blood Fiend Venom is injected. If the afflicted doesn't get treatment quickly and continues fighting, the Venom will turn more of their blood into toxic blood which will rot their bones and innards, ultimately causing death. Only spirit herbs with saintly heavenly patterns can cure the toxin, but they're really rare. Not to mention, after its evolution, the Venom Fiend Blood Claw itself will become harder than bestial weapons with more than 50 saintly heavenly patterns. Tianeming smiled and believed that the rewards of the prime struggle had been planned so well without imagining that it would fall into his hands. He concludes that Yuan Jenxing probably knew the second treasure was meant for him and he knew that Jenxing would definitely chase him to take back the treasure. Just what I wanted. I want to see what the terrestrial mana in his hand is. All right, let's see who's going to hunt who. He uttered and started flying. He suddenly feels strange as he has been continually flying at this speed for a while now, but the dense fog doesn't seem to end. It's like he has been trapped in this place the whole time. However, he knew that he didn't have to worry, and the people behind this should be the ones who should be worried. In the middle of his roaming around, he saw something ahead. And from afar, he can see that it was like a prime tower. Ying Huo then said that it's a miniature version of the prime tower. It suddenly flamed, and Tianming saw his own self, smiling and holding a sword. He was shocked to see it as he didn't expect something like this would happen. He becomes more shocked when Miao Mao, Ying Huo, and even Linger have disappeared. Tianming's eyes rounded upon seeing that the man in the same appearance as him was already in front of him standing. Tell me, how would you like to die by your own hands? The imposter of Tianming sighed. It then rushed to Tianming at a fast speed and was about to attack using an onyx vile dragon and countercurrent. Tianming cast the same technique and their power collided. Tianming observed that their strength and force are equal, neither of them have the upper hand. The imposter still had the guts to smile and attack Tianming, and Tianming blocked his sword. Acting all conspicuous, what are you? Tianming asked. I am you, but you're just too weak so I'm going to replace you. The imposter answered. They both then swung their swords and jumped backward due to the force. They prepared themselves and jumped towards each other and slashed each other several times. Tianeming feels that it's hard defeating his own self and he now realized how strong he is at this time. He then concludes that he will pass the test on this floor once he will defeat this imposter of him. The imposter of Tianeming has a black hair and claims that he's the strongest among them. They continued their swords play until they slid in the ground and both of them were already wounded. As per Tianeming, a battle without secrets is really a tough one to fight. The imposter was too confident that the real Tianeming will lose, and if that happens, he will be the one to enjoy the benefits Tianeming has. He also said that Tianeming doesn't deserve all he has and that from now on, he will be the one to own the ten primordial chaos beasts. I'll be the one to have Jiang failing and I will be the one that will own your lifespan. He added. He then rushed to Tianeming while saying that Tianeming is just nothing but a lowly pleasant without his luck. He even said that Tianeming has no right to change his destiny. 
he uttered a lot of words to make Tianming discouraged by himself. Without primordial chaos beasts, you're useless. I, however, am different from you. I'm destined to be stronger than you. With me owning everything that you have, I'll spread your name all across the flame yellow continent. He confidently stated. Both their swords collided once again. And this time, Tianming was slashed a bit but he chose to endure the pain and continue to fight. He tried to attack his imposter but it was as good at dodging as him. I've long known that the only way to defeat myself is to grow stronger. I need to thank you for bringing me so close to the brink of death. How could one transcend life and death without being on the knife's edge? And you are the ideal training partner for my life death whip arts transcendence. Tianming uttered while summoning his whip. You talk too much. Are you trying to hide your incompetence? I also know whip art. The imposter replied, and surprisingly, he also had a whip. As per Tianming, the past him couldn't comprehend this whip art. But now, he was confident in his skill in this whip technique. He then attacked the imposter using the whip with killing intent. Tianming's whip art is too powerful, and the imposter tried to defend but he was shocked as he clearly saw the sharp edge and he was defeated by it. He finally vanished and Tianming kneeled on the ground while realizing that one can only defeat oneself by successfully surpassing oneself. This battle was too hard for him which almost killed himself. Tianming rise and he noticed that all of his injuries were recovering. He was confused about what was going on, but suddenly, a spirit appeared in front of him. And according to this spirit, throughout history, there have been none with the onic grand bane that Tianming has achieved. He said that Tianming has taken the first step by standing firm and fighting with his own will. Tianming must first suffer the pain of lifespan as per the old spirit. Only then will he be able to enjoy the benefits that once allowed their clan to dominate. Why Tianming? On the day you break your lifespan curse, even the sun, moon, stars, earth and the cosmos will have to make way for you. He proclaimed which made Tianming more confused. Tianming was about to ask what the old spirit was about to say, but it suddenly disappeared. He then remembered that the spirit mentioned about Ionic Grandbane so he concluded that there might be a clan that's afflicted with Grand Lifespane too. Tianiming forgets about it for now and decides to look first for Linger. He then heard a voice and he was very sure that it was Linger. He started walking to follow where the voice was coming from. He closed his eyes and heard Linger keep waking him up. He then opened his eyes and saw his two lifebound beasts fighting against Jenxing and Gongsun Chai. According to Linger, Tianiming has been standing with his eyes closed for almost four hours. Tianiming then realized that he was hit by some illusion. Ying Huo and Miao Miao fearlessly fought the enemy and Linger told Tianiming to quickly help both of his life-bound beasts since Ying Huo and Miao Miao are already at their limits. Tianiming then followed Linger and called out the names of his opponents. Jenxing then glanced at him and while saying that Tianiming would have died if it wasn't because of his invisible wall. Gongsun Chai then told Tianiming not to let his chicken escape as he almost killed Ying Huo. But then, Ying Huo was furious to know that Ying Huo and Miao Miao were beaten by them when he was not around. He then rushed to Gongsun Chai and instantly punched his stomach. Gongsun Chai spit some blood and he was confused why he was injured by just a single punch. He then falls to the ground and Ying Huo is behind him and was annoyed by Tianiming as he almost died just because Tianiming is not moving for how many hours. Tianiming, how dare you murdered him? Yu and Jenxing screamed in anger. You dared to hurt my brothers, so what if I killed him? I will also kill your whole Yuan family. Tianiming answered with a fierce look. Jenxing is standing firmly together with his life-bound beast and he was challenged by what Tianiming said. He then told Tianiming that killing a pentabane like Tianiming will be enough for him to brag about for a lifetime. After all, if you're allowed to grow more, you may become an existence on the level of an Empyrean saint. He added, Tianiming smiled when Jenxing mentioned pentabane, and today, he decided to show him exactly how many banes he actually has. Jenxing then rushed to him while holding a sword while Tianiming was just waiting for him and was ready to fight back using his whip. Before Jenxing could go to him, he instantly attacked Jenxing with the whip and Jenxing tried his best to dodge. Jenxing's lifebound beast was blowing its lava and Ying Huo was annoyed how it showed off in front of him with a lowly lava breath. Let your ancestor show what real fire breath is like. Ying Huo uttered and blew a flame to Jenxing's lifebound beasts. He then activates his sky scorch feather blast, and Jenxing's lifebound beast is crying in pain. Ying Huo then ordered Miao Miao to attack their opponent beast together to let him taste what it is like to be ganged up upon. Miao Miao then roared and rushed to their opponent. At this time, Jenxing was annoyed as he didn't expect Tianiming to use another weapon since he only saw Tianiming always use a sword. While Tianiming is just enjoying fighting against him using the whip and sword, he attacked using the countercurrent and it's the first time Jenxing saw his many ways of attacking which are all high levels. Because of it, he concludes that Tianiming is just hiding all his strength all along. 
He was hit by the force Tianemin dealt and Jenxing kneeled on the ground while thinking that Tianemin had a trick up his sleeve. If this goes on, he's afraid that he may die from the hands of Tianemin. He was so confused about how Tianemin is getting stronger as this fight is going on. You are quite the tough one but your life-bound beast, on the other hand, isn't so lucky, Tianemin stated. Upon checking his beast, it was attacked by Yin Huo and Yin killed it to satisfy himself. Jenxing screams and vomits blood as he cannot accept that his life-bound beast is murdered. Tianeming then rushed to him and he rattled as he doesn't know what to do now. Tianeming pointed the sword to Jenxing and Jenxing still had the guts to warn Tianeming that he'd pay a thousand times over if he dared to do anything to Jenxing. Even if you manage to escape from here, you will definitely die. He added, You and Jenxing, aren't you naive one? I can hear the fear in your voice. I'm sure even you can't believe you're feeling this way. You thought that with your family's backing, I wouldn't dare to kill you even if I was stronger, huh? Too bad you don't know me well. I'm a reasonable person, you see. But if you look down on me and want to take my life as well as my brother's, I'll send you to hell regardless of who you are. Tianmeng stated while smiling evilly. As per Jenxing, if Tianming will dare to kill him, he should not think about surviving. He was very sure that his grandfather, Uncle Taiji, and father would make sure that Tianming would die a horrible death. It's a shame, you won't leave to see it. Tianming answered. Jenxing then grips Tianming's sword while saying that he will not die, and that he doesn't want to die. He then roared loudly and composed his strength as he was very determined to fight back. Tianeming was too calm and at this time, he used his whip again and applied life death whip art transcendence and attacked Jenxing. Jenxing screamed loudly in pain and he fell on the ground full of blood on his body. Tianeming was standing beside him and showed Jenxing his other five bayon rings. You will die shortly, so let me show you something before you rest in peace, Tianeming said. Jenxing cried and was shocked to see that Tianeming has another five black colored bayons on his left arm which means Tianeming is a decabane. Before he died, he agreed that Tianeming was indeed a terrifying man. Tianeming then walked away and Ling'er asked him if it's really okay to kill you and Jenxing. It's okay, it just makes the storm that was coming even more violent. Tianeming answered. As per Ling, Tianeming still has an hour and a half left so Tianeming decided to check first the treasure lies within the spatial ring. Upon checking, it was only a piece of paper and asked him to choose one of the following high-tier terrestrial mana. With all the options available, Tianeming can choose the one that is most suitable for him. Ling'er asked about his next plan and Tianeming said the two changes he has observed on this floor. Ling'er only sees a change in a single area, the passage above them connected to the afterworld. According to Tianeming, this is a passage for clearing the third floor. Taking the passage is equivalent to conquering the Prime Tower. If the position of the four Prime Disciples weren't fully taken, He'll be a prime disciple immediately upon leaving the tower. Brother, but you said that there were two areas that were changed. Besides the passage, where is the other one? Ling'er asked in confusion. Tianeming then pointed right in front of them. But then, Ling'er cannot see anything. Tianeming then asked both of his companion beasts if they can see anything. But even them can see nothing. Tianeming then held it and realized that he was the only one who could see it. When Tianeming was about to carry it, it suddenly flew and went inside his body. Ying Huo and Miao Miao entered the life-bound space and saw the prime tower. They both then realized that Tianeming is referring to this. Because of it, Miao Miao feels comfortable sleeping right next to it. Even all the other eggs came to him incubated. Ying Huo was shocked to notice that it doesn't just feel comfortable, but their injuries are also recovering rapidly. The spiritual energy of heaven and earth as per Ying Huo is very abundant. Tianeming was so excited to hear it to think that he could cultivate anytime and anywhere at an advanced speed. They never thought that such a treasure, a prime tower, is their greatest gain so far. Ling'er suddenly remembered that it was said that the two treasures from the first ancestor, Lai Sheng Xiao, were the Grand Orient Sword and the Prime Tower. Tianeming was surprised upon hearing it and realized that the true Prime Tower is the one that would enter one's life-bound space. Tianeming was already suspicious when it said that the Prime Tower is just an ordinary structure. Now that he thinks about it, it does just look like an ordinary structure. Rumor says that Lai Sheng Xiao obtained these two sacred objects from a place called the Theocracy of the Ancients. And the Prime Tower is able to improve the cultivation of one's life-bound beasts. This matches one with what just happened to Tianeming now. Tianeming smiled as he knew that Yuan Shendu was planning to visit Heaven's Elysium to compete for the Grand Orient Sword. And Tianeming was afraid that these people would never have imagined that he'd obtained the true Prime Tower. Tianeming was confident in his prediction. He believes that this is indeed the sacred object that was left behind by Lai Xing Seriously, even Heaven is on my side. Tianeming uttered. 
All treasures now are in his hands. Both Yu and Jenxing and Gongsun Chai died and paid their lives for it. The only word to describe this result is that it feels damn good for Tianming. Especially after obtaining the Prime Tower as both Ying Huo and Miao Miao will gain tremendous combat strength and endurance, as they can return to their life-bound space to recuperate for a bit in order to return to their peak condition. If the Prime Tower is already so overpowered, the Tianeming believes that the Grand Orient Sword is an unrivaled divine artifact as well. The Prime Disciples will participate in the Realm Wars so perhaps, he can too, although he has the Prime Tower and killed Yuan Jenxing. Linger believes that the Yuan clan will kill Tianeming as soon as he leaves the tower. As per Tianeming, if he can become a prime disciple before they find Yuan Jenxing's body, then they cannot be able to kill him. So what Big Brother is trying to say is that, if you choose to challenge a prime disciple in three hours instead of after a month from now, then you won't have to die. Linger asked for her to clarify things. Tianeming then told her that she was right. When the time comes, even if the Yuan clan will find out that Tianeming killed Yuan Jenxing, there's no evidence, since whether or not he's the murderer isn't actually important. He believes all that matters is his position and strength. This time, I've finally come to the realization. All this time, I didn't want to offend the Yuan clan because I was worried about a master. Now, it seems that by giving them a headache, they'll find reasons and means to kill him. If that's how it is destined to be, I might as well take the initiative and kill a few of them first. Tianeming stated, he thinks that by becoming a prime disciple, it will give him the opportunity to unsettle the Council of Elders. Linger then understood what he was saying. And for her, as long as Tianeming is safe and sound, she'll be at ease. Big brother, wouldn't it be hard of you to even defeat Su Waiyu, who is the weakest among all the prime disciples now? Linger suddenly asked. Tianeming casually answered yes, and also the reason why he's not in a hurry to leave. Linger realized that Tianeming was planning to stay here, and Tianeming then confirmed it and said that he will be cultivating here. After experiencing a couple of life and death battles, he was so close to having a breakthrough. All he needs is half an hour. In half an hour, he was 100% sure that he'll be able to have a breakthrough and he will use the other hour to challenge. An hour later, Tianeming achieved the fifth level of unity. With this body of a Decabane and the talent of an Eonic Grandbane, among those under the heavenly will, he's invincible. There are a hundred thousand people outside, thirty-three elders, and the Yuan clan waiting for the result of the third test. He believes that they are all probably looking at who will reach the top of the tower. As long as he will become a prime disciple, before they find the corpse of Yuan Jenxing, he will be fine. He looked up above and told Linger that the time had come to make a flashy grand entrance. Linger then activates the celestial wings and instantly goes outside the tower. They came out from the upper part of the third floor and everyone saw someone flying down from the top of the tower. They then realized that it was Lai Tianeming, the junior sect master. They then said that this is how the junior sect master should be, talented enough to become a prime disciple. The crowd were cheering for Tianeming while shouting that the true genius was born. This is the kind of atmosphere Tianeming wanted, and with his popularity, he doesn't have to be afraid of the Yuan clan killing him. The Yi family, especially Tianeming's master teacher Shai Oking, was surprised to see Tianeming alive. He was full of confusion if the Lai Saint clan's ancestors opened the back door for Tianeming. Isn't he your disciple? How come you question your own disciple like that? Yuxi uttered. Shai Oking then said that he was just overly excited and he needed to calm down. He glanced at his father, Yi King, and wondered why his father was also becoming emotional. Yi King then stated that he was shocked by Tianeming, and Tianeming gives him an impression of his first ancestor. He declared that from now on, they need to protect Tianeming with all their life. Regardless of the fate of the Yi clan, they will fight for him to death. Old man, you sure have courage, guess we have to start protecting him now, Shaoqing said. He then went down and went to Tianeming. Tianeming is now precious to them and he came into the arena to protect Tianeming from being slaughtered. Tianeming then told him that it was too excessive since there are a lot of people watching them. Shaoqing disagreed with him. As for him, Tianeming hadn't seen the expression on the Yuan clan's faces. Tianeming becomes curious upon hearing it. The members of the Yuan clan were staring at Tianeming with anger and realized that they underestimate Tianeming too much. Kaidai gritted his teeth and was trembling in anger. He suggested killing Tianeming as soon as possible regardless of how Yi Shaoqing would resist. According to their elder, being able to clear the third floor of the Prime Tower proves that Tianeming is not simple. He believes that Tianeming already has the qualification to challenge a Prime Disciple and can still make progress through next month. If Tianeming defeats a Prime Disciple, 
he's afraid Huangfu Fengan and Yi Sheaking will join forces. At this point, Kaidai predicts that Tianming will challenge Su Waiyu after a month's time. Keiji interfered and said that there was no need to wait for a month. When Jiangxing leaves the tower, and the challenge to reach the top of the Prime Tower comes to an end, I'll head to Azure Dragon Sword Mountain and personally swat this fly. I've already lost my patience, Yuan Teiji stated. Kaidai was angry at his son Jiangxing for not completing an easy task. He even said that once Jiangxing comes out from the Prime Tower, he will punish him without knowing that his son is already dead. Su Waiyu, I will give you ten breaths to get your ass down here. Although according to the rules, I will have a month's time. But yours truly don't have that much patience to wait. That's why show yourself. Tianming screamed. Su Waiyu was shocked upon hearing it and the crowd even became silent. But then, they suddenly uproar as they were excited to have another show to watch. They also laughed at how Tianming complained about having to wait another month. They can see how arrogant Tianming was this time but they didn't feel any annoyance. Instead, they admired his ability to hide emotions. The Yuan Elder was thinking that Tianming might hit head, that's why he was rushing for a battle. You guess wrong. I think he's pretty smart. Perhaps, he knows he did too well and we have our eyes on him. So he is taking a gamble now. Teiji replied to his father. Kaidai laughed, thinking that Tianming looked down on Su Waiyu who is much more stronger than his son Jenxing. He is still a hot-headed youngster after all. Waiyu, go and teach him a lesson. Kaitai ordered. Su Waiyu followed his demand and walked towards his boyfriend Shendu. Shendu, I'm going now. Aren't you gonna say anything? She stated, hoping that Shendu will show some care for her. No, just do your best and kill him. The seniors will take care of the rest. He brought this upon himself, and I'm sure it'll be a piece of cake for you. Shendu replied. Su Waiyu smiled as this is the first time someone looked down on her. Without wasting more time, she immediately went to the arena to face Tianming. Since you are too eager to die, guess I'll fulfill your death wish before a month even passes. Su Waiyu said to Tianming. The position of a prime disciple is mine for sure, Tianming answered confidently. Su Waiyu summoned his sword and was very determined to kill Tianming. She also summoned her life-bound beast which she called White Thousand-Eyed Winged Serpents. She glanced at Tianming and didn't see any of Tianming's life-bound beasts, which made her wonder. Tianming then said that both of his life-bound beasts were resting and he didn't need them to just deal with Su Waiyu. Su Waiyu grits her teeth as she was annoyed by Tianming. She admits that she overestimated Tianming before. She even said that she was feeling nervous before coming down to accept Tianming's challenge. But now, she can see that Tianming is just nothing but a pathetic bumpkin who just got lucky. She then rushed to Tianming riding with her life-bound beast and Tianming was so attentive and instantly jumped away to avoid Su Waiyu's attack. Tianming kneeled on the ground while looking at the serpent's body. He noticed that there are several holes on the serpent's body and it was blowing some gas. He then stood and the arena was surrounded by the gas that came from the serpent. Tianming then covered his nose upon realizing that it was poison gas. What surprised him was that it suddenly snowed in the arena and Su Waiyu also disappeared instantly. Tianming slightly smiled with the thought that all these are just an illusion. Su Waiyu cast a technique called Ocean of Darkness and Tianming saw a waving ocean just in front of him where he was standing. He decided to use his bewildering eye and found out that it was just an illusion as he predicted. It was serpent all along. I've found you. These are nothing more than petty tricks to obscure my vision. Tianming uttered. Linger activates her spatial wall. And at this time, Su Waiyu was shocked that Tianming can really see her illusion. She was also confused when she saw an invisible wall. At the same time, she was annoyed to notice that her poison mist didn't work on Tianming. She tried to attack Tianming using the divine flying sword art technique but Tianming escaped from this attack with the help of the celestial wings of Linger. He then got his whip and attacked his opponent using the life death whip art technique, soul hook. Su Waiyu managed to dodge but her life bound beast was tied by the whip. The show has just started, Tianming said, and used another life death whip art technique, transcendence, to let the serpent suffer from the pain. Tianming pulled the whip and the serpent screamed in pain. The serpent's blood was splattered as his body was squeezed by the whip. Su Waiyu screamed the name of her life-bound beasts. Her tears were about to fall while she was asking Tianming to let go of her beasts and fight each other fairly. Sure, you guys really are all too weak. Aside from the time I had to fight myself, none of the fights I've been in have caused me to use this sword. Where did all your pride go? Today I will make sure that you will have nothing else to say. Tianming stated. The serpent is already lying on the ground and Su Waiyu took a glance at Tianming and she was trembling in anger. She grips into her sword and rushes to Tianming with killing intent. 
She cast a different kind of sword technique and she's already greedy to kill Tianming with her own hands. Tianming managed to smile and activate her Hellfire Shield. I've overpraised you for saying that your moves were flowery. At this point, it just looks like scraping. Tianming uttered to tease Su Wayo. He smiled and was going to attack the lady using Void God's sword intent. He then jumped towards Su Wayu and attacked her with the Starfall technique. Su Wayu tried to block it using her sword and in an instant, Tianming was already behind her. And she was staring at her sword that was crumbled to pieces. Shen then fell to the ground together with her blood splattering. And she's already wounded and Tianming decided to kill her. Tianming then declared that their battle was over. The people were cheering him once more and they were so impressed how Tianming suppressed Su Wayu with a single sword strike. They were screaming Tianming's name by calling him a prime disciple, Lai Tianming. While they were cheering Tianming, the Yuan clan was emotionless. Shen Du on the other hand was shaking in anger. Su Wai was kneeling on the ground and accepts that she was defeated by Tianming. Shaoqing approached his disciple Lai Tianming and held Tianming's arm. He was happy for Tianming knowing that the whole audience has become his disciples' fans. Lai Tianming is finally standing out. You sure know how to flatter me. You really ended everything in a single sword strike, Shaoqing said. All of a sudden, two people came to them. It was the council elder Feng Yun who ordered everyone to be silent. And he's together with elder Jingshu. As the prime elder, Feng Yun has something to announce. According to him, there's no need for him to repeat that Lai Tianming's performance has astounded them all. He said that Tianming passed through the trial on the tower's third floor and defeated the prime disciple Su Wayu. By following their law, Tianming will replace Su Wayu's position as a prime disciple. As such, I represent the Council of Elders and the Grand Orient sect and officially announce that, from this day on, Lai Tianming will be granted the rank of prime disciple for the Azure Dragon Sword Mountain, Feng Yun declared, and he then congratulated Lai Tianming. Tianming thanked him and also thanked the council for this honor. As per Feng Yun, Tianming's growth and safety will now be part of the council's concern. Shaoqing smiled and told Tianming that they both now share the same fate. There's no need to be serious, hearing from you, it seems like you are tempted by my handsome face. Tianming answered. He then remembered King Wu so he asked Shaoqing as he started to get worried since there isn't any news about King Wu until now. At this point, Shaoqing thought that Jing Wu had found King Yu. But to his surprise, they saw King Yu right in front of them together with other people. King Yu was kneeling and looked like she was being held captive. Upon seeing her, Tianming was shocked and was confused about what was going on. King Yu is together with the Grand Orient Guardians and they have brought a carriage with them. Tianming called her and King Yu then looked at him with surprised emotion and suddenly smirked. What are you doing? That's my direct disciple. Release her this instant. Shaoqing ordered with an angry tone. One Grand Orient Guardian told them to calm down and proclaimed that King Yu is a murderer. Shaoqing didn't believe them and still ordered them to release King Yu. Yu and Fengxian interfered to tell Shaoqing to stand down. He was curious about the carriage so he asked the Guardian about what's inside. The Guardian explained that they were returning to the sect from Kunming City just a while ago. When they encounter some people fighting, they step forward to resolve the situation. Everything was over by the time they reached the people that were fighting and they were utterly powerless to change things. What the hell do you mean by powerless? Feng Shen asked. Shen Du already senses something bad has happened. He then rushed to the carriage and checked what was on it. There was a white cover on the carriage and it was full of blood. He becomes emotional as he sees in his own eyes that it was his brother Yuan Xingcheng and is already dead together with Lai Xuanchen. Feng Shen suddenly vomited blood and his heart was in pain knowing that his grandson is not alive anymore. He almost falls on the ground but Kai Dai is behind him. At this time, Xing Cheng's father, Yuan Taiji, is trembling in anger. The audience was also surprised to hear this news and they started to discuss it. They were confused if both of these men were killed by King Wu herself as they cannot believe that King Wu has the capabilities to murder someone. Lai Tianming and his master's teacher were also shocked. Hand her over. Make her entire family accompany Xing Cheng in death. Feng Shen ordered. Xiaoqing immediately blocked the Yuan family and stopped them from getting King Yu from the Guardians. He told everyone that no one knows the truth yet so Yuan family doesn't have the authority to pass down judgment. He proclaimed that killing between disciples falls under the Hall of Inquisitor's jurisdiction. Kaidai became furious and ordered Xiaoqing to move aside. Tianming was problematic to see that the Yuan were planning to take action as he knows that they don't have a chance if the Yuan family will really take action, and he believes King Wu will definitely die. Yuan Taiji was full of anger and wanted to end King Wu's life as soon as possible to avenge his son. Tianming then screamed, ordering King Wu to tell the truth in front of everyone. 
King Wu then explained that it was Su Waiyu and the others who used Ziaofu's parents to threaten Ziaofu and lure King Wu out of the sect. She said that Yuan Xingcheng and Lai Xuanchen had a carefree fruit. Both men were not only targeting her but also killed Ziaofu. She was trembling while she was explaining her side. It wasn't that I wanted to fight them, but they wanted to turn me into an idiot and never let me come back. I just wanted to avenge Ziaofu. King Wu added. The audience then understood her side and all of them believed that King Wu was telling the truth. Some of them here have known King Wu's character for so long, which she is not the sort to offend others. They even commented that Yuan Xingcheng is the one who is arrogant and likes to use his family's authority to bully others. They also said that Xingcheng was too shameless to go to Xuanchen but ended up getting killed instead. Because of this, the audience shouted that Xingcheng and Xuanchen deserve to die. They even said that Su Waiyu is also not a good person at all. Tianeming originally thought that Yuan Xingcheng was only targeting him, but he didn't expect that Xingcheng would be targeting King Wu as well. He admitted to himself that he was too careless. He blamed himself for not noticing it sooner. The council elders were still here and Jingxu asked Feng Yun about what they should do. Feng Yun then answered that this matter is different from Lai Tianeming's safety. For them to protect Lai Tianeming is already a huge gamble but in regards to King Wu, he cannot do anything for her. Yi King spoke and asked the Grand Orient Guardians to hand over King Wu to the Inquisitors. They shall not leave no stone unturned and seek out the truth. If her words are true, she is not guilty. Yi King added. Upon hearing it, Shen Du became furious while he was crying. He said don't give a damn about the truth. Since his brother Sheng Cheng died, he was also greedy to make King Wu pay with her life too. At a fast speed, Shen Du dashed to King Wu in an instant and choked her to death. He carried King Wu by the neck and declared that he wanted King Wu dead right now. Tianeming was so worried for King Wu. The audience was still on King Wu's side and they all screamed to say that Shen Du should stop hurting King Wu. For them, Yu and Sheng Cheng really deserves to die. Shen Du doesn't have the right to kill King Wu. They wanted to let the Inquisitors investigate this matter and have Su Wai arrested. Shen Du's grandfather, Feng Shen, was ordering him to kill King Wu and he promised that their family will take care of everything that will happen later. Father, should we get that person over here? Xiaoqing asked to his father. No, he hasn't succeeded yet. If he forces himself and gets revealed, it would have all been for naught. Yi King answered and they both referred to King Wu's father, Lai Wudi. Tianeming asked Yuxi to tell the first elder that King Wu recently became a pentabane and also has five moons on her arm. Yuxi followed what he was asking and immediately approached the elders. Feng Yun then walked near Shen Du and told him to stop hurting King Wu. He said that this matter hasn't been thoroughly investigated so for him, Shen Du is not allowed to lynch King Yu. You and Shen Du, let go of King Yu. Your brother died because he tried to seek revenge from me. Everything is my fault. Let her go. If you want revenge, come at me instead. Tianeming said. King Wu was crying and was strangled to death. Shen Du also cried while saying that he will definitely avenge his brother. He even said that both King Wu and Tianeming cannot escape to death from his own hands. My big brother is right. So what if you kill me? I guess even you, you and Shen Du, is some weakling who only goes after people when they're weakened. Only bastards like you from the Yuan clan can do something so despicable. You and Shen Du, you're trash just like your brother Yu and Xing Cheng. Your whole family is bastards. Fight me fairly if you dare. I won't yield if you kill me underhandedly like that. King Wu fearlessly uttered. And the people agreed with her. They all then screamed to release King Wu and have a fair battle against each other. Feng Shen doesn't want Shen Du to listen to other people. What he wanted is that Shen Du should kill King Wu in an instant. Yu and Taiji spoke, saying that his father Feng Shen was also partly at fault for Xing Cheng's death. He slowly walked near Tianeming. Lai Tianeming, you speak in a manner where you're great and brave. I'll give you a chance then. Why King Wu killed my son so she must die today? Since you seem to be acting like a good elder brother, I'll give you a chance. You may die in her place, do you dare? I'll give you ten breaths worth of time to think. After that, I'll send your little sister to hell. Yu and Taiji stated. Tianeming just stared at him and before he could answer, Xiaoqing screamed in anger. You and Taiji, you are a council elder. Aren't you ashamed to threaten a disciple like that? Where would you like to put your face? Xiaoqing said. Taiji then looked at him and said that shame only belongs to a weak person like Xiaoqing. He then started counting while waiting for Tianeming's answer. The audience doesn't want Tianeming to accept Taiji's deal. For them, Yu and Taiji is a disgrace to the Grand Orient sect. They also believe that their young sect master Tianeming still has a bright future, and what's more he shoulders the tussle of resurrecting the Lai clan is what people commented. Tianeming then spoke and ordered Taiji to stop counting. He said that he wanted to change the terms of their deal. You can change anything, as long as you die, depending on how you want to die. Yu and Taiji answered. 
Ping Wu's tears continued flowing. She glanced at Tianming and told him not to accept the deal. That's why I want to die decently and coolly. It's been decided. I want to choose to replace my sister and want to fight you and Shendu to the death. Tianming stated. He wanted both of him and Shendu to fight until one of them dies. Shendu stared at him. Tianming then said that he knows Shendu wanted to kill him now so that he will not be bothered in the future. That's why he will give Shendu now a chance to kill him. He never thought about dealing with Shendu at this time and he said that it must be the stupidest decision, but he's not afraid of Shendu. He believes that if Shendu still has pride, he will fight life and death with Tianming on this Grand Orient's first battlefield. He proclaimed that only the victors are qualified to compete for the Grand Orient Holy Sword, and the loser will bury their bones on this battlefield. King Wu was still crying as she was worried about Tianming. King Wu, everything you do makes me proud, and you make this wolf-hearted person suffer a hundred times of his actions. Today, I want you to know that it's not just me. Ling'er, Ying Huo, Miao Miao, and me too. The four of us love you very much. Life and death are nothing because all people in the world cannot escape death, and we must not despair over the suffering we experienced. Naturally, that's what it means to be a human being who has a clean conscience. Tianming stated. He then shouted angrily to ask for Shendu's answer. Shendu pushed King Yu away and as what Tianming wished, Shendu accepted his challenge to have a life and death battle against each other until one of them dies. He then informed the council elders that he will completely create a sky pattern barrier in this Grand Orient first battlefield, and he instructed them that no one should enter until one of them dies. He also declared that the 33 elders will be witnesses. Feng Yuan replied that he agreed to Shendu. Dad, if I can't kill him, I'll die in it, and that's almost like a death sentence. I don't know you and I don't know my family, do I? Shendu said. Shendu, he seeks his own death, and while you seek revenge. Don't worry. Yu and Teiji answered. Shendu then activated his sky pattern barrier, and the people were cheering for Tianming. Tianming believes that he doesn't have a chance of winning but this is his only way to save King Wu and her family. He knows that if King Wu dies, Jing Wu will also be sad. Shayoking held onto his shoulder and asked him once more if he was really sure to fight life and death against Shendu. Tianming confidently answered yes and even asked his master teacher Shayoking to make him something delicious or treat him to a delicious meal once he successfully defeated Shendu. Tianming was about to enter the barrier but then he heard King Wu calling him. King Wu told him that he should have to stay alive, otherwise King Wu will never be happy in his life again. Tianming then promised that he will do everything in his power to make King Wu smile. Don't worry, wait till I get home, Tianming added. He also told Ling'er that she can leave Tianming's body as he was afraid that his love Ling'er will also be killed. Brother, remember what we said about living together and dying together. Isn't that our promise? I didn't come here with you to have fun, I really want to be with you and help you. Brother, although Ling'er is weak, I don't go back on my words. I hope you can respect me. You don't have to pity me too much. I can fight too. Besides, King Yu is my friend, and I am willing to sacrifice life and death for her. Ling'er answered. Tianming then thanked her and finally entered the barrier. He was standing inside the barrier and fearlessly faced Yu and Shendu. Shendu believes that Tianming might only be qualified to fight against him for about two months. And for him, Tianming doesn't have a chance to defeat him this time. Tianming slightly smiled and told him that it was too early for him to assume. Not long ago, I just broke through to the realm of heavenly will. Today I will cut you and I will bury you with Xin Cheng. Shendu uttered and summoned his sword while saying that he will show Tianming how terrible the battle tactics of a heavenly will are. Take a good look at how terrible my power is. He added. Tianming stared at him and he didn't assume that he would win this match. Shendu then called out his companion beast, a holly touty madness. It was a giant companion beast of Shendu that looked a hundred percent scary. The people were jaw-dropping upon seeing it knowing that it was a rare fourth-tier sacred beast which is more stronger than Xing Cheng's beast. At this time, they were hopeless for Tianming. Despite that Shendu was too scary, Tianming still called out Miao Miao and Ying Huo. Before the battle starts, he apologizes first to his life-bound beasts. Upon seeing their enemy, Ying Huo agreed that their opponent this time was terrible. But then, he motivates Tianming by saying that Tianming now is not like he was before who is afraid of fighting. Ying Huo also told Tianming that a man shouldn't be afraid of the battlefield. Besides, it is uncertain who will die and as per Ying Huo, a phoenix is an ancient beast so he doesn't believe that Shendu's Taudi can kill him. If I can sleep 10 days after this fight, I guess it's worth it. 
Meow Meow said. Xianaming smiled as he felt lucky to meet Mao Mao, Ying Huo, and Ling'er in this life. Is there anything more exciting than this fearless life and death bet? Together, we fight to the death. You and Shendu, let's fight. Tianeming screamed. Shendu smiled widely as he was greedy to end Tianeming's life. Despite that Shendu's touty is flaming, Tianeming together with his life-bound beasts were rushed to their enemy. Let me get good luck at how resilient you are. That will be the best entertainment you can give me before you die, Shendu said. Tianeming and Ying Huo then attacked using their Void God Sword Intent, a sword Kai of Mountain and River, plus double counter current. Shendu smiled upon seeing that Ying Huo can also use the same sword's technique as Tianeming. But for him, it was just a simplified version of the Heavenly Will which is too weak for him. Meow Meow transformed and attacked using his Chaos Volt Ball. Shendu grips into his sword while saying that he will use this chance to train. He also said that he won't come across an opponent like Tianeming until he fights at Heaven's Elysium. He attacked using his Dark Sword Hellblade and both of his power, and Meow Meow's sword power collided but it can be clearly seen their difference in skill which made Tianeming annoyed. He then ordered Ling'er to activate Kai Wall and the attack from Shendu together with Meow Meow's attack was hit at Ling'er's wall causing a big explosion. The people were dumbfounded seeing how powerful it is and they even wondered if Tianeming was still alive. When Tianeming was already visible, the people then saw him instantly and confirmed that he was still alive after Shendu's powerful attack. Tianeming believes that he will really die if he doesn't have the black arm. This time, he discovered that Shendu is not only just a higher realm than him, but also has the determination for revenge. This battle is a hundred times harder than all of the battles he had. He stared at his life-bound beasts, and he was annoyed to see that both Ying Huo and Miao Miao were playing dead. He then ordered both of them to get up and fight. Ling'er was worried since Shendu broke through the spatial wall so she believes that they don't have a chance to defeat Shendu now. Tianeming stood while saying that even if they cannot defeat Shendu, they still have to fight. For him, it's death for them if they will admit their loss. He also told Ling'er that everyone will get a chance to fight a strong enemy at some point. He then assigned the Taudi to Miao Miao and Ying Huo and Ying Huo then said that Tianeming was gonna rely on him in the end. Ling'er still felt sad while saying that she doesn't want to admit defeat nor die. And of course, she doesn't want Tianeming to die. She wanted them all to leave on. She then recalled the time that both of them fought against Kinking in the Abyssal Battlefield where they used the spiritual attachment, and now, she suggested using it this time. I won't let you die. I must face this with you together, she uttered. They both then activate the spiritual attachment and Tianeming discovers that this spiritual attachment has reached at least grade 20. Because of this attachment, Shendu senses that Tianeming suddenly became stronger by looking at his aura. But then, it makes no difference for him. He then rushed to Tianeming while holding his weapon and Tianeming only waited for him to land. Ying Huo and Miao Miao then focused on the Taudi, but when Miao Miao attacked, it was too hard which made him flew away. Ying Huo then told him to be careful and not to fight head on. Ying Huo also instructed him to shrink and regain energy first. Shendu and Tianeming are not fighting and even the audience also noticed that Tianeming became so strong and looked like a different person. They can clearly see that Tianeming is actually fighting on par with Yu and Shendu now. For them, if this continues, it will be unclear who's gonna win. King Yu focused on the match, and she believes that Tianeming's burst of strength comes from the spiritual attachment between Ling'er and Tianeming. But then, she knows that this attachment will not last long. She concludes that Tianeming will run out of energy quickly at this rate. In comparison, Shendu is getting more and more excited. Yu and Shendu still manage to smile while thinking that there are more surprises to be discovered from Tianeming so it's a waste for him to kill Tianeming instantly. Tianeming grits his teeth as he is annoyed to think that Shendu is fighting like he's playing with his prey. He believes that Shendu already has several chances to kill him. But Shendu is not doing it and he knows that Shendu is confident of winning this match. Shendu attacked using his Dark Soul Hellblade Pagoda and Tianeming was hit by it and split away while coughing. Come on, where'd your energy go? Shendu asked. It's right here. Tianeming answered and dashed towards Shendu. He continued attacking Shendu using his sword and Shendu is very powerful. What a moron. Can't you tell I'm playing with you? I'll take it slow and play with you until you die. In this world, there's only the domination of overwhelming strength. There's no such thing as reversing death. Your meaningless struggles right now proves that the Lie Saint clan is a joke. To go against the world and change fate has always been a fool's dream. Shendu uttered. At this time, he slashed Tianeming in the chest and Tianeming spit some blood. He was kneeling on the ground while holding his chest and breathing fast. Despite that he was wounded, he doesn't feel much pain from those attacks which made him confused since he believes that Shendu will go easy on him. 
Linger then informs him that the prime tower inside his body creates a light, and this light is healing him. As per Linger, with this tower, they no longer have to be afraid of Shendu wearing them down. Surprisingly, Linger also awakened a new ability. It's her fifth ability called Soulburn. It's similar to a spiritual attachment, but it's meant to be used on the enemy. It can burn up most of their beast Kai and greatly weaken them. Tianming agreed that it was too powerful, and he believes that it has some side effects. Linger said yes and explained that once it will be used, she will be forced to remain dormant in spiritual form for some time. And he was thankful that she had a suitable vessel to inhabit which is Linger's love. She's very sure that this ability won't harm her as long as Tianming will protect the necklace and wait for her to wake up. Tianming promised that he will protect the necklace and he also wondered about how long Linger will be gone. Linger answered that it will be at least a month and she knows that Tianming will be worried so she told Tianming not to be worried about her. She said that she'll leave Tianming for the time being, but it's alright for her, because they get to leave on at least. She informed Tianming that she'll be gone after using the soul burn. She hopes that the day she'll wake up, she will get to see Tianming stronger than ever. Tianming became emotional and apologized to Linger. He also promised to Linger that he will not let them be in a situation where Linger have to use this ability ever again. He closes his eyes while giving thanks to Tianming, but he was shocked when he opened his eyes as he saw that Shendu was about to end his life. Tianming then ordered Linger to activate her new ability, Soulburn. Linger's spirit then left Tianming's body and Linger is rushing to Shendu while activating her Soulburn. Shendu stopped from attacking and he noticed that something went into his body. And as expected, he blamed Tianming for this. Hey, Lai Tianming, what did you do to me? He asked. His beast Kai is slowly deteriorating. You and Shendu, the world is vast, anything is possible. You thought you had our lives in control, but we'll show you the price of underestimating us. I vowed to protect her from danger, but today, you pushed her to take a risk so that I could live on. You said that going against fate are just lies we tell ourselves. That just means you've never truly understood the Lai family. With your martial arts alone, you go around thinking you're better than others, but you have no idea about how the average person goes against fate. You and Shendu, as you train in isolation, you fail to see the hardship of the people. There's no way you know about the suffering and struggles that the people of my generation go through to break the shackles of fate and to open up their own paths. Not everyone was born on a pedestal like you, controlling the lives of others. Without the Lai Saint clan, there would be no such thing as the Yuan clan in this current world. Tianming stated. Shendu was furious that Tianming was lecturing him. He told Tianming to shut up and then rushed to him while activating his Dark Soul Hellblade Rebirth. Tianming is fearlessly standing while saying that it's time to end this battle. He then casts the Void God Sword Cosmic Break and this technique creates the Water Dragon and easily swallows Shendu's attack. Shendu felt nervous now while looking up above, seeing Tianming who was about to end his life. Tianming then slashed Shendu's head and Shendu's blood splattered as he was still standing while Tianming was already behind him. Shendu's tauti was also slashed on the head, and the entire crowd went stunned. Lie Tianming, you crazy bastard, that's not bad. Now, dealing with this fatty will be smooth sailing, Ying Huo said. At last, Tianming defeated Shendu and Shendu is now lying on the ground and is already dead. While Tianming is staring at Shendu's body, he noticed that Shendu was holding a piece of paper. Tianming gets it and believes that the information on the paper might be Shendu's trump card. He doesn't really know what exactly it is but he concludes that it's something good and useful for him so he decided to keep it for now. He remembered Linger's necklace and when he checked it, a symbol already appeared on the necklace so he was confident that Linger safely entered the necklace. Tianming talked to the necklace like it was Linger and he said to Linger to rest well and he promised that he will protect the lady. He now knows the true power of Linger's new ability which is the soul born. Despite that it was so powerful and terrifying, he doesn't want Linger to do it again. Tianming turned around as he heard an uninteresting sound. He then saw that the heavenly pattern formation had been broken and Yuan Teiji forced himself to enter. Yuan Teiji was so furious with Tianming and wanted to attack Tianming with killing intent. Tianming believes that he cannot defeat Yuan Teiji so he knows that he needs to run as soon as possible. But then, Tianming was exhausted by his last stroke so he cannot be able to run even if he wanted to. At this time, his master teacher Shaoqing appeared in front of him to block Yu and Taiji. Shaoqing held Tianming's hand and threw Tianming to Yuxi. Yuxi catched Tianming easily and she carried Tianming on her shoulder. I'm really weak right now, please be gentle, Tianming said. Shaoqing then looked back to Taiji and he was almost hit by Taiji's sword but the good thing is that Shaoqing is already holding his sword and immediately blocks Taiji's attack. 
Taiji was shaking in anger while facing Shaoking, and he ordered Shaoking to get out of his way as he wanted to kill Tianming. Shaoking then reminded him that he was the one who agreed to the battle so he must not feel this way. Shaoking also told him that it's Yuan Shendu's weakness of not being able to kill his opponent which is Tianming. Letting your anger take over was your dignity as the ninth sect elder, Shaoking stated. The crowd was murmuring as they hated Yuan Taiji for reacting this way. They know that if Tianming is the one who died and Shendu becomes the victor, Yi Shaoking will not act like Yuan Taiji this time. They witnessed how Tianming defeated Yuan Shendu fair and square. A loss is a loss so for them. Yuan Taiji doesn't have the right to avenge his son. People even commented that Yuan Taiji doesn't have the chance of getting the Grand Orient Sword. Today is the day he dies. I'll see you try to stop me. Yuan Taiji uttered, and instantly summoned his twin life-bound beast. Shaoking didn't want to let Taiji attack Tianming so he also summoned his giant dragon, and was very determined to fight back Yuan Taiji for the sake of Lai Tianming. Tianming was staring at both Yuan Taiji and Yi Shaoking. As what he has observed, Yuan Taiji is the strongest in terms of strength at this moment. If a fight breaks out, he believes that Taiji is an unrivaled opponent. The Yuxi noticed that Tianming was worried about his master teacher so Yuxi told him to stop worrying and look for the brighter side that he was saved by Shaoking since his own life is more important than anything else. Yi Yuxi then jumped away and Tianming was confused about where the lady planned to take him. Before they could leave, Tianming saw something that made him surprised. The other 25 elders came to the Grand Orient First Battlefield and it seems like they wanted to save Tianming from Yuan Taiji. According to Yi Yuxi, now that Yuan Shendu is dead, there is no hope for the Yuan clan anymore. Even the elders and council elders who originally supported Shendu have also defected. Yuxi said that Tianming's appearance has made the sect elders see hope again, and that's why everyone wanted to unite just to protect Tianming to those people who wanted to kill him. One council elder with an angry face spoke loudly to stop Yuan Taiji's doing. He said in front of everyone and especially to his co-elders that the Yuan family era is over. Even the people in the crowd were dumbfounded to see that all the sect elders united for the first time just for one person. And this time, that is because of Tianming. At this point, Tianming was emotionless since it didn't sink in easily to his mind that the sect elder came here just for him. He recalled that when Lai Qingyu got into trouble, the sect elders didn't react, and now, they all have changed. Yuxi knows that Tianming is overthinking things so she advises Tianming not to think too much since this is the truth. She informed Tianming that all these sect elders will protect him fanatically from now on. Tianming was confused why the sect elders suddenly acted this way, and he even thought that it may be because he killed Yuan Shendu. Yuxi then confirmed it. She stated that the sect elders are not afraid of Yuan Taiji. Instead, they are afraid that Yuan Taiji's son, Yuan Shendu, will get the Grand Orient Sword. The king reminded Yuan Taiji that Tianming and Shendu's life and death battle has been approved by all the elders, and also Taiji agreed to it so he should not be wild in here. Upon seeing him, Tianming was surprised to see this old man who is now a completely different person from before. Old ghost, are you tired of living? Have you forgotten that there are descendants in my Yuan family? When Yuan Jiangxing comes out, I will definitely train him myself. Yuan Taiji answered with an angry and giggled voice. Tianming then interfered and slightly smiled while telling Taiji not to wait for Yuan Jiangxing as he already killed this bald man. Taiji then looked at Tianming and he was shocked to hear it as he didn't expect something like this would happen inside the Prime Tower. The father of Jiangxing. Yuan Kaidai clearly heard what Tianming proclaimed and because of it, he instantly kneeled on the ground and felt weak to hear that his son was murdered by Tianming. Fengxian was still emotional and since he felt hopeless at this time, he ordered his son Yuan Taiji to go back to their place for now and bring back his grandson's corpse. Up until now, he still believes that his son Yuan Taiji is still the strongest in this Grand Orient sect and he concludes that Taiji can kill Tianming next time whenever he wants. I can't believe they can protect him day and night, we always have a chance. Fengxian added. Yuan Taiji listened to his father's statement and he then let his both life-bound beasts go back to his life-bound space. Before leaving, he stated that he will always remember this hate and he told Tianming to remember that he cannot escape from Taiji's grip. Yuan's family then started walking away while they were in pain and they brought together with them all the corpses. Lai Qingwu then immediately approached Tianming and held his hand to thank him for saving her from dying. The sect elders also approached Tianming and Feng Yun greeted him and addressed him as the junior sect master for the first time. The other elders also followed Feng Yun 
and Tiananmen was overwhelmed by them. Wake up. You don't have to do this, but instead, I want to thank you guys. Because of you all, I survived. Tiananmen humbly said, Since Yu and Shendu is already dead, Feng Yun politely asked Tiananmen to replace Yu and Shendu to participate in the realm wars that will happen in half a month from now and take back the Grand Orient Holy Sword for their Grand Orient sect. Tiananmen felt a little bit shy, and instantly accepted what Feng Yun offered. He also promised to the old man that he will do and give all his best. He was also thinking that he can also obtain the Grand Orient Holy Sword after obtaining the heaven-defying treasure of the Prime Tower. Feng Yun then ordered Xiaoqing to explain to Tianming in detail about the battle between the sects today. Feng Yun also told Tianming that he must provide complete information on the seven holy sons of the Heavens Elysium who participated. Tianming was shocked upon hearing it and concluded that Yuling Long might be part of the seven holy sons. Xiaoqing then asked if he was familiar with Lady Long and Tianming answered that he was afraid to think that Yuling Long might be the strongest opponent in the battle between sects. If Yuling Long might also be part of this battle, Tianming and her will meet again after three months. In this battle, Tianming is very determined to take back Ling'er's power that Lady Long has taken. To their surprise, Yu and Taiji suddenly came so they thought that Taiji would now continue his revenge for both of his sons. But then, Taiji only came to ask Tianming if he takes the burning soul book from his son's cloth. If so, return the book, Yu and Taiji said. Xiaoqing asked Tianming if he really took the burning soul, and Tianming was hesitant to give it back but his master teacher ordered him to do so. Tianming followed Xiaoqing and immediately threw the book to Yu and Taiji. Yu and Taiji then catch it and jumped away while saying that he wished Tianming a bit of good luck in winning the Grand Orient Holy Sword. Tianming looked up above and was confused about what Yu and Taiji was trying to say. This time, the elders continued their discussion and one elder said that they must be more vigilant against Yu and Taiji, and the others. He said that the 25 of them will form a group to protect Tianming and King Yu from danger. Feng Yun then let Tianming know that the elders decided to split into two groups to completely protect Tianming because Tianming is now their foundation of the Grand Orient Sect's revival. As per Feng Yun, if they can get the Grand Orient Holy Sword, Taiji will definitely come to seize it so they must be careful anytime. And if Tianming will successfully gets the Grand Orient Holy Sword, Feng Yun suggested that Xiaoqing should be the one to temporarily hold this Grand Orient Holy Sword for a while. Xiaoqing thinks that his disciple Tianming was just lucky to kill Yu and Shendu. He said that if Yu and Shendu used the Burning Soul book stored in his clothes, Lai Tianming would most likely die this day. Even if it's difficult, Tianming can go and try his best. No matter the ending, whether he succeeds or not, we must always take care of him no matter what. Yu Xiaoqing stated, Oh yes teacher, about the burning soul book, what's that? Is it very strong? Tianming asked. Xiaoqing then explained that the burning soul book is a trigger spell specially made for a heavenly will. It is a single-use treasure that can only be used once. It can make the user's beast essence continuously increase to the max level for a certain period of time. And the price of the burning soul book is even higher than the heaven level source god. The fact that every heavenly aura formation and heavenly script contained in the book was made by a divine rune master. It's easy for him to be like a pill maker. The divine rune master is a rare profession. Even in this eastern emperor realm, there is not a first grade divine rune master. As per Xiaoqing, a divine rune master can only be found in the earth origin realm or after the last emperor realm. Divine Rune Master didn't think they were so rare. Tianming uttered in shock. Feng Yun interfered to tell Tianming not to talk about it for now since he was still too far for it. Most importantly, tell us your practice first to facilitate our protection of you, and after we have discussed it, we suggest that you practice on the Holy Mountain. Feng Yun stated. He also informed Tianming that he had arranged a plan to take turns guarding. Twenty-five of them will be divided into two groups, and each group will guard for one month. They will also be watching Tianming every day for the next 20 years. Tianming doesn't like the idea of being watched every day, and he told Feng Yun that it is a bit too much. He then asked permission from Feng Yun if he could instead practice on the Lai family's ancestral land. Feng Yun smiled upon hearing it as this was a great idea that he didn't come up on his mind. If Tianming trains in Lai Mausoleum, he will be safe since Yu and Taiji cannot enter the blood barrier there. Feng Yun then added that they will spread around the barrier of the Lai Mausoleum to guide Tianming. He also asked Tianming about what kind of spiritual source he wanted to use in cultivating as he is willing to give. Tianming smiled widely and answered that he didn't need anything right now, but if he needed, he would tell the sect elders immediately. All of a sudden, Jing Yu appeared and called Tianming to inform her that she was finally home. Tianming instantly looked at her and was glad that Jingyu finally got home safe and sound. 
Tian Ming then held Jing Wu's hand and Jing Wu became emotional while saying that anything is possible for Tian Ming. Tian Ming, my grandson, you're amazing. Jing Wu said and her tears fell. It's all thanks to your guidance, grandma. Tian Ming answered with a graceful face. King Wu from behind suddenly spoke and asked Tian Ming about Ling'er. Tian Ming held the necklace and told King Wu that Ling'er went to rest. Tian Ming is willing to tell everything to King Wu about what happened to Ling'er after they got home. Meanwhile, at the Fate Path peak, Lai Wudi and Yi Xiaoking talked about what happened to the Grand Orient's first battlefield. Xiaoking concludes that the time Yuan Shendu lifted King Yu by the neck, Wudi was about to take out his Venom Drake. Of course, she's my baby girl. Lai Wudi answered. Really, I couldn't tell. Xiaoking kiddingly said. Wudi then told him that he doesn't have a daughter so he wouldn't understand the father's love. For him, true fatherly love is formless and hidden deep which most people won't be able to tell. Amazing, you become even more shameless. Xiaoking stated. Wudi grits his teeth and says that Xiaoking is just envious of him. Other than that, Xiaoking mentioned that Lai Wudi really hit the jackpot for having a son that he picked up and gives the Lai clan the power to turn the tide twice. Especially this time when Tianming destroyed Yuan Taiji's state of mind straight up. If it were not for him, you would have pulled out the Venom Drake spike and wouldn't have gotten a fifth of what you got out of the spike. It would have been a waste of all your efforts. Yi Xiaoking stated. Wudi then answered that God smiled upon him and gave him an amazing son. It's a shame that you don't have this sort of luck. What a pity, Wudi uttered. Xiaoking then confidently said that he is much closer to Tianming than Lai Wudi because of their master-disciple relationship. Wudi agreed that Tianming is indeed a true miracle. He cannot believe Tianming is capable of taking the elder Feng An to willingly protect him. Since Tianming is his son this time, the day he will overcome his trials, he is willing to turn over the whole realm to Tianming. He was hoping that their path will embark on his father and son will lead to the theocracy of the ancients. Wudi said that Yi Xiaoking should have to stay by Tianming's side all the time and protect him at all costs. He also lets Xiaoking know that he will look over King Yu since the lady won't be going to the realm wars. As per Xiaoking, if Tianming dies, that means he'll have died with Tianming too. He advises Lai Wudi to finish his final steps properly, and he mentioned that the day Lai Wudi overcomes his trials will be the day of the Battle of the Grand Orient Sect. Wudi sighed and was hoping that everything would go smoothly on that day. At his age now, he started to worry about losing his loved ones. Shayaking held his shoulder and told him not to worry as Shayaking was also here to always support him. When the time comes, he's willing to personally take Wudi up the sacred mountain to retrieve the Lai Sain clan's throne and place it back in Kunpeng's sacred hall. On that day, Lai Wudi wanted to trample on the corpses of the Yuan clan just as his son Tianming did and sit on his own throne. The next day, Yuan Taiji is inside his place, sitting on his throne, and was talking to someone who will protect Tianming during the Realm Wars. At this time, the man is still unknown. As per Taiji, with this man working under his command, he'll be able to get what he wants all the same. This man knew that Yuan Taiji didn't want to avenge his son Shendu right away for the reason that Taiji wanted to wait until Lai Tianming retrieved the Grand Orient Sword, and he will use this unknown man to take the Grand Orient Sword from Tianming and give it to him. As per the man, Tianming's chances of getting the Grand Orient Sword back aren't big since Taiji took the soul burn to Tianming. But then, Taiji is very confident as he saw Tianming's monstrous growth speed. He said that it also made him pay a huge price. That's why he decided to gamble on the fact that Tianming will get the sword without the soul burn. As soon as Tianming gets it, this man will do the work for Taiji. This man is willing to follow Taiji's order because Taiji is the only one who can cure this man's poison inside his body. With heartburn in him, Taiji stated that this man won't be able to die even if he wanted to. I'm sure you know the feeling better than I could ever describe it. Taiji uttered. The man kneeled and was emotional. He promised to Yuan Taiji that he will give his very best to fulfill what Taiji wanted. After going back to Fate Path Peak, Lai Tianming explained Zhang Failing's situation to King Wu. Of course, Lai King Wu was both moved and remorseful about her actions. She said that she'd thank Ling'er properly after she woke up. After saying their goodbyes, Lai Tianming started preparing for the Realm Wars. He's currently at the Lai Mausoleum since this is where he wanted to train himself. He was spreading out all the treasures that the elders gave him and Tianming was drooling to see this many items. As per Ying Huo, the elders have gone mad for giving Tianming a lot of these treasures. Tianming only answered that he was getting way better treatment than the Prime Disciples. He also remembered the reward he got from the Prime Struggles. He decided to give this Venom Fiend blood claw to Miao Miao. 
and he reminded Meow Meow not to scratch Tianeming after he evolves. There'll be blood fiend venom on your claws so don't scratch me to death, Tianeming said. Meow Meow then responded by saying that he didn't want to eat this blood claw as it was disgusting for him. Tianeming was annoyed and choked Meow Meow to force him to eat this treasure. Why Tianeming? This is child abuse. Ying Huo screamed. Tianeming then stared at him and told him that he doesn't need to worry since he will be the next. Come at me, I'll eat everything you have. Ying Huo answered in excitement. This time, Tianeming becomes serious and instructs both of his companion beasts to start refining the treasures first. Then after that, they will continue practicing and training for the Realm Wars. Now, he has started the Life Death Whip. Art and Void God's sword intent is just one step short of achieving myriads only. A big explosion then happened as Tianeming was practicing his skills. He was currently holding a sword as was thinking that his moves alone aren't enough for the Realm Wars so he needed to learn more moves. He was startled as he heard Lai Wudi calling him from behind. Lai Wudi was still drunk and was holding a bottle of wine. Come, drink with me. For some reason, the elders at Fate Path Peak are all hyped up today. And your dad is shameless, so I asked for a bunch of great liquors. Lu Wudi stated while laughing. Tianeming then instantly answered that he's not free to drink and he told Wudi to drink by himself. He was annoyed thinking that Lai Wudi is still drinking while the elders are protecting him. Lai Wudi commented that Tianeming is as hardworking just like him back then. He said that Tianeming is worthy of praise and he even stated that Tianeming can ask him for anything he needs, except for liquor. What do you have? Tianeming asked. Wudi then responded that he'll be able to give whatever treasures for Tianeming. Even the sun, moon, and stars. Tianeming was disappointed when he heard Lai Wudi saying that Tianeming can get this treasure from Elder Fengyun and mentioned Lai Wudi's name. Despite that Tianeming gets disappointed, and he politely asked Wudi to introduce another ancestor to him as he wanted to learn a fist technique so he has more tactics he can use in the realm. Lai Wudi touched his chin and remembered that he knows in this area with a fist specialist. He then led the way and guided Tianeming going to the 10th ancestor, Lai Ziaozheng. Tianeming was confused if Wudi mentioned the right name since Ziaozheng means arrogant so Tianeming believes that Wudi only called this ancestor arrogant. What? You've never heard a name like that. What a country bumpkin. Woody answered, and rushed to the direction while challenging Tianeming to keep up with his speed. After a while, they arrived at the tomb of the Trevita pugilist. Tianeming read the written words on the tomb and he smiled as he was excited to start learning new moves. They already spilled some wine to the Trevita progilist and Lai Woody felt sad how Tianeming spilled the wine to their ancestor too much. My ancestor, leave some for me. Damn, there isn't even a drop left. You know, you can die from drinking too much, Lai Wudi uttered. Behind him is Tianeming who said that the people might actually feel bad for Wudi if they heard what Wudi was saying. After the wine was spilled on their ancestor's tomb, a golden light then emerged and as per Tianeming, the godlike will this tomb emitting is quite fierce and especially befitting with the name of the Trevita pugilist. Tianeming then saw some letters on the tomb saying that first lifetime, like a beast, sky shatter. Second lifetime, like a fiend, god ringer. Third lifetime, like a fiend god, cataclysm. Tianeming focused himself and on the tomb, it states, three lives, three worlds, the first of madness. It's born out of defiance, but isn't defiance. Three fists of boundless fighting spirit that bring a sense of calmness even before death. It also showed some pictures of the fist technique. The Trevita Fiend Fist is ferocious indeed and Tianeming decided to use his dark arm to practice this new movement. He tried to punch using the Sky Shatter and he instantly made it by himself. Lai Wudi was impressed by how Tianeming understood the essence of the technique after looking at it once, despite that this technique needs tens of thousands of practice. Tianeming smiled while saying that this technique is perfect for him, especially since he has a black metal arm. With this, it will be another combat technique added to his list. He's very determined to practice it until he memorizes it by heart. Lai Wudi then leaned on the rock to let Tianeming practice this new technique of his while Wudi took a nap. Wudi is sleeping peacefully while Tianeming spends his time learning the first technique by himself. While he tried to punch, he saw two lights that ascended. It's from the direction of the founding ancestor. The feeling of fire and flames roaring and he concludes that it was Ying Huo and Miao Mao who successfully evolved after refining. He then immediately went to his life-bound beasts, as he was too excited to see Ying Huo and Miao Miao's current strength after evolving. When he arrived, he then ordered both of his beasts to show him the results of their manner refining. At this time, he cannot see changes even a little on both of his beasts. But then, Miao Miao insisted that he changed a lot. 
He showed Tianming his claws and explained that it becomes red. According to Tianming, it turns red because of the venom of the blood claws. He then informed Miao Miao not to climb on his shoulders ever again for him to avoid being poisoned. Ying Huo also spoke to inform Tianming that he also changed a lot. His wings are now stronger and sharper. He even said that his wings are sharper than Tianming's weapons. Tianming then summoned his sword and challenged Ying Huo to have a spar together. Tianming then confidently accepted his challenge and Ying Huo kept attacking Tianming while Miao Miao below was thinking that both Tianming and Ying Hu had gone crazy. Tianming then stopped Ying Huo and Ying Huo thought that Tianming already gave up that easily. Tianming then responded that he didn't give up. But instead, they need to preserve their time and should start the symbiotic cultivation instead of playing around. He senses that he is about to get a breakthrough so they should not waste some time. Lai Shing Sao's tomb gathers the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, while his life-bound beasts are supported by the prime tower in his life-bound space. Together with Ying Huo and Miao Miao, they all started their symbiotic cultivation. Tianming closed his eyes and in a short period of time, his eyes rounded as he broke through to the sixth level of unity. He smiled as this is his fastest breakthrough yet. However, his growth was aided by their successful severing of bloodline binding, as well as the miraculous effect of Lai Sheng Xiao's tomb and the Prime Tower. Now, he understands how to break through to the next levels of unity. As per Tianming, it's only a matter of time until he reaches the peak of unity, along with the increase of the power of the bloodline, so his future cultivation speed will increase. Within the Ionic Grand Bane, failure means death. For the next few days, Tianming used every second he had to practice. With the guidance of the elders, he improved intensely in using the Void God Sword intent. He has also mastered two of the three fists in Trevita Fiend Fist. Eleven days after defeating Yuan Shendu, they left for Heaven's Elysium to partake in the Realm Wars. Before leaving, Feng Yun brings the three other Prime Disciples who will join Tianming in Heaven's Elysium. Tianming thanked them and since these elders still addressed him as a junior sect master, Tianming told them all that they can just call him by his name. One of the prime disciples is Shangyuan Yunfeng, Shangyuan Jiayi's elder brother. Greetings, junior sect master. Your performance a few days ago was nothing short of spectacular. You have my complete admiration, Yunfeng uttered. Tianming then thanked him and he smiled while thinking that Yunfeng's aura is very refined. Another disciple named Zhao Lingzhuo just waved to Tianming with an angry face. Tianming was confused by Lingzhuo's behavior that seemed unenergetic. Let's get going, Feng Yun said. To be able to go to Heaven's Elysium, they will ride at the Air Cloud God Crane of Feng Yun. When they were all prepared, the Air Cloud God Crane then flew. During their trip, Yun Feng noticed that Lingzhuo looked so sullen so he asked Lingzhuo about where his fighting spirit was. What's the point? I'm here to be humiliated anyways. Isn't that the case every time? Are you actually hoping to win? Ling Zhuo answered. Tianming overheard him and advised him not to be so pessimistic. He doesn't like how Ling Zhuo admitted defeat even though the fight hasn't started yet. Ling Zhuo glanced at him with annoyance while saying that Tianming is full of confidence. For him, Tianming only won against Yu and Shendu because of luck, and other than that, he mentioned that Shendu didn't use his spirit burn tome or the soul burn that time which might be the reason that Shendu was defeated against Tianming. Since this is what Ling Zhuo wanted to believe, Tianming cannot do anything about it. On the other hand, Yunfeng sighed while listening to them. Come on, we're a team. Let's not fight. Of course, we have to be confident when fighting for our glory, Yunfeng stated. As per Tianming, confidence isn't the only thing he had. He was thinking that he also had hatred too, against Yuling Long, and that's his motivation to win the battle this time. According to Ling Zhuo, he speaks this way because of a reason that they have always been humiliated once a year by the Heavens Elysium. He said that every generation of Tevi disciples has been beaten and humiliated, and even their dignity has been completely lost. He was hopeless to get the Grand Orient Holy Sword because of the people in Heaven's Elysium. He believes that everyone who participated would be humiliated. And moreover, he saw that these people from Heaven's Elysium are more cruel than anyone else. He also stated that the Teiji disciples in the past, after they returned from the Realm Wars, all lost their lives and some even lost the courage to practice, this time. With Yu and Shendu who reached the Heavenly Will and has the Soul Burn Book, they have a little hope. But now, Yu and Shendu is dead, that's why he becomes hopeless. So you still want Yu and Shendu to come along? Yunfeng asked, and Ling Zhuo then answered that it is a child's play to out the future of their sex in a teenager, and he was referring to Lai Tianming. For Tianming, if Ling Zhuo can't do it, it doesn't mean that all people can really not do it. Ling Zhuo then said that he will look forward to it. Other than that, Yunfeng asked if Tianming had read all the information about the sects participating in this battle. 
Tianming then answered yes. He has read all of them without exception about the seven holy sons of heaven's Elysium and the other three sect disciples who participated in the realm wars. He knows all about them. According to Yun Feng, in the current Eastern Emperor realm, the Sacred Heaven Palace firmly ranks first and their Grand Orient sect ranking is only ranked fifth. The second ranked sect was the Southski sect, and the sect had ties to the Lai Saint clan. Ten years ago, there was a war in the Heaven's Elysium. Since then, the Heaven's Elysium and Southski sect became rivals. Upon hearing this information, Tianeming concludes that the relationship between the Southski sect and the Grand Orient sect isn't bad at all. Yun Feng then agreed to it and said that if it wasn't for the Southski sect willing to compete with the Heaven's Elysium, the Grand Orient sect would probably be oppressed by the Heaven's Elysium. Tianemin was confused why the Southski sect had helped their sect. He even thought that this had anything to do with Lai ancestors. As per Yun Feng, it was because the person who founded the Southski sect was Wai Sheng Yuyan, the wife of Lai Sheng Xiao, the first ancestor of the Lai Saint clan. It is said that they separated because of their contracting personalities, and each chooses their own path. One founded the Grand Orient sect and the other founded the Southski sect. Even though they were separated, they were still friends. At that time the first ancestor had a son and a daughter, and Weishin Yuin raised a daughter who did not have a Bane ring. Over the years, even though the Southski sect's bloodlines don't have a Bane ring, they are still blood-related to the Lai clan. Tianeming said that the Weisheng clan sounds so rare so he thought that it was from the Eastern Emperor realm. But then, Yunfeng said that he was wrong. It is said that Weisheng Yuin is the one who met the first ancestor in the ancient god realm and followed him to the East Emperor realm. Tianeming was clueless about the ancient god realm so Yunfeng explained that the Eastern Emperor realm is the country town in the ancient god realm, and Heaven's Elysium is now the governor of the Eastern Emperor realm. Tianeming was shocked upon hearing it as he always thought that the ancient god realm was a secret world. But he didn't expect the eastern emperor realm to be part of the ancient god realm. Yun Feng explained that the ancient god realm is an ancient dynasty known as the god realm that gave birth to gods. He said that it's not too strange to rule a place like the eastern emperor realm. The history of this ancient dynasty is much older than the eastern emperor realm. Tianeming then understood everything with what Yun Feng explained. Yun Feng then told him that he doesn't need to think about the ancient god realm. As per Yun Feng, once Tianeming will reach the saint realm, he will have the opportunity to go to the ancient god realm. Tianeming then informed him that he understood everything. And now, he only wanted to know about the Grand Orient Holy Sword and the Prime Tower. These two sacred objects are said to be created by the gods when the first ancestor was in the ancient god realm. The ancient god realm emperor at that time gave him heaven-defying objects to guard the east emperor realm. The Grand Orient Holy Sword is known as the Emperor Sword and the Prime Tower is known as the Tower of Immortality. All of these things have divine power. In the entire history of the eastern emperor realm, no one except the first ancestor can actually bring out the true power of the two sacred items. And after the death of the first ancestor, the Prime Tower was placed on the holy mountain of Grand Orient to maintain the aura there and at the same time become the holy place for the training of the Grand Orient sect disciples, unless there is a power that can slaughter Grand Orient sect and occupy Grand Orient sacred mountain. No one can take it. As for the Grand Orient Holy Sword, Yun Feng said that it has been passed down from generation to generation by the Emperor of the Grand Orient sect. But more than 1,000 years ago, the power of the Lai Saint clan declined and the Grand Orient Holy Sword was taken by the Southski sect. After that, the Heaven's Elysium rose and took the Grand Orient Holy Sword from the Southski sect. He also added that the Grand Orient Holy Sword is a sacred item that was given to the first ancestor by the Emperor of the Ancient God Realm, not worthy of being taken by others. They found out that the Lai Saint clan had fallen, and moreover, they were unable to dominate the Eastern Emperor Realm, so they found a way. At this point, Tianeming concludes that the way they found is the realm wars that are held every ten years. Yun Feng said that if not for the fear of the ancient god realm, Heaven's Elysium would not have issued the Grand Orient Holy Sword at all, and there's no need to bother holding a sword fight between young people. Tianeming always wondered before that Heaven's Elysium has such power, and he was clueless why the sect holds realm wars that young disciples participate in. For him, it turned out to be the will of the ancient god realm. According to Lingzhuo, for thousands of years, the Grand Orient sect lost the Grand Orient Holy Sword and never got it back. Not only did they fail to get it back but every generation of the Prime Disciples would return home seriously injured. Some of them even have mental disorders and some have had their cultivation removed. He also added that in a thousand years, there are a hundred generations of the Prime Disciples. They have all lost face, lost their minds, 
and were ridiculed by others like a lost dogs. After he heard Ling Zhuo's statement, Tianeming now realized why Ling Zhuo is so lethargic. He knows that being abused for thousands of years is painful enough. Tianeming was thinking about who's gonna laugh at the end between Heaven's Elysium, Southsky sect, Onyx sect, Cloud Mist Sword sect, and the Grand Orient sect. The top disciples of the five great sects compete for the Grand Orient Holy Sword. Feng Yun suddenly spoke to inform them all that the Realm Wars are held in Heaven's Elysium. But according to the rules, there are seven holy sons of Heaven's Elysium, so there are only seven people from the four great sects who can officially participate in the Realm Wars. This time, there were a total of fifteen people from the four great sects participating in the battle. Therefore, among these fifteen people, only seven people can actually go to Heaven's Elysium, and the remaining eight will be eliminated. Before the Realm Wars begins, fifteen of these disciples must ascend to the sky on the Tongshan Road. Heaven's Elysium has arranged a large number of beasts, as well as several concubines in the enchantment test, to block their steps. And all they need to do is cross the path to the sky and be the seventh fastest person to climb Heaven's Elysium. Tianeming, Yunfeng, and Lingzhuo should try their best to seize the place, otherwise, they won't be able to cross the path to the sky and fail as per Feng Yun. When they arrived, Feng Yun let them know that they should go first to the entrance gate of Heaven's Elysium to register, and wait for Yi Shaoqing and others, then meet the Southsky sect. When they have landed, they immediately see Yi Shaoqing and the others and they can now breathe deeply as they can finally reunite to protect Tianeming. But, of course, Feng Yun warned them to be wary of the Yuan family. Shaoqing then told Feng Yun that they should now go to meet the people from the Southsky sect. Tianeming was just behind them both and was following every step of them. After a while, the Southsky sect emperor Wei Sheng Tianlin then greeted them upon seeing each other. The other parties also do the same thing. At this time, Tianeming was astonished with the beauty of the sect emperor since he was so young looking and looks prettier than a woman despite the fact that he is a man. As what Tianeming observed, Tianlin seems to be the same age as Yi Shaoqing. Shaoqing, long time no see. Congratulations on becoming a council elder, Tianlin stated while facing Shaoqing. Hi, it seems my luck is not as lucky as yours, Shaoqing answered and laughed. Tianlin then called out to his daughter named Ruoso and ordered her to greet everyone. Disciples have met all of the Grand Orient sect masters and brothers, Wai Sheng Ruasu said, and she's also a disciple from the Southsky sect. Tianeming was staring at the lady and he was mesmerized by the beauty of the people from this sect. He wondered about what the people from this sect have eaten to be handsome and beautiful like this. Shaoqing suddenly laughed while saying that Ruoso had totally changed when she was 18 years old. The last time he saw Ruoso, she was only eight years old, and now, the lady is like a goddess who came down from the sky which makes Shaoqing envious. Apart from Tianlin's little girl, there are also three Southsky sect disciples participating in this realm wars. They are Wai Sheng Kingluan, Ruoso's older brother, Bai Taijun, and Sai Minglin. Shaoqing then ordered their prime disciples to get to know the Southsky sect disciples. Tianlin was confused as he didn't see Yuan Shendu from these disciples that the Grand Orient sect brought. Tianlin last heard that Yuan Taiji's son has also reached the Heavenly Will Realm and he wondered why Shendu is not here right now. He also noticed that there were no other members of the Yuan family even one. It's a bit complicated, I'll tell you later. Although our disciples are few, but know that this is enough to participate in the Battle of the Realm Wars, Shaoqing answered, and the three disciples of the Grand Orient sect were a little bit hurt the way Shaoqing answered Tianlin. One old man behind Tianlin suddenly spoke, saying that Yi Shaoqing seems to intend to embarrass the Grand Orient sect. He reminded Shaoqing that this time is an elimination round which is climbing the Tongshan stairs which is not easy. This old man is the first Southsky sect's first elder named Gu Kiyuyu. Why did I hear that the son of Yuan Taiji is going to take part and want to win the Grand Orient Sword? He added, at this time, Yi Shaoqing decided to let them all know that his disciple Lai Tianeming. Lai Wudi's son has killed Yuan Shendu which means that the soul burn Yuan Taiji prepared for this battle is now useless. He then held Tianeming and introduced him to everyone. Tianlin slightly smiled as he doubted Tianeming to win this time since Tianeming is still in the Unity Realm which he believes that this level cannot beat someone in Heavenly Will Realm. I know you won't believe it, what if I say that he has the body of the Pentabane? Shaoqing confidently said. Everyone from the Southsky sect was shocked to hear it. They couldn't believe it but then, Shaoqing told them that he was not lying. I have an opinion on this, and I will tell you all what I have seen, Feng Yun stated. Meanwhile, they already heard Feng Yun's statement and Tianlin now understood that Tianeming had strength on par with someone in the Heavenly Will realm despite that he was still in the Unity realm. 
Cheoking smiled while saying that Tianming might be stronger than all of Tianlin's students. Sounds great, but I still can't believe everything you said. But I will see his appearance in this realm wars. Tianlin answered. Gu Qiu then went near Tianming as he recalled that a pentabane has the bane ring so he asked Tianming to show it to him. This time, Tianming declined and was worried because his bane rings had changed. It has become a words. He himself didn't even know why it suddenly changes, that's why it's better for him not to show it. Because of it, Gu Qiu thought that Tianming was afraid as his bane rings were not real. Gosh, I almost believed that you were a pentabane when I heard the story about you. Ku Yu stated, Chanlin was mad because of Ku Yu's behavior. For him, he believes in Shaoking. And to prove it, they just have to wait and see. In this test of climbing the Tongshan ladder, the other two sects are followers of Heaven's Elysium and they will definitely form an alliance. What Tianlin worries about is that if the other sect's disciples gather together, they will seize the seven places and make it impossible for the Grand Orient sect and Southski sect to enter Heaven's Elysium. Shaoking then suggested letting their disciples know each other to take care of each other. Exactly as I thought, let the seven of them get acquainted first. Tianlin answered. The disciples from the Grand Orient sect then face the disciples from the Southski sects and introduce themselves to each other. They hold each other's hands as a sign of their cooperation. Tianlin then called everyone and instructed them all to go upstairs for the banquet. The food in the banquet was perfectly prepared and they are all not sitting on the chair while talking to each other. At this moment, Tianming is sitting beside Weisheng Kingluan and Kingluan senses that Tianming is the Grand Orient Junior Sect Master. He also told Tianming that the first ancestor of the Lai family is their ancestors too. According to them, in their Weisheng family tree, there is also a story of the first ancestor. Tianming then said that he only heard about the story of the first ancestor. Tianming was glad to see that the sisters and brothers of this Weisheng family are all cheerful and friendly people too. Because of their kindness, Tianming is willing to help them if they both run into trouble at the Tongshan stairs. Tianming was also observing the other disciples from the Southski sects and he noticed that the other disciples didn't get along very well. After going to the banquet, they kept their faces tense and didn't speak. Tianming senses that most of these disciples complained about cooperation and looked down on the Grand Orient sect. Tianming then concludes that this alliance is just an agreement between Weisheng Tianlin and his master Shaoking and doesn't necessarily represent the entire Southski sect. Tajin then speaks to confirm with Lady Ruoso if her mother can really contact people from the Cloudness Sword sect since he knows that Ruoso's mother is from the Cloudness Sword sect and a descendant of the Sikong family. Minglin smiled as he agreed to what Tajin stated. He also suggested to use Ruoso's mother's identity to have a good relationship with the people of the Cloudness Sword sect. When we meet them and we lose, at least we get their mercy. He added, didn't the Cloudmist Sword sect also join the Heaven's Elysium Alliance? Does the Southski sect also want to join their alliance? Ling Zhuo honestly stated. Because of his statement, Taijin and Minglin were trembling in anger. But then, they cannot do anything because Ruoro ordered them to stop and even said that their words were inappropriate. A lady in heels is walking towards them and asking them all to stop arguing. It was Sikong Lingu, the wife of Weisheng Tianlin. Her daughter and son were both shocked to see her instantly appear. I've been looking for you for a long time. Didn't I tell you to come on time to the banquet place? Tianlin stated. And his wife then explained that she went to see Sikong Jiancheng of the Cloudmist Sword sect. According to her, Cloudmist had agreed to form an alliance with the Southski sect, and the lady invited them. Tianlin couldn't believe what she had done and he shouted out of annoyance. Ling Hu wondered why his husband became mad as she only did this all for Tianlin and for the sake of their sect. Yi Shaoking calmed him down and told him to let his wife explain it in detail. Tianming was thinking that there was a huge difference of opinions between this husband and wife. Although Weisheng Tianlin wants to form an alliance with them, but not to mention that the elders agreed with his wife's opinion. By this, Tianming concludes that the Southski sect's final decision is in the hands of Tianlin's wife. A sadness formed into Tianlin's face and he apologized to Shaoking and Fengyun. Shaoking still managed to smile and answered that it's fine with them, and just let the kids decide their own path. After all, it was their competition and not for the oldies. Dad, don't worry. Me and my sister will always be with you. King Luan stated. Two people were heading their way to the table of the Southski sect and one man asked Tianlin if they came at the wrong time. He was Sikong Jiancheng, Cloudness Sword sect, and the sect emperor. Looking at him, Tianming was confused why Jiancheng suddenly came. I chatted with an old friend from the Grand Orient sect, even though Emperor Sikong came uninvited. But you are a guest from afar, if you don't mind, please sit down and chat a few words. Tianlin politely said. 
Jian Cheng declined his invitation and said that he cannot afford a banquet fag the Grand Orient sect was holding. He then stared at Tianlin while saying that he heard Tianlin say one wrong word. He said that they didn't come uninvited because Tianlin's wife, Ling Wu, as the Sikong family, asked them to come in here. And now, he realized that he was totally not invited and was rejected by Tianlin. Tianlin, you have to think clearly. This is for the sake of Ruasu and King Luan. With this, I would like to sincerely apologize and wish to sever ties with the Grand Orient sect and join the Cloudness Sword sect. I hope you don't mind, Ling Wu stated. Tianming feels mad about what she said as it was disrespectful for them. Tianlin stood and everyone was staring at them, but his wife still ordered him to apologize to the Cloud Miss Sword sect and sever ties with the Grand Orient sect. She even warned Tianlin not to waste this opportunity she worked so hard for. Tianlin was annoyed and slammed his hand on the table. His eyes were closed while telling Ling Yu to go back to her sect and he also shouted farewell to the people of the Cloud Miss Sword sect. Wait and see, Southski sect master, Jian Cheng stated. They were about to leave together with the disciples under his sect but his grandson in a red hair stopped him from walking away. Tianeming read up about this man. According to Tianeming, this man is Sikong Tianchen, the first disciple of the Cloud Mist Sword sect. Tianeming knows that Tianchen is currently a twin beastmaster at the Heavenly Will stage. Tianchen walked towards Ruasu and handed a small gift to the lady, and as per Tianchen, it was a gem with saintly heavenly patterns. But then, Ruasu decided to accept this present from Tianchen. Tianchen thought that Ruoso doesn't like the gift he gave so he promised the lady that he will bring something else next time they'll meet each other again. He was hoping that on that day, Ruasu would finally accept his present. But then, Ruasu ordered him to stop sending some gifts as she doesn't like Tancheng being like this. Jiancheng then screamed, ordering his grandson to come with them and leave together. Tancheng then listened to his father and immediately followed them. Jian Cheng held his grandson's hair and told him not to hurry things. He was very confident that his grandson would get Ruasu sooner. Ruasu overheard what Jian Cheng said and she was staring mad at them leaving the hall. Shaoqing then stood and bid goodbye to Tianlin. He also told Tianlin that they will speak privately later on. Before they leave, Tianlin apologizes to them because of the behavior of his wife. Feng Yun then said that it's alright with them. What's important now is that their alliance still stands. Let's all head back and make our preparations for throughput tomorrow. Feng Yun uttered. The alliance still stands. I'm afraid of getting stabbed Ling Zhuo suddenly stated. Feng Yun scolded him and even punched his head for being so disrespectful. Without more words, they then leave and go to each other's area. At this point, Tianeming was thinking that it was a mess within the Southski sect as well. The road that the Lai Saint clan has to walk won't be an easy one is what Tianeming observed. When the night comes, Tianeming misses Linger so much and he is currently holding the necklace that she gave to his lover. Ying Huo suddenly appeared and called him a pervert because of how he touches the necklace. Ying Huo also stated that he feels Tianeming is only taking advantage of Linger. Is that all you ever talk about? Be careful, I'll seal your break shut. Tianeming answered with annoyance. Though, it does feel nice for him to touch the necklace of Linger and imagining that it was really her. All of a sudden, Linger's love just shook a little so Tianeming was startled to think that Linger can still really hear them. What sort of hibernation is this? I have no privacy at all. Tianeming uttered. Ying Huo laughed so hard while saying that Tianeming cannot do anything bad now. Tianeming choked him out of annoyance and Ying Huo is asking him to control his strength as he was strangled so badly. This time, Tianeming doesn't want to waste time so he woke up Meow Meow as they need to cultivate. After a while, Tianeming and his life-bound beasts started cultivating and Tianeming is slightly below those at Heavenly Will without Linger's spiritual attachment. His cultivation also increased after breaking through. He has to use it this time to surpass his own limits. During his cultivation, he successfully broke through to the seventh level of unity. Now, he's only two levels away from Bai Taijun, Weisheng Kingluan, and Su Waiyu. The next day which is the day that Thrupath opens, every sect was all here except for the Heavens Elysium, and is what Tianeming expected to the Heavens Elysium, only they would have the audacity to make everyone else wait. The Southski sect is here, the Cloud Mist Sword are also present. Tianeming is observing around and since he already met the Cloud Mist Sword and people from the Southski, he concludes that these people dressed in black should be the Onyx sect. They're enveloped in black fog and have poisonous insects crawling all over them. Tianeming senses that these sects practiced all sorts of unorthodox techniques. Meanwhile, the delegates of Heaven's Elysium had arrived. They were all riding in a golden dragon and Tianeming was amazed upon seeing this dragon with skin made entirely of gold. With a body of pure gold, its whole body is a weapon as Tianeming observed, and he concludes that this is an immortal dragon. 
the dragon dropped the heavens Elysium delegates on the stage and the East Cardinal King. John Dongyao then spoke to welcome everyone here in Heaven's Elysium. May all your best disciples have an interesting and wonderful experience. Dongyao stated, Greetings, East Cardinal King, you're as brilliant as ever. Jian Sheng said, Cardinal King, spare us the formalities, let's just get started. I'm sure there's no suspense for this decade's realm wars. The Onyx Empress said, Despite the fact that they are in a hurry to start the elimination round, Dong Yao told them to let the young ones get to know each other first. Tianeming was annoyed at how they were casting the Grand Orient sect and the Southski sect aside. Onyx Emperor, Onyx Empress, and Brother Sikong, this way. Dong Yin said for him to guide the Onyx sect and the Cloud Mist. He then leads the way and Feng Yan from behind says that they will also go with them too. Dong Yin then looked at him and said in front of everyone why Sheng Tianlin, Huang Pu Feng Yan, who said that you are invited. What are you following us for? How shameless. Feng Yun and Tianlin were shocked upon hearing what he said and they both were confused about what Dong Yin was trying to say. Everyone laughed when they all heard that Dong Yin said that Feng Yun and Tianlin don't have a place in Heaven's Elysium. You're the one sending a couple of losers to the Grand Realm Wars like you don't even want to pass through the path. We don't want to waste any seats on the likes of you. Southski sect, Grand Orient sect, you might as well circle the foot of the mountain a few times, consider your task completed, and leave. Dong Yin stated. He then leaves the place together with the Cloud Mist and Onyx sect, leaving the Grand Orient sect and Southski sect. Tianeming was mad at Dong Yin's public display of his arrogance, and he already expected that Heaven's Elysium really is truly shameless. Tianeming kept staring at them and couldn't believe that they were really ignored by the people from Heaven's Elysium. Yi Shaoqing was also mad to see that Dong Yao hasn't changed but instead is getting worse. That's why Shaoqing didn't wonder why Dong Yin was at the bottom of the ranking back then. He asked if Tianlin was gonna chase them but Tianlin doesn't want to be humiliated so it was better for him to wait here until Heaven's Elysium go back here to pick him up. Shaoqing then laughed and agreed to Tianlin. He said that there is no other way but to let young people fight for their dignity and face, and allow them to make the people of Heaven's Elysium to kneel and beg for mercy. Isheoking, look at the three disciples behind you, see the reality, and don't dream. Du Kuyu stated, The Grand Orient sect disciples' faces were disappointed as they failed to take part in the realm wars because of the arrogance of Dong Yin towards them. So you'd rather get on your knees. Too bad, kneeling pleading made my knees hurt. Sheoking stated, Du Kuyu was angry and said that he didn't state that he really wanted to kneel. Tianlin then stopped their argument and suggested that they should send seven disciples to Tongshan Stairs, and they will wait below. Feng Yun sighed and agreed as this will be their only way to participate. While they were heading their way, Tianeming approached his master Shaoqing. He said that if they will go to the Tongshan Ladder and can participate in the Realm Wars, and Shaoqing cannot go up, this will be unfair as per Tianeming. But then, Shaoqing told him not to worry. He explained that as long as one of the three disciples of the Grand Orient sect can get one of the seven places, someone will come down to pick Shaoqing up. He also told Tianeming that the Tongshan staircase is just a spiral staircase leading to Heaven's Elysium. It's not a real battle between sects so they can't help but to come down and pick them up. However, once Tianeming wants to participate in this battle between sects, the ancient god palace requires that there must be someone present to oversee the major sects, Otherwise, the battle between sects will not open. Because Heaven's Elysium holds the Grand Orient Sword and they have to hold the battle between the sects in time. If they miss the time, they are afraid that they will anger the ancient god palace and the ancient god realm as per Shaoqing. Tianeming then understood everything that Shaoqing said. Shaoqing held Tianeming's shoulder and reminded one more thing. He said that Sheng Tianlin is his friend. Whether it's on the Tongshan Ladder or in the Realm Wars. As long as the kids are here, Tianeming needs to have to take care of them so it's better to keep them safe. Making him appreciate you is a good thing. Got it. Shaoqing added. Good. Tianeming answered. While looking at the way they were heading, Tianeming believes that the road ahead may be a little bumpy. But he's willing to crush this small road into a wider one. At the same time, Heaven's Elysium, Onyx Sect, and the Cloud Mist Sword have arrived at the Tongshan Stairs. They are all 100% sure that today's Tongshan Ladder Battle is sure to be exciting as well as interesting. Sikong Jiancheng agreed because there is a noble, so he was confident that it would be very exciting. It's a shame that the Southski Sect didn't join, even though I invited Weisheng Tianlin to an alliance but he turned it down. He added, he also greeted the Onyx Empress and Emperor. From what they both heard, the grandson of Jian Cheng is now in the Heavenly Will realm, and his sword art and comprehension are beyond ordinary people. 
You are praising him too much. For me, Tianchen's talent is very shallow compared to the Onyx Emperor's grandson who is in the Middle Heavenly Will realm. Jian Sheng answered. Tianchen then interfered to tell his grandfather not to brag so much since he believes that the young people here and him are just nothing compared to the Seven Sons of Heaven Elysium. The Seven Sons of Heaven's Elysium are the true Sons of Heaven in the Eastern Emperor realm. Just by looking at them, they will know that their future is limitless. Don't elevate them. Among my seven strongest students, there are only two namely Longer and Tianyi, and the other students are just supporters. Isn't that right, Tianyi? Dong Yin said. Tianyi was shocked to hear it from his father, Dong Yin. For him, he's still far from the strongest one. Jun Tianyi is Jun Dong Yin's eldest son. In terms of talent, Yuling Long is the stronger for him and also the one who deserves to be the strongest. Dong Yin closed his eyes and just agreed to his son. Dong Yin then declared that 15 disciples will soon set foot on Tongshan steps and he wondered about where's Yuling Long. Tian Yi then answered that his uncle and Yuling Long went to train and the last thing they said is they will be back before the battle between Realm Wars started. According to Tian Yi, his uncle will definitely make Yuling Long stronger with her talent and cultivation. After all, he believes that his uncle Nian Kang is the most terrifying person in Heaven's Elysium. Father, don't worry. Even if Sister Longer hasn't returned, I, Jun Tianyi, promise to win this battle and when they return from their training, we will benefit for a lifetime. Chan Yi stated. Dong Yin closes his eyes once more while he answers okay to his son. An old man then told them that they don't need to wait for Yuling Long since the lady is busy with her practice. He also agreed to Tianyi. From what he has seen, all the students here cannot be compared to Yuling Long, and he wondered why they still wanted to fight her over the Grand Orient Sword. I really don't know how to write the word dead. He added. At this time, Dong Yin then declared that they can now start climbing the Tongshan stairs and will see who can get out through Heaven's Gate. On the other hand, Tianming arrived at the forest and noticed that the people from the other sects had already spread out. He then concludes that the location of the Tongshan staircase entrance is random. This is very different from what he had imagined, and he feels that it's similar to the Shenyuan battlefield. Tianming then remembered that he didn't choose to enter Heaven's Elysium four months ago as he decided to choose the Grand Orient sect, without thinking that he would come here today. Tianming is staring at the tall mountain in front of him that looks like a gate. He then believes that the Tongshan is at the top of the highest mountain so they need to go upstairs. Ying Huo suddenly speaks to inform Tianming that someone is coming. When Tianming turned around, he instantly saw Xia Minglin, standing still while crossing his arms. Tianming then turned back and told Minglin that he didn't want to go with him. Tianming was wrong because Minglin didn't approach to team up with him, but instead, he just wanted to see Tianming's five bane rings. The last time, Tianming didn't dare to show his rings to everyone. That's why Minglin is suspecting him now that he lied. Even so, the Tianlin Emperor remains convinced and can't say anything. Tianming told him that he still doesn't want to show it, and Minglin that scares him that he will hold back Tianming and tear his sleeves for him to take a look at the rings. Tianming gives him an option that he will only show it after the Realm Wars, and in his mind, he was already annoyed at Minglin's stubbornness, and he knows that Minglin is not worthy of his time. Without any hesitations, Minglin summoned his lifebound beast which he called a Galaxy Crab. Why Tianming, your stubbornness is meaningless, you need to show me your five bane rings. I will beat you to see for yourself. Minglin uttered. Hurry up, I'm in a hurry. Tianming answered. Near them is a man standing on the three while loudly laughing seeing a disciple from the Grand Orient sect will be fighting against the disciple of the Southski sect. It was from the Cloudmist Sword sect disciple named Fan Wushan. Interesting, fellow friends themselves quarrel with each other, truly worthy of being called ants. He stated. Tianming then asked him if he wanted to join the battle or just watch them fighting. Tianming doesn't mind at all if Fan Wushan wants to come along since it will reduce his competition. Tianming widely smiled while ordering both of his companions to end this battle quickly as he needed to participate in the Tongshan stairs. Who's the boss here? I don't need you to order me around. Also, Miao Miao is still sleeping. Ying Huo answered. As what Wushin knows, you and Shendu broke through the heavenly will so he wondered why he didn't see Shendu this time and instead sent a small fries which one of them is Tianming who picks a fight with two people at once. Minglin sighed and showed his disappointment of forming an alliance with the Grand Orient sect, with Tianming. Ying Huo rushed to Wushin without saying any words, and upon seeing this little chicken of Tianming, Wushin belittled it and even yawned to look like it was just an easy round for him. Tianming forcefully gets Meow Meow and throws it to his opponent. At this time, Ying Huo was flaming and there was a shadow of a phoenix behind him. Wushin was dumbfounded to see it, and when Ying Huo attacked, it created a huge explosion, 
and Wuxian's lifebound beast was beaten instantly without a chance of fighting back. Storm, hang in there, Wuxian said to his beast. Wuxian grits his teeth out of annoyance and he was planning to avenge his lifebound beast. But to his surprise, Meow Meow strikes an attack going towards Wuxian's giant bird. And Wuxian's companion beast was beaten once more and Wuxian cannot believe what just happened. You survived it, as expected of a hand-picked top-level genius. Tianeming uttered. Wuxian then rushed to Meow Meow with killing intent and Meow Meow then ran away to avoid Wuxian's technique. Leave the cat alone. I'll show you how to wield a sword. Ying Huo stated. He then casts a Void God Sword intent and from a little power becomes a big one that defeats Wuxian's attack. Wuxian was even more shocked to witness that Tianeming's can can also use a sword technique. He was annoyed to think that this technique is above the heavenly rank which he cannot even learn himself. He then used a Gale Greatsword to avoid being hit by Ying Huo, and surprisingly, Mao Mao transformed and was about to attack Wuxian. Wuxian was already mad knowing that this chicken is already a big enough problem for him, and now, he was being ambushed by the cat. Tianeming let both of his lifebound beasts beat Wuxian and he then faced Minglin and asked if he was already prepared to get his ass kicked. I admit that I underestimated you, but there's no way you can take on two people at a time. Without your lifebound beasts, you'll die for sure. Minglin answered. Tianeming is preparing his black arm as this will be his perfect chance to test out his metal fist on Minglin and see if it is hard enough. Minglin laughed at Tianeming as he believes that Tianeming is brainless for planning to compete in hardness with a crab-type beast. He was about to boast something but then, he was cut off when he saw Tianeming disappear instantly. Tianeming was already in front of Minglin's crab and was about to punch using the first of the trivia fiend fist. Minglin then ordered his lifebound beast to crush Tianeming's arm. The crab raised his pincers to attack Tianeming and a great force was made when Tianeming's skyshaker technique landed on the crab's pincers. Because of his powerful punch, the crab was crumbled to pieces which made Minglin shocked. At the same time, Wuxian was annoyed as he was pushed back by Miao Miao and Ying Huo this whole time. Ying Huo noticed that Wuxian is not focusing despite the fact that he already has openings. Ying Huo then slashed Wuxian's hand and his hand fell on the ground while he screamed in agony. Young man, don't butt in other people's business in the future. Scram home and get that hand attached. Ying Huo stated. At this time, Wuxian regrets what he has done and he promises that he will not do it again. He even begged for some mercy to Ying Huo and Miao Miao. He then runs away while screaming that a monsters has come which are from the Grand Orient sect. That's a top level genius. He's never been in the real world. Ying Huo uttered while staring at Wuxian leaving the area. While Wuxian surrendered, Minglin's lifebound beast on the other side was crushed by Tianeming and Minglin vomited blood as he also felt the pain. He now admitted to himself that Tianeming is indeed a strong one and the only thing on his mind is to escape as soon as possible as he doesn't want to end up like Wuxian that got his hand cut off. He then runs away while believing that Tianeming is really a pentabane. Tianeming then looked at him while he was running and as per Tianeming, Minglin's speed is not so fast. Minglin was startled as he saw something blocking him. He then realized that it was Tianeming. Not bad, quite swift on your feet, aren't you? Tianeming uttered. He then raised his metal arm and squeezed Minglin's face. Minglin is already crying in pain and fear of death. Do you believe that I replaced you and Shendu to come here now? Then remember how badly you ended up today. Tell your grandfather Gu Klu Yu that the Bayan Rings ate just a sign of strength. He'll be able to witness my strength with his own eyes during the Realm Wars. Tianeming stated. Tianeming was unaware that Heaven's Disciple has a huge screen where they can be able to see the participants of the Realm Wars. The people that showed Tianeming on the screen were curious about Tianeming. The Heaven's Elysium Vice Inspectors were here together with the old man and the old said that Tianeming is familiar to him. Yixu then instantly remembered that it was Lai Tianeming from the Vermilion Bird. She was shocked to witness that Tianeming changes a lot. As per Yixuan, it was really Tianeming and he never doubted this. He believes that Tianeming broke through a whole realm within three or four months which Yuling Ling cannot even make it. He also remembered that Jing Yu said Tianeming is Lai Wudi's illegitimate son so he concludes that Tianeming might also have four Bane Rings. They know that they cannot hide this information lightly so they decided to inform the higher-ups as soon as possible. They believe that the Heaven's Elysian King this time will never believe them. The old man then said that they also have to inform Yuling Long first, but not now, they should have observed a little bit longer according to the old man. At this moment, Tianeming is planning to go to the top of the mountain as he believes that this is where the participants of the Grand Orient Sword went. Mao Mao then leads the way while Tianeming is asking them to wait for him. You're the slow one. Wasn't this a test of speed? Ying Huo answered. 
As they were walking, they feels that they entered a heavenly pattern barrier. As what Tianeming observed, it's filled with a bloody mist, similar to the bloodbane barrier from the Lai Mausoleum. Though, it's vastly inferior in comparison. When Tianeming used his bewildering eye, he noticed that there was someone fighting up ahead. He saw a water-type lifebound beast so he believes that it was someone from the Southski sect. Later then he realized that it was Weisheng Ruasu, and she was currently facing several red bats. She grits her teeth and it seems like he was having a hard time facing her opponent this time. Tianeming then concludes that fighting midair isn't Ruasu's strong suit so he decided to help the lady. We're all men here, I get it, you don't need to explain. Ying Huo answered. Don't worry about it. I won't tell Ling'er a thing after she wakes up. That is assuming you don't mess with me while I'm sleeping. Miao Miao stated. Tian then stepped forward while saying that he was just following his master's orders. For him, an innocent man like him has nothing to fear as his intention is only to help Ruasu. He remembered that his master teacher Shaoqing is asking him a favor to take good care of his friend's daughter Weisheng Tianlin. And his daughter is no other than Weisheng Ruasu. Tianeming then appeared in front of Ruasu and offered some help. Since he's not familiar with the monster they are facing, Tianeming then asked Ruasu. And Ruasu then explained that these are Crimson Blood Fiend Bats. They have two awakened abilities, the Confounding Screech and Crimson Blood Miasma. Ruasu said that her Still Ocean God Whale has a defensive fighting style, but doesn't have a good way to deal with the bats. Tianeming then summoned his chain and ordered both his life-bound beasts to prepare for the battle. Ruasu was looking at Tianeming's beasts, and she felt thrilled knowing that both Ying Huo and Miao Miao are so cute in her eyes. She even said that she wanna pet these beasts. At the same time, she's also doubting if these little beasts can really fight. Then she witnessed Miao Miao and Ying Huo's movement. Miao Miao is attacking the bat with his claw while Ying Huo is blowing some flame and he claims that he's not a cutie but a manly. Tianeming then Ruasu that there was no reason for her to worry since these bats are nothing to Ying Huo and Miao Miao. They both were riding at Ruasu's beast and in an instant, Miao Miao electrocuted all the bats left. Ruasu was shocked knowing that Tianeming and his life-bound beasts are indeed strong so she cannot believe that Tianeming is still in unity. Done. We've wasted too much time here. Let's get going. Be sure to follow closely behind. Tianeming stated. Alright, thank you. Though, I doubt I won't be able to keep up with you. Weisheng Ruasu answered. Tianeming then leave the area at a fast speed while telling Ruasu to follow immediately. Ruasu then followed Tianeming as fast as she could, but she only barely kept up. She admitted that she have doubted Tianeming's abilities too, but she was impressed and at the same time was amazed to witness the real power of a pentabane. Meanwhile, they reached the peak of the mountain, and they noticed that there was someone at the gate. It was the people from the Cloud Mist Sword sect and one of them is Sikong Tianchen, and they held captive Ruasu's brother, Weisheng Kingluan. Ruasu was shocked to see her brother and she was worried as she saw that Kingluan is full of bruises. When Kingluan saw her, he immediately asked for some help from her sister. Senior, the girl you love is already together with someone else. No wonder she rejected you at the banquet, the lady said beside Tianchen. Ruasu knows that her brother was held captive with the lead of Tianchen so she ordered Tianchen to let her brother go. She even said that she didn't think Tianchen would stoop this low. Tianchen then answered that he gave Kingluan some mercy. He said that if Kingluan fell into the hands of others, surely he'll be dead. He also told Ruasu that Kingluan will get to live if he climbs out of there. If anything, I should be the one saying that to you. I didn't think shallow white-haired garbage was your type. He added, if you're a real one, you'd already have let him go, fight me if you're so mad about it. Tianeming answered as he believes that Tianchen is referring to him. Who do you think you are? You can't to fight with Sikong Tianchen himself. No named pawns should just keep your mouth shut. A man together with Tianchen said. At this time, Tianchen ordered his companions to hand over Ruasu to him and do whatever they want to Tianeming. He didn't care if his companions will kill Tianeming this time. For him, the worse they do, the better. A lady with him then said that all the torture methods she prepared just for the Grand Orient sect are finally gonna come in hand. Tianeming smirked while ordering Miao Miao and Ying Huo to prepare to fight. For Tianeming, these people in front of him are just some small fries that aren't even at his stage. They didn't know that Tianeming nowadays can't get excited about anyone below the Heavenly Will stage. Ying Huo and Miao Miao were also excited to fight and Ying Huo even challenged Miao Miao for a race. You've got my blood pumping now that you've said it. Miao Miao answered. The opponent then summoned his life-bound beast called Non-Poison Lizard. His companion has thousand-legged flame centipede, and the lady with them has a snow silkworm. Despite that their companion beasts were too big, Tianeming, Ying Huo, and Miao Miao didn't feel any frightened. 
Tianming then let both of his beasts choose whoever they wanted and he will take whoever is left. Ying Huo decided to take the lizard while Meow Meow wanted the one with several legs. At this time, these three then rushed to their chosen adversary, and they started fighting above, while below are Sikong Tianchen, Waikang Kingluan, and Waisheng Ruasu. Tianchen reminded Ruasu that they've always been fighting on the South Ski Island but he believes that he has the advantage this time. He said that he was willing to let Ruasu pass through the gate. He just wants the lady to get a good sense of reality and change her mind about him. Ruasu doesn't care about his thoughts. Instead, she becomes furious and stops Tianchen from speaking useless words. She rather fights someone as shallow as Tianchen rather than force herself on this guy. Tianming's eyes were flaming as he cast Transcendence Skill. In an instant, he sliced the silkworm into two and the lady also fell to the ground and was already weak. Tianming then teases her for thinking about torturing him when she can't even take a single hit from Tianming. Yin Huo also defeated the lizard, but then, he was a little bit disappointed that he got the second place as Tianming ended his enemy first. Onward ran away, whoops. I got too lazy to chase it. Mao Mao said as he also defeated the centipede, and the owner escaped immediately. King Luan was jaw-dropping as he cannot believe that Tianming and his life-bound beasts were too strong for defeating enemies within a blink of an eye. Upon hearing his reaction, Tianchen turned his head behind and was shocked as he saw that all his companions were knocked down by Tianming. Tianming realized that he did too much. He forgot to be low-key and now he looked like he was trying to show off in front of a beautiful lady. Ying Huo then told him that he should kick the ass of Sikong Tianchen as it is how to win over the ladies. Ling'er will strangle me after she wakes up. Tianming answered. Tianchen then stepped forward going towards Tianming. With anger on his face, he asked about Tianming's name. Tianming was about to answer, but then Ying Huo interfered and said that Tianming's name is Sikong Jian Cheng. Call him grandpa if you're a good grandson. Ying Huo added. Because of his answer, Tianchen becomes furious and has the intention of killing Tianming with his life-bound beasts. He then roared in anger and he was circulated with flame. Tianming in his mind was blaming Ying Huo's bad mouthing which made Tianchen react like this. But then, Ying Huo doesn't care about Tianchen and even said that Tianchen is a loser for bullying the brother of the girl he likes. Where are your morals? You don't even look good. You think you're worthy of the beautiful Waisheng. Get a good look at your grandfather Sikong Jiancheng over here. That's what you call a badass. You should just give it up. Why not just start calling her grandma from now? Ying Huo uttered. At this point, Tianchen is already trembling in anger while gritting his teeth out of annoyance. He then warned Tianming to watch his life-bound beast. Ying Huo then asked what he planned to do. He doesn't care if Tianchen wanted to fight him. He also told Tianchen not just stand and mumble monologues. If I was as pathetic as you are, I'd cut my own dick off right here. I wouldn't be out here trying to embarrass everyone. Ying Huo added and cast an attack going toward Tianchen. Tianchen then blocked Ying Huo's skill using his sword and decided to fight back this time. Without hesitation, he summoned his twin phoenix. Tianming was amazed upon seeing it, and Ying Huo then proudly said that he was also a phoenix too. Since Tianchen wanted to fight against Tianming and Ying Huo, Ruasu then shouted, asking him to settle their problems with each other on their own since their problem has nothing to do with Tianming. Instead of listening, Tianchen screamed at her and told her to leave. Ruasu was shocked as this is the first time that a man treated him like this. Tianming was holding his sword and asking Ruasu to leave Tianchen to him and just save his brother Kingluan. Tianming realized that Tianchen is already at the heavenly will which is much stronger than you and Shendu. He smiled as he was glad that he finally have a worthy opponent. You're using a sword while fighting me. Come on now, drop your toys. Against me, anything else would be better. Go pick up some chains and use those or something. Tianchen stated. It's a bit too soon to come to a conclusion like that, no. Tianming answered. Ruasu is currently saving her brother and King Lu and then told her to help Tianming. But then, Ruasu said that there was no need as she believes in Tianming's abilities. For now, she wanted to heal her brother first. King Lu and then looked at her and was shocked that her sister Ruasu is confident with Tianming. Tianming then told Miao Miao and Ying Huo that they'll take one each as usual. Miao Miao just wants to take a nap but Tianming doesn't want to let him rest for now. Tianminga and Tianchen then rushed to each other and they were facing each other's chosen adversary. Tianchen was also using his sword and when their swords collided, a huge impact that creates an explosion above happened. Because of this, King Luan instantly believes that Tianming is really a strong guy. They witnessed that Lai Tianming is actually on par. Ying Huo used a Void God Sword Intent Starfall which made King Luan surprised as he never thought that a life-bound beast can be this strong. Tianchen grits his teeth knowing that Tianming used a heavenly-ranked sword art. 
He was annoyed to think that Tianming has full of surprise. He believes that he has to use a finishing move to end Tianming as soon as possible. He then activates his technique called 3000 Cloud Mist Swords, Kao Toss, and several swords then appeared going towards Tianming. Tianming still managed to smile as this technique is so cool for him. He was impressed as this is the first time he saw a Heavenly Will technique. This is the type of sword technique he wanted to fight. To have an opponent that's similar in skill is wonderful for Tianming. He then ready himself to attack back using Void God Sword Intent, Cosmic Break, and the swords were pushed back. Tingluan and Ruasu witnessed this and it makes them both shocked. Even Tianchen was shocked to see that all his swords were pushed back because of Tianming's technique. He have been training with swords since he was three. It took him 14 years to understand and learn their ancestral technique that's why he was dumbfounded right now and realized that he had lost. He was too focused staring up above and it was impossible for him. Tianming then seized the opportunity to rush at him and attacked him with a windbreak. He slashed Tianchen's stomach and Tianchen let go of his sword. Tianchen then vomits blood, and Tianming is not done yet. He attacks Tianchen for the last time and this is the first time that he used the Trevita Friend Fist. The punch was so powerful that made Tianchen flew away and fell to the ground. His face was slammed on the ground causing the ground to be crumpled. Tianming widely smiled as his one foot is on the head of Tianchen. So, am I worthy of the swords? Tianming asked. Even though Tianchen didn't give him an answer, Tianming loudly said that Tianchen admitted it. He even warned Tianchen that he can never hold a sword again if he will dare to say anything else. Tianchen then said that he wouldn't dare and Tianming was thankful that Tianchen misheard everything he was saying. His face was full of bruises and his blood comes out from his mouth. At this point, Tianchen believes that it doesn't mean Tianming won against him just because he has lost. He concludes that Tianming will finally be defeated by the Elysian children and he thinks that these children will be Tianming's worst nightmare. Tianming defeat Tianchen was also seen by the people from other sects. They were all curious about Tianming's real identity as they never saw Tianming before. One person then said that Tianming is a prime disciple of the Grand Orient sect. Jian Sheng then grits his teeth as he saw that his son was beaten up by Tianming. At the same time, Tianlin was surprised and glad that a pentabane comparable to their ancestor Lai Xing Sao actually came into the world. After the battle of Tianming and Tianchen, King Luan then approached Tianming to thank him. He said that he cannot thank Tianming enough for saving his life. He also believes that Tianming is the first person who defeated a heavenly will as a unity. Tianchen then answered that there was no need for him to thank too much since he acknowledged King Luan at Ruasu as allies. Because of Tianming's battle against Tianchen, Ruasu now believes that Tianming really defeated Yu and Shendu. Enough about all that. Let's think about what we should do next. Tianming answered. King Luan was whispering something to Ruasu as he likes Tianming for her sister. You see that? He's your fan now, he'll try to get you and his sister together, no doubt about it. Ying Huo stated, and Tianming sighed as he was too loyal to linger. All of a sudden, someone behind Tianming spoke, asking him about what he was doing. When Tianming looked behind him, he saw that it was Shangyu and Yunfeng together with Zhao Lingzhuo. They were confused why Tianming, Ruasu, and King Luan is just standing in this place despite that the through path has ended yet. Tianming then smiled and was glad that his group is now here. As per Yunfeng, he and Lingzhuo meet by chance on their way. They didn't see anyone and only saw some monsters. Tianming then let them know that when they arrived here, there were several people guarding the door. King Luan then interfered and proudly said that Tianming was the one who chased those people away. There's no doubt in our mind that he's a pentabane now. He added, is that so? I've been there before too. Yunfeng answered and laughed. Only seven will get to advance to into the next round. Two disciples from the Onyx sect already went, and Lingzhuo suggested that five of them will go next. He then makes sure that his companions will not object, and he believes that the Southski disciples won't stab them in the back. Don't worry, no one's interested in your back. Tianming answered. He then ordered everyone to leave the area and go to their goal to pass the through gate. Let's fight alongside each other, Tianming added. The seven participants for the upcoming realm wars have all passed the through gate. The Elysian king then congratulated them all, and Tianming was staring at the giant participants in front of him. He knows about this giant man and the guy on his shoulder. From what he has seen from the information he got, this giant man is Lai Jiusi, the grandson of the Onyx Emperor, and above him is Lai Wusheng, his twin brother. Judging by how they look, most people wouldn't believe it even if they were told, but they're actually twins. Tianeming observed that most of the people here aren't very happy that Tianeming with his companions have passed through gate. 
He can just tell by the way they're gritting their teeth. Tianeming then greeted the Elysian King and the King heard that Tianeming is the son of Lai Wudi. He also heard that Tianeming replaced Lai Wudi in this realm wars. That's correct Elysian King. Tianeming answered. The last important detail that he heard about Tianeming is that he's a pentabane, one that's comparable to the body of the first ancestor of the Lai Saint clan. He then ordered Tianeming to show his bane rings in front of everyone. But then, since Tianeming has a problem with the bane rings he has, he declined the king's request and reasons out that the bane rings are merely a representation of strength. He said that if the Elysian king have any doubts, he should take a look at his presentation earlier. And if he still has doubts, Tianeming suggested that the king can look forwards to his performance in the realm wars. The king suddenly guffawed while saying that it's been ages since someone from the Grand Orient sect would rather dare to talk like Tianeming in front of them. He said that Tianeming forget how the word death is spelled just because he has talent. He also told Tianeming that it doesn't matter even if someone like Tianeming had 10,000 bane rings. The people in here from the other sect have agreed with what the king stated. They even trust that the Elysian children can really defeat Tianeming. The Prime Disciples and South Ski Disciples bowed down to greet the king aside for Tianeming. This time, King Luan was thinking that Tianeming is very brave. Just the glare of people here is enough to kill them. He can't even raise his head. And yet, Tianeming doesn't look scared at all. Tianeming still spoke, and he told the king that they, the Grand Disciples of the Grand Orient Sect and South Ski Sect have passed through gates so they'll participate in the Realm Wars is what the rules have declared. He politely asked the king to allow their seniors to come up in this area to ensure the realm wars go by smoothly. The Elysian king was shaking in anger as Tianeming deliberately pushed all his buttons. He was disappointed that the Grand Orient sect and South Ski sect got five spots out of seven. We'll just tell Wei Sheng Tianlin to get his ass up here himself. Yet you're asking us to go and welcome him. Giant Sheng shouted. Sect Master Sikong, why do you mind that so much? Are you afraid we'll take away your ground? Don't worry, the Heavens Elysium won't chase you away even if none of your disciples made it. Tianeming answered which made Jian Sheng furious. He shouted at Tianeming which makes lightning and Tianeming suddenly vomits blood. He feels how hurtful it is and he realized that Jiang Sheng pierced his tongue. Ruasu then approached Tianeming to stop him from uttering unnecessary words as she was afraid since there were no seniors together with them. She also informed Tianeming that she has some lotus elixir from the lotus spirit fruit so she offered Tianeming to heal his wound. Tianeming then declined his offer and told her that this is just a small one that can't pose a big problem. He believes that a wound like this can be healed in two days with the help of the Prime Tower. But, he'll never forget the pain on his tongue though. Since Tianeming was in pain, the people from the other sect made fun of him. This time, the Elysian King ordered someone to bring up here the people of the Grand Orient Sect and the Southski Sect. Yes Elysian King, straight away. The person under his command answered. A few moments later, the servant came back by himself and the king asked him why he came alone. According to his servant, the people from the Grand Orient and South Ski sect said that they want the king to welcome them himself since he also welcomes the onyx set and the cloud mist sword himself. The king grits his teeth out of annoyance. The seniors from the other sect were furious and asked the king not to lower himself to the people from the Grand Orient and South Ski sect. Tianeming this time believes that the Elysian king doesn't have a choice but to go welcome their senior since they don't know when the theocracy of ancients is watching. The king then stood up and was forced to welcome the seniors of the Grand Orient and South Ski sect. He was mad but he doesn't have a choice either. He then rides into his golden lion while Tianeming is staring at him with annoyance. After a while, the king came back together with Shaoqing and Tianlin. When Shaoqing and Tianeming faced each other, Shaoqing noticed that there was a wound on Tianeming's tongue so he wondered who did this. Tianeming then answered that it was just nothing. He looked to the person behind him which is Jian Sheng while saying that there's no point in pointing fingers at such a shameless man. The sect master Sikong himself, ha, huh, retaliating against the younger generation just because your own grandson got defeated. Hilarious, Shaoqing uttered loudly, and he successfully get Jian Cheng's attention. Who the hell do you think you are? Do you think you have the right to talk? A sect that has no emperor dares to be wild. Want to talk to this emperor? How ridiculous. Jian Cheng said. Shaoqing then answered him that a dignified sect emperor who is angry attacks younger disciples to vent his hatred. He said that a sect emperor like Jian Cheng will only bring down the image of the sect. At this time, Jian Cheng summoned his power and Shaoqing did the same thing. They were very determined to fight against each other, but then, the king ordered them to shut. Now that everyone is gathered, he doesn't want to waste more time. He declared that the battle between sects will be held tomorrow according to the rules. He doesn't want to see any complaints on that day. 
Before leaving, he informed everyone that the battle will be held on the Shangshan battlefield in his sacred place, and the selected disciples will go to the Shangshan battlefield. When the king has left, Giant Cheng tells Xiaoqing not to be happy today. Although Tianming is really interesting, however, he would soon become the talk of the public as per Giant Cheng, and he believes that all the Elysian children will aim for Tianming tomorrow's battle. He will be completely wiped out in tomorrow's battle. All you can do is watch and pray. He added, It's better than your Cloudmas sword sect that can't even participate in the realm wars. Your sect is trash. You are not even qualified to share grievances with our disciples in realm wars. Shayoking calmly answered. Giant Cheng was mad and threatened Shayoking that he'll cut Shayoking's head after the realm wars will be over. Shayoking was not scared and told him to stop threatening. Instead, hurry down the mountain to congratulate his Cloud Miss Sword sect for coming home early. Tianlin then suddenly spoke to inform Shayoking that they needed to prepare for the training of their disciples. He also told the outsiders to leave immediately. The excluded participants then walked away while Giant Chen still murmured some words to say that Shayoking will die a miserable death when the time comes. While these people were leaving, King Luan then informed his father that Tianming defeated Sikong Tianchen and saved his life despite that Tianming's realm is below him. He explained that he was trapped in the enchantment of the blood mist, and Tianming helped him. He proudly said that Tianming is very strong and trustworthy. Tianlin then smiled while saying that the Pentabane is indeed extraordinary, and also he is very brave, whereas we didn't dare to speak when we got to the top. He even dared to bicker with the emperor of the Sikong sect. Father, mother, I've been completely blown away by it, King Luan said and laughed. His mother is here and was sad to think that they're on a road of no return. Tianlin then answered that she doesn't need to see Giant Cheng's face again. Dui Qiu spoke to ask Tianming for an explanation regarding yesterday's alliance as he heard that Tianming attacked Xi Minglin in Tongshan Mountains. Tianming then proudly said that he really attacked Minglin. He honestly told everyone that Minglin challenged him first so he gave what Minglin is asking for. The Realm Wars will be happening tomorrow and Tianming will fight side by side with Ruoso and King Luan so Gui Qiu asked Tianlin if this formation is good with him. Tianlin declined to answer and just told him to focus on the Realm Wars first. He then remembered by Taijin as he heard that this kid was also hurt. Gui Qiu then explained that Taijin's situation right now is more than just a wound as he was tortured and crushed by Lai Wusheng of the Onyx sect. Poisonous insects entered his body, and a third of his internal organs were eaten by insects. Although he didn't die, it was enough to cripple him for life. Tianming then interfered by saying that the people from the Onyx sect are so ruthless as they know they will not let the enemy in front of them go easily. In his mind, he vows that he will never be gentle again for tomorrow's realm wars. While they were walking, Tianming saw the people from Heaven's Elysium, including the two vice potentates. Tianming didn't forget their faces and he didn't expect to meet this old acquaintance here. As he remembered, the last time they met was in the Vermilion Bird. However, he believes that these people have something to do with Yuling Long. When Tianming is already near them, he ordered them to inform Yuling Long that he's already here. Xiaoqing then called him and asked about who he was talking to. Tianming answered that he was just talking with just some inexperienced little people. He then walked away together with his master and Xiaoqing informed him they'll return to their inn now to rest first and will make preparation for the battle tomorrow. The old man together with Heaven's Elysium then said that they need to go to tell Yuling Long about what they have seen and heard today. Meanwhile, they all arrived at Heaven's Elysium and Tianming mentioned to Xiaoqing that this Heaven's Elysium is indeed majestic and flourishing compared to their Grand Orient sect. As per Xiaoqing, it's natural since Heaven's Elysium has experienced victory for up to a hundred generations or a thousand years. He's afraid that the people here don't know how it feels to be defeated. He then held Tianming to inform his disciple to keep holding his sword in his hand. He acknowledged that Tianming is a part of the Lai Saint clan and the inheritor of the ancestral soul. Tianming then understood his master and he said that on this battlefield, he must fight for the dignity of the Grand Orient sect and the Lai Saint clan. That's right, we have to fight for a hundred senior generations. The Grand Orient sword was originally ours. Xiaoqing said, Teacher, don't worry, this time I will mess up with the Heaven's Elysium. Tianming answered. After they talked, they met with the other disciples to prepare for the Realm Wars. Although Tianlin knows that their disciples probably know the rules in this Realm Wars, he still decided to repeat it to them, again as there are still some details to explain. According to him, the battle between the sects from the name to all the rules, supervision, and prevention is actually arranged by the ancient god kingdom. As the host, Heaven's Elysium only provides one place and that is the Shengshen Battlefield. At least 300,000 people will witness the Realm Wars tomorrow, mostly all spectators from Heaven's Elysium. 
The Realm Wars will be in the Enchantment Realm, and this enchantment is called the Eastern Emperor Realm. This is a mini version of the Eastern Emperor Realm, so there will be Tianlin's South Ski Island in the sea. Upon hearing this information, Tianming realized that it was so mysterious and for him, the person who made this charm is really amazing. Tianlin continued his lecture and he said that the terrain inside was extremely complicated and there were many places to maneuver and hide, and there would also be spiritual disasters and beasts blocking the way. The Realm Wars is divided into two parts, one is to fight the Grand Orient Sword and the other is to defend the Grand Orient Sword. After finding the Grand Orient Sword, the Realm Wars will enter a 10-day countdown. If they will manage to defend the sword within 10 days, they will be the victor. If the Grand Orient Sword is stolen in the middle, and the sword holder is changed, the timer will immediately restart for 10 days. The most difficult thing is whether they can hold the Grand Orient Sword that shines bright and longer. The Grand Orient Sword will continue to reveal the sword holder's position. Historically, it should have been the disciples of the four great sects competing for the Grand Orient Sword, but were instead abused by Heaven's Elysium. While Tianlin is lecturing, Shaoqing suddenly said his opinion that he thinks Tianlin's son and daughter will surely become Heaven's Elysium's target. But then, Tianlin answered that both of his children had come this far, and it was their will. Tianming, you must take good care of the four of them. Shaoqing said, of course, helping each other. Tianming answered with his thumbs up and a wide smile on his face. At this moment, Tianming wondered if Ling'er will wake up during the Realm Wars since it's almost a month that she have gone. He was currently staring at the necklace of Ling'er as she misses her love so much. When the night comes, Yuling Long is having a private talk with a person named Nianqiang. Nian Kang invited Yuling Long to practice in the ancient god kingdom. But then Yuling remembered that Nian Kang's father said that it may not be beneficial for them to go to the ancient god kingdom and it's better to practice in the Heaven's Elysium Palace. She said that the wealth is not necessarily worse than the ancient god kingdom. When Nian Kang becomes the emperor of Heaven's Elysium, Yuling Long promised that she will help him. And when it happens that the Eastern Emperor Realm is united, she'll get an opportunity to go to the ancient god kingdom. Nyankang then said that he doesn't want to become the Emperor of Heaven's Elysium. Jun Nyankang is the youngest son of the Emperor of Heaven's Elysium. What would you choose if your brother hurt me because he was afraid of not becoming the Emperor's heir? Yuling Long asked. Nyankang then promised the lady that no one can hurt her as long as he was still alive. They both then held each other's hand and Yuling Long leaned on Nyankang's shoulder while saying that he trusts Nyankang so much. Nyankang then decided to go back to the palace, but then, there were three people who suddenly came out of nowhere. It was the old man together with the two vice inspectors of Heaven's Elysium. They then greeted Yuling Long and said that they have something important to report. As expected, they reported that they saw Tianming and will be one of the participants in the Realm Wars. Upon hearing it, Yuling Long was shocked as she didn't expect that this time will come. She thought that Tianming was trash, but then, she knows now that Tianming turned out to be the one who turned his life against the heavens. She now regretted for not bringing Tianming with her in Heaven's Elysium before. She believes that she's not the only person now who can develop fast with a little practice. I saw it right. Actually this old slave was instigated by that kid to come here. The old man stated. Nian Kang then told her not to worry too much about the pentabane body of Tianming. He believes that even though Tianming's cultivation is increasing rapidly, he is still no match for Yuling Long. He said that this will be the chance for Yuling Long to kill Tianming while he is still weak than Yuling Long. This time he was unlucky, came to the Realm Wars still in a weak state. So, you just need to get him and cut off his hopes of going up. Nian Kung added. He motivates Yuling Long by saying that in the entire Eastern Emperor Realm, she'll be the only genius who will truly turn Tianming's life against heaven. Yuling then smiled and explained that she is only amazed by Tianming's cultivation speed. But this time, she's very determined to erase Tianming's cultivation as she believes that it will be fine to kill Tianming. As per Nyankang, even up to 10,000 generations in the Grand Orient sect will forever remain trash because after some time, the Grand Orient sect is no longer considered a sect, and this is what he believes. The next day which is the day of the Realm Wars, thousands of people entered the arena which makes the arena full. The Elysian King felt nervous a little as he didn't see Yuling Long. His son Tiani then told him not to worry since his uncle said to him that Yuling Long will come back as soon as possible. However, he was too confident that he and the other Elysian children is enough even without Yuling Long. Dong Yin then said that Yuling Long must participate, otherwise, Heaven's Elysium will not be looked upon by the people of the ancient god realm. Tiani then said that he was hoping Yuling Long will not come as he was enjoying that he became the center of attraction at this moment. 
He told to his father that he had discussed with two Onyx sect people and proudly said that these people have many amazing torture methods. Dong Yin then remembered the children of the Weisheng family which are Ruasu and King Luan. He instructed his son to watch over these two people and let Weisheng Tianlin cry after the realm wars ended. Okay, no problem at all, what can I do with them? Tian Yi asked. Dong Yin answered that he can do whatever he wants, even killing them is fine. Dad, just wait and watch the show. Tian Yi uttered. From afar, Tianming is looking at them as he was searching for Yuling Long. Since he didn't see the lady, he wondered why Yuling Long hasn't arrived yet. Thoughts come into his mind that Yuling Long might not be participating thinking that there is no worthy opponent to fight this time. The people started murmuring inside. Some have heard that Lai Tianming is the current young sect master of the Grand Orient sect. They commented that Tianming is full of enthusiasm and wants to be humiliated. Some also hope that Tianming will beat two opponents first so the show will be more interesting for them. Aside from Tianming, they also noticed Weisheng Ruasu's beauty from afar. They said that this kind of female temperament is very rare. Up until this time, Lingzhuo still has a poker face as he overheard some words of humiliation from the crowd. He was annoyed as he felt being slandered and ridiculed by everyone. Tianming on the other hand senses that his companions were not used to this kind of scene yet. After a while, the emperor arrived and everyone was ordered to calm down. He's Junqing Cao, supreme ruler of Heaven's Elysium. The crowd then greeted him and all disciples and seniors do the same. As what Tianming observed, Xing Cao is a person who is on a higher level than everyone he has ever met. Wake up, Xing Cao shouted. Yuling Long then appeared and the crowd is making a loud noise as they knew that Yuling Long was the top genius of their Heaven's Elysium Palace. They believe that Yuling Long is their future and their hope. As expected, the crowd were all cheering for her and were confident that Yuling Long can really win again this time. Tianming's face becomes serious as he finally saw the person he was targeting, and that is Yuling Long. Yuling Long immediately looked at him, and she wondered how Tianming grow in these within just four months. However, she wasn't scared as she believes that he can kill Tianming this time. The twin brothers were talking and they knew that Yuling Long is Jun Nyankang's lover. From what they heard, Jun Nyankang had a terrifying talent that could shock the ancient god realm, and it was said that he reached the saint realm at the age of 20. Whereas Yuling Long, she's younger than Nyankang when she reaches the same age as Jun Nyankang. They're afraid that Yuling Long will reach a higher realm this time. Waiting for these two to grow to the extreme, I am afraid that they can dominate this eastern emperor realm. Brother, making friends with the disciples of Heaven's Elysium is very good, so that in the future, our brothers will benefit. Lu Wusheng stated, The Heaven's Elysium supreme ruler then summoned an enchantment and he ordered all the disciples' participants to enter. Everyone then entered immediately, especially Tianming. He landed on the ground and Ying Huo suddenly comes out and was too excited to start this battle, and is very determined to kill everyone who gets in their way. Tianming then stood while saying that the first task is to find the Grand Orient Sword and hold it for 10 days. The question he has right now is how they can find the Grand Orient Sword. When he looked up above, he saw something unfamiliar. It's a half black and half golden ball in the sky. And shockingly, it suddenly divided into 14 small balls and it all went down. Tianming then catch one black ball and there was an instruction written. Whoever finds five balls of the same color will get the Grand Orient Sword. Tianming's question earlier is finally answered. He needs to find and get the same color of the ball so he can get the Grand Orient Sword. The people in the arena were too excited watching the battle on the screen. Dong Yin on the other hand feels boring as this is the first Realm Wars rule. Back then, there were no rules and it was all about luck. However, it doesn't really matter to him now, the more rules will test the disciples' true strength so he realized that it's still useful. Tianming didn't waste a lot of time. He runs as fast as he can and he believes that he can speed up his run if he has the celestial wings of Linger. The only thing he can use for now is the bewildering eye to find an opponent. His first priority now is to collect the ball. He believes that he will have a better chance if he has several balls. As long as he holds three balls of any color, no one can get the Grand Orient Sword. With the use of his bewildering eye, he instantly found two people and it was the twins of the Onyx sect. He climbs up to the branch of the tree while observing them. He then confirmed that it was Lai Wusheng and Lai Jiuxi. Ying Huo believes that participants should split up when entering the enchantment so he was confused why these twins still be together here. He thought that they both were cheating, but then Tianming said that they are not cheating. They are still together with the reason that they are twins and their mind connection can gather together in one day. Ying Huo was clueless about how they can defeat them and Tianming only said to him that they will show the 300,000 spectators from Heaven's Elysium a shocking start and show that the Onyx sect is just nothing. 
As long as we can beat them and have three black balls in our hand, you don't have to be afraid that someone else will get the Grand Orient Sword. Tianeming added. The twin brothers were observing their surroundings without knowing that Tianeming is just staring at them. Remember these two love torturing people, and if anyone else met them, then they would be unlucky. Ying Huo said. Yes, they should be taught a lesson in how it feels to be tortured. Tianeming answered. The twin brothers continuously walk while Tianeming is asking Miao Miao to wake up. He then summoned his sword and is ready to make a massive attack against these brothers. He then rushed to the Onyx twin brothers and attacked both using the man-killing sword and ghost dance. Sweats dropped from Jiyusi's forehead as he realized that there is already someone attacking them. Tianeming cast an earth-killing sword, earthquake, combined with his man-killing sword, dead soul. Earth Killing Sword, Prison Vibes, Heavenly Defying Sword, God's Wrath, and Heavenly Defying Sword, Tribulation. He doesn't want to give these brothers a chance to fight him back, and it can clearly see on the huge screen in the arena how he humiliated both disciples from the Onyx sect. Because of his movements, the crowd was jaw-dropping as Tianeming's movement is too fast that they cannot even react. As per Tianeming, both twins might have died if not because of the eight-tier beast defense armor they wore. Tianeming then called the twins as Onyx Insect Emperor, and by this, Giyusi becomes furious. They then summon their companion beast but Tianeming easily stabbed it with his sword. When the green blood of the beast splattered, Tianeming, Ying Huo, and Miao Miao then moved away as they knew that this green blood is poisonous. In an instant, their life-bound beasts lie down on the ground. Although the sneak attack wasn't completely successful, the effect wasn't bad as per Tianeming. At least one companion beast had died, and the twin were both seriously injured. This time, the twin brother accepts their defeat. Since Tianeming humiliated them, Wusheng vowed that Tianeming will soon receive the consequences. He screamed, telling Tianeming that in the next ten days, when they have more than a dozen torture methods to play with Tianeming slowly, he was confident that on that day, Tianeming will regret being born into this world 10,000 times. The crowd heard their voices, and they made fun of Tianeming as they saw that Tianeming's sneak attack didn't work. They also believed that Tianeming only looks evil now, but his abilities compared to the twin are vastly different. At this moment, Jiyusi summoned his two giant hammers. He was standing while holding his weapon and was ready to fight back. Wusheng on the other hand gets his ghost moon sword while telling Tianeming not to run away today. Tianeming still managed to smile and without any hesitations, he rushed to the opponent together with his life-bound beasts. This kid wants to fight us head on. Wusheng uttered, Very good but I'm really afraid that we can't keep up with it. Jiyusi answered. For the second time, they called out another onyx insect emperor, and Miao Miao then transformed himself. Tianeming then leaves the big bug to both Ying Huo and Miao Miao as he will focus on the twin brothers. Wusheng then called Tianeming a masochist for confidently fighting alone against two opponents. Tianeming then attacked Wusheng with his sword and Wusheng grits his teeth as he was almost hit by Tianeming. His brother Ji Yusi then rushed and Tianeming then ready his metal fist. Disappeared for a thousand years and never appeared again. He uttered. He then easily catches the giant hammer while his other hand was still holding the sword and continuously attacking Wusheng. Tianeming then told them both that he will let them take a look at the so-called Grand Orient Sect and Lai Saint Clan. The crowd was shocked once more as they didn't expect Tianeming will not run away. They were more surprised by the fact that Tianeming used his fist to catch the giant hammer. Even the owner of the hammer Jiyusi was confused about how Tianeming made it. Tianeming then attacked them using Trevita Fiend Fist Boxing Art, God Ringer and they both flew away and slides onto the ground. They both realized that they cannot match Tianeming's strength and even Wusheng cannot even leave a scratch on Tianeming. Tianeming then rushed to them once more at a fast speed and Wusheng was startled to see his face closer. Tianeming then punched him instantly using the metal arm and Wusheng vomits blood while wondering about what kind of boxing art Tianeming used as its strength had surpassed their holy realm's battle arts. Jiyusi then rushed to Tianeming with a killing intent using his technique crushing hammer. Tianeming is just standing while raising his metal arms and he easily punched Jiyusi using the Trevita Fiendfist boxing art, Sky Shatter. It was so powerful that makes GUC flew away and let go of both of his hammers. He also vomits blood because of the punch. For him, Tianeming's punch is the explosive power of a holy realm battle art that exceeds the power of a heavenly will battle art. He was shocked to think that Tianeming learned the art of holy realm battle despite that he is not a heavenly will. At the same time, their companion beast squirts small bugs and Ying Huo and Miao Miao were having a hard time dealing with it. Miao Miao can even feel that these bugs were covered in poison. At this very moment, the crowd clearly see that Tianeming is winning against the brothers and they saw that the twin have no strength to resist. They believe that if Wusheng and Jiyusi won't take action, 
They will be finally defeated by Tianming. Bo Sheng and Ji Yuxi then called out their only insect emperor to ask for some help. Tianming wondered if Mao Mao and Ying Hua were already done with the opponent's companion beast. But at this time, the onyx insect emperor is still alive and was activating a devil illusion. When Tianming checked Mao Mao and Ying Huo, he cannot believe what he have seen. He saw several eyes so he concludes that these are just an illusion. He becomes worried when he realizes that it's the pupil illusion technique. The more he looks at it, the stronger the illusion will be. Even if this only limits his movement, he believes that those twins can take this opportunity to escape. Tianming was surprised as he saw that the illusion has been cut off and it was because of Ying Huo. At a critical moment, you can rely on this phoenix. Is not it, Tianming brother? Ying Huo said. When Tianming finally gets back to his senses, Ying Huo is scolding him as he almost got killed. Ha, huh, who almost got killed? I just took a short break earlier. Tianming answered. Mao Mao was biting the onyx insect emperor, and he called out Ying Huo and Tianming to remind them that the twins are escaping. Tianming and Ying Huo then turned to the twins' direction and immediately chased the twins as they needed to get the ball from them. They then attacked the twin brothers while Miao Miao is just looking at their battle. Ji Yuxi and Wu Sheng is already full of bruises and lumps and they admitted that Tianming is indeed stronger than they imagined. But they believe that Tianming cannot dare to kill them. They are not tied up with the chain and have the guts to murmur words. Tianming then threw out the sword to Wu Sheng's mouth for him to stop talking. Kill you. In your dreams. Wasn't this game meant to torture people? Tianming answered while walking going toward Wu Sheng. Tianming said that he knows these brothers wanted to play slowly that's why he also wanted to play slowly too. He pulled his sword from Wu Sheng's mouth and told him that he wanted to let the 300,000 people in the stands take a good look at this scene. Tianming then remembered that Wu Sheng is screaming earlier about the dozens of torture methods he mentioned so he asked Wu Sheng to say it again this time. Ying Huo then said that Wu Sheng will not dare to say it again even if Tianming will kill him. Tianming then looked at Mao Mao while ordering him to hold the chains and drag these people to let them feel the power of Tianming's chain. Why do I have? Miao Miao answered. Tianming then stated that he saw that Mao Mao is too lazy during the fight earlier so he needs to contribute now. The crowd was confused why the Onyx disciples are now trash and had been beaten easily by Tianming. At first, they expected that the twins will play some tricks, but to think that they finished the fight right away. It's a little bit boring for them. Looks like we still have to rely on our holy sons, Sheng Sao stated while holding his long white beard. He was not happy that the Onyx disciple has been beaten up by only one person. Beside him is his son Dong Yin and since Dong Yin didn't hear any words from Sheng Sao, he believes that his father is already disappointed. He was thinking that getting hit in the face at the start really isn't a good thing. He decided to say something about the scene to lighten up the mood of everyone. Don't you think this is more fun? It's different from years past, but this year I finally had a decent show. Let Lai Tianming be happy for a few more days. It is best not to let him meet Jun Tiani and Yuling Long too soon, he declared, and the crowd uproared as they believes Dong In's statement. On the other hand, Onyx's twin brother's parents were in pain that their sons are suffering. The lady then told Jian Cheng that Tianming's sword that pierced his son's tongue was clearly aimed at Zhang Cheng. Jian Cheng grits his teeth as he knows what the lady is talking about. He was furious at Tianming and he wanted to chop Tianming's head once the event will be over. While they were disappointed, Tianlin and Xiaoqing were happy with the result. As per Tianlin, Tianming is truly unique and his companion beasts were all very strong, especially the little chicken. He also believes that Tianming has hope of winning the Grand Orient Sword, as long he will not run into Jun Tiani and Yuling Long. But he still has a long way to go. He needs five balls to get his sword. Tianlin added, It's because you don't know him well enough. We'll see. Xiaoqing answered, As per Tianlin, Tianming can win if he and Ruasu will hide at the bottom of the sea for ten days. But then, Xiaoqing smiled widely while saying that Tianming is not in favor of hiding. He said that even though Tianming's movement was very risky, he was really smart. It is evident that currently, he is holding three black balls. And this is still not much, if Lai Tianming is given more time, he will become stronger as per Xiaoqing. Tianlin seriously stared at him, wondering why Xiaoqing really believes 100% to Tianming. While they were talking, Tianlin's wife is behind them. She was sad while thinking that Xiaoqing and Tianlin are very naive. She believes that Tianming can't escape the Sons of Heaven Elysium as she was expecting that Tianming will be crushed and humiliated by Yuling Long in the end. After three days, Tianming is still roaming around, finding another ball and Miao Miao is still dragging the twin brothers with them. Currently, Tianming was thinking about the first level of the Divine Heaven book that has been routinely cultivated, 
and he was confused why the second level is still not unlocked. It was said that as long as the first level of training was completed, the second level would be activated automatically. Today, after he was caught in the illusion of the pupil, he has a different feeling, although it is very small. It seems that his bewildering eye is a little restless. He wondered if fighting the pupil illusion can help to awaken the second level of the Divine Heaven book. He then looked at the twin brothers and ordered them to summon their big bug and let it use the pupil illusion again. They were both confused and Wusheng then told him that their bug was seriously injured. If they will let their bug do what Tianeming ordered, it would be tantamount to suicide. I don't care about you. If you don't want to die, hurry up. Tianeming said with crossed arms. The twin brothers sit on the ground and they don't have a choice but to summon the bug. It immediately cast a devil's illusion. But this time, it is different than the last time. This time, Tianeming got direct insight. Wusheng currently kneeled on the ground while he was apologizing to their bug. Tianeming then feels the verge of awakening and he took out the ball of the light that records the Divine Soul book and looks for clues. The ball of light then suddenly shines and Tianeming was excited as he believes that there are some important details he can get. He only read a second inside eye's Divine Soul book. And the Divine Soul book has opened a new page, it was the secret of the Eye of Insight. Tianeming realized that the name of the second level is called the Eye of Insight. Unexpectedly, the thoughts brought about by the natural enchantment and the pupil illusion became an opportunity for the insightful eyes to appear. However, if Tianeming wants to see it, he still has to keep developing his eyes and transfer his energy to these eyes on his arm to see and pierce illusion. In a short period of time, the eye insight is already done. Tianeming then tried it while saying that the name eye of insight suggests can penetrate all illusions of any kind. This natural charm is also a kind of illusion. Although the participants felt like they were in the Eastern Emperor realm, they were actually still in the area as per Tianeming. He can clearly see it with the use of the Eye of Insight. The enchantment puts people in a world of illusion. Therefore, as long as Tianeming knows the distance between the illusion and the actual distance, he can easily find this opponent. He grits his teeth out of excitement as he believes that this technique is different from cheating and he called as his strength. He then decided to learn how the illusion will work. He decided to experiment with the nearest person to him. The disciple near him said that he had been gone for three days and he still didn't find an opponent. Tianeming then rushed to this disciple while ordering Ying Huo and Miao Miao to take good care of the twin brothers. He was very thankful that God gave him this extra on his arm. With this eye, he knows that he can easily get the Grand Orient Sword. He knows that as long as he can figure out the location of this reality and illusion, he can definitely win the battle. When Tianeming clearly saw the disciple, he then landed on the ground but to his surprise, the participant is not in the area and he realized that his guess was wrong. He then heard someone talking behind him, it turned out to be in the opposite direction. If he had known earlier, he wouldn't have taken the wrong step. The participant is already standing in front of the Onyx twin brothers and this disciple was confused about how the twins had been tied up so easily. When Ying Huo saw him, Ying Huo then asked where he came from. Don't you see your father here? Ying Huo added. The disciple then pointed to Ying Huo while he was staring at the twins as he was asking them if they were knocked out by the chicken. Instead of giving him an answer, they both can't utter even a single word as they were embarrassed. Tianeming then came back to the area and said that it was me who knocked down the twins. Upon seeing him, the man then instantly knew that he was currently facing Lai Tianeming from the Grand Orient sect. Is your name Ling Tianzi? I'm having a hard time finding you. Tianeming said with a slight smile on his face. Keep going. If you already found me, what are you going to do? Won't it be sad when our people find you? Tianzi answered. Tianeming then boasted about what happened to the twins to make Tianzi realize that he was not that weak. Tianzi then smirked. As for him, Onyx sect disciples cannot be compared to them since he's part of the Elysian children. Tianzi stated that Heaven's Elysian disciples will be Tianeming's nightmare. And he was expecting that Tianeming can do nothing but kneel them. He believes that Tianeming this time will become miserable in the hands of them. He said that even a crane in Heaven's Elysium can destroy another sect. Tianeming then smirked at the thought that Tianzi is believing a false hope. Without any words from him, he dashed going toward Tianzi and was about to punch him using Trevita Fiendfist boxing art. Tianzi was alarmed and he can clearly see Tianeming's fist. Are you deaf? You dare to challenge me? Tianzi uttered, and he then blocked Tianeming's fist. He proudly said that he can easily fend off the rotten fist from the countryside with just his hands. But unexpectedly, his bones were crushing and Tianzi then grits his teeth as he felt the pain. His sweat dropped from his forehead as he didn't expect that it will be that painful without knowing that Tianeming has a metal arm. Tianeming then punched him for the second time, 
and this time, he was hit by Tianming on his cheek causing him to spit some blood while wondering how he was easily beaten up like this. He flew away because of the punch and he slides into the corner. He gets up and admitted that he has underestimated Tianming. But still, he was determined to fight back and told Tianming that he'll be serious now. He was startled when Tianming suddenly appeared near his face. Are you ready to take my serious blow? Tianming asked. He didn't wait for any answer from Tianzi and instantly punched this disciple from heaven's Elysium left and right. Tianming then slammed Tianzi on the ground while telling Tianzi that he will not kneel to him or to any heaven's Elysium people. The thing he can do is beat Tianzi and make him kneel for him. Tianzi feels enough pain for him to surrender and admit his defeat. He apologizes to Tianming and immediately kneeled. The twin brothers witnessed the scene of how Tianzi was humiliated by Tianming. All right, let's go and tie yourself with these chains. I guarantee that more people will accompany you later, Tianming said. Tianzi was instantly tied up with the chain and he was full of bruises all over his body. He was about to say something but Tianming stopped him by inserting the sword on his mouth. Tianming doesn't give him permission to speak. At this point, Tianzi is staring at him with anger so Tianming then said that for thousands of years, he can't compare how many despicable insulting methods that Heaven's Elysium people have used on the Grand Orient sect over these generations. Tianming grits his teeth and states that this revenge is just the beginning. He said that there is still plenty of time to wait for the others and it would be fun for him to tie them all just like what he have done to the Onyx twins and Tianzi. Since he already got one son of Heaven's Elysium, there are still six of them left and he will wait for these fellows to come to him. Since the arena is located in Heaven's Elysium, the people were acting mad as they saw how Tianming toy their heavenly disciple. They witnessed how Tianming beat up Tianzi like he was just beating a watermelon and vegetable. Some people were also irritated that Tianming always meet weak disciples instead of Yuling Long and Tianyi. Dongyin this time cannot believe that Tianming is so lucky all the time, and he was looking forward to the day that Tianming will be defeated by their other disciple. Why Tianming with his life-bound beasts and their captive disciples continues walking to find another disciple to be hunted. Since Miao Miao is the one pulling the twins and Tianzi, he was already complaining as he was lazy all the time and only wanted to sleep. But, he cannot do anything as Tianming forced him to do so. Tianming then climbs up to the top of the tree and he almost knows the location of everyone in this enchantment. He also knows everyone's strengths because he has read their information in the participant book. He will sort them from weak to strong and find them one by one and destroy them all. On this day, he found another disciple from Heaven's Elysium and he knows that this person is almost on the same level as Ling Tianzi. Tianming then realized that he can't use the Eye of Insight blatantly. He have to make it seem like he happened to meet this disciple. He then called out Ying Huo and Miao Miao and informed them where they should be heading. He immediately rushed as he doesn't want to waste more time. When they arrived, the disciple was shocked to see his colleague Tanzi together with the onyx twin that was tied up on the chain and wounded. He was looking straight at them, wondering about who the disciple had the guts to beaten them up like this. Tianming then appeared in front of him to answer his question. Tianming smiled evilly and pointed to the disciple while saying that his next target will be him. At this moment, the disciple stopped him and was telling Tianming that he have something to say. Since he knows that Tianming has defeated three disciples, he believes that Tianming's strength is stronger than him so he decided to find a way to escape rather than fight back. He then offered that he gives his golden ball in exchange that Tianming will not hit him. He said that he has another option, and Tianming asked about what it is. He pointed behind Tianming and lied that Yuling Long is behind. Tianming then instantly believes him that's why the disciple has the chance to escape. Tianming was annoyed by this disciple having the guts to toy with him. The disciple doesn't know that Tianming can still see him even if he will hide anywhere. Tianming ordered Ying Huo and Miao Miao to catch the disciple, and both of his beasts then followed his order. The disciple from Heaven's Elysium continuously runs while believing that Tianming can't be able to catch up to him as long as he will do his best to escape. In just a short period of time, he was still caught by Miao Miao and Ying Huo. Tianming then said that he hey people who make fun of him. He also added that he will never forgive easily. Guess what, what am I going to do to you? Tianming said with a scary posture. The disciple was sitting on the ground and he peed because of his fear. He was already full of bruises and he asked for mercy to Tianming in exchange for doing everything for Tianming. He was scared to the point of peeing his pants. How could he call himself a disciple of heaven? Ying Huo uttered. Tianming said that he was not interested in killing someone like this disciple in front of him. I can't waste any more time, you know what to do, right? Tianming asked, and the disciple then instantly tied himself with the chain and joined Tianzi and the twins. At this time, Tianming has already two gold balls and three black balls, and only five more to beat. 
He then decided to continue hunting the next disciple. All the captive disciple was feeling down and they were seeing Tanaming as a devil for beating and tying them up like this. The crowd was uproaring and wanted to stop the competition. They were all worried about their disciple and they wished that Tianming will be bind in the Shengshen battlefield and stab him with a sword. While Tianming is heading to the way of his target, he saw that it was a lady. Hey, what have you done to them? The lady asked in confusion. Tianming then assigned Ying Huo and Miao Mao to this lady. Miao Mao is still in a fierce look while Ying Huo was too excited as he's in favor of playing with girls the most. After a while, the lady is already crying and was also tied up by the chain of Tianming. She was asking for some mercy and even said that Tianeming doesn't have the heart to do this to a lady like her. Tianeming then gets the black ball from the lady while saying that he doesn't care about women being men as he is a fair person. He slightly smiled as he knows that his next prey is a slightly stronger person. The people from Heaven's Elysium and the arena were screaming again. They cannot watch it longer as Tianeming continued beating up their disciples. They all wanted Tianeming to be killed as soon as possible. Tianlin and Shayoking are looking at them, and Tianlin uttered that the Wheel of Destiny is turning, but not always on top. He also said that these people really don't know themselves and might already forget how they harassed the Grand Orient sect and Sautsky sect back then. Shayoking smiled upon hearing Tianlin's opinion. He remembered how the people from Heaven's Elysium tortured their students last year. Today, he was enjoying that these people will suffer karma. Things won't happen to them, they won't know how far we've come. Do you remember when you were young? Shayoking stated. One important thing that Tianlin noticed is Tianeming who understood the workings of illusion. He realized that Tianeming found a balance between the enchantment and the Shengshen battlefield so can find the opponent accurately. Shayoking was not sure if Tianeming really understands the illusion, but he knows that if Tianeming really realizes it, it wouldn't surprise him as he already knows that Tianeming has full of surprises. As per Tianlin, Tianeming can seek luck and avoid evil, strategize, and control the overall situation this way. While they were glad about the outcome, Dong Yin was the opposite. He slammed his fist on his throne as it was hard to believe that Tianeming had already been able to see this illusion of enchantment at such a young age. He believes that this eye technique is perfectly suited for this realm of wars. He grits his teeth while thinking that the Grand Orient sect had prepared this competition from the start. If things continued like this, he believes Tianeming can really be capable of getting the Grand Orient sword. He admitted that his heaven's disciple this year is very miserable, and he doesn't know his father's reaction this time. His father Xing Xiao is currently feeling down with what's going on with their Elysian child so he decided to sleep for now, and he ordered Dong Yin to wake him up once the Grand Orient Sword will come out. Dong Yin took a deep breath as he was glad that his father doesn't pay any attention to Tianeming. His face then becomes serious while saying that Tianeming is absolutely not worthy of fear in terms of strength. He believes that Tianeming is much weaker than Yuling Long. Going back to Tianeming, he's currently using his eye for insight and was targeting Jun Yuanjin. With the use of his eye of insight, he instantly found his target who was currently flying in the sea and believes that Waizeng Ruasu or Waisheng Kingluin is hiding in this place. He was riding in his metal dragon while holding his spear. Although it is not clearly visible to him, he can sense that there's a whale below water and he was sure that it's a companion of the Waisheng family either Ruasu or King Luan. If he found it that it was Waisheng Ruasu, he will apologize to Tani as he likes Ruasu to be his lady. According to him, his uncle said that they should teach the Waisheng family a lesson and let Weisheng Tanlin cry on his knees. He was waiting above the water as he was very sure that someone from the Salski sect will come out to see the happenings outside. To his surprise, Ying Huo is rushing to him at a fast speed and instantly hit his head. Meow Meow also appeared and blow a lightning skill on his face. Tianeming is just standing and looking at how his life-bound beasts humiliate the other disciple of Heaven's Elysium. When Ying Huo and Meow Meow stopped attacking Yuanjin, Yuanjin then screamed, asking who attacked him instantly. He then saw Tianeming in front of him who was together with his co-disciples and other disciples from other sects. Why did you two stop? Why don't you guys continue the sneak attack? Tianeming asked. Since the sneak attack is not our style, we want to fight head on. Ying Huo answered, Right, if this continues, the audience won't be happy enough to watch it. Miao Miao said, Yuanjin then grits his teeth upon seeing that he was facing the disciple of the Grand Orient sect, Lai Tianeming. Your guts are really big. How dare you treat heavenly disciples like this? You're tired of living it seems. Remember here is the Heavian's elision. He shouted. Tianeming then told him that he was wrong and that the disciples tied up on his chain was his charm. He then told Ying Huo and Miao Miao not to stop playing with Yuanjin. 
Yuanjin was determined to fight back as he doesn't like to be embarrassed by Tianming's lowly little companions. Ying Huo and Miao Miao were annoyed that Yuanjin underestimated them so they immediately rushed to him. Tianming then said that even he didn't underestimate both Ying Huo and Miao Miao. This time since Yuanjin made his companion beasts angry, it will be the end of his story as per Tianming. Yuanjin was holding his spear while waiting for Ying Huo and Miao Miao to attack. He thought that he can easily be beaten up by these little beasts, but his expectation was wrong as Miao Miao and Ying Huo give all their force since they were mad at Yuanjin. Miao Miao is using his claw technique while Ying Huo used the heavenly defying sword intent. Tianming is observing them and he didn't expect Ying Huo's progress to be so fast. However, he knows that there is still something Ying Huo didn't master and that is the myriad-only heaven-defying sword intent. If he can master it in this battle, Tianming knows that their next battle will be easy. Ying Huo is continuously hitting the dragon with his sword technique and Yuanjin was shocked at how this little chicken mastered the art of the sword which he cannot be able to underestimate this time. At the same time, Miao Miao is blowing some lightning that makes the dragon electrocuted. Tianming was still looking at the battle between his life-bound beasts against Yuanjin and he was enjoying that both his beasts were gone crazy. He believes that by this, the audience in the arena will be speechless. Despite Yuanjin being beaten, he still has the guts to speak and boasted that he will beast Tianming later after he will kill Ying Huo and Miao Miao. He then rushed to Ying Huo and attacked Ying Huo with his spear but he was annoyed that he cannot hit Ying Huo. Ying Huo then rushed to him and on the other hand, Miao Miao is trying to defeat the golden dragon. Tianming is sitting above the tall rock while he was uttering words to motivate Ying Huo. He reminded Ying Huo of his dream to become an immortal bird that swallowed the sun. And this worked for Ying Huo as he becomes more determined. He used the 3000 Sky Sword as his last attack on Yuanjin and Yuanjin becomes more dumbfounded. He screamed in pain as he was hidden by the flaming sword. Tianming smiled as he knows that Yuanjin will be done this time. I will mark him with my pee because this man has been conquered by me. Ying Huo said while peeing on Yuanjin's face. He then glanced at Tianming while saying that his mission is finally accomplished. Tianming then went down and walked on the water. And as usual, he also inserted his sword into Yuanjin's mouth while telling him to shut up and watch. He tied up Yuanjin with his chain and he was grateful that he brought a lot of chains in this battle. He looked up above while thinking about Sikong Jiancheng. He wondered about Jiancheng's reaction after Tianming beaten four of the Elysian children that Jiancheng was proud of. Since he has beaten the easiest adversary, he believes that the game has just started. The crowd was so loud discussing how Tianming defeated the powerful young master they knew which is Yuanjin. At the same time, Dongyin was trembling in anger and he was so mad at Tianming. At this moment, a whale jumped out from the water and Weisheng Kingluin is riding on it. He idolized Tianming as he also witnessed the battle despite that Ying Huo and Miao Miao is the ones who defeated the enemy. Brother Tianming, you are too scary. Amazing, that's my idol. King Luan proudly said. Since King Luan is hiding at the mouth of his whale, Ying Huo was confused if the whale's mouth not stinking since King Luan can hide inside. Tianming then answered King Luan by saying that the battle was just easy for him. King Luan was so impressed to think that Tianming was so domineering to defeat the Heaven's Elysium disciples. He also didn't ignore Ying Huo. He explained to Ying Huo that his whale's mouth is full of the smell of seaweed. He even offered that Ying Huo can smell his body to confirm it himself. He then jumped on the water while saying that if Tianming has a request to him, he will pass through fire and water and will do anything. Tianming then asked him to help keep the black and gold orbs to be safe. Upon seeing the disciples that Tianming caught, King Luan asked a favor to beat them up and vent his anger. Tianming then smiled at him and let him do what he wants. All can be heard in the area screaming because of how King Luan beat these six disciples helplessly. After he was done, he was jumping with happiness and he felt satisfied. Tianming then said that they needed to go, but King Luan asked what they should do about the other disciples. Tianming then realized that the more people, the more troublesome for him. He asked King Luan's idea and King Luan told him to leave all the disciples to him as he have a nice idea in his mind. The six disciples were splashing on the water as the whale is pulling them. King Luan and Tianming were riding inside the whale's mouth and Ying Huo confirmed that the whale's mouth doesn't smell bad and there was only a smell of seaweed. King Luan was confused about where they should go and Tianming answered that they'll net to find another prey. Tianming's mood suddenly changes as he saw using his eye of insight that Ruasu is in danger. He then ordered King Luan to speed up his companion beast, and King Luan was worried for his sister. As per Ying Huo, Ruasu is currently fine and only surrounded by Yao Tianzi and Jun Tianyi. He said that if King Luan will ask his brother-in-law for help, it is estimated that he will use power to save Ruasu. 
Tianeming was annoyed while listening to Ying Huo as he knows that Ying Huo is referring to him. Tianeming then asked King Luan not to listen to Ying Huo and King Luan then agreed but was honestly thrilled by Ying Huo's statement. He even called Tianeming his brother-in-law, and he was confused about the eyes at Tianeming's hand. Stop calling me brother-in-law. It's a secret. Don't talk nonsense about this eye, okay? Tianeming answered. At this moment, Tianyi said that Ruasu cannot run anymore. He told his companion Tianzi that he will follow Ruasu for now while Tianzi will rest to main his strength, and they'll take turns chasing Ruasu. Don't worry about that. It's a good chance to torture her, I won't let go. Tianzi answered and ordered. Ruasu was currently riding on her whale and she ordered her companion beast named Aoki to swim faster. She was confident that her enemy behind her won't be able to catch up to them. Both Tianzi and Tianyi chase Ruasu as fast as they can. And Tianeming can clearly see that both enemies are strong so he ordered King Luan to dive in and hide first for now. King Luan then followed his order so he cannot bother Tianeming. Tianeming then assigned Ying Huo to call Mao Mao to chase Ruasu while he will beat Yao Tianzi. Ying Huo was hesitant as he was doubting that Tianeming can beat the opponent. But then, Tianeming instantly rushed to the enemy while saying that there's no cant in his dictionary. Tianzi was unaware that Tianeming is rushing to her. She was observing Ruasu and according to what she saw, Ruasu is getting tired and her speed had slowed down so Tianzi wanted to seize this opportunity to torture Ruasu. But then, she stopped as she heard a voice asking why are women so cruel to women. Tianeming instantly stood in front of her and she was confused about how Tianeming appeared in front of her as she didn't even notice a thing. This is also the first time she saw Tianeming so she doesn't have any idea about Tianeming's identity. I am Lai Tianeming of the Grand Orient Sect, I have come to torture you. Tianeming answered. He was also standing at the enemy's companion beast and he instantly attacked the lady with his heavenly defying sword intent. Crossbreak. He slashes the eagle several times until it falls down on the river. Tianzi then screamed her beast's name and she was mad at Tianeming for torturing her beast. Do you know how to write the word dead? The lady shouted. She was trembling to think that the trash she knows from the Grand Orient sect dared to provoke her. To her surprise, Tianeming suddenly disappeared. Without knowing that Tianeming is just behind her and was ready to attack using Trevita Fiend Fist boxing art. When Tianeming punched her using the sky shatters, her body was lifted up. Tianeming then punched her once more using the God Ringer and she spit blood as the punch was hit on her face. Tianeming slammed the lady on the water using the Boxing Art World Destroyer, and the lady believes that if Tianeming will continue to beat her up like this, she will lose consciousness. The punch she received from Tianeming was too powerful which made her wonder about what kind of heaven-defying fist Tianeming has. As for what she feels, she knows that it's equivalent to the punch of a person in the heavenly will realm. The lady wanted to speak some humiliation to Tianeming but Tianeming doesn't want her to be exempted so he immediately inserted his sword into Tianzi's mouth. Tianeming then ordered the lady to hand over the ball she has but the lady didn't get any and only stare at her ring. Tianeming then cut off her finger and get the ring. But then, he was disappointed upon checking that the ball is not in this ring. Tianeming then concludes that Tianzi's ball can't fall right because the distance between them is 10 meters in the real world. He believes that Tianzi's ball has been given to Jun Tianye. You are the most evil and cruel disciple of heaven. You never thought you would be wronged one day, did you? No point in wasting time on you, someone will come and pick you up later. Tianeming said to the lady and immediately leave to chase Tianye. He doesn't know what happened to Ying Huo and Ruasu. The only thing he knew is he needs to hurry. He was thinking that the Realm Wars is the place where the Prime Disciples lose their souls. There is a lot of debt to defeat Yao Tianzi, and he knows that it is far from enough to pay for it. He smiled and was greedy to catch Yuling Long and Jun Tianyi as he knows that both are the real big fish. He didn't expect that he will meet Tianyi so soon. As expected, the people of Heaven's Elysium were so loud venting their anger at Tianeming knowing that the five disciples of Heaven's Elysium were tormented. Dong Yin was still trembling in anger, and he knows that Tianeming's next target will be his son Jun Tianyi. He trusts his son so much and he believes that this will be the end of Tianeming. Going back to the Realm Wars, Tianyi was still chasing Ruasu, and he was laughing while saying that Ruasu cannot escape from his hands. He also mentioned that his mission this time is to take care of Ruasu, and he was too excited that he don't have to worry about searching for the lady since Ruasu is already in front of her. There's no use for you to run away, you won't escape my grip, I'll keep chasing you. The Realm Wars is a chaotic place, you and I know that, but if you want to play with me, I won't be rude to you. 
Don't worry, I have a lot of experience, and I have an amazing experience with 80 women. I mean 100 women. I will definitely satisfy you. Come on, dear. Chani stated. Ruasu feels disgusted by what Tani uttered, and she said that she will not be chased by Tani. Ying Huo and Miao Miao were also chasing them, but Ying Huo is afraid to think that it will be a life and death battle this time since he knows Tani is so strong. While he was scared, Miao Miao on the other side only felt disgusted with Tani's voice. According to Ying Huo, Tani is a dual beastmaster and he can clearly see that Tani's other dragon is hidden in the water. From the arena, Shaoqing knows that his disciple Tianming is trying his best to catch up with Jun Tiani. He said that Ruasu shouldn't be in a hurry to reveal herself, and she should be thinking about how to use her sea god whale to hide at the bottom of the sea and train for a few days before coming out. If it continues like this, Shaoqing believes that the whale will be exhausted and the enemy will get a chance to take Rashu's black ball, while the enemy only lacks the gold ball. Tianlin wondered if his daughter can still develop. He said that Ruasu is currently ninth stage of the Unity Realm and he wondered if his daughter has time to break through to the Heavenly Will Realm. As per Shaoqing, it would not be possible for an ordinary genius as it would take years, but he believes that it might be different from Lai Tianming. He was hoping that Tianming shouldn't be impulsive and will not make a mistake as Lai Wudi does. At this moment, Tianming already get to Ying Huo and Miao Miao, and Ying Huo immediately informed him that Ruasu's luck is still high. He suggested that they should just keep an eye on the lady. Don't worry, your little wife is still safe and I think she can last another half hour. Ying Huo added causing Tianming to be annoyed as he doesn't see Ruasu to be his future. Ying Huo stared at him to ask about his plan since Tiani is a different person from the previous opponent they has. And he also worried because Tianming has a huge difference from Tiani's realm. Tianming then smiled while saying that they should try it first for them to check how great Tiani is. He then grabbed his sword and decided to attack Tiani before Tiani can notice them. He then pointed his sword at Tani's position and cast a purple thunder. This technique creates several purple dragons, and it rushed towards Tani. Lightning then emerged but Tani easily blocked it using his spear while saying that this technique is just an insect trick. Who is so brave to attack from behind? Tiani asked as he turned his head around. He instantly saw Tianming who is already rushing at him and was about to attack him using a cross break. But then, Tani managed to smile as he didn't expect Tianming to reveal himself so soon. When he blocked Tianming using his spear, Tianming flew away. At this point, Tiani admitted that Tianming really has the abilities and he was greedy to fight Tianming since he haven't met a worthy opponent in a long time. He said that Tianming managed to raise his fighting spirit and he hasn't felt this way since then. Tianming made a serious look as he confirmed that his abilities and Tiani's abilities are not balanced as Tiani is stronger than him. He believes that even if Tiani can win, it might be a slim victory. He continuously started at Jun Tiani while still thinking about Tiani's strength. Tiani on the other hand also confirmed that Lai Tianming's strength has clearly surpassed the realm of the first stage of Heavenly Will. He also sees that Tianming is a dual beast master just like him. He saw Miao Miao who currently transformed into a thunder giant that resembles a lion or a tiger, and also Ying Huo, a very aggressive little chicken. Ying Huo currently activated his thousand shadows, purgatory and hundreds of chicken then appeared. Tianlin only smiled upon seeing it. Ying Huo then attacked using a heavenly defying sword intent counter-attack, combined with star fall and cross break. Tianlin's reaction instantly changes as he was shocked that a little chicken of Tianming can do a heavenly sword art. Tianming then rushed to him and attacked him using a heavenly defying sword intent myriad only, and he successfully targeted the opponent. But, Tiani's dragon blew a flame at him and Tiani instantly has an armor, the Immortal God War armor. It is a gold medal that looks super powerful. Ying Huo was about to attack but he backed out as he saw that Tiani already wear armor and he knows that this armor is too hard. As what Tiaming knows, it's an attack and defense type spiritual source like a purgatory shield. Come to me, let me see how many more surprises you can give me. Tiani uttered. Tianming then attacked him using the same technique but Tiani can easily dodge and blocked his attack. In his current state, he's still not sure of winning against Tiani. Tiani still dared to laugh loudly as he was happy because he never thought Tianming could keep up with his speed. Tianming then noticed that the longer Tiani fights, the more he got excited. Tianming currently has a lot of gold orbs and black balls in his hand, so knows that he should not be stubborn and fight to the death with Tiani. And also, the two dragons are very hard-skinned. Even at this time Ying Huo and Miao Miao can't hurt them, especially those who fight with Miao Miao have very strong close combat abilities. Tianming doesn't want to let Ying Huo and Miao Miao hurt so he was thinking of retreating first. 
The most important thing is that the mission to save Ruasu has been completed since Tiani's attention was on Tianming. He then called out Miao Miao and Ying Huo, ordering them to go back first. Ying Huo and Miao Miao then followed him as they know that they cannot beat the enemy for now. While they were running away, Tiani still wanted to chase them. He then ordered his golden dragons to give Tianming an attack. His dragon then blew a flame while he was calling Tianming a coward for retreating without a fight yet. His dragons continually attack Tianming and Tianming give his best to dodge and escape. He finally landed on the ground and he was planning to go ashore as he believes that Tiani cannot be able to find him. Tiani is shouting at Tianming, calling him and his sec trash. He then landed on the ground and he was annoyed as there are a lot of bushes in the forest which can give him difficulty to look for Tianming. He was mad at the fact that Tianming managed to escape this time. But then, he decided to let Tianming run away for a few ways and keep the balls he was hiding. Since Tianming finally escaped from Heaven's Elysium Disciple, the crowd was laughing and called Tianming a coward. They then idolized Tiani as their hope came back because of him. They said that Tianming could only hold his head and flee when he encountered a stronger opponent. Tianming is having a hard time facing Tiani so they also expected that Tianming doesn't have the chance to escape once he will meet the Elysian's strongest disciple Yuling Long. Going back to the battle, Tianming continues to hide and he knows that it's impossible for Tiani to find him here in the bushes. I don't want to know you anymore. In this case, you still have no brain. Do you want from birth to death to keep running away? Even though you are only fighting Jun Tiani, but you run away instead. Ying Huo said. Tianming then said that the meaning of his white hair is called the desire to be resurrected. He told Ying Huo that they should let Tiani be arrogant for a few days first, and they should also return to their brother's place and then let Tiani kneel on the ground pleading soon. Now that he has so many golden balls and black balls, and at the same time guaranteeing Wei Sheng's safety, his current state is having the upper hand. He knows that without him, no one will be able to get the Grand Orient Sword. The one who should be worried now is not him, and he can also extend the battle time in the world indefinitely. He then used his Eye of Insight to check Ruasu's location and because of this eye, Tianming instantly saw Ruasu's whale. He then went to the lady and the lady thanked him for his help. Ruasu then handed her black ball to Tianming, but Tianming told her that he don't need it now. Ruasu then wondered why Tianming doesn't want to accept the ball and Tianming then let her know that he currently have four black balls and one gold ball. If he will receive Ruasu's ball now, the ball will quickly gather. And if that happens, he cannot be able to control the time to bring out the Grand Orient Sword. Don't be in a hurry, we'd better postpone it so I have plenty of time to prepare. Tianeming added. Ruasu was confused if where did Tianeming get the four black balls. But before Tianeming can answer, King Luan came together with the other disciples that Tianeming had beaten. King Luan is still calling Tianeming as brother-in-law so Ruasu felt embarrassed while Tianeming uttered that King Luan was influenced by Ying Huo. Ruasu then instantly noticed the disciples behind the whale and she thought that her brother is the one who hunted all of them. King Luan then energetically told her that it was Tianeming who defeated all these disciples. Ruasu was amazed at Tianeming and she said that Tianeming can be considered to have helped their Southski sect. This is nothing. If we are in trouble, please persuade your father to help my Grand Orient sect. Tianeming answered. King Luan then interfered by saying that he's willing to help the Grand Orient sect since they have the same ancestor because of the Lai Saint clan. And besides, he also doesn't like Heaven's Elysium. He also mentioned the strength of Jun Tiani. He said that he saw the fight between Tian Miong and Tiani from a distance, and he observed that Tianeming seemed to have a hard time fighting his opponent. Tianeming smiled widely while saying that Tiani is not too difficult an adversary. For now, he needs King Luan and Ruasu to help him hide for a while so he can break through from the 7th stage Unity Realm to the 8th stage Unity Realm. Upon hearing him, both King Luan and Ruasu are shocked to know that Tianeming is still not at the pinnacle of Unity Real. They become confused so Tianeming told them not to be confused and just believe the power of the Pentabane. 18 days have passed, and the audience this time is still waiting for Tianeming to come out from the bottom of the sea. Since it took so many days, some of these people thought that Tianeming intended to hide for a hundred years. To their surprise, Tianeming suddenly comes out from the water, and he was now confident that he can beat Tiani this time in just a few seconds. He immediately showed himself to Tian, and Tiani was glad that he finally appeared. Turtle Man, do you want to run away again? Tiani asked. Tianeming then assigned the golden dragons of Tiani to Ying Huo and Miao Miao while he will be focusing on Tiani. Miao Miao and Ying Huo then rushed to the enemy and Tiani was still riding on his dragon while saying that this fight will be different from the last time as he will make Tianeming feel the real fear. He said believes that Tianeming has nowhere to run this time. 
He used his God of War armor while Tiananmen cast his heavenly defying sword intent. The audience was focused on the battle and since Lai Tiananmen escaped last time, they believe that fear has arisen from his heart. However, after several days of rising, they concludes that Tiananmen wanted to try challenging Tiani again, and they thought that Tiananmen only felt ashamed for running away against Jun Tiani. Ying Huo is trying his best to defeat the Golden Dragon and Miao Miao did the same. And this time, Miao Miao managed to slash the dragon despite that its skin is very hard. Tiananmen was also enjoying the battle this time and he can easily attack Tiani from behind. This time, Tiani felt something change to Tiananmen. He feels that Tiananmen becomes stronger and he doesn't have any idea how it possibly happens in a short period of time. He also senses that Tiananmen's star essence was different from before, and he was sure that Tiananmen hasn't broken through to the heavenly will realm yet. He concludes that it was just an illusion of him. He becomes mad at Tiananmen and called Tiananmen a dog who deserves to be trampled under their feet. He proudly said that he was the eldest grandson of the Holy Emperor, and he boasted that their family has not been defeated for thousands of years so it is impossible for him to lose a battle with an unknown person. He attacked using his slash of the god of war, life, and death. But then, Tiananmen used a thousand shadows, and he said that he will strike Tiani with only one sword combined with his thousand shadows plus his myriad only. He smiled and cast an attack. Tiani was standing still and he rattled as he knows that Tiananmen's sword intent this time was definitely strong. And he was right with his prediction. When he was hit by Tiananmen's combo attack, he was screaming in pain and his golden armor was broken into pieces. He grits his teeth as his armor was completely impenetrable by Tiananmen's sword energy. Let me give you third order torture like them. Tiananmen uttered and instantly punched Tiani using his Travita Fiend Fist boxing art. Finally, Jun Tiani was defeated by Tiananmen and the people stood as they were shocked witnessing the battle. Tiananmen also doesn't let Tiani speak and immediately inserted the sword into Tiani's mouth. Tiananmen said that Ruasu told him that Tiani is plotting against the lady. If you're a real man, next time, don't do something indecent like that, okay? Tiananmen said, and Tiani is currently kneeling. For the sake of Ruasu, Tiananmen can only let Tiani not be able to think that he's a man or a woman in the future. He then stabbed Tiani's middle and Tiani is screaming in agony. In the future, you can only concentrate on your practice and you don't need to thank me. Tiananmen added and walked away. Upon seeing how Tiananmen beat Jun Tiani, Jun Dongyan then stood and screamed in anger as he cannot accept what happened to his son. As usual, he was trembling in anger once again and he uttered that he will revenge for his son. Beside him is his father who was snoring. Tiananmen walked back towards Tiani as he heard that there was something Tiani was about to say. I still don't get it, but now it's time for you to surf. Tiananmen said and ordered Kingluin and Ruasu to come out since the battle is over. Kingluin's whale then comes out from the water and Kingluin is expressing his feelings of idolizing Tiananmen. Thousand of words unite into one word, scary. Kingluin uttered while clenching his fist. As per Ruasu, it's hard for her to believe that Tiananmen defeated Tiani if she didn't see it with her own eyes. And now, she wondered how can Tiananmen deal once he will face the strongest among all, Yuling Long. Tiananmen then laughed and honestly said that he feels afraid to fight Yuling Long now. He concludes that he needs to hide again and train. This time, it will take longer. All of a sudden, Yunfeng and Lingzhuo appeared. As per Yunfeng, he saw two giant whales from afar and he still wondered how the people from the Weisheng family came to the surface instead of hiding. He was so surprised to see that their enemy was tied up by the chain and he even concludes that these disciples might be weak since Tiananmen managed to defeat them. King Luan then said that these disciples are not weak at all. He let Lingzhuo and Yunfeng know that all of this was done by Tiananmen himself. Yunfeng then believed it and even said that this is a great achievement in their generation. He didn't expect Tiananmen to be able to defeat them. He also believes that the Grand Orient sect ancestor must have had tears in his eyes if he witnessed this scene. This time, Lingzhuo already smiled and he asked Tiananmen if he can hit the disciples one time. At the arena, people can't believe how their heaven's disciples lose by just one person. They have never seen this kind of thing in the Realm Wars before so it's uncomfortable for them to watch it. Some then decided to leave as they cannot watch longer. The Weisheng's whales then go under the water together with the Grand Orient sect. Twenty days have passed, and Tiananmen finally broke through the ninth stage of the Unity Realm. The disciples together with Tiananmen feel like they were dreaming of seeing a man who has defeated a person in the second stage of the Heavenly Will Realm and now has broken through to the ninth stage of the Unity Realm easily. Lingzhuo honestly said that he don't trust anyone yet, but Tiananmen with a pentabane body really convinced him. Although Tiananmen has broken through from the 8th stage to the ninth stage in these 20 days, it will take more time for him to break through to the Heavenly Will Realm.
Ruasu suddenly felt sad while informing Tianming that she saw Yuling Long hovering above them again, and seems like Yuling Long know their location. Tianming then calmed her down by telling her that Yuling Long might not really know their exact location, and he knows that Yuling Long won't move until she's not sure of the location of her enemy yet. Aside from that, Ruasu also mentioned that she noticed Tianming keep looking at the necklace he has. She concludes that the owner of this necklace is someone who's important to Tianming. Tianming slightly smiled and answered yes to Ruasu right away. He said that the owner of the necklace is the most important person to him. He then remembered that it's been more than a month since the Battle of the Prime Tower. Linger said that she would wake up in a month, but now, Tianming feels worried since the lady hasn't woken up yet. He realized that Linger might underestimate the side effect of the spirit soul. With his current strength, there's a side of him that he believes he can fight against Yuling Long. All of a sudden, these disciples were suddenly surprised as they saw something. The water recedes, and now, they were really open which can possibly be seen by Yuling Long. Tianming then looks up above while saying that there might be someone who has controlled this enchantment, and it seems that they are impatient and want to end the realm wars. Right now, Tianming is very sure that someone is monitoring the realm wars. Tianming then collected the black and golden ball he has as he believes that this is the best time to get the Grand Orient Sword. Tianming then finally got the Grand Orient Sword that originally belonged to the Lai Saint clan and Tianming is a descendant of the Lai Saint clan and also has ten bane rings. Since he is the ancestral descendant of the Lai Saint clan, he believes that he should have the luck to be able to get the approval of the Grand Orient Sword. While he was holding it, he discovered that this sword is very heavy. He's afraid it will be difficult to control. He faced his alliance and told them that he will use this sword to face Yuling Long whatever the outcome is. His alliance was all surprised as this is the first time they saw the Grand Orient Sword and they all trusted Tianming wholeheartedly. This time, Yuling Long then appeared together with his three dragons. She always considered herself the only genius for making it to a higher place. She never imagined Tianming was even more talented than her, from a stalker to be able to chase to this point. She told Tianming that even though they are in different realms, for her, people like Tianming and her, there is only one in the world. Tianming this time then discovered that Yuling Long is a triplet beast master. I only have one goal today and that is to kill you. Yuling Long stated, What you should know is that the suffering of ordinary people is not easy for all living beings, but you have slaughtered and destroyed human relations, and usurped the good fortune of the people for your own use. Whenever someone gets in the way, you will think of him as a great threat, cruel, killing people and taking luck. Those who kill and steal other people's luck will one day be eaten by luck and karma itself. Tianming replied. Yuling Long then said that cultivation is plunder and conquest. Only those who step on the heads of living beings deserve dignity and freedom. For her, ordinary humans like Tianming are not qualified to talk to her anymore, and she sees Tianming's talent as unworthy. She then summoned her double sword while saying that she will give Tianming the death penalty. Her dragons are flaming and it's very powerful. Tianming believes that it's going to be a tough fight. But still, he was very determined to defeat Yuling Long and get back Linger's abilities. He then instructed both his lifebound beasts that they'll go with their old-fashioned way. Ying Huad and Miao Miao will fight one dragon each while Tianming chooses Yuling Long and the dragon she rides. Yuling Long didn't waste any more time and immediately rushes to Tianming. Tianming, Ying Huo, and Miao Miao did the same and Tianming feels bad that Linger is not here with him as it's his first time using a Grand Orient Sword, and he's afraid that he won't be able to master all his strength. Yuling Long uses a blazing fire and hell shield and Tianming can really feel that the fire is very fierce. But then, he was not worried for himself and Ying Huo since both of them were already immune. He only thinks about Miao Miao this time so he ordered Ying Huo and Miao Miao to stay together. Ying Huo then said that they'll do it as much as they can but they cannot just keep defending and not attack. Tianming tried to attack using Heavenly Defying Sword and Tent, Cosmic Break, and Yuling Long is staring at him and still managed to smile while saying that she wanted to see how strong Tianming is considering that he used the Grand Orient Sword. She blocked Tianming's attack and Yuling Long still underestimated Tianming up until this time. King Luan was worried for Tianming so he suggested that they should help Tianming and join forces. But then, Ling Zhuo stopped him and told him that they should trust Tianming. Tianming have slid on the ground and he confirmed that the power of Yuling Long's divine will battle art was similar to the heaven, earth, and human slaying sword that Mu Yang used when he beheaded Lin Tianjian. In other words, Yuling Long's current combat strength is likely to be close to her uncle as per Tianming. He gripped into the sword and his hand was trembling because the sword was too heavy which makes his movement very slow. 
he concludes that he must bet completely on beast essence and sword intent. If this continues, he will consume himself. Is this really the weapon brought back by the first ancestor and has been passed down for thousands of years in our Lai family? Why is this sword out of sync with me at all? Tianeming stated. Yuling Long then answered that an ordinary person like Tianeming wouldn't be able to comprehend the majesty of the Grand Orient Sword at all. She then attacked Tianeming using her Blue Sky Heart Killing Technique and Tianeming blocked it using the Grand Orient Sword as much as he can. He was trembling as he cannot hold it any longer because of Yuling Long's power. He talked to the Grand Orient Sword, asking if is it to give him strength if it is really an ancestral relic. Tianeming was hoping that this sword can give him even at least a little power as it's better than nothing. It's enough to give up. I admit that you are stronger than everyone before. Can you stop this move next? Yuling Long said and attacked Tianeming once more using a soul punishment technique, Zixiao. Tianeming cast a heavenly defying sword intent, myriad only. But the swords from this technique were too small that Yuling Long has. Tianeming then used defense to protect himself, and at this time, Yuling Long feels that Tianeming's sword intent is so turbulent, and she senses that Tianeming was about to break through to the heavenly will realm which she shouldn't allow to happen. Despite that the myriad swords were too little, it still leave a scratch on her face. She feels embarrassed and she was hoping that this was the only strongest attack that Tianeming has. Because of this, she doesn't want to let Tianeming use this tick a second time. He then ordered his burning dragon to attack Tianeming and the dragon then followed her order and Tianeming's blood splattered on his cape. The burning dragon attacked him once more and he was struck behind because of the dragon's long nails. Ruasu and King Luan then shouted Tianeming's name as they were worried for him. Ling Zhuo on the other hand then reminded Tianeming to be careful with the sword in front of him as he knows that it's the real killer move. Tianeming was already wounded and he blocked the sword that Ling Zhuo mentioned. He grits his teeth and he was disappointed that the Grand Orient Sword doesn't recognize him. Since he loses hope in this sword, he decided to drop it and for him, whatever happens will happen. When he let go of the sword, he was slightly stabbed in the chest but he held Yuling Long's sword to stop it from striking him deeply. He was screaming in agony as he was pulling the sword. Yuling Long was shocked as she cannot believe that Tianeming managed to stop her sword with his hand. She also noticed that there is a white light all over Tianeming's body. Tianeming then throws the sword to Yuling Long and he knows that the white light all over his body is the prime tower inside his body. Unexpectedly, at a critical moment, the healing white light of the prime tower will him. Without this white light, Tianeming concludes that Yuling Long's sword might have pierced his heart. Yuling Long easily catches her sword that Tianeming threw at her and she said that it's too bad that she can't kill Tianeming. She then went down and pulled the Grand Orient Sword. She said that Tianeming can no longer be able to hold the sword. She also tells Tianeming that a weapon like this should be her and she's the only one who deserves it. She believes that Tianeming cannot be able to use the Grand Orient Sword's power anymore. This is truly the majesty of the world. Yuling Long stated whole staring at the Grand Orient Sword. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you wish to have another part of this recap, please give us at least 2000 likes. Please don't forget to comment and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Until next time.